Now Skyfall's themes in my head. Thanks, Rags. <laughs> Thank the people who made Skyfall. Well, did you, uh, that movie I can't. I haven't seen it in ages, but I remember liking. Um, uh, do you remember the intro? The big shocking intro where it's like Bond is on some the kind of mission. The train. Yeah, and he gets. I remember that. Yeah. Authorization, I, someone to shoot, and they remember hit that. him. They don't hit yeah, the. Uh, they don't hit the target. That yeah. had Javier Bardem, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember yeah. him being kind of compelling. I just forgot the entire rest of the movie. Well, the angle was uh, he was an ex-double-O as well, and M, like, uses and does whatever she... Like, I think, because the film was more of almost like a criticism of, of her as well as, like, a, a swan song for Judy Dench, I think, because it was her last time as M. Yeah. Until Ralph uh, Ray Fiennes took over. Um, but yeah, from what I've seen from looking at subreddits, people have been saying, like, Craig's sort of tenure, um, there's a storyline from Casino Royale to Quantum of Solace to, uh, Spectre to No Time to Die, but Skyfall is just this random movie that gets dropped in that has, like, nothing to do with the other four. And I was just like, huh. And yeah, that's the most popular and successful one. Well, is it more popular than Casino Royale? It made, made more money, so oh. made more money. Made that's probably true, dollars. but... Like, when people talk yeah. about Craig's best film, they, I think they typically say Casino Royale. Um, I r typically, I think that's true, but I remember people saying Skyfall was the best one. I do remember that. I think that was why I watched it. What did you think that's, of it? I could be... I barely remember it, but oh. I enjoyed it. Um, but I'm curious how I'd feel if I rewatched it. Typical take now, at this point, for movies I haven't seen in a while. We just like to be, uh, mm -hmm. like to be pretty certain. Maybe we yeah. need to do a, a Bond arc. You know? That's what, like 25 arc. movies? It would take a, take a while. Yeah, it would take you four <laughs> years to get through them. <laughs> Alright. We are, we are live and presumably public. Which would be useful. Uh, excellent. Oh, what, what are we talking about? Bond will have to wait. Um, if, if, if it comes up at all. I don't know if... Because you guys, I'm assuming, have like no interest in seeing No Time to Die. No, uh, really. I didn't even know it was a thing until I saw a trailer for it before Shang Chi. Well, it was supposed to be a thing what like, two oh. years ago, <laughs> but it just yeah, uh, it was meant to come out. <laughs> I don't paying any attention. Ago. Well, it's finally here, and uh, mm -hmm. let's. I, I'm not going to say anything at all. What I will say is there is a very popular Google question right now, which is, "Does James Bond die?" Because like, it's like, what? Because uh, he hasn't done that for 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 uh, forever in terms of staying dead. Who knows if he does? Who knows? Isn't, isn't die in like a lot of the titles for James Bond movies? Yeah. yeah. And kill. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, die and yeah. So I don't know that it would necessarily mean all that much. Well, how much do you know about Bond? <laughs> very, very little. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it, it, he's been going for a while. For him to be dead would be a, a you know, a, it would be significant for Bond fans, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's... Has he died in the movies? Um, only only one time, and it, he was resurrected immediately. Oh, they and I don't mean that as okay. like a he survived being shot or something. I mean he literally was killed, and then I I can't remember how they did it. He got like some kind of fucking magic or bullshit. I I literally like. Wait, there's magic in the James Bond universe? Well, I'm I'm, I'm saying this because it, <laughs> James Bond died. I want to look this up. In which which film? <laughs> hey, chat, help me out. There's, Which, a, there's a lot of them, unfortunately. It was a fake let's, out? Let's search James Bond Resurrection. All of it relates to No Time to Die. I'm trying to find when he dies the other time. Oh, you only live Have twice? That would make day? sense. Boop, boop, ba -doo. Yeah, because he's like in a bed and they machine gun him and it's like, oh my god. It's like the ring wraiths and the hobbits? Yeah, yeah, like a modern <laughs> version of that. But um, oh, I haven't seen that movie in a bazillion years. Yeah, the James Bond movies kind of go in, here, in one ear and out the other. I've seen a bunch of them, but like, you know, if you ask me a question about them two years later, it's just like, I have no idea. There's a guy named Bond well, in it. We can we could test this right now. Name just give me a Bond movie that you've seen at least two years ago, and I'll ask you 
a trivia question about it. Oh, there you go. All right, All right go yeah. for Skyfall. Skyfall. Um, let me see. Hmm. Unless, the, unless the question is, is the antagonist Javier Bardem? I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be, I don't know. In Skyfall, what is the only weapon in the mansion? Oh. Candlestick. <laughs> I don't, wait, I, I feel like it's a grenade launcher or a machine gun, but I don't remember exactly. Is that right? I think it's just a double-barreled shotgun. Okay, then yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think that's the only weapon that they have. Uh, yeah, they have to do you like mean, a you mean the mansion thing. at the end, right? Or I think it's either a shotgun or a double-barreled rifle, but you you were wrong anyway. So yeah, <laughs> let me double check. That, that's uh, what I expected. A a. 500 nitro express double rifle really damn you know the the old what man the fuck that... do you have to kill out there that requires that oh you have velociraptors and so stuff good. isn't it scotland <laughs> well as we've learned from jurassic kingdom awakened next park then you could shoot a single velociraptor or you could shoot a velociraptor with a single nine millimeter round and it basically will die if it mm -hmm. isn't treated through magic bullshit Yes. Which means they would make excellent soldiers. 100%. So anyway, welcome everybody to EFAP 144155. Did I get Hello, that right? I hope you enjoyed our James Bond arc. Yeah, we, we just completed it. We started and stopped it. Strewing away. That's the one. Um, yeah, more and more people will see No Time to Die over time, and there will just be a particular subject I think people will want us to at least have a little chat about, but maybe we'll save that for next week. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, boy. Um, but that's that's your link that you need. First thing I'm going to put on was just, uh, I, I got my 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 new Halloween variant done. I want to show Rags is it. Okay? Yeah. And it's in, in yeah, video form. How crazy is that? Also, I'm going to mute in it on my end form. because the description says I do not, I didn't make this music, so I have no idea if the music's copyright or not. Mm. Last thing we need is to get booted off. Yeah, okay, I'm going to show it now. This is going to be cool. Wait, is everyone in here? I no, am. In... I am. Sweet. All right. This word is Mahler. Yes, well, you guys can listen to the music. It won't be playing on my end. All right, have fun. Okay. <laughs> is it Skyfall? Oh, it's a spoo a spood paint. Yes. Spooky, scary skeletons. Can you guess what kind of variant's going for this time? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Looks like a vampire thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it's just. I think it's just a um. Is that like? I don't a, know who who am I allowed to make fun of? What what nationality am I allowed to? Frankenstein's. Make fun of? You can make fun One of one of the white one. He's oh Russian. I could always say you can say anything you want about Russians. That's true. It's Mahler, but Russian. What? That's kind of neat, right? If this represents Russians, Russians are cool. Yeah, it doesn't have to be accurate. I just have to find a. Wow, oh, that's impressive. Did you draw this, or is this commissioned? Yes, I drew this myself. Well, those both can exist simultaneously. Well, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. <laughs> dun, dun, uh, yes, you're right. Those both could. Oh my God. Mahler's a furry now. Rags, we talked about this. Not everything is a furry. Have to your fursona? No, you. That is one. I refuse. I am. That's not. your fursona. Oh my goodness it's gracious! Got ears. Spooky. It's a it's a spook sona. It's spooky eyes. Oh no, he gobbled me oh, up. Boy. Does look really cool. Well, that, that was very neat. That was very nif nifty neat. Yes. Yeah, so... How did the how did the the transformation into a werewolf? How did it break the lenses of your your gas mask? That's pretty intense. Uh, that's easily explained. So. The first werewolf. lens got broken from when I was initially scratched by the werewolf, which is what got me infected. The other one broke because as I was transforming, I headbutted a wall because I was so out of control and that smashed the other one. Hmm. Wait, wait, do werewolves turn people into furries? Yes. I'm going to go with no, but that's it's yeah, fine that it you does. believe that. It does. It really does. It's so cute. I know 14 of them certainly do, but I think one 
if he was to get you just right, absolutely he would. P.S. from uh, <laughs> Holtap, who you can find through uh, a Twitter handle, I believe is the main thing. Open for commissions, as far as I know. Makes spooky, scary skeletons. Oh, that's one you could go as next time for me, a skeleton. Spooky, I did skeleton skeletons. the first time. When you was the first time? All, you have all month. Um, you, could, you could try to. Let me, let me double check. That would have been 2019, I think. Let me let me see actually. It's only Stacy. Yeah, 2020 name. was Frankenstein. 2021 was Zombie. Are you, I don't know what 2019 is. We're live, right? Uh, on your channel? I'm looking for it. And I just like... Well, chat's yeah, filled up with up. people, so it's oh. got to be up. Yeah. yeah. It's just Something YouTube. Wrong with you, Rags. YouTube. You can't find it. No, it's YouTube. What? It's just... Rags, have you been banned? Sure? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> here. I was just looking. I had to look and search. You would think that oh, I don't on see your like recommendeds and stuff, when as you cycle through that and it constantly shows people that you're subscribed to and have been looking at, you think that if one of the people you are subscribed to was currently live streaming, that it might want to let you know that that's an option that you could indulge in. Well, so that's yeah, YouTube's that ways was, are mysterious. That would be intuitive, and YouTube's very against that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's showing up as not live on mine. I don't know why. Oh well, I I, I found it now. So, oh, you did? It's it's up in public. Yeah. It's definitely there. Yeah, I yeah. I had to go to to Maulers, and too. then I had to refresh on Maulers, and then it showed up at the top. We've even got in a way the, that um... I've actually never seen it. I've never seen it actually display. Oh, okay. I was looking at second channel. Before. I'm dumb. Ah, idiot. Hasn't changed his Halloween PFP forever, <laughs> bad dog. No, I. This was one of the ones that I used last year. I actually have. A few that I will be cycling through. I got a super cute one today. Right, now you they said that they're gonna want to see the super cute one. They will. They will. Well, I guess that's just Halloween, gonna be hype generating. Thirty-one ish days, half ha October have spooky ween. So who knows? They not only of... that, they'll get a blast from the past when our thing we did yesterday is finally public. Oh yeah. Oh, oof. we can we can talk a little bit about we've been, we've been guys we've been watching Batwoman. Oh my god, the we fucking things. Four episodes this week. The fucking things that happened in that show. We've got three left to watch. Um, guys, you you ain't ready. You ain't ready for this. Oh. Batwoman. So season one, amazing. <laughs> Nothing like it. A triumph. Season two happens. Ruby Rose is gone. We get a new fucking bitch in the suit. It's terrible, right? It's still fun to watch, but not as fun. There were some sloggy episodes, and the magic isn't quite there. But man, these last four episodes, I don't know what they put in the writer's room coffee, but man, these last four episodes have been wild roller coasters of drama and craziness. I was very pleased with these last four episodes. They've been, they've been wild. They so much wild. to discuss. So eventful. So much to talk about. Very eventful. These things are jam-packed oh, no. with events. It'll be exciting to see how it all closes up, I guess. And bleh, it's, it's, it's going to be a thing. Uh, but yeah, that, you know, th th those are some fun updates. Th this episode of EFAB is brought to you by... Rags, who's our sponsor this week? Our sponsor today is uh, Quib... Uh, gift. Quib Gift <laughs> is an incredible subscription service where they will send you every month to an address of your choice. They will send to you a, a dodecahedral cardboard uh, kind of shaped object that has a puzzle on the top. And if you solve the puzzle, you get to open it up and it has a slew of mystery prizes inside. Um, if you put in referral code um uh quibfap then you will get 15 percent off your next three months of your quib gift subscription so make sure that you sign up today for quib gift because you never know what's inside isn't um once per month if you if it's the last of the month i think if you sign up you get a sock with with them um, with them it's like a special thing and if you collect you do, all the socks... if, you, if you sign up with a non-sock account as thanks they will give you a sock. There will be a sock of some kind. They they weren't specific. Quibgift told us it could be a sock. It could be a stocking. 
It could be like what it could be a cotton sock, a polyester co- uh, mm. a sock. I almost said cock. Sorry, I got. <laughs> um, it could be a blend of mixed fabrics, not biblically moral, but an option for you out there. <laughs> Still, we've got option. nice. We've got nice thick hiking socks. You only get one, but those things are like twenty dollars a pop for a good pair of socks, and you don't want to skimp on good hiking socks when you're out there trotting around. Yeah, I've, I've seen uh, complaints they, about the whole one sock per month thing. It's just like, yeah, but two months you get. You get the pay, so like, you know. Um, not only that, but you know how they have fingerless gloves? Mm-hmm. Have you considered toeless socks? They are it's, top and it's der- toeless socks, yeah. This, it's a new, it's a derelict chic. It's a fashion thing. Quib Gift is getting in early on that. Uh, you know how a lot of people buy the jeans and they're ripped and they're torn and they look like shit and they're really expensive and they sport them around as if to be proud of themselves? Imagine that, but for socks. And like I've I've heard they have a SpongeBob one. That's the one that everyone really wants. So you could get that. So. And the hits don't stop because you might be wondering, Rags, that seems wasteful. Much like with fingerless gloves, what happens to all the gloveless fingers out there? That is an excellent question. For every toeless sock that you have donated to you through Quib Gift, they will donate five toe, uh, sockless toes to uh, the Ugandan uh, Foot Children's Fund. So you can cover the toes of Ugandan orphans and keep at least a large part of your feet warm and snug while supporting Quib Gift and EFAP. And I think this bit's gone on long enough. What video are we covering today? That's a great question, right? Because I, I just, I feel like we nailed it. That's, we do a sponsor every week, you know, naturally. And that's just, that's just this week's one. I've even forgotten the name of it already, but it's a great service. Um, Quib Gift? How can oh, you yeah. possibly forget Quib Gift? Because too many people in chat were saying Noom and I got distracted. You know, it's just no, like, no, no, no. Noom is, Noom's a bunch of, no. We, we, no. Noom has, Noom has run its course. Mm-hmm, Noom mm-hmm. had its chance, if you, if you will. Quib gift is they're in vogue. I would say so. Um, but yeah, good reading. Good reading, man. They're gonna yeah. pay us loads for that, I think. Good reading. Um, yeah, that's right. I have it all pulled up right here. I could recite that word for word if I wanted, but um but they also give the sockless toast to old people as well, right? Like when, when they've backed up on the Ugandan thing. It's like did the rest go to old people. So old people get cold and stuff, so it's good. Well, here's the issue with sockless toes. Much like with gloveless fingers. They, they wear out pretty fast, uh, and they get lost. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a lot of Ugandan orphans who only have four or three, or God forbid two, but at that point, they don't want to look embarrassing, so they don't even put them on. Yeah. Um, so you, it's a constant cycle of restoring and replacing um, these uh, toes. Um, and, and a lot of times they're multicolored. People will just, they'll just pull them together so that they can get in groups of five. A lot of the the Ugandan orphans that are have a big heart, if they only have two, well, they'll donate it to someone who has three, so that at least someone can have a full set. They've got big hearts, those Ugandan orphans. And that's what Christmas they, is uh, all about. Halloween. Is. Yeah, absolutely. It is what Thanksgiving's all about. Um, um, Doomer politics. This is what it's like for nine welcome. hours. So strap on. <laughs> strap. <laughs> um, this year, I've gone as a wear a long wolf, I guess. Your fringy as a zamboloid, rags mm. as his comfy pumpkin, and um, I think Duma politics is kind of beating us all out with the. Uh, are you going as like a a twenty twenty one civilian? No, I'm I'm dressed as Tim Pool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just have the beanie. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't smoke. What the fuck? My I like the Not like yet. the automy. My my autumn, uh, like when it comes to Halloween and Thanksgiving, I think I'm less on the spooky side than you are. I'm more on the like pumpkin pie, uh, golden brown leaves. Uh, You're on the wholesome side. Pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm more. I, I err toward the more wholesome side. I'm big on the Thanksgiving stuff and autumn and things of that nature. The cool mornings and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Get some variety going. But yeah, Enjoy pumpkins. welcome to EFAP, Mr. Duma Politics. What 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 do you do on your channel? Does the name give it away? Uh, it probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's a, a bit of a misbranding because I'm legitimately not sure how many videos I'm going to bother making about politics. Uh, people <gasps> will maybe know me from the Vosh is Evil video. That's the only video that's up on my channel right now. The only Although video I, on your channel right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was quite successful for like a what is effectively a first video. I had another one, but I took it down because it's just really, really bad. Well, we've all been there, maybe. Um, the... The, so, so what is where does your true passion lie then, if not pol politics? Uh, here. <laughs> what? I, uh, uh, movies. Um, oh. So I, yeah, I was a. Uh, I guess I still am a screenwriter. Um, I've written four mm. screenplays and spent a bunch of time Are they thinking good? about movies. Uh, no, they're not good. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm a genuine failed screenwriter. I mean, that's yeah, that's what happens. You you get good at something by doing it poorly a lot of times and. Screenwriting is quite hard, so you're going to have to do it that poorly quite a bit. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I love movies. I spent a ridiculous amount of time trying to figure out uh, how they work, how to write them, stuff like that. And I will probably be... I, I'm like 80% sure I'm just going to end up making a bunch of videos about movies and, and media and moving away from politics because it's really not fun to discuss. Politics isn't fun. <laughs> politics isn't I, fun. I agree. Well, it's not fun. Take it from us. Uh, talking media is always fun, right, guys? Uh, it is very fun. Yeah, comparatively. <laughs> you know, one thing that uh, talking about movies reminds me of is that I was just sent a link a moment ago from Kibikins, and he has updated efap.me, the official, unofficial mega website for all things efap and efap adjacent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is now in spooky mode it has been updated for the the spoopy ween Franks, there's a, you guys should there's a paper craft of you as skeletor oh my god yeah i got a uh, i got dr doom which i'm pretty happy with where I'm, I'm i'm getting overloaded i'm getting overloaded right now i got spooky ween efap dot me every frame of phantom by the way mm -hmm. pretty good well, that was one of my, I think it was one of my suggestions. And then I see the, um, I see the EFAP Papercrafts Justice League. When we've got Christmas toy, we got a fair amount of, pay that's actually. So Batman Jeez. Pepe. Ooh. Oh yeah, of course. This patron saint of EFAP, Batwoman, she looks after us. Batwoman, she looks for better does, or worse. <laughs> does Batwoman have red hair? Yeah. Uh, well, the old one did. The new one doesn't. The, the new one has like. Does she have like red in it? Red I can't remember. She yeah. has yeah, red highlights on her frizzy black hair. Yes. Okay. It's very silly. Look, they're both very silly. And remember, we had a couple episodes. We had two and a half episodes where there was no hair on the bat suit. It was just oh, like was, handsome oof. Squidward, straight <laughs> yeah. up, smooth and black on top. It was something uh, good times. And yeah, thank you so much, Kibikins, maintaining this this glorious website. It's always fun to look down at that um, average EFAP length as of 150 is eight I, hours. I was looking at the same thing. It's like it started off reasonable. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Four, five, three, five, four, six, yeah. three, six. It's like, whoa. Three. Yeah, we got, we got yeah. one, two. We got three episodes, four episodes to well, start with a three. Because I distinctly remember, I'm pretty sure it was the Mission Impossible one, where Mola even sent a message like, yeah, thanks for sticking around for like seven hours. That, that was really long. You didn't need to do that. And it's like, now look at the Now average, it's like, like seven, seven is a little short now. Seven is considered short. And people yell at us. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm, I'm so I'm just tired. tired. Have some people were saying, oh, you look tired as a zombie. It's like, yeah, I'd be waking up super early. <laughs> Like consistently, you bastards. I'm very see, tight. Fringy, yeah. uh, Fringy decided he didn't want to live anymore. Uh, when he, uh, well, I guess that that's a reference to you guys. Will f mm. Oh, it's coming. Oh shit! I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we can't talk yeah. about that yet. No, oh. coming. We can't. Yeah, that's dude. It could be like a whole year before they even. No. Oh. No, we <laughs> dude, can get them out. I don't even. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was now totally, we it. Yeah, um, I was sitting there for a bit. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, am I supposed to know what this is? But I know now. Um, 
Well, yeah, th th I, don't, I don't even... So, we're, today, we're, we are talking about movies, so you're in luck, Mr. Mr. Politics. Or, I guess I'll call you Doom Bro. Doom, Doom bro. Doomer. Unless, is that the name? <laughs> you, would you prefer to go by that? Or do you have a name like Derek or something? <laughs> Doomer is fine, or Chris. Whatever you prefer. Very Doomer well. is fine, or Chris. Yeah, now you give me two. What am I supposed to do? I, you can choose one. You line. may refer to me as Gorthok the Barbarian, Slayer of Worlds, or Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Gorthok is, I don't know, it's cooler. Gorthok um, is definitely that kind to, of name, isn't it? I need to rebrand a Gorthok. Mm -hmm. Gorthok um, well, you know what, before... Bro. Before we get into stuff, are you, are you are you one of them hot takers? Do you have things, because you're saying you want to talk about media, what possible things do you have to say about different movies or, or, or different things that maybe are unpopular or unheard of? Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, so probably a, a bit of a difference between me and a lot of people that make uh, movie criticism YouTube videos is I've been way more focused on good movies. <laughs> but yeah, right. uh, I hate I I have a intense distaste for lots of things people like. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what, like we were talking about Django Unchained, which I am becoming more and more distasteful of. I'm probably going to make a video on that pretty soon. Oh boy, can you yeah, believe it? Got some got some pretty serious uh, pretty serious problems in that one. But I mean, I mean, you can just go down the list. If you know, if you listed off a hundred popular movies, I probably hate seventy of them. <laughs> wow! Look at this hipster. We're we're not used to this. We love most things, right, guys? Oh, I'm sure. Guys, why 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 must you turn my office into a house of lies? This is your office. This is the. <laughs> I'm in I'm in my office. All right. Yeah, uh, like I... oh, fair enough. There are lies apparating like across the walls. <laughs> that that could be the sleep deprivation, but the lies are emanating lies. in all offices now that yeah, have this yeah. episode playing. I, I was so confused and appalled watching Shang Chi. I just didn't know what I was looking at. I had to, I had to go watch you guys' episode for a bit to make sure you hated it too. <laughs> so I wouldn't just be shitting on it. Well, other people liked it. Um, I was gonna say, well, we we could we could just uh, now jump in, I suppose, because we've to be fair, we've got a bit of video to get through. But I was actually gonna say we could leave it up to maybe uh, yourself or chat or someone because because uh, we're thinking about watching two today from a particular creator but um they're different different kinds of videos i'm thinking though since you've seen that movie you're probably gonna want to jump into the one related to it more so uh which would well, totally be it, fine what's the what's the other one about well it's um so so it's nando versus movies we're covering today everyone's favorite i don't even remember when we last covered him but we meant to cover him in the actual Shang Chi episode, but we just we just took so long talking about the movie, you know, because it's so good. Um, yeah, so he's a, got a masterpiece of cinema. He's got a video saying Wen Wu is the best Marvel villain. Um, I mean that you you <laughs> you are certainly entitled to that perspective. <laughs> and his other one is uh, which actually he got quite downvoted for, called My Problem with What If. And I'm like, ooh, oh, because what if is shit? Cool. So I'm very curious what he said about it well, that earned the ire well, like, of his own know, audience. Because the the thing I've now heard of and seen is that Thanos shows up and Vision just lays him in half. <laughs> like, so <laughs> that that might fuck that with the stakes just... just a little bit. Well, considering he had five Infinity Stones, yeah, it's like, man. Mm. If only Vision was, didn't get stabbed in Infinity War, then Thanos wouldn't have won. It wouldn't have even mattered that Tony and Cap and the Avengers would split up. You have to understand, Freak, before that film happened and Thanos was with his four children, whatever they are, he was just, like, sweating like crazy in his ship, and he was like, dude, you have to stab have Vision to at least Vision. once. You yeah. gotta hit him. Get, you, gotta, you gotta surprise him. If, okay? if you don't do it, uh, it's all over. Like, you, you have to. Just like, I guess oh, I'll I'm try. just because, like, I, I problem is it's like I stopped watching What If like pretty early on, um. But I guess it's just when I see these premises, I feel like I feel like we're barely scratching the surface. Of what would be the most interesting aspect of this concept, which is like a very minor tweak to a situation to see just how different it gets, following you know standard cause and effect stuff. Well, yeah, I was gonna say. Instead I think... of like, hey, what if there are zombies? It's like, man, mm. wow, okay, damn. 
<laughs> what if then, uh yeah no what if hawkeye didn't save you know black widow or things like that that's that's one of those questions where it's like oh that could be interesting or just and and they did the one where it's like what if killmonger rescued tony stark that's what it's called that's it's like dude what if just tony stark didn't get blown up like that was like, what like if, the obvious what if killmonger saves him is such a like wait what do you mean since why, when was that an killmonger? option like what yeah, like, <laughs> when exactly if it was like we've jumped really far whereas it just makes more sense to me that it's like have it be that tony stark doesn't get the shrapnel like they just don't get ambushed um that doesn't happen uh for whatever reason logistics issues and then see how things develop from there with obadiah trying to like get him out of the company things like that um like and you know what if dr strange lost his heart instead of his hands it's like what Oh <laughs> uh, yes, the oh, no, no. the character whose name I've forgotten, who is integral to uh, the Doctor Strange movie and comes oh, up no. all the time in his storyline. Yeah. Oh, she's gonna she's gonna come back in the, what, Wong? the new one. Wong. No, no, everybody everybody remembers Wong. Everybody Dude, imagine that. It's like, what if he lost his heart? And it just shows Wong dying. <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> I'd I be believe really that. Upset if Wong died. Yeah. I like Wong. Wong's like nice. A He's a cool dude. Yeah. Um, well, so yeah, those that show is coming out this week. Oh, um, what, what is what's the what if? Do we know? I'm pretty sure that, like, I I don't I don't think we know yet, but um, I think that they basically said at this point that they aren't disconnected. That like some of them are going to be connected to other ones, culminate in something. Um, whatever that means, and they've already got a season two, like confirmed. So that's going to happen again. Um, next year, there's going to be like five Marvel shows. I think <laughs> it's more than five. I, I went to it the... Might be more than five, yeah. I think it's like ten, because I went to the MCU thing to see just how ignorant I was about the goings-on of this universe. And there's like, yeah, there's a lot of TV <laughs> shows coming out. Well, so the, the list is Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, Secret Invasion. Then you got to throw in What If. I'm pretty sure they're doing like an Echo. They're doing Ironheart. That's coming out next year, I'm pretty sure. I don't know about the Armor Wars Don Cheadle thing. Man, that is a lot of... That's a well, lot of... <laughs> you know if you missed... Um, you miss it, yeah, any two years now, you're probably going to just be completely lost. Because it's, um, it's just too much yes, has happened. That was my experience, probably. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's the idea, right? The, the more interconnected they are, the more incentive there is to watch everything. Um, and then the shitter they get, the more miserable the experience. Which is... Which is interesting because, like, kind of with comics, it's like there is a level of them being connected, but a lot of the time they're self contained in the sense that you could just read Batman comics and you'll be fine. Um, probably. <laughs> like, but that, as opposed to what they're doing here, where it's, whereas I guess, I guess this is smarter if the, if the objective is to, uh, get people to keep watching and it's working, it's, it's definitely working. Well, it seems like Shang Chi was trying to be self-contained, but uh, Shang that led to some probably problems. Self-contained, one of the of well, the it's it's kind of funny, right? Because one of the pieces of criticism we've often levied at the MCU is that there are a lot of films that just pretend the universe doesn't exist, which is not like they can't do that. That you can't you can't pretend like Iron Man doesn't exist yeah. in Winter Soldier or like Cap in Iron Man Three. Um, I guess the problem now is it's like it feels a lot more cynical in terms of like, hey, they're interacting, but it's mainly because we want you to watch the other movies and TV shows. Like, it, it, like we don't care as much. It's it's more about cameos rather than this is a universe where a bunch of people are interacting with one another, crossing paths and things like that. Well, so that, and the fact that they've yeah. So yeah, that kind of hits on a question I had for you guys because. I'm sitting here wondering, this guy is going around knocking off governments and shit. Like, did that affect the world? No. Well, evidently not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it did, but it just has the way that we, I guess it did, but not in a way that we would notice time. any like, difference. Everything was the way it was because of what he did, I guess, as titanic as it was and inexplicable that he was able to do so. Yeah, that's, I, I was just kind of curious, like, how much of my confusion was due to ignorance of the MCU and how much of it is just, I mean, I know a lot of it is character design. You know, like, character motivations aren't going to be something where 
it's ameliorated by watching these other movies. It's like if their character motivation makes no sense, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, a lot of this I, I'm assuming makes more sense if you've seen the other movies, or maybe um, it makes less sense if it interferes less. with the world building. Yeah, yeah. I would say the more that you watch, the more it just doesn't agree with itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's upsetting. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> don't worry, you'll get over it, and then you'll get into the stage of apathy, and you'll just stop caring. Oh, I'm, I'm very much there. That's uh, this, she, wa watching funny. watching this movie vindicated my avoiding these movies generally. Well, like, and so apparently this is one of the best ones is, recently. Well, I was just gonna say this is the best in Phase Four, so nice. Yeah, I was so, I was so confused. Right yeah, I, I went to IMDb, and it's like, oh, it's got an eight point oh. It's it's got to be oh, fine, well, that, right? That's it's like that's because people are stupid an 8.0 man that is i mean oh. i remember the dark knight was like number one on imdb by a lot for a long time so i guess comic book movie scores on imdb are kind of well if you a want a really skewed. depressing one it's i'm uh, i'm working on an end game video and and it i i think that movie sucks and one of the most disappointing things about it is end game is ranked higher on imdb than like unforgiven wally Django, well, <laughs> yeah. I guess you don't like Django, but it's rated higher than Django. It's rated higher than Die Hard, Aliens. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's rated. It, it's rated higher than a lot of much better films, and it's like that's very upsetting. It's yeah. really upsetting that it's ranked so high. I don't so, know what's making that. I, 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 just to be clear, I, I don't like Django in the context of Tarantino's filmography because like oh, it okay, follows right. it it follows Inglorious Bastards, which is my favorite movie of all time, and like. The, you look at you look at the writing in Inglorious Bastards, and it's like not only flawless, but there's an almost oh inexhaustible amount that you can learn from analyzing it. And then you go to Django, and there's just like a, just objective flaws, just massive problems in character motivation and and, and uh, pacing and, and structure that are very atypical of Tarantino. So, I mean, if you're if you're comparing Django to like you know. It's probably better than the best film by a lot of directors, but in the context of Tarantino, it just is not up to. It's not okay. up to grade. And uh, and you're gonna make a video for that? Is that gonna happen? I I am in the middle of producing a video oh about my that. Oh boy! Well, have fun with <laughs> copyright. It's a lot more difficult than uh, <laughs> than dare I say political videos. <laughs> really, because the political videos have been getting like that's part of the. I mean, there's a lot of reasons I don't want to make political videos, but part of it is that lots of topics just get you flagged and your video oh, just doesn't well, get monetized, like, period. The, uh, the, You're talking about certain those types of issues, but with, uh, with films, like, if you're using footage from movies, just tough to get it through. Um, like, even if it's totally transformative, it's, it's tough because of the uh, content yeah. ID thingy. Do you just, do you just get, like, a, do you just get, like, your, your ad revenue pulled, or does the video get taken oh, it's down? Like, can be anything and from both of those. Might be blocked, yeah. Um, and then you just got to try and re-edit it. Usually, it seems like the consistent thing is make sure that your clips are pretty short. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I know <laughs> a bunch of that stuff. Well, like the the uh, Vosh video got the Vosh video got um, struck for a number of reasons, and I did some pretty simple edits and got it through the first time I tried. So right. there, there's some yeah, I, like well, just adding uh, blurring seems to really mess with the content ID system. Try and go no further than five second clips just as a that'll be really great for you if you can do that uh, uh in both audio and non-audio just just because um even with when you hit six that's when youtube starts to get like mm. yeah i got really uh well, that makes it tough sometimes it, we've been yeah. doing this for many years now and that's just that's basically what i've come to learn funnily enough when i started i was like don't go beyond 10 seconds that got lowered all the way yeah. down to five. Well, fortunately, uh, I can I can probably work with that. At this point, I'm not going to be a big issue. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, you know, we, we we'll probably be able to talk a bit about um this. This will probably be the last Shang Chi related EFAB, but it's not even going to be just that today. But I'm I'm interested to know why he's better than all the other villains from the MCU, especially um some of the stronger we, ones. You know, should we give our top five? To start off, mm. we'll, we'll, let's set our bar where it needs to be for the beginning of this. What are, what is well, what is our villains. top five MCU villains uh, in no particular order necessarily? Uh, Vulture, Thanos, uh, Loki, Zemo, Zemo, and I think uh, 
<laughs> um, hmm. Ego? I like Ego. Ego, I like him, yeah. Uh, was uh, was Iron Man to... the villain of Civil War? Nah, I wouldn't say no. so. Zemo <laughs> would be the villain. Zemo, yeah. Zemo is yeah. definitely the villain. Um, oh yeah, what about Mysterio, Frankie? Oh, I, you know, I'd put Mysterio above uh, or Ego. Yeah, that'd be the five then. Oh, I'm agree with that. Anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. totally fine with that. Someone suggested Black yes. Panther. Killmonger is a terrible villain. Please no. Especially when people were saying he was right. <laughs> Did they forget the line where he said that he was going to kill that... that uh... All the children? Yeah, well, the, they threw that in specifically to be like, he's, he is evil, though, he by the way. He is bad guy, evil. guys. <laughs> like, Alright. Stop it. Um... So yeah, here we go. I guess we're gonna we're gonna check out. So we um, need to find out why Wenwu is better than all of those. Shang Chi. Wenwu is the best Marvel villain. Alrighty, exciting stuff. Here, here we, we go. go. Shang Chi. Let me get that out of the way right off it the bat. Rules. It is a what rock a solid stupid. movie with an engaging story, some fun leads, and really, really quick question because I you guys didn't address this. There's a part in the bus scene. Where Ray, where he's like Shang Chi is driving the bus, and Razor Fist it like goes to punch him in the face and just stops. You guys remember that? I why, really why did don't. That <laughs> like, don't, don't. Unfortunately, I, I, we don't have uh, super high quality access to a uh, to to this didn't release yeah, I, on streaming or anything. But yeah, I had uh, that, that's something to go back and check because I, I watched it um, <clears throat> at home. And that's almost, I, I'm like 90% sure that's what happens. He, he like gets blocked by Chi or something. And it's like the only time it happens in the movie. Also, some people like yeah, Razor Fist. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was that, was that not his name? His name. Yeah. His, his name's name. Razor Fist. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I didn't realize. I thought it was, I, I only noticed that. And like when they go to the Timeless Isle or whatever, and it's on the side of his car. And I thought it was the YouTuber for a second. <laughs> but why is he called Razor Fist? It's more like Razor Arm. Like, as opposed like to like Sword Arm. Sort yeah, of, yeah. yeah, that's true. Maybe Blade maybe it started sling. as just the fist, and then more of it got cut off in later fights, but he kept the name. Maybe. Sword Arm doesn't have the same ring to it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent pacing. And yes, I am a Marvel shill. Most of what they make. Oh, man. And I enjoy the connectivity. I know some people... Sorry, a skip for me. Did you say he likes most of what they make? Yeah. By default, he likes them, yeah. Oh, well, that's... that's fine. <laughs> I guess this was one of those tussle his hair moments. People have grown tired of it, and I get it. And I've also given up on the color grading, and they usually end with lots of CGI, but I still have fun with it. In fact... In Man, just like Shang-Chi. In this instance, I was on board hmm. with the CGI ending. I thought it was really cool. Oh, okay. and uh, I, I, I was, it was I very, very cool. upset, because it was just sludge again. Oh, it was so bad. I... I, I, I was cool. just... It wasn't even the CGI. I was just confused as to what the fuck was going on. Like, <laughs> yeah, they have like, they have like a, an exposition dump of like an entire mythology in like two minutes. And then there's this like epic, like spiritual battle of stuff. And it's it just an epic spiritual battle of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I was just so confused as to what's going yeah. on. The Why wasn't ancient, this established earlier in the movie? Ancient demon dragon versus the wonderful god dragon spirit, and you're like, I have no idea what I'm any of that means. Yeah. Like, what, who's who's the what's happening? They're just like, what, oh no, it it's the sucking dealer, his soul the out. Dealer of death or something? Death dealer. Yeah, yeah. he was pretty no, cool until he died. He's on pretty ceremony. cool. For five seconds. Yeah. Well, not the ninja. The no, I'm talking about the Cthulhu monster. Oh, that. Uh, what was it called? No idea. I, I don't know. Soul leader. Something <laughs> like that. Soul yeah. King. See, these are Metal these are problems when soul leader. when you, when you when your climax revolves around uh, mystical creatures that the audience doesn't know the name of. It's an interesting place to be. <laughs> I don't know the anything of it. Like this thing when it started sucking out the dragon soul, I was just like, oh no, that's the thing it could do. Oh, I guess that was that's bad. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if it does that, it will take over the world. Like, yeah, we don't want that to happen. That would be bad if it took over the world. Yeah, so I I was reading the Wikipedia to try and figure out something, and it says that the dragon revived Shang Chi when he falls in the water. Did you guys get that watching the movie? It looked no. like he fell into the water, had to have drowned, and then it like forced bubbles of oxygen into his face. If that counts as reviving, I guess. 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't track that at all. I thought he was dead. You probably should have been dead. The force, the yeah, dad well, punched him in. Like, yeah, that should have fucked him up. Because he doesn't have superpowers. Choreography in Shang Chi. I'm gonna say some of those names that pop up in every single video I have seen about the topic. Here we go: Bill Pope, Destin Daniel Cretton, Simu Liu, Jackie Chan, Brad Allen, R.I.P. Police Story, Drunken Master, Mangar Zhang, and others. Those are the names that come up in every YouTube video I have watched about Shang-Chi. I don't need to sing their praises. They all did an amazing job. Simu Liu, man, he put in work. Every, everything's just great, you know? Well, that's, he, he practically said that was his channel already. Um, because I do wonder if some of these channels exist just to make people feel good about having felt good about a film, you know? Uh, I guess, it's, but like, if everything is good, then kind of do Well, it's, place, it's funny you say that, because I'm looking forward to seeing his What If video, because it looks like it's a time where he was like, you know what, I'd like to be critical, and his whole audience were like, stop it. Was like, stop oh, yeah, that's, uh, just like the thing. That's exactly, that's one of the reasons I don't want to make political videos, is because, like, what most people do is just take a position and never deviate and offer no nuance yeah. and just, like, regurgitate a perspective, and that's what people want. <laughs> it's really annoying. Uh, Reaffirmation, yeah, kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, people not super interested in being challenged. And I guess this is the film equivalent of, like, if everything's great, and then I guess can maybe, well, no, I guess it's not often that people get upset that a neg like, that is mostly critical, a channel that's mostly critical is like, yeah, hey, I like this. But the other way around, oh, careful. Well, you know what? A channel that's mostly critical, like, mostly hates everything, and then they say this thing is uh, particularly well-made, that's usually really well-received for that channel. Well, which yeah, kind of makes it's, sense, it's, I guess. Anymore, right? if you, because they'll just because be like, oh. you, you, yeah, you focus on why something's good. It's like, oh boy, must be really good then, or something like I mean, it seems like both results are, are, are sort of just, as a res uh, there's like this background of just positive good, negative bad, like there always seems to be that little underlying background radiation that I hate. Should be, you know, being critical shouldn't necessarily be positive or negative in a sense. That knife looks like CGI. Probably is. Watch my but it's good in this stunts one. And my gosh, the difference between this and Iron Fist is night hey, and day. Hey, why, why are you allowed to shit on Iron Fist and say that's bad? Hey, uh, <laughs> probably like Iron Fist. He said the, di the difference is night and day. He didn't say one was better or worse. Come on, Frank. If you, if you wanted to see night and day, watch this and then go watch Kill Bill 1. That was the that's night and day. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, there's so many things this film wants to be, but it's like a really like watered-down version of the kind of combat that I was hoping I'd even see. And Well, I mean, the problem is, for me, it's like I feel like we had... The what they you know the 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 martial arts movie, but that was only in Act One, and then it just turned into Sludge again. Mm -hmm. Like oh, certainly we'll by Act Three, yeah. Man, okay. Yeah, that was so weird. There was like two pretty big action scenes in like the first I want to say forty minutes. Yeah, and then an hour well, of like nothing. Well, I that like I didn't realize that the when they met the dad, um, that that was the first act break. I, I thought we were much further into the film by that stage, but no, that was 40 minutes. We still had like an hour and a half to go. It is a, a long movie, in a sense. Yeah, uh, it's long, so. Yeah. Focus on one guy. And you know I love me some Marvel villains have ranked their plans. I've made villainous scenes about them. I have some favorites. Vulture, sure Thanos, Mysterio, Ego, All Zemo. Right. Holy fuck, All his right. list is always the wow. same as ours. <laughs> his list was great until he threw in the shitty one at the end. They always throw in Killmonger, and I never understand why. Killmonger, Loki, I know, real groundbreaking stuff. But I really think there's a case to be made that Shang-Chi's antagonist, Wen Wu, played by the incomparable Tony Leung, is not only the highlight of this movie, but maybe the best villain the MCU has produced so far. We had, um, when we did our stream on it, um, we, had, we were split on whether or not he did a good job acting wise, right? Like, Shad didn't like his performance, I think. I, well, I mean, I think Shad he did a good job at acting. I thought he did. Actor. Yeah, I think he did a good job with the performance. Um, I mean, what's he, what's he gonna do? What, he did what he could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, well, I, I found a lot of Marvel acting. That's just the MCU. I yeah, will say, I got the impression that the material wasn't that 
or I don't think the material is very good and that he made a valiant effort to uh to add to it, you know. Yeah, I, I guess I'm biased because he's uh he's broken sword and hero, which is a movie I really like. Right. Uh, positively predisposed shit. towards the dude. Um the thing I, about I thought he was good. The thing about him that really it just stood out was, was like I don't know, I thought Simu Liu was shit in the film. Uh really, really bland I, and blank. I, I guess is, that, oh, the, is that the protagonist? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was And so flat. when we had scenes you know? with him acting across from um his dad, I, I was I was starting to be whenever his dad was talking, I was like, Oh shit, it feels like I'm watching an actor again where like everything is delivered with uh, purpose and his face matters and stuff. <laughs> his face matters. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great way to put it. His actor is so actually, good. He knows his face is important when acting. Yeah, his his face moves. We talk about it with the uh, Flanagan stuff all the time. Just uh, what they say is like a third of taking in what's being delivered to you uh, when a character talks in in his stuff. And, uh, yeah. yeah. In so, Marvel, here's... it's like only what they say. Well, here's here's a good question. Do you think that the director and the writer actually told him, like uh, Simu Liu, I guess, uh, Shang Chi? Do you think that they told him what his character was thinking and feeling throughout different parts of the movie? Uh, not only I'm going to say no to that. I was I thought you were going to ask me. Do you think the director and the writer even spoke to each other? And it's like probably yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's where we're at. I can I can definitely I see that because Marvel movies are an assembly line. They just churn them out super quick. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I have so many questions about stuff like that. Like the the mother, I think her name is Yang Li. It's like, okay, I'm falling in love with this like Hitler-esque character and I won't take them into my village, but I will run off with them and have kids with them. And I have these important pendants who I'm going to entrust to my kids, but I won't even tell my husband what the pendants are about. And I'm not going to see my family anymore and I'm going to give up all these like it just when you start thinking about it it makes no yeah and, well, it, and it's amusing that the pendants was so important to find the thing where it's just like helicopter dude just good old-fashioned helicopter and, it'll and land it was you. to find it was to find the village that he just he just stumbled into it like the forest spit him out one time and then he just kind of wandered in there and found it so uh, yeah. Yep. I, yeah yeah i mean you could there's an apologist explanation of like was the waterfall there? I'm pretty sure the waterfall was there when he like fights uh, his wife, right? Because if it, if it yeah, I th that's the way in, right? The waterfall is like a portal. Yeah, if it if if the waterfall was there, then there's just no explanation. It's just everything about the entrance to this village is dumb. But well, because maybe it was especially hilarious because I thought that this happened on the other stream where I was just I kind of was under the impression that the forest was magical related to the other dimension but it's like but it's at our dimension it's distinctly not that dimension there's just a magical forest in our dimension for no reason and it eats yeah. people this is like okay <laughs> like why but okay it seems like the kind of thing where somebody just had the idea and like it got storyboarded and everyone's like okay that's cool how do we work it in like that that seemed to be sort of the situation it's a weird one got but it. uh yeah i have no idea movie, but maybe the best villain the MCU has produced so far. So I want to make my case. But first, I need to explain why it is such a miracle that the character of Wenwu is even remotely coherent. Because unlike okay. most Marvel villains, Wenwu is not a direct adaptation now, Wenwu, of a comic. Now, just to be clear, that's Shang-Chi's father? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. And the quick I... version of his storyline was that he found the rings, because he's just lucky, I guess. Took over like the whole world, but in a shadowy way, so no one could know because otherwise it wouldn't make any fucking sense at all that we've never heard of him at all. Um, and then he finds a girl and he's like, "Ah, oh, you cute, I like you." And she gives up her protecting the forest mantle, and he gives up his rings so they can have a family. Then she's killed by his old enemies, and he gets his rings back and starts killing people. And then his two kids run off, brings them back ten years later to see what they've been up to takes their pendants, uses that to get back in the forest because he's being told through ghostly voices that his wife is behind a big wall. And then he breaks in, smashes open the wall, and gets eaten by a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. his story. Pretty, pretty, pretty succinct, yeah. So we, we're, we're never given 
this is one of the things I was wondering about. We don't like we don't see the origin of the rings or him getting the rings, right? He just no, has them. So it's it's the isn't that really important? Amusing. It's very amusing to think about because yeah, the film is called The Legend of the Ten Rings, and the post credit stinger is ah, so you will learn about the rings next time, not this. Time. No, it's not important. <laughs> Watch the next movie. Yeah, and, uh, wow. I saw an nice article that was like, Marvel is not done yeah. with Wen Wu, and it's just like, oh, we're getting a prequel fucking movie where he finds the rings. Maybe, and, uh, yeah. Maybe flashbacks in the next Shang Chi character. Instead, a fusion of two very complicated characters: one with a messy comics history, and one with an equally messy movie history. So I guess this segment is a mini Wen Wu isn't Wen Wu. Fantastic. Let's start with the simple one. Comics. In the comics, Shang Chi's father is a man named Zhang Zhu. Kind of. He's the leader of an ancient organization. However, it is not called the Ten Rings. It's actually called the Five Weapons Society. So a little different. Okay. okay, that that's so much better. It should not be named the Ten Rings Society. It's really confusing. <laughs> well, we got two. The, they probably should have just uh, dropped all of it from Iron Man Three. The um, Ten Rings and the Mandarin and stuff, and just try to make it a new. I don't know that Five Weapon Society sounds that much better though. Well, just it, anything would be better because it's I'll it's like just it confusing. It's like, well, there's the Ten Rings, and then there's the Ten Ring Society, and then and then you have to try and track. Okay, what is the Ten Ring Society? And it's like, well, it's this secret society of people who overthrew governments, but now there's just like seven dudes hanging out in a fort in China or something. And what are they doing? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, they're, just, it, they're on little it's computers very... making sure that the world does what they want, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're, just, they're just chilling. Or, uh, yeah, these, these are all What's good the problem when you though? invent a new shadowy government that's controlling everything? You're like, what are they doing exactly? And you're like, well, they can't be doing anything because they haven't had any influence on any of the events prior. You're like, right. Okay. So they just sort of sit there. Different, but simple enough, right? Well, you see, back in the olden days of the 1970s, Marvel had the rights to an extremely popular character named Fu Manchu. And when I say extremely popular, I mean so popular that you've probably never read an old Shang-Chi comic, but you're kind of familiar with the name Fu Manchu. That's because this character was also used extensively in radio plays and books and also his famous mustache beard combo that bears his name. When Nick Cage dresses like this in the Grindhouse trailer, he's rocking a Fu Manchu. But the character was also super racist, so Marvel did the right thing and renamed the character Zhang Zhu. Just kidding. From what? The rights lapsed. In <laughs> Wait, was was what, he saying that was... Fu Manchu the name is racist? Or? Fu Man is the band racist? Is the 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 mustache is that racist i'm not sure I'm assuming what, it's what, like a, what, a characterization thing well because he it's, it made him sound like the renaming him was the part? the unracifying of him or the racistness fying i don't know that was a little bit confusing Are chinese names racist i i i'm curious what he's pointing to is the racist part dude it sounded like you said confurious that was that's interesting it's like we're mad confused. and confused well, you would assume that he's like an amalgamation of racist stereotypes. I mean, that's at least what I would apparently, assume. Apparently, the name doesn't make sense. Like, if it's meant to be a Chinese name, it doesn't make sense. Well, hmm. no one fucking knows that. He needs to explain this. Well, uh, yeah, that's the problem is, like, I have no idea about, like, I hear Zhang Zhu, and I'm like, oh, that's like a Chinese name, I guess? He's like, no, I, it's super I, racist. Yeah, I, I, like, I don't know. I, he, needs to, he needs to explain it, because, yeah, I have no idea about that. any of this. Someone said he literally started a joke and you cut him off? Well, th that's really unclear. <laughs> that's that's it's all. It's unclear, because, yeah, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Let's see if you're right. Brian Dow's trailer, he's rocking a Fu Manchu. But the character was also super racist, so Marvel did the right thing and renamed the character Zhang Zhu. Just kidding. The rights lapsed in Fu Manchu, so they needed to come up with a new name. I guarantee that if Marvel never lost the rights, Fu Manchu would still be around today. That doesn't so it's not now, now I'm even now I'm literally Fu even Man. more confused. <laughs> like, it's... The name Fu Manchu, the fact that he's named Fu Manchu is the racist part. Wait, was that supposed to be a joke? I'm this is what I mean, I'm even more confused now. So w was so it his point was the name was racist, but they did the right thing and changed it. No, just kidding, the rights lapsed and they wouldn't have changed. It. So the point is still that the name is racist. 
right? That's literally so, what we were talking about. Like, what? Yeah, so this is why it's sometimes... That wasn't a joke. Like, you didn't let them finish. It's like, well, it doesn't... Sometimes, like, we've already got a problem. <laughs> like, well, yeah, that's, the context that's, doesn't help. That's possibly a prime so, example of uh, the person in chat being wrong that time. So the... <laughs> The Sorry, hair, buddy. the 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 facial, uh, the 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 face, the hair, the the what's it called? Uh, Mustache or no? Like when you have facial hair, I guess is why the the facial hair style Fu Manchu is named after the character Fu Manchu, who was from a a nineteen. It's it's like a, it's it's from a the mystery of Doctor Fu Manchu, by Sax Romer, hmm. in the first half of the twentieth century, and he had that hairstyle, and so I guess that's where the, um, it comes from. But well, okay. he said it was based on like a pulp from the early twentieth century, and it's like well, yeah, 1915. you know. Maybe there is something there, but like I have no idea. I don't know anything about Fu Manchu. So like, I just assumed it was a like a, a Chinese uh, thing. Like I I don't know. I and well, I still don't I even mean, know if this is made in America though, right? Like that's or, or English author. Okay. Uh, yeah, sucks. Right then. Um. Um. Okay. Right. So yeah. least of my concerns in the universe, I think. I was just. I just got lost I, very I'm quickly. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. I'm confused, yeah. But anyway, the comics is actually Zhang Zhu. A little confusing, but audiences well, will probably... I was going to say, he I, made it like, more confusing yeah. than it was. Because <laughs> all I needed was Wen Wu as his dad in the film. It's like, yeah, I'm all right, cool. <laughs> but now you're like, but, well, no, you're because Zhang but Zhu. Wen Wu is not Wen Wu. To, um, to <laughs> vaguely bolster yeah. kind of Rice the opening with, like, I don't fucking care about the comics... The thing is, the MCU's, like, it, however much sense the comics make has never been what determines how much sense the MCU makes. They are, they are two different they things. They are different. They're different. The yeah. MCU um, makes changes giving, to the, yeah. Yeah, if you're giving me all this backstory in the comic about things and da-da-da, I'm just like, I'm, I've already kind of zoned out because I just don't care. I, what's well, in the movie? I assume what he's trying to say is like, oh, look how complicated and strange it is in the comics, so no wonder, like, it's a miracle that when we ended up the way that he was, and I'm just sitting here like, well, it, they might have just ignored the source entirely. Like, we, we, they've done that before. ...be able to know anything about Shang-Chi comics, but that's only half of it. In this movie, Shang-Chi's father is also the Mandarin. A character that the MCU has been hinting at from the very beginning. Not hinting with... at. They, they, no. they, they. It was. It was Aldrich Killian. <laughs> they, it's like, fucked. The uh, let's be honest. Yeah. It's completely fucked. Like I have what is like the Ten Rings. You're like, oh, and then. Oh boy. You're like the Ten Rings are run by the Mandarin. Oh, and it's like the Mandarin isn't who the Mandarin is. Actually, it's just that guy with the no, weird. It's yeah. The old, yeah, the, the orange man. <laughs> I made stuff up to try and connect it back to the origins of the MCU. Well, By the way, I, think it was just, I like yeah. that they've tried to address Shane Black's fucking of Iron Man 3, like, because he's like, wouldn't it be funny if I subverted it and the Mandarin was just this idiot and then it turns out there's just some other guy who's using it. All the, and, like, I think if they had full control of, because I don't think, like, Iron Man 3 was probably, he was probably given just free reign because again, as far as I know, doing the surgery on, on Iron Man and blowing up his suits was not, like, that wasn't anyone's plan. That was just something that Shane Black was like, let's do that as his arc. Also, Age of Ultron is next, the one where Iron Man has the fucking Iron Legion, <laughs> where he's already blown up his suits. It's like, well, this is awkward. Yeah, something I, I generally... Confused. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just this. Something I generally find annoying is when people are different just for the sake of being different. Like, I think that's basically always wrong. Like, there's a lot of value to be had in subverting expectations, but you don't, you don't just do it for the sake of it. It's not like, oh, well, there's an established lore. I'm just going to do something different. You know, like, wh why? <laughs> I, I don't get it. It's the and, kind of subversion I fucking despise. Ryan Johnson does yeah, the same stuff. But it's, it, you, you see it a lot in, like, um, I guess what you could call Sundance reject movies. It's like, Oh well, films are generally in linear chronology, so I'm going to use nonlinear chronology, and it's like <laughs> now you just made a shittier movie. Now it's just confusing and more complicated and harder to track, and you didn't add anything to I it. Bet, yeah, well, it's like I bet you guys like it when things are easy to follow. Well, I'm going to subvert that. You're like, 
Okay. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> I, oh, I, I, that's another thing in, in art films. It's like, oh, well, you know, Hollywood movies are trying to be entertaining. Well, I'm going to make a movie that's not entertaining. It's like, okay. Um, uh, good luck with that. But yeah, well, the fledgling MCU was clearly dropping hints and had some ideas for future stuff, but it just it wasn't as set as it is now. And the irony is that it's much worse now, even though it is the setting pathways. Um, and so this the Ten think... Rings were just this this mess that different writers were trying to figure out, but nobody really did. Wait, you think it's worse now than it was in Phase One? Yeah, like way worse. Oh, easily, really? Because yeah. yeah. I, I, what do you mean, real easily? Not even well, close. Okay, just just to give you some background, the only Phase Three movies I saw were Civil War and Infinity War. I didn't watch any of the right, others. Right, so you still so, you saw a good, the, some good content. Because yeah, Civil War is really good, and Infinity War is got a lot of good Infinity stuff in War, it. Yeah, Infinity War is a film that I think has a lot of merit despite its problems. Yeah, yeah I, I, I enjoyed Infinity War. Fine. I, I recently yeah. learned that Civil War was good. <laughs> I guess. I guess to give you almost like the. Right, that was the, the conversation the other day. I guess the broad <laughs> overview would be like, um, I think phase one is is the most coherent overall um, time in the MCU, just because it was a lot simpler. Was gonna, it's a, it makes sense that it would be, because there's so much less well, to contradict. I think, yeah, I think they the, start... The easy, Go well, they, they start losing their, the plot, I, I think, a little bit, because I feel like yeah. the, the breakdown... They have lost phase, the plot. They've definitely lost the plot. I guess the the too long didn't read for the MCU was like phase one is pretty coherent. Um, the the there but there are only a couple of the well no actually you no know three of those films I would consider to just be downright good. Um, yeah, phase one is pretty coherent. Phase two is like the mundane phase. It's like oh, you, in fact, phase two is pretty not good at all. Yeah, phase, uh, phase two Guardians. seems to me like they were like let's do it again phase let's one was phase pretty one successful yeah. and then james gunn was like also my thing and they're like yeah yeah, yeah that's fine you yeah. do that and of course the problem there is like well you can't do phase one again you've you the avengers exist they need to interact and then phase three is like oh let's do that and then they started off really great um and they were doing really well and then it just fell apart at the end um and yeah phase four is a disaster in phase one i was actually defending marvel movies because you would see a lot of blockbusters that just didn't have, I guess you could call them um, sensible aesthetic production standards. Like movies would just be incoherent, have really bad action editing, or just, just mm -hmm. like even, you know, Shang-Chi is, a, I, I think, a pretty bad movie, but I could track the movie, right? A lot of the blockbusters before Marvel, you just couldn't even track them. You couldn't tell what the fuck was going on. And I was like, oh, well, here comes Marvel and they're going to have like, you know, consistent production standards. Well, that seems nice. That's that's better than these other things. Right. But yeah, phase you two... consistent, do you mean like um, a, cons a consistent, I guess, film vocabulary or. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a good way to put it. Like you could call it a style right. like okay. a, a, a style is sort of like a set of consistent decisions that you make based on having learned lessons or whatever, right? To make it so that a movie is easier to produce. Uh, and you can see that in most, uh, you know, most directors will make consistent choices. And there's reasons behind those choices and all of that. But yeah, the, 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 I guess you could say the cinematic language was at least competent. So I was like, okay, well, they're competent. But then phase two just really started to bore me. It's like, okay, you're just doing the same thing over and over. Like, you know, if you turn on a movie and you can reasonably accurately guess what's gonna happen 20 minutes in advance for the entire movie it's just like uh whatever yeah well I, I, yeah I just... they cracked the formula by then um and they were on top of the world kind of and so then phase three is like they start uh taking more what i think is more risks like the controlled risks for lack of a better word like like i guess they they were worried about ant-man they were worried about um probably about doctor strange just like can we launch these characters compared mm. to ones that are much more known and um, and then Civil War is like this, despite popular belief, it changes up as, uh, this, the whole the world building entirely. Um, it's just oh, unfortunate yeah. no one took it forward. Someone said, yeah, by the way, that sort of Phase Two was Winter forward. Soldier in it. That's like the best MCU movie. It's like no, it isn't. Welcome to Eve. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, if you're new here, Winter Soldier is one of the worst. Unfortunately, it suffers from yeah. catastrophic yeah. plot, thematic, and character issues and world building. Um, and yeah, it just it fails it's, on all cylinders, and it does serious damage to Captain America. 
And yeah, pretty much. The only I refuse to agree. Is Earth. Black Widow, but they ruin her later. Yeah, I refuse to agree that it like meaningfully um, approaches the concept of security versus freedom at all in that movie. Well, no, no, I, absolutely, it doesn't. Yeah, they never and, explore it. But yeah, so just if if you're confused as to why, go watch the debate where we establish that Far From Home is better. It's a soldier. <laughs> Um, um, if you actually, um, let me, I need to use the loo real quick. I will be right back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, phase oh, four Iron then. Man had a great opening. Sorry? Iron Man. Iron Man had a great opening. Like, that opening scene. Such a great hook. I Iron Man 1? Yeah, because it's on screen right now. It's like, yeah, I, Iron Man 1 was quite good. It appealed to people who had no clue about comics or even where this may go. It was just like, imagine a, an inventor, an engineer, who's captured by like yeah. terrorists and told to build one of his newest bombs because they want like him to do that, obviously. And instead he builds a suit that he breaks out of the place with. It's just like, that sounds badass as fuck. Yeah, it was oh, also, yeah. if I recall correctly, actually somewhat funny. Like, it, oh, you know, it was, funny. Yeah. In, a, in a way that certainly Shang-Chi isn't. <laughs> Uh, I didn't laugh at all, I think, when I was watching Shang-Chi. I don't think I've laughed at all watching the, uh, Phase 4, actually. I think a what? couple of times at the beginning of WandaVision, I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. Um, man, that's actually kind of surreal to think about how much content has been consumed and no laughter or joy. Well, yeah, I man. mean, comedy often comes from, like, subversion, and the, the movies yeah. just don't want to be subversive at all, so... Well, they... Yeah, they are. Like, like it's like okay. Here's here's a great example of what you were talking about earlier. Like, um, Tony Stark is not an entirely likable character. He's kind of an asshole. You know, mm -hmm. he's definitely better than you in basically every conceivable way. Like the a problem you often get with movie protagonists is that, like for a blockbuster, is that they just don't really have a personality. And the reason for that is because they don't want to be off putting by creating something that you can't relate to. Well, well Tony Stark yeah. is certainly that. Yeah, like that's the standard meme, right? With like young adult like fantasy novels for like teenage girls is that usually the uh the, the main character is blank slate so it's really easy to project your personality onto them yeah exactly which i i'm thoroughly unconvinced that it's good either artistically or as a marketing strategy personally but i like, think that it probably is a very successful marketing strategy but i don't know that that means much to me as a as like any point of praise or you know what i mean like yeah, it yeah, probably no, makes sense in the same way that's like, well, Master Chief. I guess it's it depends how purposeful it is, right? Like in Halo, Master Chief was deliberately made a blank slate because they wanted you to project onto him, but that's a bit different because it's a video game. Yeah, you I, are playing as him. Yeah, that, that might be a long conversation, but I think video games are yeah, a probably. lot different. <laughs> a lot oh, different. For sure, sure, yeah. But yeah, like Tony Stark's character was at least in the in the context of blockbuster films very subversive, and that's I think one of the reasons he was able to be so funny. And uh, I, yeah, you just yeah, don't get I, that anymore. Well, funnily enough, um, I feel that way about Doctor Strange. Like I liked watching him in. I don't I don't think Doctor Strange is a good film, but I do like Doctor Strange. Um, and he's an asshole too. It's like, hey, he's like a a character. You know, he he is a distinct personality. And he is on the track to like become a hero. Um, I feel like the resistance towards ever having characters who are like dicks is a uh, can can yield not so great results. From I guess it's, standpoint. it's kind of a risk because I think like if you just make them yeah. a blank slate, you know what you're going to get. But if you have a distinct character like I mean like Doctor House or Tony Stark or Doctor Strange or whatever, like it, the the ceiling is so much higher in terms of. What you can accomplish than just having you know joe everyman or whatever the fuck yeah i i tend to prefer when they're distinct even if uh oh someone in chat said halo isn't a good storyline stop it <laughs> <laughs> don't say such things doesn't have great <laughs> characters but that has a i really like i'm gonna say that. you could disagree with Wind soldier being best but to say it's awful is laughable it's like it ain't laughable to us watch the debate i don't know maybe, maybe they wouldn't be convinced by that but uh i just it, it is okay. funny to speak so just we are in perpetually a world that is celebratory of winter soldier and it's like <sighs> so what, why, why do you think people like winter soldier so much if you find uh, it so repellent the editing, pacing is probably um, like 
yeah. almost perfect. The action scenes are, like, really engaging. It's a really cool movie to have your main guy be, like, completely underdogged in terms of he's being hunted down by, yeah. like, two governments at once. Um, and he and wins, I think obviously. the, uh, the scene with, you know, him and Bucky, it's like, that's an emotional high point that is, it's easy to see why everybody likes that part. Um, but how we got there is pretty insane. Um, which is usually like the issue with you know a film is how how did we get to our emotional payoff matters a lot. Yeah, and there's like yeah. no scene that doesn't have insane stupid shit in it. And the problem is like we sit here as you call it conduits for like ah we've we've gotten all these standards about like uh, inconsistencies and it's like Winter Soldier fucking has a bazillion of them. What do we do with this? And it's just like eh, but it's fun though. Well, yeah, I've, there's like fifteen or twenty things wrong with um. Like the the Fury assassination scene, like uh, there is so much that doesn't work in the scene, and it's the whole reason why the plot happened. And there are already and honestly, you can say that for like every scene. Well, yeah, because uh, the scene when he gets like fake killed and everything involving that's like, dude, there's like probably twenty problems here <laughs> that need to be talked about. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, pro I probably have a I probably have a slightly higher tolerance for things not making sense than you guys, but I, here's here's kind of an interesting question. Because I feel if I go like go to a theater and sit down and the movie starts, I feel like I have a very good impression of how good the movie is after like legitimately thirty seconds. Like how you you can sort of tell the level of craft that's on display. Um, do you guys feel the same and way? That, I think not, sometimes you can tell not quickly, sure. um, but it's it's hard to say, isn't it? Right? Like it depends on what you need to do at the beginning of a film. Like how long does it take to get started? Um, you know. I've gone to a point sometimes where I'm watching it and I'm like, it really depends on how they end this. Will determine like mm -hmm. how well, how Midnight it... Mass kind of was like uh... a clear example of that, <laughs> isn't it? Well, so I, I guess here here's the way that I would put it: is I've seen movies that were otherwise acceptable or good ruined by bad endings, but I've never seen a bad or unacceptable movie saved by the ending. I don't think that's ever happened. Can, can you think of examples of that? Uh. I mean, I've seen a lot of terrible movies, and it and I felt saved when it ended. <laughs> Noise. That's that's another thing altogether. Yeah, I no. Don't know. It, um, having something that's yeah, really bad, then an ending that makes me go, "Well, at least at least the ending was good." It's like that doesn't really happen that often. Well, yeah, the yeah. ending would have to totally recontextualize everything that happened before and make it look good. Oh. I think, would be the I can think of something, but that's spoilers. <laughs> like, oh, uh -oh. well, the, this whatever well, free, you'll know what I'm talking about. The, th think of the description: uh, something that gets recontextualized entirely by the ending. Uh, yeah, and it literally yeah, makes it go yeah, from poorly yeah, written yeah. to well written. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> that could be an but interesting supervillain, the recontextualizer. <laughs> Wouldn't that still be a failure of writing if it was perceived to be bad and then saved? Like, well, the the, no. the context, it's there's a reason why it's it's bad. And I would go as far as saying there are clues to give that away to you, but it's only the end yeah. that it's explicit. I, I think that's the big oh, thing okay. is that it makes sense in universe why it's bad, um, which means that it, we've we've got something a bit different here. The, I'd be interested to talk about that, but obviously I have no no idea what, what the actual example yeah, is. Yeah, well, unfortunately, can't, can't be giving that away. It's yeah, if you if you, if you remember, just ask me about it after stream, and I can tell you all about it. Don't worry. Sure. Um, but yes, yeah, so we, we were talking about the ten rings. Let us continue. Seemingly direction, <laughs> as you probably know, in the comics. The Mandarin is Tony Stark's arc. We don't joke. know that. I think we need to we need to drop this idea that people just know the comics. Well, it's weird that he explains gotta, so much about them, but then simultaneously will say like, "You know this." It'd be like, "Oh, okay." He's like, as yeah, um, this, as you probably know, Iron Man's arch nemesis. Like, no, the Mandarin well, don't is know Iron Man's arch nemesis, though. I will say, yeah, the sure. Well, so right, would you say that there is no time that he should assume anyone knows anything about the comics? Should what if, what if somebody yeah because I guess the easy example would be obviously Joker is Batman's arch nemesis. Would you have the same issue of like what do you mean no obviously not everybody has read the comics? Well, there's, I mean, there's um, kind of it's it's to a degree when like the idea that as you probably know Iron Man's arch nemesis is Wing um, a lot Zoo of people or... know that though. I was gonna the say the, yeah, uh, that is that is. I've known that, and it, as, it doesn't come up in like a lot of stuff. And I know, it, I guess, just because it's 
That's it does, I would yeah, actually argue do. it's probably relatively common knowledge, even though it doesn't even sound that intuitive, right? The Mandarin well, is I Iron Man's enemy. In the same way that it's relatively common knowledge that the Red Skull is like yeah, uh, Captain America's main enemy. Well, I, I don't think you would ever need to say it, because if you say, as you already know, and they actually do, right, then you just yeah. shouldn't be mentioning that would, it. That would be <laughs> and, if and if they don't know, yeah, yeah if they don't of, know, well, then just kind of explain the thing. it. Well, that, that, that's kind of the thing I brought up is the, the whole, as you probably know, is like more likely than not to know this. Uh, um, I don't know. No. If you're watching a movie called shang Chi's When Wu is the Best Marvel Villain, it might actually be that you're more likely to know that than not. Like if, if, I, if, I was, if I was talking to, I don't know, someone walked out of, I don't know, some like maybe romantic comedy and then I just jumped in front of them and said, hey, as you know, the Mandarin is like, Iron Man's arch villain. They'd, They'd probably the be a little bit yeah. confused. They might call the police, but uh, not and after he talks, I explain to them why when we was the best Marvel villain. He talks a lot about uh, comic book side of things. I, th I guess on his channel, so it's safe to assume his fan base would have the maybe. Because I was going to say, like, when you're talking to um, people who've read the comics vaguely, then you can guarantee they'll know that. Uh, you can't guarantee they'll know specific details. I guess so. You know, he's probably just balancing between those two audiences, like a brand new person and a person who knows this and finds it annoying that he would even say it as, like, news. Like, um, it's, it's tough to know exactly what the answer is on that one, I guess. As you probably know, in the comics, the Mandarin is Tony Stark's arch enemy, his Joker, or Lex Luthor. Part of this has to do with Tony Stark's early connection to East Asia via Vietnam, since his 60s origin had Tony getting captured in the Vietnam War. Like, every few decades, Tony Stark's origin is updated to be part of whatever the current global conflict is that the U.S. It's kind of nuts that, um, that that's happened with, it just reminded me of Homer, his, um, childhood uh, has to keep changing now because... Now it's the 90s. Now it's the 90s. Which it's feels like, so oh, weird because I grew up in I'm essentially the, the 90s and I'm like, yeah. Homer was an adult when I was growing up, what do you mean? <laughs> so it's happening. <laughs> the... Yeah. Yeah, just you have to keep updating everything to make it more. Yeah, I don't know. It feels weird, and I don't know what the solution for that is. I guess it just. Um, I don't know. Unless you just pr well, yeah. Because the problem is you, either you have to keep it in the nineties or keep up with modern. Kind of like the South Park thing, where it's like they've been ten years old for like twenty five years at this point. I mean, because someone could argue it's like, isn't it worth doing? Because it's kind of funny, and it's like I guess it would just be about execution at that point if someone can bring that up. Like, Homer, I thought you grew up in the 70s, and he's like, I don't I guess, know. I don't know, yeah, and maybe it is just the fact that I'm more endeared to the old stuff, obviously. It's like, nah, he grew up in the 70s, sorry. Yeah, I know, yeah. The, our, our sort of perception of Homer as a character relies some of those things to be in stone. And I imagine there's a lot of people who feel that way about Tony Stark, be like, especially if maybe, comic yeah. fans would be like, this was not well, his origin. But I haven't even heard I mean, that, to be honest with you. The and, and I guess, because you can get away with it more so with someone like Wolverine, because of the fact that he's prolonged aging, you can keep his origin mostly yeah, intact yeah. without having to keep updating it. True. Decades, Tony Stark's origin is updated to be part of whatever the current global conflict is that the U.S. either started or just made worse, most recently Afghanistan. So, Tony faced off again. Okay, thanks for that. <laughs> it's, it's simple. I, I don't know, I don't know, do the South Koreans, are they really upset that the United States intervened in Korea? I think they're pissed off about that. Let's, Doesn't let's that feel, though, it's like just an arbitrary injection? Fuck the U.S. Well, what? Well, why didn't you just say they just update it to, like, a war that was happening around that time? Yeah, that's, that is the only relevant part of that, but you you had to throw in, like, the very specific opinion that politically, you're like, okie dokie, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, US bad, you nailed it, good job. There's no nuance to any of this, the reasons for any of those conflicts. And that's the thing, if someone was like, well, it's, it would be your choice to, I don't know, elaborate and stuff, it's just like, yeah, but you, know, it's not the thing. You, you didn't have to put it in, but you did. And th th <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he said it so he's a good person now. Yes. And plus, do we want to go down the road of, oh uh, yeah, uh, Afghanistan was better with the I, Taliban and all stuff? Is like, let's calm down, all right. Especially now. 
It's I just, just wanted to talk about this movie about the rings, man. Well, so so this, we is, this is kind of my point. Like, yet, really. oh, this movie with dragons that's based on this nonsense with rings and magic and and Iron Man flying around. It's like also the Afghanistan war was a mistake. You're like, what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Why did you? <laughs> We're talking about other things, but okay. Afghanistan. So Tony faced off against many East Asian. The Mandarin, a Chinese warlord with ten magic alien rings, each of which grant superpower. I didn't even know about this. So they were they I were actual rings. Contains the miniature heart of a star, and I'm sorry, what? And scorches the air before it. You know, accelerates that time around the wearer. Appears like, as super speed to the what? Fuck me! So he's OP as shit. Yeah, oh my god. Creates world upon world of illusory fable, as impossible to escape as a tangle of dreams, but Dude, this is, is like a tangle of dreams. This is better than the Infinity Fuck Stones. Me. Decelerates time around the wearer, appears a super speed Dude, to the watcher. Holy the fuck. Infinity Stones. Like, yeah, these holy are, crap. There's ten of these, too. <laughs> there's ten, it's opposed to six. Yeah. And how hard would it be to get all ten of these off of his fingers? Do you like how like, you got incandescence, spectral, uh, light digger, then the liar? Like, <laughs> all right, oh, okay. I'm gonna go with, and then spin. Well, spin is, yeah, spin is distracting too. They, yeah. they sound like uh, cards and binding Zero. Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> Opens a beam of nothingness <laughs> from the, the I gotta see what Opens a beam of nothingness. <laughs> Nice oh no. I gotta re here, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. Alien I wanna read okay, so which granted it's where a demonic different oh, right. demonic superpower. Pretty standard loyalty. Oh, there we go. Okay. Night Opens a beam of nothingness from the icy heart of outer space. What? Creates a <laughs> deafening boom as the vacuum is filled. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Winds up and warps the air itself, can appear ghostly, can appear that not at all. Air. G. What does that Bad. mean? Winds up and warps air itself can appear not at all. That's, it, means it means he can be invisible. He can be invisible, yeah. So he can be invisible, he can summon black holes, he can fabricate <laughs> he illusions. Has a star in his How brain. was Tony he supposed to defeat him? <laughs> There's no possible way that he could defeat him if he's got all these powers. Wait, Is the miniature heart of a undone? star? Yeah. That's... Oof. That's, that's gonna blow up Earth, but, but, like, when you bring it into Earth. It's almost each explode. of these rings would defeat Tony easily, like... Yeah. You know the whole, like, creates a world upon world of illusory fable, <laughs> as impossible to impossible escape as a tangle of dreams? Yeah. So I'm sorry, so uh, how are you escaping that? <laughs> so how do you escape, yeah. We have we have all of them here in this one. We Shatters got... and reimagines relationships on a subatomic level. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I guess that explains how he got married to that chick. Relationships? And what does that even that mean? Their, that explains <laughs> their divorce. Uh. Yeah. Well, they don't get Dude. divorced. I mean, I guess they get the ultimate divorce. Look at that one. It creates various forces that undergo a body... Sorry, that cause a body to undergo change. you like, like, killing them? Is, I'm assuming... Specific? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, can I, can I separate them into, like, 17 different pieces and they die, or...? Creates Demonic malleable darkness. Okay, well, here... Well, here could be so the demonic ring Malleable actually could explain darkness. the plot hole of the wife's motivation. The irresistible urge compels people into the unknown, creates loyalty, and creates obsession. So that could explain that. <laughs> yeah, why would you need an army? I mean, these things create more problems than they solve. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that. They, that the, the, actually, the demonic ring explains so many plot holes because there's this crazy part of the movie. Where like both of the kids have run away from the dad, and then the dad shows up, and the kids are like, "Oh yeah, we'll just go with you now." Well, until I mean, they don't. Assume that the, it's safe to assume that the rings here are not the rings in the film. Like, they're, oh yeah, of course, they, they, they just do not have these capabilities at all. Well, yeah, and I don't know. I don't even know what this is taken from, honestly. So, well, maybe it's different in other pieces of media. Who knows? Like yeah. other comics. Probably. But I mean, this is insane. Like, <laughs> look at this. It creates malleable darkness a dark light? <laughs> what, what does like, that what mean? Is that? What does that mean? <laughs> like what is malleable dark darkness? <laughs> malleable dark? It malleable the absence of it's light? It's malleable, yeah. Yeah, you can sort know. of wield it as a sword. I mean, you could shape so he, darkness he a, wait, in a wait, matter wait, of wait, speaking. Wait, he has a dark saber? 
Oh, he has to be. I, he badass. definitely has. He is. He's, Wait, this is, is this guy Gideon. is mega edge. Like, <laughs> yes. I didn't know Moff Gideon was the Mandarin. I always thought it was obvious, Ringy, but you know, yeah. Moff yeah, Gideon. Maybe I wasn't knew. paying enough attention. Okay, so he. Okay, so he's Thanos. I mean, yeah, basically, Thanos would have trouble defeating this guy. Thanos, yeah. yeah. The Mandarin had a pretty consistent look with the occasional extreme redesign, like how they turned him into a green monster man oh in the 90s God. cartoon where Modoc was a little baby. So Iron Man 1 comes out, and hey, that's the Ten Rings! It's like the Mandarin! And that villain, he's got a ring! I wonder if okay. he's the Mandarin, or he's working for the Mandarin? Could be. And then Iron Man 2, apparently, the Ten Rings gave Vanko his ticket to Monaco. They have their hands in a lot of different pots. And they're meddling in Tony Stark's affairs again. This has to be leading to something. So then we get a comment. And then Shane like, Black okay. ruined it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will <laughs> perpetually be salty that Ben Kingsley didn't get to play an actual Mandarin. Well, no, because now he is condemned to Trevor Slattery. And like yeah, we've had two full movies with him being just, he's awkwardly there. Like, hello. Yeah. Uh, that's, like, that's a very dude, fun question. Oh. Is, is that the guy in the prison cave at the end? Yes. Yeah, Why is he there? I like you say at the end. <laughs> like, oh, that, that's right. It's not at the end. It just kind of it's yeah. halfway. Yeah, it takes ages. Well, I, just, I was so confused about who that was and why he was around. Yeah, so that's that's Trevor Slattery. He was fake Mandarin in Iron Man three. Like, and the trailers had him be this really cool, intimidating uh, villain who was going to come up against Iron Man and yeah, presumably yeah. use magic against a hero who was highly tech. Based. It's ruthless, like, dude, cunning, be awesome. and like yeah. didn't he had like a very he came across as having one a singular purpose and he was going to achieve it, uh, and it was going to show Iron Man for like a fraud or something. You know, there, there was it's is it it's weird because Shane Black would have made that part too, and it's just like do that, please. <laughs> like, yeah. Can you can you do more of that? That would be nice. But so okay, so but what what is the character's function in Shang Chi the film? Um, he doesn't do anything. To Iron Man little 3, plot device. I think. Yeah. He's there. Dude, why does he come? Trevor? I'm just so confused. I guess yeah. he's there. He's there to talk to the like uh, magical creature to get them through the forest. Yeah, I that's guess. something he can do. <laughs> <laughs> Out of context, that's so hilarious. He's like, he's there to talk to the, the headless creature to get them through the magical forest. <laughs> it, it, it's called like a wound wound or something. Apparently, it's like actually that's yeah. a legitimate From like uh, thing in Chinese folklore. Yeah. yeah. It's it's um, legitimate. Yeah. Yeah, that was that that whole. I was so confused. Even rewatching it, I was like, he was giving his whole spiel, and I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Can you have a I don't, I don't know who you are. Thing. Sorry, what? Can you have an illegitimate made up thing? Maybe. Well, I mean, it would be the idea of it's not. It's it's like a thing that was created. Uh, I guess the you. idea would be like if you said that it was part of the mythology, but it wasn't. It's like, oh, so that is something you've oh, added in now. In that case, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's what that would be the distinction. Maybe. Okay, so I, a, a potential rewrite of Shang-Chi that I thought as I was watching it that just makes so much more sense to me is that oh. the kids don't defect until they just stay with the father and the father goes to the place and they defect once they get to the Timeless Isle or whatever. Wouldn't that just solve the entire messy part of the movie that's just yeah. doesn't right. make sense? Yes, you wouldn't have to do the Travis Slattery part. thing. You wouldn't have to do any of that stuff. Oh my god! He, he would because like because it's right after they do the magical water, whatever the fuck maze, uh, whatever that was, and then he's like, "Oh, now I know how to get to the place that I already got to without instructions." Okay, let's go. And then the kids are like, "No, don't do that." And it's like, "Just don't say that. Just go." And then you skip like half an hour of movie. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. I suppose uh, they wanted to have that gap where the our heroes can train for a day or whatever. Also, why would you imprison your daughter in a place she's already broken out of? You forgot about that. This That's is fine. Mark II. This is he updated the security. He changed his but he password. Didn't. He did a. He gave all of his guards diversity training. He made sure that all the building was up to code. And he's like, now, 
uh, now I am unstoppable. He changed his Twitter, uh, <laughs> his company's Twitter profile to have the, the rainbow flag in it. I am unstoppable now, he said to himself. No one can oh, escape God. me. But then I'm he got eaten by a big demon, so explain he that. He got eaten by a big demon. But turns out it was a metaphorical demon. He'd succumbed to pressures of the world around him, and it destroyed who he was. Do you think the big demon represents cancellation? Oh, it might be. <laughs> oh, yeah, who, who was it that got canceled? Because I knew somebody got canceled. Is oh, it the from... main guy? Oh, like yeah, yeah, post? main guy, because he, yeah, he, he said some things. Um, uh, that's unfortunate. He, he Is he from things. China? Sorry? Is he from China? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it. I just know I that... think he's Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought he was Canadian. The time was canon. I cannot find anything official one way or the other about whether it is canon now, but during the events of this two-issue comic, <laughs> Rhodey, in the new and improved War Machine armor, goes to China to fight the Ten Rings. In fact, he's been tracking the Ten Rings all over the world because they're such a big deal. And they have a hammer okay. tech tank which fires ex-wife missiles that work because, as has been pointed out to me by many people many times, and I appreciate every single one, the ex-wife was a kinetic kill switch, which means it wouldn't detonate under a certain radius to protect the user, and there is no way right. that 20 feet is the radius. So, funnily enough, so, um, I don't know, Fringy's probably the only person who's going to remember Iron Man 2 enough to be able to talk about this, yeah. I guess, but you, you just saw the clip there. I always hated that moment in Iron Man 2 because those people found it really funny, and I was just like, dude, with how they described that thing, we wouldn't want that blowing up right next to Tony and Rhodey. So, like, mm -hmm. that was a really dumb move by Rhodey anyway. But according to what he just said, it wasn't a dud missile, which, by the way, doesn't quite make sense as well. Like, the idea that, like, oh, hammer tech, you know, it's all shit compared to Tony. It's like, well, it just he doesn't know how to make a missile explode. Like, I don't know, it just the joke doesn't quite land for me. But it's also that, um... If, if it's the matter of it needs to travel further than that before it's armed, then that just makes Rhodey look like a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, that's great. <laughs> ...under a certain radius to protect the user, and there is no way that 20 feet is the radius. So the ex-wife worked perfectly, Rhodey used it wrong, justice served. Anyway, hmm. and here's where it gets really messy. At the end of this comic, which takes place during the events of Avengers, we actually kind of see the leader of the Ten Rings, like just his hands, like Dr. Claw and Inspector Gadget. But he's a real okay. guy and seems to be known <laughs> as and is referred what? to by his subordinate as Andrew. Mandarin. But oh. then in Iron Man 3, we learn that the Mandarin is a title invented by Killian. There was... Is it <laughs> It's just funny to me because I'm just like, yes, the MCU's continuity is just completely Fuck. fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I We know. Ho, ho, ho. Well, so, because the part I'm interested in this video is where he's going to get to uh, assume soon, where he's like, but Wen Wu's amazing, and here's why. There's never one known as the Mandarin, and Wen Wu makes the same point in Shang-Chi. And I can already hear some of you shouting, well, in the All Hail the King bonus one shot on the Iron Man 3 DVD, someone working for the real Mandarin, who I think is supposed to be Dark Hawk How do you or know something. they're working for the real Mandarin? I don't even know. I haven't even seen this. Do they have a tattoo? Have you seen this, Fringy? I haven't. No, I didn't even know this existed. Also, Kidnaps we're... Trevor as punishment. Also... Wait, so he's kidnapped all the way back in Iron Man 3? Okay. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I'd heard about some kind of short thing, but... I guess that answers that. Because Iron Man 3 was what, 2000... Uh... Oh, two. So it's been... Like seven plus years? Since they figured out what to do with Trevor after he got kidnapped, it's like, damn, okay. God, it must be so frustrating to try and make sense of all this. For the real Mandarin, who I think is supposed to be Darkhawk or something, kidnaps Trevor as punishment. Also, Justin Hammer has a boyfriend, first gay Disney character. Suck it, background characters holding hands and all the other stuff. And then- Why is it good that they're, they're gay? Is it better than them being straight? What, I mean, what are you I, eating? Check on. Eat right, get chicken. a cock out of your mouth when you're talking on EFAB, okay? No one wants to hear that shit. I don't shoot cock! So, I have a reputation to protect. Um... That virtue uh, thing, ha, this is a real first gate thing. Okay? Yeah, I'm so good, I think that's good. Okay, you're good. I mean, it's still... It, it's all very weird with that sort of stuff, because it's just like... It seems like he's pointing out 
that it's meaningless when they have random people in the background hug or kiss as being like, see, look, lesbians. Um, because it's like pandering. But then, isn't that what that was just then? It was like Justin Hammer has a boyfriend. It's like, okay. Okay. The thing is, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter unless it Good substantively affects the story. You or know, it's like. <laughs> Like, like, I've never written a character's race because it's just not relevant. I don't really care. It's not affecting All my what's going on. Are Peruvian. <laughs> All yeah, it's like they'll, they'll, they'll be like, oh, this character is whatever. And it's like, but if it doesn't affect their choices, then you could just shuffle it around. It doesn't make it Re not possible. Well, I was going to say the fact that you just highlight is like you can shuffle it around. They tend to do that. Um, and then they tend to delete those scenes when they send the movie out internationally. Depending on the country. <laughs> oh, right. That's, that's, how it's, that's how you do in modern yeah, day. The, uh, the Chinese market is... Uh, yeah. They don't want to see two girls kissing in this Star Wars movie. I think some new China stuff Why just not? came out where they were banning... Uh, let me double check. Um, China had done a thing with video games where you weren't allowed to display... Um, like homosexual relationships in video games or stuff like that. They they dropped a new one. Yeah, I, I think that people have been saying that's like a law. Apparently it's not a law. It's like an advisory notice. It's like, <laughs> here's how you can know Which that over you're there in accordance is, with the... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah just no don't, more gay uh, video games. It, I mean, the funny, the funny, one, the funny one to me... The funny one to me was that you aren't allowed to um, show characters making immoral choices in video games it's like you can't have something like fable where there's like an evil arc it's like not allowed well <laughs> like you can only make good choices like okay that's interesting hope they have piracy over there yeah so much for, for open all world of disney's games. posturing for all of disney's look at us we're so good we're so progressive they don't give a fuck because china's got money well i mean the mulan's yeah. I, you can call that a scandal, right? The Mulan thing. That was uh, probably the worst what thing that? Disney have done. What, what yeah, Mulan probably. thing? Um, they filmed next to, like, camps that they... The Uyghur concentration camps? Yeah, and they, like, oh, they, like thanked them in the credits of the movie for giving them the opportunity or something. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god. Jesus. Yum, chicken's done. Yeah, I... man. One of the goons working for Mitch, whatever his name is, has a Ten Rings tattoo, so they are still a thing. The tricky part of all of this is that no, no, most... no, 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 no. So let me t explain how tattoos work. So that doesn't mean the Ten Rings are still a thing. It means that they could not be a thing anymore, but he still has a tattoo. I get your point, but important distinction. Do you want to finish your food? You... Or... No. Yeah. <laughs> I could just mute you if you want. Because talking like this is actually kind of fucking annoying to slam. Um, as for the, the the tattoo being present, I would say this: there's no way that they would have signaled that in Ant Man if they didn't want you to think that the Ten Rings are still around or influential in some way. Mm -hmm. Be really doubtful if they were like, no, it's just an ex member who's chilling. Like, okay. Wow. And, would yeah, the Ten Rings the want you to get a tattoo on like your wrist or your neck? Apparently so. <laughs> I think it's dumb, but hey. It's, it's really silly to me, because it's just like, unless it's on a particularly concealed part of the body, it's just like, why have something that tells people exactly who you're loyal to? Like, why? It's like Mandalorian all over again. Oh, uh, yeah. We only know about the Iron Man 3 Trevor twist. As far as they are concerned, there is no man rings is fake and was set up by Aldrich Killian. But... Aldrich? That's a bad person's name. It's you don't name your Eldridge. good person Aldrich, you know? That's one of those evil names that you give to a character. It's like, oh, you're, you're, your name's Aldrich, you're a baddie. Yeah, it's not, it, when, when he introduces himself, you're like, oh, that sounds really evil. Like Eldritch. And you're like, <laughs> no. Can I, there totally has been a Mandarin character Thank you. in the background by and yellow jackets and tanks who also seems to have some sort of vendetta against Iron Man. Real Mandarin is Chinese, even though that is not part of the identity of the Ten Rings and no one knows who he is. So why did Killian make up the Chinese I'm very confused. This what is all like this is this is pretty it's what just What does that have to do with Wen Wu? 
no, I was no, about no, to no. say. Well, so we're bad. obviously getting there. No, my my point's apparently the opposite to you guys. I'm saying this is actually pretty decent work. Um, of showing how fucked the continuity is. I just this is unusual for his channel. Yeah, like and well, we've like we've already talked about how the continuity is busted. I like the point is that this is a because of how inconsistent it is. You can try and attempt to draw some through line as to Wenwu's potential previous actions. No, I'm assuming he's going to say that Wenwu basically they flushed all of this, and Wenwu's a completely different thing who hates this lot, and he's going to be like, "Thank fuck," because this doesn't make any sense at all. Which is probably true, but at the same time, I would have just dropped the Ten Rings and the Mandarin name at this point. Uh, especially because it's not got nothing to do with Iron Man too. So you're not appealing to like Iron Man fans. You're just appealing to like. Some people know the Mandarin name, I guess. Um, I guess for Disney, that's enough. Why don't they... They know fucking... the name, we gotta keep it. Why aren't they adapting Clue Master? What was his name in Fat Woman? I think it was Clue Finder? Clue... What was it? Clue... Clue <laughs> Master, Clue right? Gulliger? Whatever it was. I want more of that. Even if it is DC, I don't care. So did, did Mandarin have a kid called Shang-Chi in the, in the comics? Oh fuck if I know. I I I don't I don't know how accurate that all that's going to be. And so maybe that's the reason that maybe that's true and that's why they had to keep it. His name white terrorist who operates primarily out of the Middle East since it did not come from Wenwu. Why the China connection at all? And I'm not saying this to nitpick, although I do have a nitpick for later. I'm just demonstrating how confusing the idea of the MCU Mandarin is. So we're adding Zhang Zhu's confusing comment. Okay, can I can I point out that the moop this this is a video about how good this villain is. We're seven and a half minutes in. Yeah, and we haven't gotten a single argument for why he's good, and we do have arguments for why it's bad. Yeah, well, I feel like I'm just sort of waiting for the. I assume mm. the next half is going to be all about Wenwu. That's the only way to salvage this right now because we've spent a long time not talking about him. So it's like if I made a video like, you know, oh, Django Unchained is the best movie ever and just rip it apart and then move it like, yeah, I don't know. Then right <laughs> to the so end, you weird. go, it was all right, I guess. Yeah, whatever. With Mandarin's messy MCU history and getting Wenwu. How on earth is this character supposed to work? He should be a disaster of canon and contradictions. But instead, so no, actually, like you can easily pull him out of a tangled web. Of... Anybody who makes another movie in the MCU doesn't actually have to have a tangled web of nonsense to deal with. They can ignore loads of it. Um, like a Daredevil movie, for example, could be like the best in the MCU, even if it were released right now, because they can just be like, I ain't going to address the time travel. I ain't going to address blah, blah, blah. It's just going to be a street level guy who gets his stuff and blah blah blah. I mean, you can criticize oh, it for nice. being inconsistent with the world building. I guess I'm just saying that, like, just because of how tangled the Ten Rings and Mandarin were, doesn't mean Wenwu would have to suffer. That, so, it was established in Iron Man 3 that, like, uh, Trevor, I guess, was a fake Mandarin, right? And that there's a real Mandarin? Well... So, what, what would be the contradiction? That's the thing. The, the Shang-Chi does try to address why... Well, because he says he doesn't even go by the Mandarin, and they make fun of the name by calling it a chicken dish, which is weird. It's also uh, a yeah. dialect of Chinese. It's a really weird yeah. comment. Yeah, I, I assume mark, it's just to try and make fun of Iron Man 3. spoken language in the world, but... G given all yeah. of the other failed attempts at humor in the film, I'm going to assume it was a failed attempt at humor. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely a joke. But it, 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 it's totally at Iron Man 3's expense, trying to be like, that was a mistake of the past, we're now, we're doing it right this time. That sort of thing. Because fucking other franchises do this, where they reference their past mistakes, but they are a mistake themselves, so it's just awkward. I, I, Ed? What are you going to say? Yeah, I, was, I, was just, I was just going to ask, like, so what would be the necessary contradictions? Like, I guess there's, if you're going to have him going around, like, knocking over world governments, but somehow not affecting world events, that's a pretty well, massive contradiction. Yeah, but and, aside that, from and that, that's what... baked into whatever they wanted to bring to the party. If, if we're talking about how do we make a Mandarin that is the boss of the Ten Rings, then yeah, you're going to have some trouble because the Ten Rings are an organization that's really, really confusing if you look at the MCU. So it's like, it's just going to be difficult to try and make a formidable and, and shadowy government type Ten Rings organization that simultaneously fit all of the stuff we've seen in the MCU so far. Uh, okay, that makes sense. And which is why I would have dropped it myself. I'd just been like, whatever. But they've got the Ten Rings, so it's just like, you know, they've got to do something. 
the filmmakers, who makes complete sense. He's a conqueror who thinks all of the Iron Man 3 Mandarin stuff. Well, no, I feel like I feel like that conquer a bit. We just sort of flew over. Mm. Yeah, we we, we, just, we talked about it before, but like I guess he was we'll see if he got started like thousands of years ago or whatever, right? Or a thousand years? I don't fucking remember. A thousand years. It's, yeah, like, it's, it's at least stuff. Never at least up a thousand. History books. Yeah, no one has any clue about any of his conquer conquered conquering. No one wrote it down, which tip, people tend to typically write down how those huge conquering wars go. They're kind of important. So I don't know. Um, maybe he'll maybe he'll explain. Maybe he's just setting it. Maybe he's doing more setup, and then we'll get to the explanation. Maybe. We're gonna talk about it. Um the the angle of taking our world as we know it, where, where there is no Wenwu, and then being like it is the exact same, but he was controlling everything. It's just like, huh? It doesn't really match anything we know, but it's sort of like a just accept it. Oh. Here's something that's really weird. So th they were establishing that, like oh. the um, the, the what's it called? Tau Lower Tau La. The like I call it the Timeless Isle because I don't know what it's called. But like they said, they have their own like mega civilizations, right? Yeah. So why wouldn't you just have him dominating their mega civilizations and then like come over here? Because then you wouldn't have Earth to destroy has to be this the world. Center building. of everything in the MCU now. No. Um, and, like, why would you just drop that? By the way, we have like, it's basically our own like alternate dimension wakanda or whatever and they just like skip over it in like literally a sentence and just like never mention it again well, it is pretty bizarre to be like there's a whole world over there of, of civilizations people and stuff and there's just this portal that takes you to another a world and it seems that both sides don't really care that much yeah and they're, and they're still like operating on the tech tree of 2000 years ago but they have skyscrapers oh only in the yeah. part that they're defending the end of the world that do they have the really shit technology because that makes total sense <laughs> it's so weird like it's, and it's so just plonked on just like this, this, yeah, this. it's unnecessary you don't need that like you could have just cut that entire exposition scene i think the movie would have made more sense i would have just accepted okay there's a cthulhu monster locked in the mountain whatever like <laughs> surrounded by an impenetrable forest that eats you I don't know. When you get to that point it's already just like god how do we how do we square this away with everything else that's ugh. It ain't easy. And does Doctor Strange know about any of this? Does he care? He's supposed to, like, detect this stuff, right? But... Hmm. Well, he's on his lot. own adventure. Well, yeah, as, as is everyone in the MCU. They're all on their own fucking adventures, and that's what's just... What's the point of making it cohesive by making it so incohesive? Like, great yeah. job. And stuff is stupid, so he doesn't really want to talk about it. Yeah, like, you'd think every movie would be at least, like, a pairing of characters, not just solo stuff. There'd be a lot more focus on cooperative, this character meets this character. Do they fight for a bit and then become friends, or do they cooperate on a quest and the, their personalities mesh or clash? Or A lot of lost opportunities with a lot of these quote-unquote solo movies, maybe. Doesn't that happen a lot in the comics, like, crossover between characters? I'm sure. Well, I'd say that their goal is different from that rags we got like um each show has introduced a new main character like that seems to be the goal instead of having main characters do buddy cop stuff like um monica rambo is the one to come out of wandavision sylvie's out of loki um other than winter soldier i guess you could argue it's mainly just turning him into captain america mm -hmm. um and then of course shang chi is all the shang chi stuff with just Wong being like, hi, I make this official. Well, this is this is also in terms of like going forward, because now we're in phase four. We've already had a lot of these characters around and they just they, they all seem like they've just spread out to do their own thing instead of, yeah, oh, I've got to do this thing. I should call da da da. And then they, like it because a lot of times it just doesn't make sense how a lot of these stories can just not have any of the other you know characters involved. Especially with how cataclysmic they're trying to make them. Oh yeah, and of course Black Widow was uh, Yelena. She's um, he's in it now. And then people mentioning Walker as well. It's like yeah, all of these people are getting their own shows, and movies. So it's just that's all Phase Four has been. It's just being like, hey, look at this person. They're new, and you like them. Get ready for more things. Not like actually trying to bring everything together and make some sense here. Are they? Are it, they going to try and top Thanos? Do you guys know? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm sure it'll be Galactus, right? Like, or something like that. Probably. 
I mean, some, I, it, some big boy. I guess it means what you mean by top, because if you mean because they've already like power level wise, it's just incomprehensible at this point with Kang yeah. and. Well, that, that, fucking, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, power level wise. And Kang, the ultimate controller of all the cosmos for all time, except for now he's dead. <laughs> Some people are like we do like Walker though. It's like yeah, he's been sent to join a villain team more than likely. So have fun with that, everybody. Yeah. Basically, a com with a weapon that matches some flags from other movies, but that's it. It is genius. So that's the backstory. Okay, it's fucking genius? skipping like crazy for me. I'm gonna roll it back relatively far. All of the Iron Man 3 Mandarin stuff is stupid, so he doesn't really want to talk about it. Basically, a completely new guy with a weapon that matches some flags from other movies, but that's it. It is genius. So Jesus that's Christ, calm down. I'll be interested in knowing just, why it's genius. I'm sure we're getting that any any second now. It's coming up. Yeah. Genius. So just not, that is a high, high praise. Genius is no, quite the accolade. Yeah, maybe maybe we shouldn't use all of these confusing details. Genius. <laughs> yeah, this is like that seems just like a basic idea, but maybe he's referring to uh the specifics and he's about to get to them, you know, maybe maybe. That's the whole reason why I believe oh. Wenwu is the best Marvel villain. When Wu has the best Marvel weapon. Uh, uh, oh, that oof. is shit. So how can you like Vulture? How can Vulture even compare? What do you mean? Okay, I, I'm just gonna throw this like, out there. If I it's was, about the best, if we're talking about he's got the best weapons, I then... think you misinterpreted. I don't think he means uh, like he's saying the most best powerful. Is in the most powerful. Yeah. He means the best is in the coolest. Whereas I disagree with that. Yeah, I think they're shit. They, 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 so, it's unclear what they even do. Like really. I, that, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was so confused by how they work. Like they're they work as like a pogo stick, so he can kind of fly. And then aside from that, I, <laughs> I don't understand how is he like how has he lived for a thousand years and no one shot him? Like I don't have a good explanation for that. <laughs> Like here, here's the, like the MCU and guns have a tumultuous relationship. Shadow MCU has guns, right? Well, do you remember his oh, yeah. team don't even have guns; they have electric crossbows. Well, it's just it's, it's a question I legitimately don't know the answer to. Like, do guns exist? Because like <laughs> you know you'll you'll have you'll have horror movies where phones don't exist because they just like fuck the entire thing. And you could imagine the same thing of like the MCU trying to like write out guns. Like, it, I guess I could understand that. But if guns exist, it's like. Someone would go take your rings, like I don't know, or there would be like a a mutineer in the organization who would like shoot him in his sleep and take his rings, like. Yeah, I completely agree. the The rings suck. Um, the they're strange. They they seem to do whatever is needed to do at the time, and simultaneously can't do enough when he needs them to defeat particular things. Uh, there's so many weird interactions. They're like sometimes they're a whip. Like a huge energy blast, he can sometimes fly with them. He, you can spin them around you in a big bowl. Uh, you can throw them into the belly of a dragon and explode it. It's like, oh, I didn't know. I have no fucking clue what any of this is. Like, I just don't. They, they also, they just affect sometimes. They just like decided, yep. oh, well, now five of them are for Shang Chi or whatever. It's like, what a fucking liability. <laughs> your weapon like my, will sometimes my... betray you. You're like, yeah, oh. the guy that I'm your invading sometimes... is actually kind of cool. I'm gonna go be on his side. It reminds me of the Wunderwaffe in uh, in Black Ops. It would sometimes damage you when you fire it, and it's like that is not the preferable element to a fucking Seems gun. Like a design flaw. It was a powerful yeah, gun. That's the excuse. I I already have enough trouble suspending disbelief during these like comic action sequences, but when I don't understand the most basic mechanics of how your weapon works, it's a pretty big problem. Yeah, I, I'm surprised he's going to praise it, but let's see what he says. The ten are cool as hell. Move over Mjolnir. No. Move over Stormbreaker. No. Move no. over Shieldy, the Captain America no, shield. That's is... probably what he calls mm. it. Move over whatever the Eternals do. Glowy outlines. The Ten Rings rule. It is a downright inspired move to turn the finger rings into arms. Wait, did he say it's the best weapon? <laughs> uh, Apparently inspired. he said it's... It... Wait, so it's better than the Infinity Gauntlet? I guess so. I guess. Which, oh. there was problems okay. with that too, but th that made way more sense than these things. Yeah, but, I mean, he just said cool. Like, the Infinity Gauntlet's really fucking oh. cool. I say that <laughs> as someone who hates these movies, but it's Obviously, a pretty cool idea. Cool fact is a difficult one, right? Like, cause, like isn't the Iron Man suit, like, one of the coolest weapons if there is yeah, one? The, yeah. Well, the, yeah, the Iron Man suit would fucking beat these stupid rings, like, easily. It's not even a competition.
Well, yeah, Iron Man's fire awesome. a nuke, I guess. <laughs> like, Iron Man, I win. Shoot him with bullets. Yes. Um, do I. <laughs> I'm surprised to move over Mjolnir. It's like, Mjolnir is cooler than these. Mjolnir's like, pretty cool. He spins it around and it has lightning that comes out of it. Yeah, and you can, can pull use him off. You know? fly, and people you can't know? pick it up. Yeah, then it has that. It's like really meaningful. Someone picks it up. Aspect. Yeah. It's cool. You, this is the thing about cool factor. It's tough because everyone's going to find different things cooler than others. But we sort of, we all, we all sort of like uh, are sitting there like, come on, that thing's cooler than that though, right? And, um,. I don't know if you caught it, he was about to say it's a downright inspired move to turn them from finger rings yeah. into bracelets. It's like, why? No. I, I, mean, I mean, I don't even. No. He's still even rise, up the arm. He's still even rise to the level of cool for me, honestly. It's no, they don't really for me. Either. Awkward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't find them more of a concept cool. So I guess that's the conclusion here is like, if your main argument is going to. Well, one of the main arguments is they're cool. We're just sitting like, I don't think they're cool. That's about as far as I could go. <laughs> it's like, there we go. We did that one. Next one. Vulture's wings um, are way cooler. Hell yeah. They're based on the iron rings that are typically used for training. Gets your arms strong and your forms tight, as seen in Drunken Master. Okay, so that has nothing to do with the rings in this, though. Okay. Like, you can, like that is an argument for what they're useful for. It just has no bearing on Shang-Chi, but fair enough. But, like in Kung Fu Hustle, the best movie, you can... Another thing worth pointing out is they look a lot cooler when they're not powered up, when they're just like bracelets. <laughs> Well, why, why do they turn up, from they why do they turn from blue to orange? What's that about? Well, that's when they're that's defecting. When, when they that's decide that's to that's when they're good guy. That's, that's when they're the good. good oh, that's, that's useful when you know they change color. You're like, nah, -uh. and then uh -oh. maybe you have your loyal rings fight the disloyal rings. Yeah, because because didn't they turn a little bit orange during the like when he's fighting his wife? Yeah, I think yeah, when she takes did. them. Yeah, that's yeah, good guy mutant. color. His did bad guy color. God, that was so yeah, odd. Yeah, she, she kind of did. Him around. Yeah, yeah that's and, not and, very cool. If and, someone could just take your rings from you, she ends up firing them at him, and he like picks them back up and stuff. And it's just like, why even let them have like this? The second they're yours, you should probably just run away and be like, they're mine now. Mm -hmm. I'll use these to protect the dragon shrine or whatever. Even yeah. better. This is, a, this is a critical problem. You have a weapon that you have to throw at something, and they just decide. Fuck you sometimes, and then they just go help the enemy. <laughs> yeah, you might you might even say it's, it's one like, of the least cool fucking weapons in the whole of the FCU. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like it's like you have a like a, a familiar in a video game, but sometimes it just attacks you for no reason. <laughs> and you have to like run away from it. Oh, uh, sounds so much fun. I love it. You can also use weapons since they will protect your forearms from some weapons too. That's also, bullshit, they just though. look cool. What you just showed and, was bullshit. Well, you I guess... showed something that doesn't make sense. I don't even know that that happens Blade in Chong Chi. Through the rings. Well, it depends on what the rings are made of, I guess, right? Well, I mean, if the rings aren't connected to each other, then if you slashed it, then it would blade would probably just go right through the rings. Um, I guess it would maybe depend if it was at an angle. Sla yeah. But then that's a super risky move well, to have all that protection based on a place like that. And just that doesn't really happen in Chong Chi again. Like he's he, he gave it two compliments that are for different uses in different movies. So it's just like. This is strange, but okay. The ten is an incredibly clever weapon because of how versatile they end up being. You can use them to make energy is blasts. Is stick clever? <laughs> so, the versatility is the problem. They I was, just do I was about to say, we just went over how much it makes no sense at all, and he's saying, like, isn't it great how much anything can happen? <laughs> it's like, I mean, wow. Well. I mean, versatility isn't necessarily cool, especially because uses are often imbued onto objects like sticks. Like, yeah, chairs are very versatile that doesn't mean they're necessarily clever i mean well, maybe that, the cleverness no, I, isn't the thing itself it's your usage of them the cleverness is you i'm imagining like an infomercial where someone's like explaining all the things you can do with these rings <laughs> they, they can be a force field it can, they can fire be a gun. energy blast can you, be can, a pogo stick. you can fly you can put yourself in a big bubble you can have them be so stolen from you you're like oh <laughs> yeah. these rings are flex seal they're square space they're uh, what was what was the one you were swim gift what was, what was the beginning of the stream? Quib gift. Was... Quib oh, it was gift. a quib quib gift. Yeah, right. The, it see, was quib gift. Yeah. yeah. Can you get the, ri the like? Can you collect all the rings eventually with quib gift, like one per month? The, ring, the rings. Oh, are like I don't a know Tomagashi. if they've got enough to take care of them. I don't know if they have enough rings to pass out. That's the thing. Yeah. You can use them to make a big punch, or you can put all ten on one arm to make the biggest punch. You know, they also. Really cool. What is happening right now? <laughs> well, what my thing is, I'm wondering, like. I would love some accompanying visuals. If you're gonna tell me how something how something is just that cool, 
I would have visuals to support that instead of just telling me he could, you make a big punch with him. I mean, unfortunately, well, he's not going to have I access imagine. to visuals yeah. just yet. It's probably just like the trailer material, right? And like the yeah, he might material. have some clips of the rings being used, but probably not for everything he wants to say. So we hear the rings are like... Well, he's seen uh, the movie, though, so he should have clips from it. The rings right? here are like that chick sword from uh, Soul Sorry. Calibur. Is her name Ivy? Why do, you, why do you think he would have clips from the movie? Can, he, he has seen it. Yeah. Unless he saw it at theaters, maybe? Yeah, it wasn't released on streaming. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I thought it was one of those sorts of things. If you use all 10, you can make a really big punch. <laughs> That's it. That, that, this punch, this is going to need all 10 rings for this punch. This is it's a just big like... old punch. Imagine, because that's the first one that he's complimented the rings for that actually matters to this movie. He can, like, punch the ground, but if he puts all ten rings on one arm and then punches it, it's like a big old punch. And you're like, yeah, that's true. Just just throwing this out there, that was not at all clear to me watching the movie. <laughs> I wouldn't you know, blame you. You know, there's a level of, there's a level in, of intuitiveness. That, oh, let's talk about a really recent example. I've been playing the Halo Infinite beta, liking it quite a bit. Uh, you can have a you can have pieces of equipment in Halo uh, Infinite, right? You one of them is a grappling hook, so you can grapple in a fairly intuitive way onto walls and ceilings and stuff to cross gaps or get up high or to move quickly. Like, all right, that that makes sense, you know, grappling hook. You can grapple other characters, right, and pull them in, you know, so you can close the distance because you're grappling another player. It's like, okay, that's pretty intuitive. You, there's an item over there. I'm going to grapple that item and bring it to me. That's, that's pretty intuitive. That makes sense. So it's like all of these different things are a result of it, the force. We've used the force as an example. Mm -hmm. The basic telekinesis can pull things, push things, move them around. It can block your windpipe. There's a lot of, lot of uh, emergent kind of uh, things you could do from this one power. And... When I hear about these rings, I'm like, yeah, you can jump, you can jump up in the air, what you make a big punch. I'm like, I don't see the through line. Of it, yeah, it's stuff. How it's, to... like, it's just stuff. Yeah. And apparently well, that makes were, them really were, cool. If you were to ask a question, can the rings do X, and we haven't already seen X, you would just have no idea. No, yeah. I, well, to be honest with you, I can't tell I you what imagine they... imagine it in my head. I can't tell you what they can't do. Like, if I, I can't confidently say, like, they cannot create a shock wave that'll blast everybody in a radius around you for a mile. Like, I can't confidently say that, just because I haven't seen it. I don't know that that's not true. They probably can't time travel. <gasps> I, I don't know, probably. man. They, they spin them around themselves real fast and Shang-Chi concentrates and then it opens a portal. I could believe that that's something they could do. And just like, this is a portal I, I, to the I past. Guess. And you'd be like, oh, I mean, okay. I guess we'll see as soon as they have a narrative well, reason to want time travel again. That's the other thing, man. Like, the, like they're going to want to be... Yeah, they, they're going to want to create that sense in the audience with these things going forward. So when Shang-Chi battles fucking whoever, he's probably going to do some stuff with these things that we've never seen before because that's how fucking cool they are. They're like the best weapon. They're so cool. See, when, yeah. when Iron Man punches someone and then he, like, puts extra armor on a fist and punches them again for a bigger punch, that's not as cool as when you do a big punch with these and then you put all the rings on one hand and do a bigger punch. I don't even, you, like... You also... I, I'm very confused you, as to what's so interesting about these things. You, you run up on a problem, because as soon as you put ten rings on one arm and punch something, it's like, you can't go beyond that, right? Like, that was maximum power? I guess okay, so, we hit, yeah. We hit, we hit the ceiling of what the ring... Well, yeah, and, and, and this is a guy who's dealt with them for, like, a thousand years. Shang-Chi had them for, like, a day, and he was basically the exact same. So I'm just like, well, people, what the hell? People are controlled without even knowing what they are. Exactly. Like his wife is able <laughs> yeah. to control them. Shang-Chi is just able to control them. Well, okay, so that's even more interesting. How is it that a guy who has a thousand years uh, and ten rings on his, like, repertoire is defeated by his son who has like nothing except he learned how to control the wind vaguely i mean in, in every in every meaningful way it's like he hasn't been around for a thousand years yeah because there's no effect on his on personality me, there's no issue. effect on the world he doesn't like you said he doesn't have like some training like you would think he's like you know in a fucking basically in a dragon ball z time chamber just training for a thousand years there would be something about him that was like special but there just isn't I mean, there's really nothing about this character I can see that would be different than if he had just found the rings just in like guy. the 70s. Yeah, he just found the rings in the 70s and then they like had a family and his wife got murdered 
and then he got mad and you know went to go smash a big dragon door and like what, what would be different about the movie literally nothing and I, I you're making me wonder like why did they even bother is it is it to make it feel more grand like Look at this story Probably. spanning a thousand years. You're like, oh wow. Well, that's an infectious thing in the MCU now. Like when it talks about scale and everything has to be just so big. Ooh, a thousand years. Wow, you can't even comprehend how big that is. Isn't that amazing how grand scale we are? But it seems stupid on his face. Like the the first thing I'm watching in the movie is him like blowing up governments and then they just cut past it and forget about it. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? He got, oh fine. yeah, he's like, yeah, he's just like the CIA or something. He's you know running around covert covert operations. He's like, what is it? MI six in the James Bond universe? They're just like blowing up governments. And, oh yeah, but don't worry about that. Well, yeah, I'm usually pretty in, worried about that. What? Usually in these sorts of movies and through lines and franchises, there's like the one shadowy group behind things doing pulling strings. But in the MCU now, we had like several that were apparently active at once, all pulling strings with the highest political forces. I don't know if you know this, but like Black Widow established, the Russians were doing it since I guess early 90s, even before that. Uh, Hydra were doing it since the at least the 70s, earlier than the 70s even. And then of course Wen Wenwu's been doing it for a thousand years and then Kang has been the one that's controlling everybody anyway. It's like the most insane chess board you've ever seen where just but stuff the, is but everywhere. The problem is you just you hear there are strings being pulled, but you never see the strings. Nope. And like this is the difference between um man, it's really a shame Game of Thrones got canceled after four seasons. But it's like in the first yeah. three seasons of Game of Thrones, when you like see all of this like politicking and well, strings um, being pulled and like the immediate impact on things. A little bit of an irony there is that uh oh an irony. Oh, this is gonna work. Iron Man three, uh they actually show that the Mandarin and the Ten Rings have influence in the government because they've you could say bribed um, a particularly influential politician below the president. And that's like something you actually see. And that movie's a joke. Like, the, but these these movies, the, they, they show you like an image of, oh look, Ray Winston's hanging out with Clinton. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? Does he, like, does he advise him? Does that, and it's like, never mind, bye. He had influence. Shadowy government. <laughs> oh you're my like, god, okay. Raykov is responsible for the assault weapons ban. What an evil bastard. Well, if no one has the guns except Raykov then uh, Rikov wins. As you, you know, can see, his Black Widows are very well trained. They're very well trained. They're the Apex training. Um, there, Lindy Beige actually released this video like yesterday or the day before talking about magic. And he said in that video that there's a reason why typically when we think of like a wizard or a mage, we think of an old man, right? Because uh, it is a very studious thing to learn magic and to study it. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and by the time that you are very powerful, so much time is passed that you are oftentimes an old man. It has taken that long. So you see an old man sorcerer and you're like, oh, shit, that guy, he is, oh, boy, he's really showing his. And, and we're talking to people who are like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old in these kinds of ideas, you know, these kinds of worlds and how powerful they are after training for that amount of time. And you could believe it. You know, with that, that kind of commitment and grounding. And with this Wen Wu guy, you're just like, oh, I don't believe that you've been doing this. It's even worse, isn't it? That you're... Because he's not just not 90, he's not 1,000. Exactly. Like, there's no grounding to anything. There's no, it, 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 it almost always comes back to this basic of cause and effect. This thing, therefore, this thing. And it's, and it's not like he's no, a... there's no link. There's no link between what I see and what it means or what's actually happening and what's displayed to me. I mean, you would think if he was like a power hungry psychopath who's been so successful that he would be like good at it. But his idea of how to get his kids back is to send assassins to go kill them. But... <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that'll, <laughs> yeah, that'll turn him to my oh, side. Oh, man. Well, well, if he fights so... off the assassins, he's worthy. He's like, but, but you don't but know so... the assassins <laughs> coming. That's the thing about assassins. They strike when you don't expect, so all your skill doesn't count for anything. Exactly. I hate that fucking shit, where it's like the best trained person in the world, someone, that, you know, they're, they're in their day job of just, they're just a bartender or something, and someone just walks up to them and shoots them with a gun. They're like, well, you weren't very good. Like, uh, what? <laughs> like, what were they supposed to do? That's why they like, do it. That's the thing. That's why you do it that way, because that person is very good. So you have to circumvent the things they are exactly. skilled in. Well, it's also like, I think it was Muhammad Ali 
some really famous boxer was like, I would never want to fight a crazy person. Just with the assumptions being that even if you're incredibly in shape and like, you know, not just at the top of your game, but at the top of like the human game and doing something, you know, if you're fighting someone who isn't well and isn't going to play by the rules, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you might get hurt. And you don't. Oh, what, what is that? You mentioned this quote. It is. Yeah. Because it's, uh... it's, it's Mark Twain had a very similar quote that I mostly disagree with. Um, I get, I guess I get the, the idea, but the, the aspect of, um, uh, let, let me see if I can pull up Mark, uh, Mark, cause we were, we were very specific quote that we were just randomly talking about like yesterday or something. And then you happen to say a very, very similar quote from someone. Uh, let me, Mark Twain fighting quote. Um, I think it could be skill might be a keyword. It's a concentrated power of will. It's something about how an, an antagonist to da, da, da. oh, I wish I could find it. I where where did we actually? Um... Well, if you look through our groups, you might be able to find something. But um, I mean, it's not hard to summarize. Basically, there was a subreddit that was sharing um, the Kylo and Ray battle. Ah, uh, yeah, and, that's and the one. I think it was yeah. like fucking sequel memes or some bullshit. And there's a Mark Twain, Twain quote that's like, uh, you know, people of like high skill preferably wouldn't want to fight someone of like zero skill because they're so unpredictable that they could be like a real found challenge it. oh found, found it. it all right all yeah right. mark I mean. mark twain uh, don't you know there are some things that can beat smartness and foresight awkwardness and stupidity can the best swordsman in the world doesn't need to fear the second best swordsman in the world no the person for him to be afraid of is some ignorant antagonist who has never had a sword in his hand before he doesn't do the thing he ought to I understand the idea. I disagree with that. I'm yeah, very I, I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty mixed on that quote. Well, yeah, because if you think I'm about mixed. it, like um, you're expecting your opponent to swing or to stab in some way, shape, or form, but they simply walk forward really slowly, and you start to be like, "What the fuck?" And then they just slowly put the sword into your chest, it, as if like that's such a bizarre thing that you know a skilled swordsman might actually like get defeated by. It. And it's like, oh, come on, come on now. But, like, but, but also, I, also... I, I think Mark's point, like. If you said that to him, you probably wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, nah, he's not like literally. <laughs> like, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's meant to that basically the fundamental point is like that somebody who's shit but unpredictable might actually catch you off guard more so than a skilled but predictable opponent. Yeah, like, well, the, the, the which I feel like part of a skill is learning to not be predictable. <laughs> Um, well, I think, I think, I think if the, the, the charitable way to read it is like, don't be, don't underestimate people and don't kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's also like there's something to be lost. Will lead you astray. Yeah. It's like, even, yeah, even if, even if you're lost, very likely right. to, even if you're very likely to win, there's something to be lost. So why? It's, oh yeah. It's the whole thing of that guy has nothing to lose. So, you know, what the everything to gain just, nothing to lose i get the point it's just you you wouldn't want to you know the idea of, like you can fight the second best in the world or some guy who's never picked up a sword and you're like oh i'd rather go for the second best I was like really though you sure yeah, someone said someone said it's funny how rags has actually argued for this very thing he talked about more now how the best player could crush normal players but a newbie could beat him because he didn't do it no like no 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 no. if it's me against the newbie i'll win 99 times out of 100 the actual very skilled players are the ones that you have to watch out for every once in a blue moon you see a noob who just doesn't know what the hell they're doing, so they behave so weirdly and irrationally. It's like, well, I wasn't expecting you to do something so incredibly stupid and counterproductive, and then you kill them. You just have that moment of surprise, like, oh, that's. And I was actually going to argue do that if you don't, because video games, this is much more applicable than like a tournament in real life or something. Where if if someone is doing something strange in a video game, you might for a moment be like, wait, is this some kind of like matter I'm un unaware of? Is this, like, are they doing something that I should, oh shit, with and then you just kill them, you're like, oh, they were just an oh, idiot. Oh yeah, exactly. It, it gives you that moment of doubt, I'd like if the other person's supposedly playing 4D chess or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, why, why, how come they're doing this? That just doesn't seem to make sense. And then you just destroy them once you do your actual skill-based thing. And, like, and, and yeah. what's happening is the thing that I specifically don't want to happen with quotes like this, where we start to like be like, yeah, you know what, skill? That's not really the important part. It's just fucking doing random shit and hoping well, for the best. Yeah, like, it's, wait, it's hang like, on. Can we, can we not, 
undervalued skill. Yeah, like, please. <laughs> so, skill is shocking. There's a reason that we invest insane amounts of time, energy, and finances into training soldiers skills. and training yeah. workers and employer employees to do tasks. And we don't just send we we don't just we don't just pull a, a tomorrow war. You know, there's there's a reason why training yeah. is extremely important, and it's something yeah, I, you need I to think, do. I think this this. Uh, there's a really big breakdown here with this quote that doesn't happen with the Muhammad Ali quote. And that's that like me personally, I know how to use my arms. I know how to punch, right? It's conceivable that I could beat someone who is better than I am. But if you give me a sword, I have no idea what to do with a sword. I can't imagine just picking up a sword randomly the other men. and beating like <laughs> a trained swordsman. That just seems so inconceivable to me. Oh yeah, like I don't, I do, I'm not gonna fight a trained swordsman with a sword. I'm gonna be like, okay, we need to do something else. I need to get a gun, or I need to hide and um, ambush him. I'm not gonna fight him on his skill set that I don't have. Yeah, it's like now listen, uh, Jesus has to be peaceful. Well, yeah, and, <laughs> Please and if, don't hurt me. If I pull the sword on Chad, and, 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 and Chad's like, yeah, let's have a sword fight, and, and then Mark Twain is like, do not worry, Mola. <laughs> with with a lack of skill. your unpredictability <laughs> will win you this uh, this sparring match. And I was like, uh, I don't know, no, no. And and this is the thing: if someone again, said, "Well, would you rather would you rather the second best swordsman in the world fight for you? Do you think you'd have a bit?" I'd be like, absolutely, like absolutely. not even not even close. Especially when you get up into the higher echelons of skill. The difference between one and two. That's the thing. They have to fight a hundred times, and maybe the second place guy he only lost by just a little bit. He only won forty eight out of the one hundred. Yeah, I, I think, I, I don't know. I, I still like the Muhammad Ali quote, but the Mark Twain one I'm becoming more and more suspicious of I, as we talk about it. Um, I appreciate really, the point. Say... It's just that it can lead people further down a, direct, a different direct. Like, it, it feels to me it was created to introduce the idea that, yeah, people without skill can still win. Like, yeah, no, of course. I agree. Let's there just... is a certain asset. There, 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 I guess there's a certain quality that that stupid unpredictability can potentially bring. Yeah. However, if this is your strength in a fight, you are screwed. Yeah. I mean, you, you would have this small advantage, but then the, your opponent has this incredible yeah, advantage the, of like knowing what the fuck they're doing. The problem of his quote for me is the best swordsman in the world doesn't need to fear the second best swordsman in the world. No, the person for him to be afraid of is the ignorant and is like. No. No, this is just fucking no. stupid. Of course, you need to fear the second best swordsman <laughs> in the world. They're the second best swordsman in the world. And like I feel yeah, like if you make one mistake, yeah. I feel like because you. it's Mark Twain that said it, it's gonna get way more defense. It reminds me of Martin Scorsese. <laughs> it's like I don't know, like this quote. Yeah, with that story. incredibly wrong, dumb thing he said. Yeah. Well, yeah. half half the half the quotes that are attributed to Mark Twain aren't even aren't he didn't even actually say them. So <laughs> that's true. Mark Twain said that. <laughs> nice. Very well energy whip thingy and then on the other end they can be a shield or steps or bars to they can be steps or they can help you they can be yeah. steps yeah i don't remember when when did he use them as shang chi steps? was jumping on him as steps when he was fighting the dragon so are <laughs> okay. they controlled through like telekinesis or hand movements well you know he, he do was do doing it? like the thing where you put it there and then you step on it like oh okay That's and fair step enough. On like throwing them out like little frisbees and jumping on them yeah oh, also basically. isn't it isn't it a bit odd that we now know that there are souls in the Marvel universe? Like, that's like, yeah, it's not that's the Soulstone thing, right? Doesn't that have implications? Or was Soulstone more like metaphorical? What? Um, an interesting it... question. I I don't know if it was spelled out exactly. I guess it kind of would have to be. Yeah, I guess. But I was sitting there in the theater, like, hmm, that's very optimistic. Because I'm fine with it happens in a lot of uh, fictional worlds and a lot of people think it's how the real world works where people there's like there's something there's there's a you that exists outside your body. Yeah, that's the you that is you and yeah. it could go to places and when you die it goes places and, and things of that nature. By Cthulhu monster and yeah, like I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess in the fictional world, dragon. I'm fine with that concept. I mean, mm -hmm. I, if I made a fictional concept, I would probably have especially if magic's involved, I might utilize some kind of a, a, a system like that yeah well just it, it has implications it's like kind. it's like Mahler getting triggered that like heroes don't care about the little people well now we know <laughs> the little people have souls and like they just don't care about them it just it actually makes it so much you're more, right like more egregious uh it, it is no small thing to introduce the idea that there is a soul that isn't like 
you, you yeah that's i could totally buy that i mean uh, yeah i agree yeah. i could totally buy it, but like the idea that the mcu has just made souls canon in this film it's just like oh okay all right i wonder how that affects everything yeah, it does make you wonder with all the magic and the implications of the soul stone, but they don't fucking care about the infinity stones anyway at this nope. point. Uh, they're making jokes out of them. Um, Which yeah, apparently even the Russos said annoyed them, so. It, it's kind of funny how, like, the Thanos snap is like their 9 11. They just kind of bring it up in conversation as this thing that binds everyone together that they talk about. MCU uh, atheist BTFO. Well, what's interesting is that souls could exist in an atheist and world. Still no deity. Yeah, yeah, there's still no, there's still no, no uh, deity potentially. Uh, souls do not imply deities. Oh man, you brought that up, and I thought it was Ray. Ray Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, it's I... it's bad that I just assigned. That's just her name. It's just yeah. I, I had oh. that same thought. I was like, ew, just actually. <laughs> yeah. Ray Wait, is Skywalker. is that not her name? Well, well no, it, it is. That's the, that's kind of what yeah. I'm saying. Like, I I so readily just accept that her name is Ray Skywalker. And because it, it used to turn my stomach for ages, and it still does to, for a lot of people. But I think I've just like accepted, like, yeah, she's Ray Skywalker. Fuck it. Oh, wait, you know what does that name mean anymore? Anyway, she ain't Luke. Absolutely not. You know this screenshot where it's like on Wen Wu's side, it's like all electricity, and then on on Shang Chi's, it's like I don't even know, but I guess flowy lines. Like it doesn't have to matter, but to me, I'm just like. Why did you make that choice? It doesn't make... Is it like Fire Chi? I don't know. I would go ahead and assume that the idea is, ah, see, like, Wen Wu's is all chaotic and disturbed, and whereas Shang Chi's is like, sort of a... They could do a light side dark calm, side thing. It's, I think it's just calm versus oh. like, chaotic. I think that's Here's what they could do. Uh, they could do that light side, dark side, like it's, you know, being angry and aggressive and chaotic, it sure is easy to give into that, and it gives you a lot of power, well, but that's okay. the easy path. Okay, Blue here, is not the greatest color for chaos, I would say. Correct. Here's, here's, a, here's a great question about this shot. Purple? Did they know that there was going to be energy when they shot it? Because it looks to me like it makes a lot more sense if there isn't energy. And they don't look to be channeling energy. I mean... Shang-Chi is doing like the opposite of what people usually do when they're channeling energy. Like he's pulling so. something away. They're both, they're both gesturing away. So it's like, did they know when they were shooting this that this was what was going to happen? You know what would be nifty with these 10 rings, right? Is you could, you could use, so you got 10. 10 a pretty easy number to recognize with your brain and everything. It's not a thousand or a million or even a hundred, you know? Like 10, all right, that's, that's relatable. Throughout these movies, whenever the rings are used, the ring bearer, he will use, <laughs> like, if it's a very low level threat, he could almost mockingly just pull out a single ring and the rest of about that earlier. somewhere else. Yeah. And like, and, but then at the end, he's like, oh, he pulls out, maybe, maybe later he pulls out three or six, you know, ooh, that's really big. And at the end, he has to channel all 10 rings. And someone's like, no, you've never used the 10 rings before. He's like, I can handle it. I've got, I could do it. I, I can got control the, the rings. It's like, you've never yeah, it's used like, all ten at the same time. Remember what happened at the, the flashback? And it's, it's like, like Princess I can Bride. Do it, and then he destroys himself because he can't actually handle the ten rings at once. And you have to be pure of heart and soul to be able to handle the ten rings. Yeah, something like that. Well, I mean, what do you mean? They're they're like in the control of a pseudo Hitler. Oh well. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe the rings are just evil, and they're like, you know what? Maybe Hitler was, yeah. Maybe he was yeah. pure of heart and soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just had some, you know, bad ideas, that's all. Wait, are they playing yeah. tug of war with the rings? Is that what's going on? I think so. That's what happens in this moment. Because oh, if hey. you guys can see, there's a ring. Um, one of the blue yeah, ones and the orange ones tangles yeah. a little bit. What if what if the Nazi symbol with the eagle and the circle underneath it with the swastika in it, the swastika in it? What if that was supposed to represent a ring like Hitler and the Nazis? Because they, they dabbled in the occult a bit, you know? You, there's a lot of cool stories you could do with that. What if they found one of the rings and that circle is supposed to represent the ring that they found? And I don't know, fuck it. I yeah, but, yeah but, Hil but Hitler only had one of them, so, you know. You only had the one, one. Yeah. He, he did. Hitler only did have the one. That is correct. Poor guy. That's, but <laughs> but maybe the I don't yeah it's you can I don't know this happens all the time when we talk about these movies and we just offhandedly come up with these interesting things they could have done. They could have <sighs> incorporated Hitler. Yeah, that would have been pretty they much more I, interesting. The MCU needs more Hitler. <laughs> is all I'm saying. 
Yeah, send in the bastards, or he could just turn it off and you know play it better. Rex, just outline the plot for Indiana, Indiana Jones Six. It oh. Could be shockingly true. Who knows? Them beforehand. So if Imp Wanda wait, 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 wait. Hold on. For someone who hates anime, Rag sure likes to employ anime tropes. Which one of those was an anime trope? That's like saying, oh, talking. That's an anime trope. They always talk in anime. Well, if you like said shitty dialogue, those... I'd understand what they mean. Oh, yeah, sh yeah, shitty dialogue absolutely is an anime trope. But, like, what part of that was an anime trope? Was an why, why does trope anime get ownership over that? Being, just being bad. Hitler is an anime trope? trope? Like, three different Hitler people said that. <laughs> Four. Maybe they all had oh in a row. Yeah. Wow. Hold on, they hold all, on. We, we all need, three hold on. Of them. We need to we need we need to explain something to chat. Okay, chat. Hitler was a real person. He did some very bad things <laughs> no, he's around in the anime. 1940s. Yeah, I could yeah. say yeah. Hit, good Hitler isn't that. just from anime. Hitler actually existed. <laughs> I like the idea that I'm people sorry, I'm grow up thinking Hitler you, was this this oh, shared fucking anime character that's in Lucy. Yeah. Dude, Norm, Norm McDonald had some funny jokes. He was like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, the more I learn about this Hitler guy, the more I don't like him. <laughs> the more I don't care for him. <laughs> I don't know if any of you are, are history buffs. Totally oh. unrelated, but because fuck this video, I, I just noticed this and I thought you guys might find it amusing. Uh... Let's have a look, see what we're looking at here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's my bread and butter right there, Destiny tweets. Or Destiny's friend, rather. So you got screenshot one. I'm, I, I try and show it. It's just going to come out all gobbled on, on EFAP if I try and do it. So it's got the wealthy elite laugh at you daily from Amazing Atheist, which, by the way, 282 views. Holy fuck. I guess it's a new video because I don't know. Um, And then the next image has he has 5,088 patrons. And uh, membership levels are five dollars or ten dollars. So let me let me pull up my I was calculator. Say, logic later. Let's, let's get a lower and lowest and highest, shall we? All right. So what I'll, what I what I I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna say most people give five, but some people give ten. So let's say the average is <laughs> six. Let's let's say the average is just one. The, the average person gives six. Okay. So let's take five zero eight eight. I'll press this X button, and then times six, thirty thousand five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, three hundred thirty thousand a year. Which that is is that's according to what the response is is just around in the top five percent of earners. Oh yeah, you could five percent really? That seems. I can believe it. That seems a bit perplexing to me, but okay. Well, Bro, I mean, that's know. a lot of money. Yeah, I mean it is. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I guess it gets complicated depending on where you are and and everything. So, like, it's but it's just amusing. It's just another example, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know if whatever oh, qualifies as wealthy like elite. Oh, like this. Yeah. Wait, sorry. I just I'm gonna go get my coffee, but I strolled back in and I saw well, actually Destiny tweet. What what is what is this? Wait, so so I just Muller, Muller, you have it. Funny. You, you have it backwards, okay? Wealthy is uh, whatever my favorite content creator earns times 10. Ah. Because they can't be wealthy. So they can't whatever, wealthy. whatever they do is fine. No, no. Well, well in fairness, I, the I average house the is, is... does cost $3 million, Oh, so. yeah. Wow. I feel like That's at this point, house. it's just a matter of perspective. Because remember, if you're like average income in a Western country, you're rich on a global scale. Based. Based and um, true, even, yes. People lose focus of that. Well, and I think even, it's always the thing that just makes you feel a lot better in general is, you know, just perspective is super helpful of just remembering, like, um, there are a lot of people make a lot less money um, around the world and yeah, this... have less access to... Re you hear stories of, like, people who live in these, uh, in these incredibly poverty-stricken nations and then they're just baffled by the concept of running water just a constant reminder of these things is I find is really yeah, helpful for just, if like, you're hey, I appreciate that. Like, wow, hot water, like electricity, man, yeah. this is crazy. Like cars, dude, this is this is unbelievable. This is like this is crazy. And, and then it's it's just gratitude, I guess. Yeah, then you, then you go back in time. Think about gratitude. how 
Think yeah. about how shitty yeah. things were 2,000 years ago. Like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Dude, I think like about how shitty years the... Ago, um, <laughs> like, I, I think about how shitty the wine must have been, like the like the booze well, thousands like, of years ago. You know? I'm like, hmm. Um, yeah. Was it, I don't, well, I feel like, was it actually... I feel like these, what's that? Sorry? I was, I was just wondering, because you know, I because like liquor and stuff now, you know, it liquor is disgusting. But like imagine thousands of years ago when they didn't have the like the, the methods we have now, the technology and the know how that we have now. He was like, man, was it just really, really bad? And that's just, just what people had acquired a taste it. for. That's, they were used well, to so it. That's, that's the big thing is that it's just um, you get used to things because the vast majority of human beings who have ever existed, like they didn't have electricity. They didn't have shit. Like they lived in caves. They and had that. Half of them died in childbirth. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just that thing infants. that you remember of, um, like, uh, just even 150 years ago. Like, if you got a splinter, th there was a good chance you were dead. Like, that was it. Yeah, I'm I just had imagining... a good run, 25 years, and that's it for me. Like, you don't have air conditioning, and you live in, like, the jungle? Like, <laughs> that's oh, it I still don't have air conditioning. <laughs> We you don't have air conditioning? Have, not yeah, in that you live crazy in like, land. There. I guess, it, is, it, is it naturally like, cold? Because, like, I used to live in Florida. Imagine living in Florida without air conditioning. You have to have well, it here. It's just I live in Australia. So we need air conditioning. Muggy. Otherwise, we'd die. Yeah. yeah. People living like, in the desert. Hot, the obviously, the British weather is much more commonly, uh, the, in one word, damp. But, um... The uh, we get heat waves every once in a while, and it, like, it kills the whole fucking country, because none of us have, ever have preparation for it. No rag well, I, I mean, changed since ancient times. All right. Uh, I don't believe like if you're talking about the most basic concept of the process. Sure. Um, but I've been to like wineries and stuff. And I'm when it when when it comes to the technology and the techniques and being able to um, refine things and bottle them and keep them preserved and stuff. I was like, fucking get out of I mean, here with that you shit. Don't, you don't even need to go that far. Like, I'm I'm reasonably certain that 2,000 years ago we didn't have a pumpkin spice IPA. Like, <laughs> well, that was just well, not a thing. When did well, Bailey's get invented? IPA is, well, IPA is just disgusting always. So it's, yeah, I wouldn't even worry about that. Um, someone Frank's, in chat said, you're um, being too hot take with your liquid takes. Some of them taste no, nice. No, IPA is nasty. Ugh. Um, <laughs> The, the the number of people who are alive now, I believe the estimate for the number of human beings who have ever lived is 108 billion. So, like, of all human history, like 100,000 years. So it's it, it would be safe to say that the majority of human beings lived in a world without electricity, running water. Um, well, we've talked about this before, like, though. Their perception of happiness would be very different from ours. Um. Well, I think it's, it's the thing of... um. It's one of the reasons why reading history is super valuable because you can find that there are a lot of common commonalities in terms of like the things that people were worried about and thought about. Even you know, if you go back to ancient Greece or like, I mean, that's what a lot of like ancient philosophies were built around. It's like people are upset because they want things, so you got to try not to want as much, and then you'll be happier. And it's like, well, shit, that seems to just be consistent across because it's our material circumstances have changed. Yeah, because Gautama but, was um, right. Based. Um. Well, it's just yeah, like the the human the human condition is the same, but the material circumstances have a a, a really a, a different. But we're still fundamentally the same people. Yeah. Um. Yep. I'm getting my coffee. I'll be back. Earth is six thousand years old. Add flat. True. That's true. That's, That's very true. true. Yeah. <laughs> One day true, NASA true is going to send up a spaceship and it's going to hit the glass dome that is the firmament that holds back the waters of the deep. Well, and the well that, that, no, that already happened. That's why they're suppressing it. Remember that time where everyone shot up and then it smashed the glass and they had to replace it? And then they wiped everyone's memory? They didn't wipe mine. They didn't build for that sort of thing. They Do all the countries mine. have to pitch in if, it, if the firmament yeah, cracks? Every, so they all... It'll require 93.6% of all guns to fire. So it was, you know tough to, to nail yeah, that maybe i could see how like all the western countries and like the un they'll like pitch in a whole bunch of money and stuff to fix the firmament and china's like nah y'all got this mm -hmm. i just have y'all gonna pay for it so fuck it we're not gonna do it i'm gonna go pee all right do, 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 which means it's just me and you now doom oh hey how you doing i'm all right <laughs> you're hanging you in there two and a half the... hours in yeah, I mean, I, I can do a lot more than two and a half hours. I was going to say, we've plenty plenty left, I'm sure. 
I mean, yeah, anyway. it's been two and a half hours. We're fucking nine minutes into an 18 minute video, which is actually pretty good for us, honestly. <laughs> like the a lot of the stuff he said that we sort of just played, and we're like, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, we'll get into the problems now where he's praising Wen Wu because he's going to get to his motivation and that's going to get real, real complicated. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that it's something that um, just in general, I think people neglect character relationships as an, as an, like an element of analysis. Like Personally, I think it's almost more important than the characters, like the relationships between characters. And the character relationships in this movie are just like legitimately was, nonsensical I mean, that's, that's what we're there for right is like but but then i'd say character and character relationships are kind of one and the same like yeah like they, for a character to be same. consistent they need to act consistently with whatever the relationship like, i guess unless you had a well because even if you had a story where it was a guy stranded on like i don't know an island it could be the relationship they have with themselves or a, um, or a volleyball yeah well, i mean there's yeah, a, there's exactly. a there's a lot of different layers to it. I mean, like there's power games sure. that go on and there's like games of like perception where characters will know something but not reveal it and try and manipulate other people. And there's like types of relationships, like you could have different types of affection and all sorts of things can go on. But in this movie, there's like none of that. It's just like the level zero information is presented and people accept it uncritically. And then that you just move on. There's like no, none of the, none of the even potential nuance of, you know, the complexity of human relationships is, is remotely present. Oh no, more tweets. Oh, we don't have to go into that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can read them in your own time. I suppose we should press on with yeah. this video. Um, well, you know what? Uh, I scanned around a little bit because I wasn't sure where we were, so let's find out where we are. Before, they also seem to work based on instinct. Are we Before ahead or, or uh, behind where we were? Uh, we need to go back a little bit. He, wait, so they just said oh, the rings go. work on instinct and you don't need to know how they work? I think we <laughs> have to assume that the rings have some ability to know what you were thinking. Oh, totally, yeah. Intentions are. They have to... Otherwise, how do they work? Like? Well, it's the, prob it's the problem with a lot of stuff in, um, in Marvel. Like, Iron Man's suit, how do, you, how do you control for a lot of the features unless the AI itself kind of knows what... Um, do there are th some things, you know, for example, like powering some up things, and powering sure. down the repulsor. They like show his hand really close and he does a particular yeah, hand yeah, yeah, movement yeah. to like, you know, stuff yeah. like that. You um, can be like, okay, all right. But, but like, does, does he, uh, Friday know, hey, look, Tony wants to talk to people with his helmet off, so I'm going to take his helmet off so he can talk to them, you know, that kind of shit. Well, we could argue that a lot of it is stuff like actual voice commands. They just don't. Um, you Maybe know, aesthetically have them play to us. Well, I mean, here, here's one like Spider Man when he's using his little uh, when he's got the Iron Spider suit and it has the legs and it does stuff. It's like that's got to be really in sync with you, otherwise you're gonna be. Oh yeah, he up. was surprised by <laughs> that, wasn't he? He was surprised when they saved him initially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then they're doing incredibly complex, crazy maneuvers on Titan. It's like, hmm, that's uh, that's pretty intuitive, like Peter said. It's well, yeah, very intuitive. We know there are there are muscle movements, and we know there are voice commands, but then there are some things where, that do, like seem like, how did you know? How does it do? It's like the AI it... would have to know exactly yeah. what you wanted, and maybe it does. But like, imagine if there was a disconnect and it didn't sync up. And I think Tony does have it linked to his like possibly his brain at some point, right? Like he has like senses maybe. or whatever. Because if you think about the um yeah. the bath thing. He probably has the technology to, to do something like that. They um, even have that yeah, in uh, our world to a degree. I remember watching a Vsauce video about it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's the thing that you see. I can't remember exactly. It's on one of those Elon Musk things where, like, you've got the monkey. Well, not the monkey, the chimp. you got to get it accurate. The chimp is there playing a little game, and he's moving the cursor yeah. with, his, with uh, like, a gesture that he's doing, and eventually they disconnect the physical interface but they can detect what his mind intends when he's moving it so accurately that it it just it's it works perfectly. So I, I can imagine it's um Yeah, something like that in the MCU. I think we just have to assume that's how it works anyway. Yeah, and with the rings, like all kinds of crazy shit happens and there's no voice commands. There's there are gestures, Ugh. but a lot of it seems like it mm -hmm. must be something to do with detecting your fucking it intentions. Has yeah. It has to, yeah. I'm back. We can or, proceed, by the way. Um, we can what? Uh, yeah, we can carry on um, with our Shang-Chi video. Oh, thank you. 
You want and on one arm to make the, the voice of reason punch. as usual. They also extend into this energy whip thingy. And then on the other end, they can okay. be a shield or steps okay. or bars to swing. Wow. Does this not sound like my stick can fire lasers yeah. and it can I guess break? It's just funny well, yeah, well, I have anti laser armor, so your lasers He's... can't pierce my armor. It's... I guess it just sounds like he wants Green Lantern then. Like, some sort of energy construct that you can use to create other things besides what it is. No, it doesn't sound like what he wants, because that would be restricted to something. Well, I, I think that's... Yeah, I guess that's that's true, right? Green Lantern... Well, yeah, Dude, what I'm Green trying Lantern to highlight has a really cool power, is that he almost really. likes the fact that there's nothing really tying any of this together. It's just cool things Which happen. Which is weird, because the limitations are just an important part of... um, Like... Iron Man has scale. this crazy suit and these stakes. crazy cool abilities. Yes, definitely for stakes. It's like the easy example. Iron Man, super powerful as an entity with like tech and stuff, but it is just a guy in there. And once you get through that, he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, Captain America, he's super strong, really good with shields, but like you can shoot him and that's going to work. Same with Spider Man. Well, some, um, people, some people be mentioning sorry. that he injects himself with chips in Iron Man 3. So that was to. Like, isn't that specifically that so that they can, that Mark one 42. suit can attack? Yeah, yeah, it's for Mark it was, 42. It was so Mark 42 could, like, attach to him. It, I don't... I don't and, know. And it was that. specifically when he did a gesture as well. It yeah. wasn't mental, I don't think. It was loads of gestures. It's, so it's all physical at that yeah. point, which is something that we thought yep. was a thing anyway. But that opens the door, you can say. Mm -hmm. Also, like, having limitations and being pushed to them is sort of like a cornerstone of yep. character arcs and motivation and, like, yep. building character and stuff. If you don't have clear motivations, I mean, it's it's getting to the point where you it's well, yeah, very um, difficult to build a character at all. This is actually something that I think was a little bit of a problem in phase one with like, so you got Iron Man to the point where one of his repulses comes off, his helmet's off, and uh, he's on, what, like 2% power. It's like, fucking hell, we understand yeah. very much these in dire circumstances. Uh, Cap and Winter Soldier, yes, I'm referencing Winter Soldier, when he's shot like twice, once in the chest and once in the thigh or whatever, and he's slowly moving, we're like, holy fuck, this is him at his limit now, because that, that's like as much as he can take before he's about to die. Thor is, is a little bit more trouble than that. You're like, Thor's kind of just, he can he can like get like mud on him and he can look tired, but it's, he got and, fat. And, he, and he can be stabbed. And it's like, ah. He can be stabbed, yeah. And you're sort of just like, well, I don't really know what any of that means. I don't even know what, if he has a healing factor. You know what I mean? Like, you, well, you... Thor is in the same awkward c category as like Wonder Woman. It's like, you can take a lot of damage, but bullets seem to maybe potentially. I think Thor it is impl... bulletproof. I well, think yeah, Thor I'm pretty has sure been shot bulletproof. and is bulletproof. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Actually, yeah. He, wait, 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 wait. He's bulletproof, but he can be stabbed? Yeah, well, I maybe we assume it's some Asgard shit. Like it's well, so I was gonna say it, it is Loki's blade, <laughs> so it could be Asgardian and Loki steel. is super Seems strong pretty, too. Yeah, so maybe so. he's strong and because we know this, that we know that like Hulk can hurt Thor big time. This came up so in he's, uh, he's the Suicide Squad. Him. There is a difference, maybe. a meaningful difference between being shot and being stabbed. That you can have stuff defend you from bullets, but not necessarily knives, depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. Um. Get Asgardite bullets and shoot him with Asgardian bullets. Yeah. <laughs> or Asgardian bullets. Well, well they, we've already got Dragon Scale as a new material now, so what, yeah. I wonder what that does to Thor. Maybe if you stab him with a Dragon Scale weapon, it'll kill him. I don't know. Yeah. I was really disappointed to not see a Dragon Met Helm in there. You know, I am um, in. I, maybe I zoned out for a second while I was doing some thinking, but this is also like the stakes issue. Of I have I don't know what he can do at any point he could pull something out of his ass through magic and it just solves the issue at hand. There's or no understanding of what his capabilities are. The other option and is you, that from it, a utility it, perspective, not being able to pull something out of his ass costs him all of it too. That could just happen randomly. Yeah, and then like why couldn't you just make that happen? There, I mean, with all the other stuff the rings do, how come you couldn't do X Y Z? I I just don't see. There's no through line because if 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 you if you give someone well, a jetpack, right? That's a very understandable, yeah. grounded <laughs> way to give someone something powerful that you could relate to. Like, okay, I know what their capabilities are. Rocketeer, right? Yeah. I know what the Rocketeer can do. I he could fly around. He could move places. That he that allows him a lot of, uh, uh, you know, utility and uh, you know, plot stuff he could do because of that. Um, well, I'm always gonna... rings. Go, go for it. No, finish your, finish your point, because mine might um, actually not be as related as I thought. Well, I, I was pretty much just saying that the way, when it comes to the rings, you know, you never you never <laughs> know what he can do. You don't really know what he can't do. 
And I don't think writers can keep track of the things that he's already done and reincorporating no. them. Because yeah, once he does that, something, the, once he's got that shield, once he's got that sword, once he's got that thing he could do, if he ever doesn't use that when he needs yeah. to, then unless he's under extreme duress or incredible, some reason why he doesn't use it, then that's an issue. It's a twofold problem. The twofold problem is what you've just said there, where it's like, if he doesn't use it again, then there's a problem. But also just... <laughs> Give me... <laughs> damn it. Bless you. Damn it. Inconvenient timing. Um... The second issue, oh my god, don't tell me that it slipped away, that it's gone. No, don't tell me that. It was, it's you there. sneezed away, you sneezed god, out a you thought. You sneezed your thoughts away. It's gone, I, quick, I, well, ringy, is, it hasn't landed yet, go second collect thought, it. The second thought was, I got it, that's alright. It's Oh it's, boy, I, that's I good. It the, I could hear you going. Um, yeah, you no, it back. It's, it's back in there. Um, yeah. the, the, the second thought was, if you have no limitations, then it's basically impossible for people to have expectations that they can reasonably... It's it's hard to know what's going to happen, and a lot of just storytelling is setting up expectations, whether or not they get paid off. Well, yeah, um, there's no suspense. There's no suspense yeah, because you can't anticipate what might happen. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly, exactly what I was feeling in the theater. I was just bored. I'm like, I have, yeah. I have no I have no like mental frame with which to evaluate what yeah, might happen um, because I don't know uh, any of the rules. We need limitations. We need some kind of limitations. I feel like the one of the best MCU fights to represent this would be the. Civil War and <clears throat> the end of Civil War fight where uh, every capacity all three characters have are used to their maximum, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. And the limitations of Iron Man's suit are extremely important in that scene as well. And so if someone said to you, Bucky and Cap versus Iron Man in a complicated environment that gives them cover as well as opportunities to um, cripple his suit, you're like, alright, alright, let's see how this unfolds because I understand. If I said... Shang-Chi is going to fight his dad who has 10 rings and a thousand years of experience. I feel like <laughs> he loses. Well, no, well here, no, here's the problem. No, but no, but when his dad attacks, he rolls a d20, and if he critically fails, the rings defect. <laughs> but, so that's what I mean. If, if Knowing that, technically you do, because that happened in the uh, when he fought the woman in the opening. So it's just like, um, yeah, By he, the could, way, he could lose if his weapons defect, I guess. I like that D20 example because one of the things I really like about Pathfinder 2nd Edition is the way that it deals with uh, critical successes and failures. Typically, in a lot of role-playing stuff, D&D uh, &D and Pathfinder 1st Edition, if you roll a 1, it's a critical fail. If you roll a 20, it's a critical success. Now, there's a 5% chance of either of those things happening, and that means that no matter, under the normal rules, no matter how skilled you are, no matter how unskilled you are, you have the exact exact same chance for incredible success or incredible failure. And what Pathfinder 2nd Edition does is that instead of just 1 in 20 and it's done, that's critical or uh, fail, uh, fail or success, um, you have to roll at least 10 over the target number for a critical success or 10 under for a critical fail which means that the more you practice, the more you train, the better you are statistically at doing something, the less likely it is, and potentially not even possible to fail, but the less likely it is for you to fail and the more likely it is for you to succeed, which is more accurate to reality, I feel. Well, that Far begs the question, why does, why does Wenwu fail so often then? He's had a thousand years of <laughs> toppling governments and, you know... Being because Sauron he's never fought Shang Chi before, and he's just that good. Well, Shang Chi was trained by his mother's sister to use wind to beat him. Wind, yeah. Whatever that's like that's that like means. the most explanation we get. It's just I'm just saying, like that doesn't that's not anything. Uh, it's it was upsetting to see Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. In this movie. Yo. It's like you're that's so right. good. Why are you here? To give it like legitimacy, like that's the only fucking reason they hired her. Specifically, yeah. the she's, reason that annoys us for it being, yeah. Um, but yeah, what you just said about the D20 stuff, Rags, that was a Mark Twain quote, right? It is, yes. Mark <laughs> Twain, uh, when he used to play, so he played the prototype of D&D, &D, which was like uh, strategy war games mm. uh, that were used with armies and things. Um, and that, yeah, we owe, we owe tabletop role-playing games to Mark Twain. That's very true. Pretty cool. Pretty cool legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, didn't didn't Mark way. Twain write um, Fu Manchu? Yes. Probably his most famous work, actually. Everything goes by back the way, to Mark Twain. But by the way, just just to be clear, we're not talking about just crit critical hits for weapons. I said critical fails and critical successes. 
which are different than the range of critical hits on weapons or potentially abilities. Those are as you probably all know. Yeah, as you probably all know. This I just yeah. want to clarify that in the chat because some people were saying da 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 da. Just yeah, so what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I know it's, like, it's very. This, I mean, it's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty just commonly established known information. Clarifying. I was gonna say, if you know anything about Mark Twain, you know all this shit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. off onto something where you can use them to do a big jump the 10 rings seem no, to be limited you can use to what a character can imagine jump. it does sound like <laughs> you, you start the words like are you doing that on purpose like as a joke or are you remember earlier he said you could make a punch or an even bigger punch like what a punch or an even bigger punch is like what are we is this like this is like are you fucking with me yeah <laughs> <laughs> and back to the idea that we said punches of different of uh, how many rings are you going to utilize for this punch? You know what? Maybe that's the thing. You don't want to overextend yourself by mm -hmm. using too many rings. So it it part what of what if there's the, a mana half, bar as well? Like the, yeah, half the, the rings skill and using the rings. Well, let's see, not to over uh, you, exert yourself, knowing the appropriate level of force to use for a given scenario. Having the rings you, need to recharge would be a great. Actually, I think that would be well, like, like a, a really unglowing good. Way to that still yeah, recharge. The, well, just there's a bar level. It's like a mana bar or an, a power bar, and it needs to recharge. Like we can make the lights go down on each ring so as you're okay. depleting them. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So that's a clear visual way for you to identify. Uh oh, I'm I'm in a bit of trouble here. I need to and slow it down. Regards to what Rags saying about the use of the rings, it could that could be a really great payoff in an Avengers movie where he's never used all ten and he knows he can't. But there's this big, you know, enemy that like well, snap of the stones, that's, man. That's your buff. Like, that's you, yeah. That's a, right. 10 is too difficult limit. to wield. 10 rings. Yeah. It's, ooh, you better, that, that very likely. 10 rings on one hand, it's like, careful. You. Yeah, yeah you're, careful. This will be the last thing you, I'm like, incredible that's... power, but it'll be the last thing you ever do. You better make it count. And that's crack mm -hmm. for audiences, because for us, we'd be complaining, like, why why is it that, like, they charge and recharge, they're magical, like, how does that work? You know, we could we could go about the nitty-gritty of the details, but, like, an audience being like, oh, shit, yeah, he's using all ten rings for this one, whoa, like that. Oh, that, my God. Th that's, because I wonder what the payoff was in this film, where they're just like, ah, oh, he stole all ten rings off his dad. Ah. <laughs> he did a, like, okay. Well, here, here's a... Here's a question. Are the rings going to defect from him as well? Like, is he just going to be in a fight and the rings are just going to nah. stop fucking working? No. No, no fucking no, way they, anyone they takes the rings brother. off him. Yeah. It's, yeah, they're his brother. And that's the thing, if you wanted to be Maybe like, yeah, well, he was... Marvel would take him, it's like, these are evil alien <laughs> rings. We got it. I got to get him off you. I'm not an evil alien myself, of course. No, no, not me. Well, no, I'm, I'm the, a good guy. The evil thing, because like, I thought that's why, like, really, that Shang-Chi was able to take them off his dad, because his dad's, like, kind of evil. The rings may be like, we don't like being evil. Take us. <laughs> no, <laughs> we want to be good. Yeah, but how come they didn't care earlier when he was going around conquering and stuff? I mean, no, well, exactly. If they introduce a moral line. element but, to the sentience wait. of the rings, that'll fuck everything up wait, again. Wait, wait, hold on. But but the rings are evil. The rings want to like possess him to go release a Cthulhu monster. That well, was the so wall. So the problem is the film says that, but apparently no. It was just the interdimensional <laughs> the dragon that was telling. It literally. That the ring then, managed then to why does do the it? film say that the ring? I, is he wearing the ring? No, you are. Writing, you are correct. Yeah. That was something we discussed. We have no fucking clue why they said that. That the voices start once he put the rings on. It's like, what the fuck do the rings have to do with the other dimension wall? What, what do you... This... Well, and that's something I've just now thought about as well, is because they use their airbending magic from that dimension to control the rings. Do the rings have any relationship at all to this other dimension? Yeah, because if they fell from They're a comet... Master, right? Or whatever. We have no idea. Well, we don't. We don't. We don't know anything way. about the rings. He just has them. He's like, oh, well, well, so thousands I, I, of years ago, he had in, them. Of in course. the opening, she says that they were found in a crater, but that, I guess that could mean anything. But I guess what I'm saying is, like, for perspective, if somebody did jujitsu or something, would that make the rings controlled by them? Probably not. So, like, yeah, the why... rings have to have a relationship with this air bending tribe. Or yeah, maybe, maybe, world. maybe the lull makes sense in the sequel. Oh, I'm sure it'll we've, make we've said that sense. many times where it'll make sense later. It doesn't. It never does. No, if it made that, that's what I was talking about with like the first 30 frames is like if there was a cohesive vision and there were like, you know, there, there was a really good style that was putting all of this together, it would already make sense. You wouldn't need to wait for it to make sense. You know, the only time I think I was ever right about that accidentally in terms of things getting better was I think I've told you before, Frank, just the. Phase 2 was annoying me because I was like, we've done way too much collateral damage now for it to not be addressed. 
And then Civil War was like, yeah. we're addressing the collateral damage. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> yes, yeah. they're doing it. Imagine. And since Shang-Chi has never trained with them before, they also yeah. seem to work based on instinct. You don't need to know oh, how to use convenient. them. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Too great. I know. That's Imagine they didn't, a... we'd be fucked. Also, what an insane extrapolation. They seem to work on instinct. Um, I mean, there's no other like, I mean, that that's the conclusion you have to draw. But that's just because it's really badly written. And there's know, no other I, way I, to explain the things that you see. I, well, at this point, I'm like, there is no conclusion to draw. It is purely in the we don't know category. Is it like you get the rings and then like the ring uploads like a PDF to your head that explains how to use it? Only mm -hmm. only if you can instinctually open PDF files. Maybe for maybe maybe, maybe you're incompatible with your PDF. software. You need to update to you know yeah, like when we wasn't on Windows 11. But, well, but he yeah, has Shang Chi was he, he, no, Shang but he has hold on, he has the bloodline. So he like the driver gets passed down from father to son. So he's got the driver. Oh, that's the that, expl oh, that, that explains he, it. Definitely, he might be old. <laughs> like he might be an old OS, and then Shang Chi is the new one as the son. So he can open zips by default, but. The entire files have to be downloaded individually by Wen Wu, so he's still unlocking uh, his potential over a thousand time. years. Still, a, well, that's uh, unzipping. Yeah. Shang Chi's just like, yeah, I that, got that shit. I mean, the, the, I mean, Wen Wu has a thousand years of development history, and you know, Shang Chi is like this new thing. It's probably got bugs, like more if it's like Windows Vista. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> Windows Wen Wu's 98. Windows Vista. Well, I, <laughs> Shang Chi I, is I, Windows maybe, Seven. Maybe, I mean, I mean, the ben uh, we're looking at the benchmarks right here, and it seems like Shang Chi is just uh, coming out on top in the metrics. Well, he is so. the thirty eighty Ti. And if, just, if it's like you know a willpowery thing, then I just like okay, because uh, because I guess the rings it just didn't matter that he had them for this long or knew what they were. The dad is just like I guess Shang Chi's just going to beat him because he has more investment. I think it's just like I just can't. What you sh what you tell me is the case and what i see and what i can believe are just they're just in two different worlds at this point nothing seems to follow from anything yeah they're like i i can't see any power that the father has with the rings that shan chi isn't just going to have at the beginning of the next movie like yeah he's gonna it's gonna start with him pogo hopping and then like he's gonna blow something up or whatever and he's gonna make a big you know spinny ring wall Wait. that's gonna stop a it's just all the same shit's gonna happen. There's not gonna be any no training sequence, no explanation of how it works. His achievements just, are pretty oh. up there, right? Like the dragon he obliterated is like an alternate dimension demon soul sucker. It's just like that's a pretty big achievement. Again, well, uh, well, I thought that was I thought that was Aquafina. Well, she. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they both did. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is an interesting it's question. It's like. Long. You have Aquafina, who's like unimpressive by human standards, just kind of tagging along <laughs> to a super adventure. It's like why? Yeah, no one knows why. She, doesn't, she doesn't, just it, doesn't it make doesn't it make Shan Shi like a shitty boyfriend to be bringing her along on this shit where she should have died like multiple times? Well, he should have told her not to come on the plane with him. Yeah, but he just didn't because he, he she just was, doesn't have any she willpower. She was so insistent. That's the thing. Yeah, He's... it's like no, you need to understand. My my father is like a a, a magical pseudo Hitler. Who is like commanding an army of, uh, that's like overthrown world governments, and he's sending fucking assassins that have knives for hands after me to come kill me to take my the, my mother's necklace. Okay, this is too dangerous for you. I'm sorry. And then she says, "No, I'm stay coming." Stay in the apartment. It's funny to me because you know if I was gonna go on some kind of plane trip and someone was like, "I'm coming with you," it's like I'm just not gonna tell you where and what I'm doing. <laughs> that's it. Or You're once screwed. We, once you know, once you get into the taxi, I'm just gonna jump out and run away. <laughs> or <laughs> better, off. better yet, she goes home. Then you get into a taxi and she doesn't get in with you, and that's that. <laughs> he just he, he just walks to he just walks to the door and she's like, "Where are you going?" And he's like, "By the way." My name's not Sean, and just cut. <laughs> Never see her again. I, I find it. I actually find it really. I don't want to cut. I want. To, I want the scene of him running down the streets, <laughs> like running away from her, trying to lose her. It's an action <laughs> scene. She's like, <laughs> yeah, she's chasing him. No, and... It's 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 not an action scene. It's entirely diegetic. We just have it is action in that there's action, but like I want the sound design to be entirely authentic of just him like go away. Leave me alone. Well, like, he thinks he's, he's lost it, gets away. into the taxi, and then the camera yeah. just pans, and her face is in the window, like, where are you going, Sean? Yeah, and then he's like, 
starts screaming. John! Jesus Christ. It, it would be inappropriate to have like a crazy taxi sequence where he's trying to get to the airport. <laughs> Imagine he's on the plane in the seat and the camera pans to a window and she's there and again. She's on like, the, where are you going, on Sean? Yeah. There you go. We made a really then, great comedy now. And then, and then she can get the rings because clearly she is like an interdimensional being. If she yeah, can she hang has on to the most willpower. Yes, and then, and then she would be really let power. down because she went through all this effort to get on the plane. They don't even have a vegetable, a vegetarian <laughs> meal. Right. Oh, well, she doesn't yeah. have to worry about that. Wow, she's got her willpower to worry about. will annoy him. Knows no bounds. She's the ultimate power in the universe. Oh, yeah. The same problem as Black Widow, where the main character isn't really making the decisions in the movie. Yeah, Give him it, some damn agency, yeah. you know? <laughs> Don't just acquiesce to everything and then at the end tell me you have incredible willpower. And, and this is coming from me, you. somebody who gets annoyed when people say don't ever write passive characters. You could do it, but like, come yeah, on, just yeah, give, well, me, yeah. give me somebody who makes the dude. Decisions, I, yeah, know? I'm just bored of my these characters just not making the decisions. I want them to make the decisions. Well, I want them to be yeah, proactive. Yeah, like, you, in favor of these other characters who need to because again yelena has a lot more agency than uh than that because she's yeah. the important one now um, i mean if you want to have a passive protagonist in a superhero movie that really works it would just be a, it have to be a very different movie yeah and, because, and, 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 yeah, and, and sure. it's difficult I, mean, I could see it working it's difficult to nail but it's just like yeah i just don't really have much investment well, in a character I, that's just like where do i go next who do i punch i'm like yeah i feel like the the easy way to do it would be to if you wanted to have a superhero thing where it's a passive i don't know have a superhero on his day off who just wants to chill out and do stuff who just keeps getting embroiled in these crazy scenarios and every time he tries to leave it just gets worse even frozone close to even when frozone was man. at home he wasn't a passive yeah, character so. he no, needed he that suit god damn it he needed the yep. suit. He needed to know where it was. Tell he me where it is, woman. He I'm not a, a passive habit. character. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I am actively interested in the greater good. <laughs> yeah, th maybe there's an interesting area to explore, but that's not what they're. Uh, no, that's not what they're getting at. They're just stringing no. him along. They're like, well, oh, some... look, look, you're the hero. We need you to be the hero. So I we're don't just know gonna. What to do okay. with them, basically. The difference that I would say. We're gonna put you on a plot treadmill. Is designing a passive character along. versus designing an active character that ended up passive because you fucked up. Mm. Like, yeah, there is an important difference between those two. Absolutely. Well, Shang Chi at like, the beginning, he's trying to like he's trying to make decisions. Even yeah, though the first being act influenced. is much more yeah. about him, and it's it's probably the best of the three, honestly. I would say the first act is the best. It's kind of like it's it's closer to the movie that I would have preferred than what comes afterward. Like well, the, when the sister gets involved, and then when they oh, have the all the sister dragons sucked. Stuff. Yeah, I don't even. The, the problem. Yeah. yeah, the problem. Do we do we cut the first act before or after the fucking Fight Club sequence? Because that <clears> is such a goddamn mess. Every single individual detail. Of I that would. Is fucked I up. would say so, that is first act. Yeah, for, the, for the sake way. of the uh, story, it's like I would absolutely cut all of the Fight Club bullshit. Like literally the entire yeah. thing. Cut all of it. Let's let's have the sister do something else. But. Obviously, from an action standpoint, it's like, well, the audiences will really like to see Abomination of War. And hey, fighting. look, Abomination yeah. look, a Black Widow fighting an extremist guy. Isn't that cool? References. And winning. Yeah. She's like, she's like I, built, I built my entire empire on my own with uh... my own flesh and blood. And then, like, and then she just fucking lets, she just lets it go and lets it get destroyed and doesn't give a fuck and never mention again. <laughs> he doesn't it's even like, get I, mentioned. I was... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, to go I, fuck I, it, I guess. I'm... I'm just thinking because, you know, somebody might be like, whoa, what? So you like it when Tony's arrogant, but not this person? It's like, so it's. I don't mind it's the arrogance. Tough. Well, the problem is that it's like, yeah, Tony Stark did. Like, the story is critical of. Iron Man is critical of Tony, but like, this film isn't critical of her. Like, well, she's great. And that's celebratory of her. Well, I don't, um, I, don't, I don't mind her, yeah. like, being a girl boss, but if she's going to be a fucking girl boss, then she should care about her business being destroyed. Like yeah, there, there should, should be some investment have, there. Yeah, their character traits and actions come as a result of you being a girl boss or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. if you are doing all the things, if you're the kind of character who can not only wants to do that, but actually goes through and tries it and is successful somehow, that implies a lot about the way that you will behave and the things that you'll care about. And they just drop it, apparently. Naturally. And like, well, a, how about nice, this nice, yeah. comparison too, right? You remember how it really fucking annoyed me in the film where she's just ripping into Shang-Chi when she has no idea what happened. She just knows mm -hmm. that he didn't turn back up. That's all she knows. And oh, uh, I... so, so it annoys oh, cool. me that yeah. she's willing to practically like hurt him dramatically for that. 
and condemn him as a person. So that that's annoying to me, watching that happen, because I just think she's a piece of shit. Meanwhile, you have, like, Tony from the get-go, even in um, the opening scene, he's, um... He's, he's, they, he's trying they, to help he's not, out. He's not, as, yeah. he's not as much of an asshole as uh, Doctor Strange is. They both, like, ran uh, to a degree as, as egos, but, um... You know, like, even he has that call with Obi, and he's just like, Hey, man! And, like, they're totally chill throughout the film, and it's only when Obadiah reveals that he's like, I've been subverting you for the, basically your whole life, because you're useless, and I, I have the better idea how to run the company. He's just, like, stunned. Because, you know, at first he doesn't know how to, how to deal with it. And, and, and what I'm saying is just, like, it's, it's much more um, informed uh, reactions to everything and points of view. You can even understand how he became the person he was. She, on the other hand, like, I just feel like she's ignoring loads of information to be a dick. Well, I, 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 okay, I was so confused. I, I thought when she was giving that whole speech about, like, someone not coming back, I thought she was talking about Wang Wu. <laughs> no. She's talking about Shang-Chi? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what was, yeah. what was her motivation for running away from so, her dad? So the logic was Shang-Chi went on his mission, he said he'd come back, and he didn't, so that, fuck him. Uh, and then she left. Yeah, um, she left just because it's a, yeah, she, I don't know, she, toxic she environment, him. I guess. Yeah. Um... And so, yeah, when she meets him again, it's like, oh, you abandoned me, piece of shit. And it's like, oh, yeah, you 14-year-old who was just tasked with assassinating somebody, you were under a lot that of stress. That makes so much you... less sense. Yeah, It no, makes well, so much more sense. I thought I thought the fucking Wang, Wang Wu abandoned her. Why would she be mad at a fucking 14 year That's so dumb. Because we need conflict. Yeah, she literally, even if, if, she, conflict feels if totally she was a normal unfair. human being, and then, like, she sees it. Well, to be fair, she would have fucking searched him down by now. But instead, she's Probably. just like, yeah. I hate you. And it's like, do you have any idea what happened? She's like, no. Like, and, right. But I'm going to remain indignant in any case. Which is why I like the fact it. That you were in extreme stress. There's key things yeah. like this that um, well, uh, also, just make the difference between someone like a Tony and, and I can't remember her name, by the way. Okay, so, okay, so like the Wang Wu or whatever sends the postcard giving the idea that it's his sister, so he goes, goes to find his sister. But then how does his sister know that he's coming? Oh, it's just badly written. <laughs> like that's, that's all that there is to that whole aspect. Like, well, someone said, I don't think she was brought yeah. up in an environment that fosters empathy, to be fair. She's a human being. Like the, but Shang-Chi still... has empathy, so what's her problem? Well, so did her parents. Yeah, Shang-Chi was, Shang was raised so to be a fucking assassin. Mom. Yeah, but, and look at him. Look at how he turned out. He wants to like, save people, and he's but, but nice if, to people. But if we want to conclude, she's just she's just a dick. I'd be like, well, then she's a dick. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know what to but say. Like, don't 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 tell me that I'm supposed to like her. Then you know, like, well, I don't know what is likable about her. She's annoying. Well, I mean, I feel like the big thing is she abandoned Shang Chi, and it's like, oh, I wanted you to feel fear. It's like, so that's bad. Yeah, You're well, a bad, yeah. bad thing to do. To make somebody fear dying just because you want to make them feel like they're going to die. And that gives you joy that they're under emotional stress. That is like, Wait, oof. Oh my god. I'm just, I'm, every time I think about something, I get so fucking confused. Okay, so she's supposed to be on, on Shang-Chi's side because she saves Aquafina, And she's like yeah. on his side for the entire Somehow. movie. But then she takes over the Ten Rings that's against him? Well, she said, because she's, I guess she's, they want to go like, ah, see, she's kind of, ooh, anti-hero. It's like, um, okay. <laughs> sure. Then I mean, why did she save the Aquafina? Um, because, I don't know, she's a good person, except, nah, she's maybe an anti-hero. I, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. This isn't even worth thinking about. We'll find out <laughs> in the next movie. Watch, it's, all it is is watch the next movie. Watch the next one, because that's what Marvel is at the moment. You don't care about what's happening in this movie. You're just hyped and anticipated for what's next. There's always the next. I'm I'm just shocked that like the level of confused I was when I walked out of the theater is like less confused than I am now. Well, <laughs> and interestingly to me, I was about to say um the, the the whole like empathy thing. I was like I'm not even necessarily talking about that. Like curiosity, just being like where were you? Where did you? What go? happened? Yeah, yeah. What happened? There must have been a reason. Yeah, and if it was, well, I just abandoned you because I don't she, like you guys, be like, oh, okay, that's it then. Well, it's kind of interesting, right? Because the film says she doesn't even need closure, but it's like, but she's so mad at him, clearly, clearly she has she a does. problem here. <laughs> yeah. So she does need closure. And if you want closure, you need that explanation. You need to sit down and have a conversation, not, fuck you, I built this empire on my own. Look at you, you you're a valet, and that's that's something. Oh, like, they gave you a scorpion's weapon, it was really cool. 
Oh, yeah. She, yeah, and she trained herself how to use that. Of course she did. Remember, she started Fight Club at 16. Easy. In a skyscraper <laughs> that's under construction. Why did you add so many weird variables? <laughs> and, and, there's like, and there's like a rafters made of bamboo? Well, apparently that is what they're like Wakanda. Apparently, uh, well, yeah, but again, people have insisted that that is the case. That well, so, yeah, that's that's thing. worth addressing on an EFAP if we haven't already. So, like, that came up when we were talking about it, and, like, I think I said, like, I have no idea if that's a flaw or not, and then we mm -hmm. read out in chat some people saying, nope, that's normal, and you're like, oh, okay. So there's, like, people posted the subreddit that were furious that that was brought up as a flaw, and I was like, it was literally counted in the same episode minutes later. It's like, what do you want? And not to mention... Um, there were some people saying that, yes, it's used, but they, they're they surprised that it would be used at that level of a skyscraper, because... Yeah, like, this is... I mean, I'm, bamboo is very useful, undoubtedly, but... It's what, 30 stories up? If it's like up? a skyscraper construction with a, a extremely professional construction company that has to build these to extremely rigorous standards... Yeah, well, you would expect would steel, you bamboo? wouldn't expect bamboo. And that's a perfectly reasonable thing I, to I think, too. I guess that was the... But but the thing is, is that I'm seeing these pictures of some very tall buildings with bamboo scaffolding. Oh, yeah, very what I'm arguing buildings. is it's a perfectly reasonable thing to ask. Oh, I I mean, I asked it. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> meaning I it's that, perfectly reasonable. It, so it is, it is <laughs> Honestly, that, that wasn't even yeah. the, the bamboo wasn't even like top 10 things that annoyed me the most about that. <laughs> no, scene. of course. What annoyed no, me the no, most no, was no, that they course. didn't. They have this really cool like fight club and they just don't even use it to go fight out on some rafters in the dark where you can't see anything. It's like why? I just we don't need, get it. We need this crazy set piece like of of them fighting on a on the side of a skyscraper. And it's like just just imagine him giving orders when we were giving orders to his subordinates. It's like, okay, I need you to go attack my son to steal his mother's necklace. Okay, now when you do this, make sure that you attack him in the area where you're most likely to get hurt. Just like well, maximize uh, that. Like ideally, if, if you could get him in, in a two-part bus that you immediately cut in half, yeah. like that would that would be perfect. Because then 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 we maximize the chance that you personally get hurt when you could attack him literally anywhere else. Like okay. But yes, bamboo is apparently viable. It's just that um. Uh, it, it seems strange. It does. Then beforehand, Wanda or Doctor Strange or Bucky got their forearms on these things. You assume the rings would work for those characters in ways that are unique to their individual fighting style. But the best no, part, I, uh, I assume I that assume there is that? one type of way that the rings work, which is the way that Wenwu is using them. That it does all those. I mean, Shang Chi does a lot things. of the same stuff Wenwu does. Like, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But then again, like, Why? I don't know what these things are limited to. I don't know. Yeah, I have no clue. I that's the thing. I have no clue. Part about the ten rings interrupt the flow of the fight. They enhance whatever the user is already good at. Well, choreographed kung fu gets elevated to the level where it can. So. No, like kung fu just gets changed into completely magical bullshit. Like the idea that you're doing a normal fight and then you add the rings and it enhances it is like, well, no, now it changes into weird, like it's slam cool. the ground and yeah, because kung fu does not account for magical ring. It is not kung fu anymore. It's something rings. else. Yeah, well, it's it's just like if I add a gun, it makes kung fu even more enhanced. They'll be like, well, no, now you're shooting a gun. Like this is a completely different thing. I don't know why you're bringing this up. It doesn't make you faster. Or um, yeah. the punches hit well. It would make the punches hit harder theoretically, but you know well, they use the you... rings to punch the ground or to fire at people. Uses a whip. Like what does that got to do with kung fu? How how would the rings augment Hawkeye's fighting style? <laughs> no idea. He puts the ring on a bow and arrow and fires it and shoots it with his bow. <laughs> can destroy it. The core of what makes the fight work is still intact. The core and of what lend that, this is very ambiguous. It's yeah. just, it's like these this floaty language that I don't know what I don't know what your words are connecting to in the real world and what they mean. The you know? core of the fight is intact. There you go. I fixed a few. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Of what makes the fight work is still intact. And they lend themselves to some absolutely killer fits. Who rolls up sleeves on a suit to their forearms? Killer fits? Someone whose forearms... Do you mean fights? Did he mean fights? Or does he mean they fit oh, well. well? 
maybe, but they don't fit Killer well. They're fits. clearly quite loose on those. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Right. Well, they change size. They, presumably, cha- they yeah. definitely change. They have Ooh, to change. Like Lord yeah. of the Rings. Ooh. Or dance. It is a mean look that's tough to pull off if you don't have the weapons on your wrist to back it up. Second reason why. Wait, 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 what? So that, so that only applies to one person in the world? Then? Well, just people who don't have full sleeves can look a little gay if they don't have their rings. No, no wait, wait, wait. This, this is, okay, okay. I, hold on. I, I, need to, I need to respond to this for people in chat who haven't had, like, corporate jobs. This is the most common male fashion look, is to have, like, a full sleeve shirt that's, like, brought up and you fold it up at the elbow. So they wear rings. This is, like yeah. what you, this is what you would expect of a random dude working at a fucking tech company. Yeah, they it would be a neatly folded. Yeah, or uh, I mean, I don't. I've never seen it without bracelets that are magical attached, because <laughs> otherwise you look really lame. I guess. Also, apparently that's it for the rings. I guess he can't really say anything else. To be fair. But uh, that's one of the so because that's reason one why Wenwu is the best Marvel villain, and I just feel like most other Marvel villains have more understandable uh, weaponry at their disposal that um, is still I don't know versatile, I guess. It's tough to pull off if you don't have the weapons on your wrist to back it up. Second reason Wenwu rules, okay. he's in it for kind of the right reasons. Wenwu really had it all. He was a conqueror with a Where vast army go? and a bunch of- Wait, wait, he's in it for the right reasons? And then he shows a shot of the fucking sequence where they say he only cares about power. Um, well, it depends on how he's going to justify this. Is he going to say? Yeah, like, let's see. Because in it for the right reasons, it's like, do you mean he's morally right? Or do you mean that it's consistent with what he values? Because, I mean, and I don't know how this wouldn't apply to a lot of MCU villains, so, you know. That seems like a, that seems like a normative claim, but sure, let's see what he Surely says. he should be, um... Not only saying why Wen was good, but why he's better than the rest as well, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Should... Well, that's what you have to establish if this is called why he's the best villain. Well, he already backwalked that. He already said why he's maybe the best villain. He like immediately uh, backwalked well, that. Even, uh, even if you... Nice. Lame, but if you said that, still you have to just like make the <laughs> argument, right? Yeah. Not at all. He was a conqueror with a vast army and a bunch of vague weapon trafficking organizations, apparently, and he gave it all up, 100% for his family. Did he? And a lot he of did? times in a story like well, he gave why, up the why rings. Why would you have to give that up for the? Why would you? Why do you need to give all that up for your family? I mean, that never explained. That's the choice he made. I don't know. I don't remember them if telling I'm us the exactly ruler, why. If I'm the ruler, if I'm the ruler of the like the world or whatever, and I have a family, I wouldn't be like, okay, guys, I love you so much, I'm going to give this all up. And they'll and so they'll be like, but don't you have like six hundred and twelve thousand bajillion enemies at this point? I said, I'm giving it all up. We're not going to do this anymore. We're going to go <laughs> live in a house someplace. It's it's not like my bookie's going to show up palace? one day because I lost a bet on the Jets game and kill you. <laughs> it, it is interesting to think about because actually... had he kept it, his family probably would have been fine because he would have just had loads of security, right? Uh, yeah, access to all the security in the world, all the education, all of the privileges and fineries and. Like, man, uh, thanks, Dad. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> like this. You, can't- you know what? You, you bring up a good point. Like, why did he bring it? Because it, it's declared as, like, this thing that we would understand. Like, of course he gives up the rings for the family. It's like, what does that mean? What do you mean? Yeah. Why would you it's do also, that? It's a, it's a world it's- before Google. Like, just imagine how much, more, like... He, he wasn't just a member of the aristocracy. He, like, was the aristocracy. He had, like, the ultimate power and access to, like, educational resources. Farm. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, no, fuck that. The Amish were right. Have you considered just being a low-class peasant that no one knows about? <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I, I kind of like this whole palace thing we got going. Yeah, and if, if it was the wife, it was like, look, you, I'm not going to fuck you unless you lose the rings. You'd be like, oh, man, really? Oh, well, I guess I'm <laughs> Can well, I put them luckily, back on I'm the ruler of the universe. I guess I'll just have these twelve hundred concubines or whatever. I'll find another woman who loves me. I can't remember. This if it was is like, if you loved me, like why would you make me choose this? Like, I don't know. It's one the of those rings choices. Are evil. If she loved him, why wouldn't she introduce him to her family? Wait, did she do that? 
No, she wouldn't let him. That's what I was talking about earlier. She oh. wouldn't let him inside the fucking, uh, the mystical Taolo place. Maybe she knew that he was going to break the wall. Yes, she knew that he's like a, a fucking genocidal maniac, but she marries him and runs off with him. It's I don't ridiculous. Just, I don't know. <laughs> I think you're a genocide. I'll trust you enough to marry you, but I don't trust you enough to show you my family. But I love you and I'll marry you. Yeah. You, what of interest? That's now that's some compartmentalization. I'll, 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 uh, I'll marry you and have your kids, but I'm going to give our kids these very important necklaces and i'm just not going to tell you what they do she marries did, him did she tell the kids what they did no no oh, yeah she did. How, how was how, oh, oh she okay. did oh, that's right she did because there was that scene at the beginning yeah she did um remember Don't she married him specifically because of his like kingdom and power and influence and he's like i gave it all up babe and she's, she's like oh. <laughs> oh so what are you because <laughs> they fell in love well before they even like had a conversation Swipe. right Swipe left. Also, um, it's I, I'm kind of getting the vibe because it clearly worked on this loser. This whole oh, he gave it all up for the F word, man, for family. And I'm like, but no, they just said the F word, and so now you you've bought into it because they use the F word. That doesn't make sense. There, there's like no he, I was thinking about it mechanically. You can give up the rings, you can put them in a box, I guess, but how do you give up your empire? Like, what does that entail in exactly? Who who takes over? Or does it get dissolved? And if not, like, it keeps going, and at that point, surely you just want to keep the rings. They make you immune to being assassinated, or at least... You want to protect your family with that, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot you... of people buy guns to protect their families if they need to use it. Like, why would you give up the ring? You have made a lot of enemies in this world. A lot of people want to kill you. Yeah, Can you give you up think, the rings and stay immortal? How are you still alive? Don't you think the Ten Rings organization <laughs> will want to come get the rings back if you're not using them? Like, I don't fucking know, dude. I, just, <laughs> I don't fucking know. But uh, like, yeah, they're, like, they're, know. they're invoking they're invoking family when this is like the most dysfunctional family like in the fucking world. Like raising well, yeah, their kid to be a heartless like psychopath, literally. And we've like barely started on his praise for this motivation, which is I just already disagree with the foundation. Like, it's great because you know he wants power, meets a girl, gives it all up, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like <laughs> a lot of this stuff yeah. isn't justified at all. And what does that even mean? Said for his family. And a lot of times in a story like this, you can't take the warrior out of the man, right? The father figure is called back into the world he used to be a part of. Maybe because he needs to, or maybe because he just he misses the fight. We're never sure, but the father that seems gives important. up on his family. So he... Wait, we're, we're well, never so he... sure about this on, incredibly that... important thing. He's saying that as an ex... he's not saying that's what this situation is. So it, he's referring to like films where maybe a retired guy is with his family and then oh, okay. his old job oh, okay. calls him back right. in, you know? Uh, okay. sure, I, don't, I don't know why he said we never really were sure. What... I don't know what films he's referring to specifically, but I mean, okay, I, I follow. Because he's going to say that... um. This is this is a different kind of story where the man goes back because he wants to go back. I don't fucking know. We can return. It's Brandy. His life, his love, and his lady is the sea. But when Wu is really all in on Well, no, that, that you can't compare it to Ego, because Ego that was Ego's plan from the get-go. Ego only met women to implant things. He was never like That when, was always his agenda. Yeah, when yeah. Wu went from conqueror to actually no, I don't want to conquer until his wife died, and then he was like, okay, okay, back to conquering. It's not the same, but... He doesn't stray, he isn't secretly using the rings, no one confronts him and says, it's damn rings. It isn't until Lee is killed and he believes his family is destroyed that... Fuck, keep the... Sorry, I keep skipping, I'm gonna have to... I don't believe back. you, because he spent all... The... He spent... Mo... He seems to have spent most of his life in the shadows. So he clearly knows many different lives. Also, wait, so he was saying that Ego, because it, now it seems like he is drawing a distinction between Shang-Chi and Ego, but I was just going to say that um, Ego isn't the example he gave first of characters who are drawn back into an old life by that old life. These are like he three distinct different story life. paths. I, but, um, fine. I, I, it was skipping for me, I just want to play this again. Him ...and says, it's us or those damn rings. It isn't until Lee is killed and he believes his family is destroyed that when we... But also, um, do do we know why does the family make him do that choice? Why why that choice? What's bad about the rings? I'm not sure. Is it just totally like they just made it up? 
Or... It's also weird because it gives him immortality. Maybe he just didn't want that anymore. I don't know. Uh, you, we've all seen the movie. Do you remember motivation and specific stuff for that? Because I don't. I don't remember. Every every um, time I thought about a character's motivation in the movie, it m just made me more confused. Yeah. All of them. Like, actually all of them. Yeah, I got nothing for that. Who goes back He doesn't want to when Wu believes he needs to. And listen, if... Now, I haven't, I haven't seen the film, but is that true? He doesn't want to, but he needs to? In relation to the rings? Like getting, going back into his old life of I thought it was that he was specifically looking for who killed his wife. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was like a vengeful thing. He was like, "Okay, well, you killed my wife. So I'm going to train my son to be a super assassin to go kill the guy who killed my wife." Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm a little bit lost on yeah. It's back to the only life he knows. He doesn't want to. When will believes he needs wait, 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 to. Wait, 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 wait. That isn't that isn't a life that he knew. He didn't know the life of training his son to be a super assassin to go seek vengeance. There's no indication he's had that life before. His previous life was like knocking over governments, which presumably he's not doing anymore. Yeah, yeah. again, like I'm very lost. It's completely different. And we don't even know that he re redid, because you know, like he regained, continues his pathway from 20... Is it 2000? It's early 2000s that his uh, wife was killed, presumably, right? Yeah, something like that. It was 10 years ago. So we're supposed to believe that for 10 years he's continued, like, the Ten Rings domination of the world and shadowiness or whatever? It's just like, again, no? Well, there's no there's no indication of it. No. Like, he has... He I'm sorry, has, where like, was he crew. with um with all of the world events? Did he not care about any of the, like, many times Earth was almost destroyed? Was he just... Yeah, did he get snapped? That's yeah, a good question. I <laughs> mean... He just he just seems to have enough of an entourage to take out about like a fourth of a club. That's like the extent yeah. of his influence. Yeah, he's simultaneously enormous and tiny. And it's just like because he needs to be tiny because that's literally as far as his reach actually spreads. But he also needs to be really intimidating. So totally, it's all over the world, really. Trust me. Yeah. And listen, when makes this move. It's easy to dismiss him, but Wen Wu is literally an old school conqueror. I completely understand why he thinks this is the right thing to do. But unlike it seemed in the initial trailers, Wen Wu does not want Shang-Chi back because he wants an heir to his empire. Wen Wu is completely driven by his desire to reunite their family by rescuing their mother. And the yeah, and it gets a little bit cartoonish when he sees the demons coming out of the wall and he continues bashing it. You're like, <laughs> uh, demons sucking souls, dude. The demons, I'm coming, wife. <laughs> I'll save you from the demons. Yes. Uh, I want them to suck your soul away. Relationship between Wu and Lee is all. Oh, wait, wait, wait. But it's, it's. Can it even be called his motivation if he's having his mind taken over by a Cthulhu monster? Is that him trying to reunite his family? Um, or is that him trying to free a Cthulhu monster? It's not. Well, so they would tell us that it's con the Cthulhu monster's convinced him that the wife is behind that wall. Yeah, but that's not him trying to reunite his family, is it? Uh, I think I think you could argue that's what he's doing in the movie. He's like, I want the wife back, and we can, I guess, be a family again. I don't know. Okay. But he's doing lots of stupid, evil things as a result of that, and it's not very well put together. Yeah. It's only when the giant dragon comes out that he's like, oh shit, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> by his desire to reunite their family by rescuing their mother. And the relationship between Wenwu and Lee is also completely believable. They compliment one another. Man, what a, what a compliment to the fucking writing. It's believable. It's like, this is it, the best, is what you said. It's, it's not. It's one of the least believable like romances I think I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would, I would probably abysmal. put that argument forward. You got... Um, invader trying to brute force his way into a civilization and the protector of that civilization and they fight and she defeats him and they fall in love. You're like, oh, oh I'm sorry, that end bit there and didn't then, make much sense. Yeah, the and, then she, and then she acknowledges that he's like a genocidal threat but <laughs> defects and like runs away with him. Yep. Because it's believable. It's, it's not, like, the, in my opinion, this was the worst thing about the movie. Their relationship was just... Horrendous. Because you saying that because like everything rests on this? No, it's just because I'm personally fixated on character relationships, and everything about this is just so wrong, just so well, the opposite they put, of they put anything. In so that much would make effort. Sense. They like fight, and she like smiles at him, and he smiles back. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Isn't that remember when Zoro 
fights uh i forget her name elena jones Jones in the stables that was nice they were fighting but she was still kind of you know enamored with him and he was being all lots of flirting throughout it yeah that was i mean that was a good move you can do the fighting and like love is like fighting metaphor like that happens in heroes so i can't like completely shit on that it's just like everything surrounding that in this movie makes no sense agreed another few seconds we see of shang chi and jiling's childhood playing dance dance revolution live in the family woods? Suggest- sorry she lives she in a live portal in the, wo- in the woods um so she- well you the got- woods ha- she have a house or a so I- she's I assume she well, we just, don't know about her house. I assume she just went back and through the fucking waterfall. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Outside or maybe she just does have a little hut and she goes fishing every once in a while to stay alive. I don't know. I was I was wondering like if she like could shower or she has a dirty butthole or things like that. <laughs> I don't know. The important things. I just live in the woods just with all this. Makeup. Dad, we're happy together. If the opening scene did not sell the idea that Lee is able to stop Wen Wu in his tracks, that she is the only one for him, then I don't think Wen Wu's re- Wait, whoa. No, so that so, would mean that he needs to destroy her when he I was, I was supposed to say, like, she's the only one that can stop him, therefore, love. You're like, what? Hang on. There, no, therefore, when she's <laughs> sleeping, he kills her. I like the idea that, like, world. the only one that can stop fucking the Emperor is, like, Luke, and you're like, love. Okay. <laughs> Wait so, a minute. So the, I sure do love you, Luke. You're just so great. His first, his first motivation we're interested in, or we're introduced to, the thing that's made most explicit is that all he cares about is power. Therefore, he falls in love with the only person who can stop him? Apparently. Men like a strong woman, you know? That's that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what does this say? You know, it's believable. Relentless pursuit of time. Hugh Lee would work. But we see some genuine chemistry between Wenwu and Lee. Ooh, genuine yeah. chemistry. Mm. Not that Not shitty chemistry. chemistry like most alchemy? disingenuous chemistry. <laughs> yeah, alchemy. This is the shitty chemistry from this from the local shop. You know, you, this. You, I this feel is, like every time you put a word way she's looking or at something, him. you know, like genuine something, or like you should Real. always, you should always think as opposed to. And then maybe that word will come across as somewhat weird and redundant. Why is Wenwu dressed as Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> <laughs> it's raw. What's the matter with you? She looks so interested. Yeah. She looks, she is very invested. I can tell by her face. She's just, look. That helps me. Against hope that Wenwu might be right and he could reunite with his long lost love. I, the journey I mean, here is so true. Did, did anyone so, did anyone think for even a second that it was possible that he, that was, he was going to find his wife? There's no no like yeah. no. I mean, the the, um, no. the conflict in like Wanda Vision being built entirely on what are unfortunately very few scenes that Wanda and Vision have is still like what well, what I'm getting at with that is just like that that's something that people think is really um, moving and it's just not built on yeah. a lot of scenes. This is like everything and it's built on one scene where they sort of battle and you're like oh they're in love okay like like the idea that at this point in the movie we're like come on like you know you you gotta realize your wife's gone dude but like well just just i understand why you're so passionate but like you you know she's gone man you're being tricked like i'm just sitting here like what is he doing (laughs) what what an idiot like He's not in it for greed or power. A Lovecraftian soul-eating dragon has tricked Wenwu into freeing it under the guise of saving his wife. <laughs> I love what that he says that like it's just this that? really meaningful bit of writing as yeah. opposed to just like, why, how, what? <laughs> All of it's nonsense. Nah, sir, what, a, what a sentence. Like, well, as we went over, he's like, gotta save his wife from the fucking soul-eating dragon. If it has something to do with the ring specifically, one, why? Two, why didn't it do it before, in the thousand years that he had access, whatever. If it doesn't have anything to do with the rings, why target him rather than, I don't know, Thanos or anyone else to, to have them release their beloved, you know? Like, because plenty of people have lost people. Tony Stark, you could fucking convince him his parents are trapped behind the wall, I guess. 
I mean, okay, there actually is an apologist explanation there because he was already fucking obsessed with getting to Tallow, like already. So if like he would be the best person to like Cthulhu possess because he's already well, why, spent all this time trying to get in there, and he actually could potentially get in there. Yeah, but why did why did it stop, and why didn't it try any other alternatives? Why not just you know you can't lose by having oh, that normal is people. Oh, a pile fantastic in. question. Yeah. In fact, fuck it. Just uh, convince all of the world leaders to come and get you. You'll be better off because it'll start like a war probably, and then you'll be just in the background with your little with your little demon wall, being like, "Help me! I am an innocent." Please, they trap me. Just like one person with a stick of dynamite would knock it like a scale loose, and then you could just get a yep. get a guy to go out and he'd just covertly pick up some souls, and you know we're we're cooking with gas. Wait, wait, I got a question, Fringy. What are you? Hmm. What are you? What do you mean? Like, I'm a shibi dog, and Doomer's a, a guy with a beanie. Mauler's a furry. But you, you're like, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're a plague doctor. No. More of like an occupation. It's not a, like, like what, what's been behind careful. the mask? Careful. What are, what, are, what do you mean? What was there to be careful about? You, you, you were there a... saying like, oh, being a plague doctor, that's like an occupation, not like it is. It is. You know, I mean, you could call that's it what an you, occupation, it's like... but I would consider it to be a way of life. His work is his All life. All right, so you can be. You could have ways of life, but like what, like what's behind the mask, you know? Why? You, does what that are matter? you canonically? Well, I'm, I'm curious because you always have the mask on. Yeah. And I'm just curious maybe, what, like, maybe canonically, a you're, you're like, are you a, an alien? Are you a Australian? Are you a. No, like, redundant. Like, what Australian, a, yeah. What's I am going Australian. on? <laughs> like, uh, look, what, what is it? What, what do you got going on, you know, back there? What, what's, uh, are you from this world? I... Are you from somewhere else? I, d I don't like I am. What do you what do you mean? Like what, what kind of question are you asking? Okay, if you if you went and you had to like fill out uh, some paperwork uh, to get health insurance, what would you put as your uh, species? A species, yeah. Like what are you? Not in terms of, like job, you know, or nationality, but like what what is Fringy? What's beneath the mask? What what does he see when he wakes up? I don't know. I maybe wear it to sleep. I'm I'm not sure, but. Oh, what, sure. What you, so, so yeah. the, the canonical the canonical answer is that that I am a human being. <laughs> like that's that is the canon answer. Who is who? Okay, uh, right, a human being who's a who is a, a plague doctor. Uh, it's just wet. Yeah, it's just the mask is on like and all the time. It's oh, this right. month. He's still the zombie virus that he's gonna have to and hopefully month, solve. Yeah, I'm a zombie. That's right. As, as yeah. the month ends. There you that go, is, right? Yeah. Well, so, I suppose that's fair enough. So yeah, yeah canonically. Fringy is a human being, <laughs> hmm. but the mask right. is always on. That's fair enough. To nitpick, not unlike my podcast, mostly nitpicking, you kind of figure at some point, and they're at least that a year a, away. That was a promo for the podcast, wasn't it? The one is that... that is very popular? Well, we, we definitely, that, um, that promo? I've definitely heard of mostly nitpicking before, because I think he promotes it in his videos, which again, that's totally normal, but yeah, yeah uh, I'm just not there's a weird... Like I, I'm not, I'm not doing this to be mean. I literally don't understand. It's like it is weird that there's just barely any pass over from his audience to um, mostly nitpicking. It's a, it is an active YouTube channel. Um, he posted five days ago last time. I think that the way they do it is the one podcast per movie, and I assume it's just a chat right. about the movie. Um, I don't get his... like. Wait a second. What? Oh, holy shit. Kate, his he did one a week ago that has eighty eight views. This is what I mean. I I genuinely don't know how this is possible with a channel. What is his like sub count? This Isn't is Nando. It's well over like two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand subscribers. But like that's his podcast, I guess. And then it's just. But my my second channel that I've actually rarely ever like shilled or anything. That's like that. I don't understand. Well. For reference, Nando, my, unlisted, DJ and my unlisted stream archives have more views. Again, not Why? not doing this to be mean. I... I don't understand. I'd figure that he would have more of a crossover from his main channel. I don't you, know. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm um, curious. And you would think that there'd be an interest, because it's not like it's radically different. It's talking about movies. He talks about movies on his yeah. channel. Uh, someone said, "Is it more popular on iTunes and other sites?" It's like maybe, it might be, but maybe. I still. His YouTube channel is here, though. I would, yeah, I would, even, I would expect that, a YouTube like 
if you like Nando his movies, it's like, oh, he's got a podcast. Perfect. All I have to do is sub like, yeah, if you're if your primary audience, if your biggest presence on the Internet is on YouTube, you would expect YouTube to be where probably most of your stuff and attention goes. Also, or at least a massive chunk of it. He, 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 well, I wonder right. what he said about Tomorrow War to give that rating. Let me take a look. Um, I'm Fast and the Furious. Where, which one's Tomorrow War? 83%? 75%? I mean, yeah. I, I granted it's easier for those ratings to fluctuate with that few views, but... What's, what's huh. the percentage? Is that likes to dislikes? Yeah. Yeah, how, what, how, what percentage is positive is the... Yeah. Well, let, let me go to uh, mostly nitpicking YouTube. I mean, 75% is still probably good. Also, it's like bad. you said, we're dealing with small integers. 75% is bad? It's quite bad. Really? Yeah, I like it doesn't generally you skew nine... more towards positive than negative. Like, oh, absolutely. So as a general right. rule for like YouTube channels, so seventy five percent would be. Yeah, they compared to like the I would say once it like... gets to I'd say once it starts to dip into like ninety three, ninety four percent, like that's curious. Something, something like something's wrong, not. Yeah, yeah something you said went something wrong. Something was a little point. controversial, and if it's below ninety percent. Then it's like, like, oh, huh. you definitely said, you definitely said something that people find contentious. Oh, yeah, yeah, now that you me... mentioned it, I'm like, I'm like over ninety percent likes on my video, and I'm like shitting on a popular person. Yeah, to be honest with you, uh, I, would, I would expect a worse rating than that for your video, but hey. <laughs> just, well, here's the thing: I've gotten only... worse ratings from picking on Snyder Cut. Well, <laughs> so when it, that's the thing with these ratings, there's so there's only six ratings, five up and one down. Right, so, so it's not fair. It's yeah, not, I would say it's few, not even fair at that point to Yeah, with such few judge. views, it doesn't even like yeah, one dislike means it drops from a one hundred to yeah, an eighty. Exactly. Exactly. Well so the other ones that are pos that are like really popular well, there doesn't seem to be any that are popular, so Well I was gonna say I just checked that the most popular was like around six hundred views for Rise of Skywalker. It's like huh. Oh, and which, by the way, thing. is the most popular Art refap episode. Right, that's right. Okay. It is. You fuckers with your Star Wars. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess if if you want to check out his podcast, mostly nitpicking, you can find it on YouTube. Maybe he's better. Um, can maybe they? He's better <laughs> oh man, that's bad. actually like constructing videos. Well, like. You know, we often at the end of an EFAP end up saying, man, that was one of the worst videos I've seen. This one's probably fine. Like, this, this one's relatively, yeah, by, I mean, by, half of it was standard. almost irrelevant, which helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, the, uh, this, this, this video or the this, movie? This, vi this video. Is, maybe that tells you about the standards of EFAP, Duma, that this yeah, video I'll is one of the best ones we've covered, probably. Really? EFAP curve. This is actually what? one of the best. You, you yeah, should uh, okay. you should check out our coverage of uh, uh, EFAP ninety three. Go check out EFAP ninety three. Have fun with that. All right, let me get a look at that because I, I have been watching some of them, but but yeah, I mean this we've this we've is, had uh... we've had some events in the past. Have you sent L us any super chats, or are you a are you a fake fan? Are you a free? <laughs> wow, I don't think I've sent you any super chats. No. Good, thank God. We already have so many. One oh. day, one day <laughs> that backlog will hit zero, and I will say, ha ha, we have stuck to our word. And we can dance a merry melody. A merry tune. Wait, we'll not dance a merry tune. Dance to a merry <laughs> tune. Unless Bring dancing if, makes the music. If we capture with a full backlog, anything's possible. Yeah, like uh, those those tap dancers. True. They can dance. Well, is it a tune or just a rhythm? If it's, I don't know. Let's go, let's let's explore here. <laughs> what is it? Ninety three got the gun in my mouth. Oh no. I gotta oh, is the Lord of the Rings trilogy bad? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we, we cut an hour and ten minute video explaining how bad the three of them were. And wow. So a tune is a melody. It says here, a melody is a sequence of single notes that is musically satisfying. So I guess technically a tap will have a note to it, probably, in some way. So I guess if you're tap dancing, that is a melody, right? So you could dance a merry tune if you're tap dancing. If you're a tap dancer. There we go, we yeah. solved it. Could you... So there's always going to be at least some noise whenever you dance as you move around, assuming you take a step, you know, steps. So pretty much all dances. We've had this conversation before, though, that noise and music, oh. that there is... That there has to be a distinction between the two. 
So can you cannot create a melody accidentally? I I wouldn't say that. Um, I, I guess it would be that there was a difference between just noise and hmm. Actually, that's that's uh yeah. You give me the big like, thing right now. I'm I'm struggling. Is this yeah, like art, right? Because I'm in the camp when it well, comes. Well, noise to could be art for sure. Yeah, like not to tangent into the art. I mean, what is sound design? That's that's an artistic uh thing to do and it's it's you're just trying to make noises that sound like real things so does that so when it comes to sound design if you are sound designing like sound effects that wouldn't be music it, it wouldn't be mel because melody is a real thing here so yeah. and again the the melody here this is the definition from whatever this is oxford languages or whatever a sequence of single note and I'm, i don't want to do argument from authority here or anything like that I'll just, we'll just run with this for now if you have an issue with it let me know um a sequence of single notes that is musically satisfying so that is a that's a definition that's based on one's subjective takeaway from the thing right mm -hmm. so you can have a sequence of single notes that's objective but then we have the that is musically satisfying at the end there. And that complicates things. Or in a sense, it makes it quite easy. I'm not sure I don't have an answer on that All one. All right. Think. Then. <clears throat> he would have told Wenwu about the evil monster trapped in her dimension that promises you whatever you desire. And how that thing that it's promising is a lie, and that's just the monster's cry. That would okay, be. A I don't know what happened with Watch Together, but I guess it's a new thing now that whenever we pause for a while and we start it back up, I get like two skips, like guaranteed. Oh, that really that fucking annoying. Sometimes, not because like I have to rewind us every stuff. time because it's too. The two two, they are two chunks and they are too big to uh, not reset. Because I don't know what he's saying. All right, because yeah, we were at twelve thirty-seven. Kind of figure um, at some point in their at least eight-year relationship, Lee would have told Wenwu about the evil monster trapped in her dimension that promises you whatever you desire most. Man, I didn't fucking think about that. <laughs> like, no, I guess true. she had no she reason to tell him. That. But then again, there's no reason nah, not to tell him. It would have come up. It would have come up. So what are just you be guys like, doing that mystical garden? I guess she just doesn't want. You could argue she doesn't want to tell him absolutely anything about what goes beyond the, that, or even what that there's kind of a there's a gateway. I have then. What kind of relationship is that? We well, that's, that's, that's what Doom already highlighted. Yeah, that's what he said already. <laughs> yeah. um, but it makes no sense. If if they've decided that that's she's told him nothing, then I guess she told him nothing. Wow. I know. Okay. <laughs> <just creates laughs> Remember, problem. an entirely believable, strong love bond of no, <laughs> I tell you nothing. We just have the sex. It's like okay. Checks out. That thing that it's promising is a lie, and that's just the monster's cries for help. Be a fun convo. Even if she's not saying, hey, if I die, watch out for this. Do you guys say convo? I yeah. rarely say convo. I think I've said it, but very rarely, yeah. I, I have, yeah. I think I say it ironically, mainly. Okay. Yeah. I'll be, yeah. I'll be the lame one. I've said it sincerely. Wow. Oh, boy. Oh Get out of here. What a Found. <laughs> This. I know what's interesting about my village. We have a monster tied up that lies to you. But maybe Wenwu is just a bad listener. I don't know. Either way, Wenwu's love for his wife was corrupt. Oh yeah, I forgot about that time my wife told me about the her secret village in a magical realm where they have a, a fucking Cthulhu monster chained up and behind a fucking dragon door that's trying to take over the world. I just forgot about it. A lot of people know about my monster. What? Um... Did we ever find out why he has a, a wall with water going through it that can be magically used to create a map? Nope. No. Okay. It, it, it seems like it has something to do with his uh, uh, Yang Li, because she has the necklaces that like activate it. Is that a Ten Rings thing? So No, it's he, different from the Ten Rings. Well, here's the thing. If it wasn't a part of the Ten Rings, surely he would be curious where it's... like. It's, so there, so I guess this is magic that exists outside of the Ten Rings that he's aware of. And outside of the dimension control. as well, because this is in our world. So I don't get it. So he, so he, when Wu can control this? No, you need the pendants to activate it. Wait, but it makes no sense because it's a map guiding you into a, like a magical yeah. other realm. Why, like, how? Who built this and why? 
Yeah, who and built that and why? Because it wouldn't it wouldn't be anybody from Talo. No. Nope. Because fucking she'll marry him and still won't talk about it. <laughs> but, but he has this. It's like, hmm. How did okay. he get it? And like, why it, presumably. This? Exactly. So it had to have been built while she was alive because she had the fucking pendants that activate it. And so, like, wouldn't she consider that a serious fucking problem? Well, okay, so my husband is still trying to get to my fucking magical realm that I've done everything in my power to keep him away from. And now he's building this fucking water map to try and figure out the combination also, to get into my, like, secret people's realm. Is Like, don't I need to destroy it? It is so ineffective compared to literally paper and pen. Yeah. Just draw yeah. the way. Instead, you have to memorize it from briefly seeing it from a pendants or whatever. Is corrupt. Yeah. Like Shang Chi, he was driven in the phone? wrong. Hmm? Like you could take a photo with a phone, right? Like, oh, we got the pendants by the water wall. Well, yeah, like, I said now. when we were talking about it, just, they should just hit record, and they could record the entire thing. But they don't. I don't know. Uh, whatever. It's fine. It's totally fine. Way. When Wu's love for his wife was corrupted, like Shang Chi, he was driven in the wrong direction by grief, because this is a phase four. Wait, was Shang Chi driven in the wrong direction? Uh, is he talking about no. when his dad directed him, or is he talking about when he went to become a valet? Because being a valet is perfectly valid. No, he he ended up I completely well valet. adjusted. No, well, yeah, his his life was fine until his dad ruined it, <laughs> like again. Yeah, there were Marvel property, no, and the theme of Phase Four appears to at least somewhat be grief. Yes, because Phase Four is about grief. There's not really anything in Phase One, Two, or Three that could relate to grief. <laughs> I mean, that's the meta theme. Well, I, I'm just going to go as far as saying that's just drama. Characters going through yeah. something that's tough and they grieve. Yeah. Because, like, the one you just recognized was Sylvie. That's just her being angry. Yeah, so, like, it's so I think it was Aristotle had, like, three different things that can happen in a story. And they're reversal, recognition, and suffering. Archie. So this is, like, one of the three fundamental things that can happen well, in a story. Well, suffering is just a, it's yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> grief. Trauma, challenge, adversity, kind of like fundamental. It's not, it's yeah, not really, do I don't think that's saying suffering. Well, it's just, uh, yeah, that I, I, to say, oh, well, there's grief. That's like a theme. It's like, it's like saying that growth is a theme of story to, of like a particular yeah. phase. It's like, well, yeah, growth is typically a part of storytelling. Yes. But, that's, but even then growth is, growth implies changing events over time, but grief is just like in isolation. It's just like. An emotion. Again, the idea I, uh, that name an MCU grief. movie that doesn't have grief in it. Name a dramatic movie that doesn't have grief in it. Of some sort, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a weird. I I feel like that's not even that can't be a a th can it be a theme? Just grief. That's like it's Abs almost like I would being... say it absolutely could be a theme. You, it's just that um, you would go on to explain it more thoroughly than simply saying grief. Yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah, it's like what's Probably. the theme of this? Red. Yeah, I mean, like, like yeah. Yeah. yeah, it needs to you be more specific. You could imagine different forms of grief or different catalysts for grief or whatever, and having different characters going through grief in different ways, and it affects them differently. I mean, yeah, yeah like you could lighter and darker them. paths or something. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, that that just really threw felt like he threw that in randomly, and it was like, yeah, okay. And then the third. Wen Wu might be the best villain. Okay. He hits all of the good antagonist boxes. Most importantly, he has something to teach Shang Chi, and the film. Through so is that what an is important? He, what is he is teaching a, aside from how to assassinate? Is that an important villain box that they have something to teach the protagonist? Yeah. Wait. What? Apparently. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting one. Usually. Uh, what, hmm. what did What did Saren teach us? <laughs> right. That's my immediate thought. It's like the, a lot of the time that there is value in unity. <laughs> like, <it> was, <laughs> it's like, well, he didn't really teach that to us. We sort of learned that. And it's like, shut up. He taught he us. That one. But that, okay, so he, I guess he's kind of a shit villain. Uh, what did the Emperor teach Luke? By force, trying to tempt him to the dark side, he taught Luke not to go to the dark side. I mean, it's it's kind of irrelevant if they have some sort of a lesson. If like the opposite is is the effect, I mean, like, if like they're trying to teach you how to be evil and you don't be evil, then it's like, are we really going to focus on the lesson they were trying to teach? They were totally ineffective. I don't. I just don't think it's a necessary component. It's a thing you can highlight as a cool element or layer to the dyna dynamic. But to say like that's why he's the best villain is like, why did you? Oh value my god! That? 
just imagine being in a writer's room and you're like shopping a script and you're like, but wait, the villain isn't teaching the hero anything. <laughs> well, and, and like, okay. we'll wait for his justification in a sec, but I wonder if he's going to draw a line between having an actual point and then teaching the character directly something that they end up using, or you just force them to learn something by how you having existed and provided them an obstacle. Yeah. Like, like, there's got to be a difference there. Through Michelle spells this out pretty clearly. Wen Wu believes in family above all else, and he's willing to, uh, I'll what? to get it. And Shang Chi is on the that other side of that a, spectrum. That is, is it, Wen Wu believes a, in family above all else. Shang Chi is on the opposite side of that spectrum. I'm already confused. He value. He doesn't value family at all. Shang Chi values his family. You're, we're talking about That's someone who the opposite side of the spectrum is that you don't care about family at all. It's the, it's yeah. the last. Thing care about like we we're talking about someone who like didn't have a family and just spent thousands of years overthrowing governments and seeking power right like, yeah wait, wait shang guess... chi went to to try and save his sister the second that he thought she was in danger exactly that's what the, so that's what i was gonna say there's two things to counter it's like so when we for the most of his existence was about power then family yeah. and then um his wife specifically to try and rebind the family i guess and it's like he's saying Shang Chi's gonna learn from Wen Wu to value family. Is is that where he's going with this? Because man, uh, mm. he wants family. He feels guilty for leaving Shaoling behind and for doing nothing when his mom was killed, and he hates his father for him to kill the leader of the Iron Clan. So Shang Chi completely abandons his family, and in doing so, Shang Chi throws the baby out with the bathwater. He gives up martial arts. And even after he comes back into the world of Kung Fu, Shang-Chi does not embrace the style that his mother taught him, perhaps because he wants to create some distance from the most traumatic moment of his life. I, f I feel like this is pulling de disparate pieces together in hopes of creating a through line instead of How does Shang-Chi teach himself to bend air? Well, it's almost like he's saying that that's something that he stopped learning how to do because he didn't want anything to do with his past or whatever. Like, I don't know. I, I didn't get this impression. It's kind of hard to argue this when he was, like, fully motivated by the idea of his sister being in danger. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't he, know. So, like, he just must have used the wrong words to convey a point, because what he's... Yeah, what he's saying with the opposite and, stuff doesn't make sense. I, and, like, I don't think that ties into Wen Wu, it, 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 and other than Wen Wu putting the sister in danger. But, like, again, how does that, like... Uh, oh, weird... do I need to... God, I haven't done the obligatory. Where woo? How woo? Why woo? I'm pretty okay. sure you did do that. No, yeah, that, that's that's what I'm saying. It's it's done. We got it. Not this stream. That's the thing. And the other streams, yes, but I forgot to do it this time. It's it's done, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's all finished. Don't stress. Taken care I, of. So I I just have to ask, what are the other videos doing that make them so much worse? Because I feel like <laughs> wow. this is, okay, there's two things that are going I on. I have here. the answer to your question. Is, okay, just go watch us on at 93. That's all you got to do. I, I, I will, but this is making an incredibly weak case. Okay. And, and it's an making example. a lot of claims that are objectively case. false. You, um, you're familiar with Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. One of the points he makes is that it's, um, it felt really out of character when Gimli said that he hopes Frodo and Sam die. Wait, when did he say that? That's a really great he question did. you asked right there. Oh, this yeah. I think I word this is again the EFAP curve. This film or not this film. This video is I mean, it's up there. This is one of the better ones. Certainly one of the better ones we've seen in a while. <laughs> yeah. Um we, so this is EFAP into the right industry. Which uh let's let's go to efap.me is the Hall of Fame, right? We covered a really bad one not a, not a not long ago at all. Uh Ooh, let me Hall of Fame. Check. So there are three quotes that are that are in the whole EFAP Hall of Fame right now, and uh, they are delivered them. genuinely in terms of a response to criticism, uh, or, or rather, you you just heard one of them. Another one is pretend the thing that you you didn't like was something you wanted, and then see how you feel. That was an argument someone made. It's just top notch video making. And then, of course, wait, wait. So, like, so, like, something dog shit happens in a movie, and you decide, but like, what if you wanted it to be dog shit? <laughs> That's not quite how he said it, but yeah. If if Palpatine returning annoys you, pretend it's something you want, and then see how you feel. Oh, that's wow. 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, the last uh, the last EFAP we had, we covered Cinema Wins. Classic. And that one was that one was bad. It was very annoying. That's mm -hmm. for certain. That one was um yeah, that was awful. It was really bad. It was a very low score. Uh, that was not a fun experience. Make a fucking point. It just kept saying things, cinema things. For that, it was we colored uh, Colin Sanders, his uh, Zack Snyder, uh, Snyderverse stuff. Mm -hmm. Then had uh, ba -ba 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 yeah, then it's 150 essentially, and we covered the Grace Randolph video on oh, 150. Grace Randolph's video, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we, we had a, we had some. Uh, this had this some almost really bad this is downright fine. Like I said, this video is fine compared to some of the shit we've heard. Yeah, this one's bearable. Mm -hmm. You can ask questions about this one and try and, you know, yeah. it's coherent. ...but him perhaps because he wants to create some distance from the most traumatic moment of his life. But Zhang Qi needs to reconcile his issues with his family to reach his... So he doesn't have any issues with his family, really. It's just Wenwu. You know what I'm saying? Does, like, he, like even, his does sister... he even have issues with Wenwu? Well, when Wu shows up and he's like, hey, let's go have a picnic. Well, when like, Wu right, sure. briefly says, I don't like you because you didn't defend your mum. And then I think shang is just like, you were kind of an asshole in general. I think that's the... Because the, it's funny that he says issues with his family. Him and his sister literally have no issues. But they're like vaguely unaware of that because she's annoyed at him for abandoning her, quote unquote. And I guess you could I'm say, just... like, you could have done better looking after it, but at the same time, she has no idea what the context of it is. Yeah, there's just huge problems trying to put together character motivations and, and actions. <laughs> well, and then you're like... Form a cohesive thing. Family. You're like, who are we talking about? And it's like, the dad and the sister. Um, and it makes it sound like it's a lot more than that. And then you're like, what are his issues with the family? It's like, I mean, well, he doesn't have any issues with the sister. It's, it's more just the dad had, was a bit of a dick. And you're about to argue with what he learned that he should embrace his family. No, but but okay, but but here's here's a very serious problem. Okay, if his dad was going to Tao Lo because he wanted to learn how to do air bending, there was no problem. He would have just followed him, and they his him and his dad would have been cool. The only reason they had a falling out is because he was going to go like genocide them or something. Yeah, we didn't get enough like, on that too, and that's a scene we should have seen. I agree with a lot of other people on that one. Um, the his visiting. The people who killed his mother. Yeah. That would have been quite a, an emotional scene that probably would have given us a lot, but never mind. It's also weird that, like, the dad goes and, and murders them all, so presumably he knows where they are, but he can't find the leader. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I thought it was that he did find them, but he wanted his son to kill them. Ah, okay. I don't remember. Mm. You might be right. He needs to engage with the memory of his mother. In stark contrast to Who's big issue? Does it feel like the film made a big deal that he's blocking the memory of his mother because it reminds him of sort of a harsh no, history? I, I just don't, because no. I might have missed something, but I just don't remember that. Nope. Memory of his mother. In stark contrast to Wen Wu, whose big issue is his inability to let Lee go. He can't accept her death either. Now, could these guys both benefit from a healthy dose of therapy? Yes. But in Shang-Chi's case, he'll have to settle for his aunt telling him that he has a product of everyone that came before him, his mother and his father. Shang -Chi and if he wants to move right. forward, that he needs to embrace... He's perfectly well-adjusted. Well He's a very normal guy. Yeah, I don't think he doesn't seem to be therapy at all. Or at least acknowledge... I don't think therapy. They seem to be acting... To be honest with you, we went over normally? this, right? He's too normal because he had like a history of just being brought up to kill True. people. Yeah. Yeah. Just like fucking yeah. Elena. And like, if... If this, if I had just been shown a movie and not been giving it any background and there wasn't like a Marvel thing at the start, the start of the movie could have just been the start of a romantic comedy. I would just thought they were, I just would have thought he was completely normal. Oh, you mean between him and Aquafina? Yeah, just the whole like normal. Yeah, Adam Sandler then... could play both roles. <laughs> Adam Fina. Oh, no. His history create something new. Sure, Shang-Chi is not breaking all that much new ground, but a villain with a fun power set, a reasonable motivation, and who can act as a clear <laughs> foil to our hero is clear about as much as you can ask for. It's Wait, that's, so about as, evil. that's about as much as you can ask for? <laughs> I like how he's just settled in a position of, come on, guys, it's going to be shit. Like, <laughs> like go, About as much as you can ask for. I mean, like, we had, like, uh, 
what 15 movies building up to like a a blue fucking or, or purple. purple super guy <laughs> with a fucking gauntlet with like these magical stones for that can like bend time and space there's a lot more you could ask for in a villain than this random fucking dude with some rings we don't understand <laughs> and these terrible character relationships trying to do something we don't get like what well, yeah, I don't think it's particularly well done on either three of the points complimenting him. It's kind of weird as well to be like, he's one of the best villains because I like his weaponry. Like, I, I'm not saying that should be discounted, but it just feels weird compared to, like, a character assessment. I like his yeah. rings. You're like, okay. All right. It's a shame they aren't attached to, you know. <laughs> I feel like character. if ever I was trying to compliment Iron Man's suit and capabilities in relation to the character, I would try and comment on how they were choices he made, like, as part of the suit. Uh, and it, re it, it I don't know, it, it's cohesive with his history, and uh, it's almost like a constant um, redemption for, for all of the damage his weapons had done prior, now being directed by him at the people responsible for the most pain in the world right now. Like, I try and relate to that way instead of simply saying, like, I just like the rockets come out and go boom. Yeah, but boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom make explodey sound. For me, Wenwu is all of those things tied up in a beautiful Tony Leung bow. Okay. Tony what bow? And there's oh, he's a Tony, Tony Leung. Leung, that's his name. Oh. <laughs> so many. It's not an elegant. For a second there, I, w I was, my brain was on two tracks of like, totally what? And then I was like, oh, he said Tony Leon, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I totally what, bro? Like, it's like, no, Tony Leon. In Shang-Chi comics, you can read that explore the relationship between Zhang Zhu and Shang-Chi. The recent run of Shang-Chi does this really well, even though Zhang Zhu is this dead music. throughout it. And yeah, this music feels weird as fuck, but it's... Okay. And there's another Shang-Chi comic that a lot of people I talk to haven't read. I consider it kind of a... Wait, are they two tracks at once? It sounds like that. That's one of the things that it, it stands out to me. It's almost like there's like a beat, and then there's like yeah. the little orchestral thing. And like then a there's celebratory like a victory track, plus a... Yeah, like a, just a little drum beat in the background. If you listen to that, it does sound like this... I don't know if they're supposed to be together or not. Gee. The recent run of Shang-Chi does this really well, even though Zhang Zhu is dead throughout it. And there's another Shang-Chi comic that a lot of people I talk to haven't read. I consider it. It's, it oh, is. I'm, I'm, I'm it almost is certain. I pointed it out. It's, yeah. Yeah. Almost because certain I think there's a two was, tracks. Yeah, it was synced up for a moment, but then it, w it got out of sync because they're not at the same like time signatures and everything. And it's like, yeah. Uh, that. Uh, uh, hmm. Bizarre. I'm upset you pointed it out. Yeah. Sounds funky. Kind of a hit. I talk about it in an extended version of this video oh, that you can no. find on Nebula. Oh, Nebula. she's in the MCU. If you aren't subscribed to Nebula, what there's Nebula? never been a better time to. It's a streaming service. That, By the way, uh, I think pretty sure. Is made. Pretty sure Cinema Wins created Nebula. <laughs> oh, heaps of people did. There's like tons of people who were involved. In a lot. Well, but like, I know loads of people promote them, but I'm pretty- I could have sworn he's the one of the people who, like, was the initial creator of the site. Um, yeah, but the, again, there, there were a lot of initial creators listed, I'm pretty sure. Let me- let me take a look, see. You might be right, yeah. Maybe. Well, I'm not um, sure. Th that is based on a distant memory, so it could be wrong. Um, well, there are a lot of people on there, because there's, like, um, Wendover... Uh, Lindsay Ellis is on there. Good old Patrick um, Willems. Yeah, uh, extra credits. <laughs> old favorites of ours. Anyone good? No. I like Wendover. <laughs> Fine. Oh, oh, him. I I don't I don't know who that is. I just heard the. Oh, uh, he like just sort of videos talking. I was about. making like a like a joke. Ah, I'm like oh, I, you he's good. Yeah, he's good. Yes. Yeah, Real life lore is on that too. Yeah, there's a bunch of people on. Legal Holy Eagle. shit, what the hell? We got three minutes of video left and we're in the ads? Well, it's, it's, wow. it, well, because he was saying that there's an extended version of this, which you can find on a. Uh, well, yeah, but. Over there. Does it take three minutes to say this? Like, what's going to happen? Why not? Um, uh... Yeah, but maybe the last minute is uh, like Patreon. Hey, thanks. I, the video is over. Like, is what I'm, is what I'm is guessing. It that, that we're done. Is it? Is it and over? Then it's, uh, just the ad I mean, now. I could be done with it. 
we well, can go let's, to the next video. Uh, let's see if, if it gets into like a Patreon or whatever. We 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 we're not, I'm just curious what else he says about Nebula. We've got let's so see. many cool originals that Whoa. I have been a part of, and I put all of my videos up on Nebula early Whoa. with a little bonus content at the end. We call it Nebula Plus. Any video that has that little plus sign next to the runtime means that video has a Nebula Plus segment for me at the end of the video. I, I, I don't like this. Well, I don't like the idea of. Yeah. I want all my content to be available to as many people as can. I want as many people to see all that I worked for. Like, I don't want to say, but, all right, now I worked on a lot of this, so I want you to go to this site so that you can get the part that isn't on YouTube. I guess the problem is that there there has to be some level of acknowledgement that, well, it's not really a problem. It's more just that, like, this is probably effective. Um, probably. if there's stuff, well, I'm, I'm sure it's effective. Anywhere else. Everyone's told me it's yeah. effective, yeah, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, oh, I yeah, sure. I mean, it's of course, whether or not it, it it's effective doesn't shouldn't dictate whether or not you do it. Dude, it feels so um, odd though. Like, if I could afford Nebula Plus and you couldn't, and we both loved a creator on there, and like every video comes out, I'm just like, oh man, that extra minute was so good. You're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> If only the peasants could see <laughs> Nando the way I do. They're like, Friggy, I can share my screen if you want to see that extra minute. You're like, yeah, I guess so. Like, thanks. <laughs> I'll shake it now off some people with the door. Differently. There's an extra three or four, sometimes even ten minutes of content related Jeez. to the video. Wow. Have not but seen these videos are like Nebula 20 Plus minutes at max. That's yeah, so that the video. Sometimes, exactly. Sometimes there's like 40% extra content by the sounds of it. Mm-hmm. The first reason this book is cool is because I find these books a lot of fun. Oh, if you look, spend the whole them. book just looking at all the characters and game, oh. like, who is that supposed to be? Tease Some are very odd. What you're gonna get? <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're missing out, guys. You guys, oh, <laughs> this boy. is what you get on Nebula Plus. <laughs> Oh, we both did. This is a, this is like a this is like a like a cringe face. Yeah, dude, this is a perfect <laughs> emote. Like it's a perfect emote. Yeah, it's, it's it's like cringe, but it's also like there, there's been damage done to like your soul. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like not just cringe. Run, it's it's run, I'm run, also traumatized. Get out of here. Get out like, of here, I'm, please. I'm cringing, but I'm also concerned for you at this point. The cringe is so bad, I'm worried for you. <laughs> it's... This is going to be one of those moments you think about when you're trying to go to sleep in 20 years. <laughs> you can't face. remember what oh it's from. God. I all I see is his face everywhere. I can't I can't get it away. It's it haunts my nightmares. Who is this? Who is this crazy old white guy with the red eyes who's just cringing at me all the time? Is this me in the future? Is this a negaverse version of myself? I don't uh Horrifying. This, this, is, this, this just like screams to be an emote. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. mods in the yeah Discord. Fucking make it happen. Do it. So we did it. Did That's it. that video, we did I guess. Do it. What do you mean? Yeah. It's uh, there's still more to go though. Is there? I mean, we we, look, we just to be fair, we just found a, like a, a really good. Yeah, that could at the be. End. Yeah, let's see. All let's, right, fine. What... <laughs> Some characters are just called Caliban or whatever. But there are other characters. That's a name. That's like saying, oh, this this guy is just called yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah, look at what we it's just like, missed out on if we had yeah. stopped. <laughs> yeah, this guy is just called Jeffrey. But yeah, like uh, there are some people who are just called, like I said, Jeffrey, Andrew, Steven. Well, this, That's what a name is. And th and this this video is out well after Logan, where one of the main characters is called Caliban from a comic book movie. So, of course, you might even have to account for people being like, oh, is it that Caliban? Mm-hmm. I guess. There's like this henchman. Who's apparently supposed to be a version of Taskmaster, which makes sense because you can get a takeover, different fighting style. Ooh, look at my head. We have partnered with this video sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Wow, a double for a bundle that gets you a. Oh, maybe Curiosity Stream is the one service. that's more connected to Cinemasins. Both... Win, sorry, I don't know. Are you sure about that? I could have. So the memory I have is a, is a documentary. Like, I might have been tricked. Be you might be right because, like, I I, I could have sworn he said like created like the specific word was created not like we're a part of it yeah but, but a lot of them say that they created it because it's meant to be some sort of joint venture, right i believe like There's like a bunch of people to make it feel like it. a big community came together to make this but wonderful course, thing somebody somebody owns it like somebody somewhere yeah. owns the company or maybe they all do 
hear of Maybe. documentaries on things like science and nature. Whoa. There's even documentaries about bridges, like the world of bridges. Talk about China. They have their wind and rain bridges, and there's a documentary about that how those are That is a crazy looking oh, bridge right there. Look I kind of like it a lot. It's That's gorgeous. A cool looking bridge. bridge. That's a Ching really cool looking bridge. It's a cool bridge. Best thing in the video so far, I'd say. Yeah. As, as long as the, as long as that bridge they... isn't gay, we should be okay. Uh, well, if it if it has its sleeves rolled up, <laughs> we better hope not. The culture <laughs> and the history, how they weren't built with. Oh look, it's Wenwu. That guy had his sleeves rolled up. Joints. Oh. It's very interesting. So if you want to get access to that bundle that includes Nebula and Curiosity Stream, Whoa. a yearly subscription is only fifteen dollars. Now this Your beat, this beat's kind of popping in, in, in the background. Is... Yeah, I, like I noticed this. that I like too. The music in the back. It's like that's, doo -doo 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 -doo. that's a. That's a kind of... That's a little awkward to have that be the description of yourself. Your favorite smart indie video creator. You know what I mean? Like describe I, them as intellectual. Said, hey, go check out my channel, my smart channel by me, a smart person. It's like, is that not a little cringe? Yeah. It would be, like be like putting that you're an intellectual film reviewer into your banner, you know? <laughs> you wouldn't want oh, to I'm do gonna, that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to update my, my Twitter your profile. Favorite smart indie video creators? Uh, if you Hold say okay. so. <laughs> said, your, your, fav your favorite... Favorite smart intellectual. Yep. You just, you know, make sure they don't miss. Film reviewer. All right, let's update. Yeah, let's get this going. Not right. only support your favorite creators, but it also means you don't need to watch sponsor reads and you get to see exclusive Nebula Plus content. The link is in the video description. It is curiositystream.com slash movies. Go check it out. We still got a minute and a half. As always, gotta say, yeah, there, there we go. Is. Everyone, yeah. can you yeah. support there the channel go. on Patreon? Man, you guys, All right. are... we did it. Let's let's see. Do we have? It's still going. It's still going. God, what's wrong? Well, with it's people? a minute. Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Wrong with people. laughs> the updated Twitter bio. <laughs> Your favorite smart intellectual film reviewer. Ignore the double post. It's just easier for me to put it on screen. There you go. A one-stop shop for smart, intellectual film reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man, yeah, so that was, that was by it. Like, it was, yeah. Yeah, and it looks like we won't have enough time for his other video, because we're already at 4 hours and 20 minutes, so... Christ. That's unfortunate. What was his other video? Well, his other video was more so something that I'm expecting us to agree with, but the problem is you never know that's going to be the case. He basically, it's, it's his audience didn't like the video, and it's him explaining the problems with what if. I guess the problem is we haven't. <laughs> yeah, and also we it took us like four and a half hours to. I feel like one. yeah, that could be <laughs> a whole thing. I don't know what to expect. So I think it might be worthwhile to start doing the supers. All right, so eight hours of super chats. Uh, well, you know, it, it'll just be however long it takes. Well, our yeah, average is eight hours. Water, that's the thing. Yeah, it, um, our average is eight hours. We've been going for about four and a half. So we still got yeah, at okay. least three and a half hours to kill, unless or else people will get upset. Let's do the next video. <laughs> you got to push Wait, those numbers what? up. Those are rookie numbers. But then, how do we? Uh... Oh, well, I mean, we can start it at least, right? If well, we start, we're going to Oh, no, no, no. That, I, I want to set a precedent here of being like, if we hit four hours, 20 minutes at the end of a video, I'm more than happy for us to do the, yeah. the Super Chats portion now. I'm happy to do the Super Chats portion. I'm totally well, happy to do well, that. Well, you know what, chat? Let it be known. Let it be known that this... Uh, it's fine. It is fine. It's four and a half <laughs> that's hours. Like, yeah, that's, like, what, that's what I said. It's all right. <laughs> Yeah, it's but good. you said it in a yeah. way that implied that it wasn't fine. Yeah, I'm can't lie to us, Frank. Happy. I'm happy. Why that we're are you all trying to you're, that this we're subversive all... element here? Trying to subvert? Nope. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's what a subverted person would say. Is no, that's right. It isn't at all. Yeah, or maybe it is. Okay. I wouldn't know. I'm not subversive. I don't know their ways. Is that how it, it works? You have to be one to know what one is. If I am being subversive, it is totally coincidental, which it isn't. Because I'm not okay. being subversive. Oh, all right. Not me. I'm I'm very happy with us uh, doing whatever it is that you'd like us to do. We are united uh, here on the EFAP podcast. All four of us. What? Wait. What? Did, what does Doomer think? Oh, about what? Uh, about what? What's the, what's our plan of action here? 
for the podcast? What's what's, oh, uh, I mean, what's what do you think? Well, personally, if I was in charge, I would load up the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy and just start going through that. But <laughs> but I, feel, I, go, I, I mean, think we might have issues copyright, copyright yeah, wise. Yeah. That's the thing. That's <laughs> the kidding. thing. It's, co- it's a copyright issue. Yeah, um, I, mean, I was, I was joking, on board right into the copyright. Yeah. Yeah. Barring that, what's your second? Uh, what's your second choice? If if maybe. If our like if we were gonna go eat someplace and maybe I don't know BJ was closed or whatnot, where where are we going? What's uh what's the plan here? Where 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 should we go out to eat? No, I'm like it like what's your second option for the podcast uh, plan plannery? I, what's I don't your know. Angle it's... of attack here. Talk about something that's interesting, or talk about a movie, or talk about super chats, or play another video. I mean, those are all fine. <laughs> it's really yeah, weird to great. like give you direction on yeah. Yeah, two against one good. then. Uh, Sweet. What? No, I'm fine with all of those. Uh, those sound great. You keep saying that you're fine with them. Because he said, because he said both of our suggestions. Let it be known. He threw out a lot of stuff, and both of our Wait, uh, first picks now, were in. Who side are you on, Crazy Doggo? I, I think he's Me? being subversive. Yeah, I think so. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm on the side of. I'm on the side of justice. I'm a big fan of justice. God, um, such a Whedon oh, oh. fanboy talking about a shitty Listen. movie. Well, well, yeah, but that wasn't in the Zack Snyder one, was it? No. No, it's not, oh, Superman oh, is not a fan of justice in Snyder's the, version. The one thing in, like, the whole goddamn movie that sounds like, oh, hey, that's like Superman, he took it out. Well, it was never there. It's some of the Joss added, I guess, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm down to we can go through super chats as many as you want Very until well. there are zero left, man. Well, it would be neat well, if we can get through man. today's ones, you know. That'd be that'd be swell. Yeah, we can pull that off. We can pull that off. That'll be fantastic. So, I'm going to get started. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm 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 ready. All I right. am. Well, tell you what, before you start, let me go ahead and top off my beverage and I will uh return. I will return shortly. Not directly. Directly means immediately. I will return in a little bit shortly. Yeah. Directly there means immediately? I thought directly just meant, you know, like, in a way that doesn't involve, uh, you know, like a straight line. Mm. Uh, yes. I mean, it's, it's clearly Rags has been losing his mind today. If you look at his little icon, he's like, yeah. his eyes are all fucked. I think he fell <laughs> headfirst into the pumpkin. And then got out of it like, eh. and then it so his, some brain damage. Yeah, his his rags not seen Shang Chi. No, uh, no, but he's had the whole film described to him. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy again. Probably the what happened to him was that the damage done. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's like that's like me in the Last Jedi. I've never seen it, but I've seen your review of it. So yeah, um, I think As said he's never gonna watch uh, Rise of Skywalker, but he's seen my review. It's like yeah, it's it's painful. <laughs> yeah. The review less so, but still. Yeah. Alrighty, Lord Longbone of Mubslington Abbey, have you given any more thought to a Kong fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Oh wait, I'll read that once Rangs is back. But uh, yeah, wh- yes, thought is being given. Thought shall come. And a recording of such a movie shall be a thing. This one says Angry Super Chat 9. So I guess they're just going to keep counting up, see what happens. This one's getting terrifying to think about. Hey, Mauler. Started watching your videos like last year, and I saw your Dark Descent vs. Machine for Pigs video, and honestly, it's really inspiring to me. Hey. That's my um, oh my oldest, like, I guess, I don't know what you call it, but a, a new format of review. Where I was like, it's time to... Take a lot more time. I'm back. Hello, Rakes. I just got food poisoning from that chicken. No, it has been uh, that chicken, chicken that you were very loudly eating. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. the thing is, see, I accident my when I made it, I I baked it you, and uh, yeah, you made it. I you over. I'm gonna eat I, this no, I overcooked it. That's the thing. It, it's a bit oh, overcooked. No. My timer. Wow. I set it for about. I put it oven two breasts right. Uh, 450 degrees. I set it for about 30 minutes and I was going to check it. But the dinger didn't go off for whatever reason. Very surprising. So it ended up being longer than that. It wasn't burnt, but it was just overdone. 
So I mean, I guess bad. you'd rather of all of the meats, right? You don't want to overcook. You don't want to undercook chicken. That's true. You don't. Um, but yeah. generally, I like me so my I like me a juicy chicken. And, oh um, yeah, um, that was but, one of the revelations uh, yeah. I learned. Like when I was getting older, it's like man, like you kind of lose something sometimes when it's like well done. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't like yeah, well done meats. I, I don't like well them. I like yeah. um I like them as raw as I could eat them generally. Um, um I, I don't know if I'd agree with that. With. For me, but uh I definitely prefer a little bit of red in there. Uh like I like my my steaks medium rare at most, generally about medium rare. I'm I'm a big fan of huge fan of sushi. I love it. I love yeah, all great. that stuff. Love me, uh, you know, good raw sushi and stuff. I like me some juicy chicken, uh, all that sort of thing. So, yeah, Ch Chad is making a compelling argument. The ideal way to cook chicken is to have your mom uh, cook it and deliver it like a son. Yeah, that's true. Bring, bring that's over true. the nuggies. That's essentially I top will, tier. Yeah, you and you can um, you can get away with overcooking like drumsticks more. They just retain, or at least they seem to for me, they just seem to retain, they just are better even if you cook them for longer. Um, and if you keep the skin on, it'll help to get the skin nice and crispy. Um, so it gives it a good kind of you know, crunch on the outside. But like just plain old breast where it's just pure white meat, you don't want to overcook those. There's just nothing, you, got, you, you definitely don't want to overcook those. And they're just not pleasant. And dear God, don't overcook a good tuna because that stuff is crap if you overcook it. Seafood's just gross. What? No. Disgusting. No. Mahler, no. chastise him. <laughs> I don't. I gotta do everything you here. You can do it. No, we just did it. We want you to do it too. Oh, I'm, I, since he's like a guest, I'm gonna try and provide a, a little bit of neutral ground. He's got two of the hosts coming after him already. You know. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll take it, taking all comers. Mm. Oh, chat's, I, chat's saying kick, seafood's... kick doomer, ban doomer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seafood's <laughs> delicious. It's it, it arguably the best food is seafood. Mm. I, I gave I gave I'm a very controversial. So much, uh, so much great variety. Everything, it, it, fish and different arthropods and oh man, it's great. It, yeah, it's there's, a there's a lot of it, there's a lot of nice seafood. It tastes like it came from the ocean though. It's gross. It smells. Yeah, that's it's that's like slimy. one of the cool parts of it. Is that it does taste like it came out of the ocean. Wait, well, cow. That's like saying a cow tastes like something out of the middle of a field. Came out of a field, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, oh, potatoes I, taste like something that grew in the dirt. Yeah, that, and that stuff tastes good. But I mean, all, all so the fishy good, stuff. But... Okay. Okay. So, so the, what, so what yes. you're saying is the ocean tastes delicious. I'm saying, I'm saying, fuck the ocean. The ocean. Has a don't go to the ocean. Variety don't to eat it. stuff in the ocean. The ocean's great. Go well, to the I, ocean I on fire for all I care. I don't eat seafood in the ocean. I I get it. It's from the ocean. It's by the it, it have get yourself a good. How how far away is the ocean from you, Fringy? Not far. Like within an hour drive or? Oh yeah yeah, yeah definitely. I'll do you one better. I grew up in Florida and I hate seafood. Remember rags. This yeah, is but well, yeah, that, well, there we go. You grew up in Florida. That explains that. Is, why, why, rags, why does that explain not liking like, seafood? That you're wrong. Hmm. And that's something with something in the is that Florida just what water. The state of Florida is, is the wrong yes. state. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, guess, I guess there is just something wrong about Florida. The that Florida man hates seafood. It's a headline. Anyway, seafood's gross. No, it's delicious. <laughs> Incredible variety. So good for you. Oh, look at that. I stopped the timer a half second before. I don't even know what that is, actually. It's like a mil milliseconds there. Oh, look, Waluigi. Yay. Yeah, Waluigi, Waluigi deserves the win. Um, how well, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I've got uh, a couple and, people saying I'm, Doomer's right. I'm oh, good and go. correct. Doomer is very incorrect and wrong, and he is also fake and gay. Ooh. <laughs> Well, I have to write that down too. Um, and yeah, people are asking. I guess I should get it. I should get it done. So, hey Duma, without thinking about it too much, what's better, Christmas or Halloween? Halloween. Fuck yeah. That explains it after the seafood thing. I mean, I don't. Everyone has different opinions about everything, right, Rags? Yeah, I mean, I mean, our opinions are right though, and Rags is wrong. So. Mine is the correct opinion. All well, I certainly disagree that seafood's the best food. 
What what do you th what do you think the best food is? Seafood, what seafood is, is your, what seafood is, your is inedible cuisine. <laughs> it is it is shockingly edible. It, it is it's the more edible than most foods. You could pluck it out of the ocean and eat it. Is that what defines how great a food is? Like no no the, he said he said it was which it's edible. No I was I was Wait, talking <laughs> about his claim that it was inedible, but in actuality. Fish, like all saltwater fish, eat it raw. Uh, sushi, you can eat it raw. It is very edible. Can I can I read a super chat because it's so based? Okay. It says, it says, normally I'm a simp for rags, but Doomer is correct about seafood. It's horrible and ugly and stinky, and all seafood are Nazis. From so Toxic off, Monger the Hateful Brood, who so is correct toxic. and base. First off, um, there's a few issues here. Why is of capitalized? I'm not sure. Already calling into question. It was the a stylistic choice. Super chat. Already, stylistic that makes choice. it worse. He can't even claim ignorance then. And then at the end, all seafoods are Nazis. Not Nazis. What? It's their what? It's their. I, I don't know. Where's that going? I'm not sure. I. I, I this is a very questionable seafood, super. Seafood chat. is I, corrupted the with the is, essence of Nazis. The whole thing is. If you no, like seafood, you're Germany a Nazi. A, I think Germany's seafood, a landlocked a country. What? What does that have to do with anything? They, they'll import things. Why? Why would Germans have that kind of control over the the oceans or anything like that? It, it's not like it's not like Chile that has the or Chile, depending on which side of the border you're okay, on. The ocean is uh, Leibniz. Why would they go take it? Well, that didn't work out well. <laughs> <laughs> they gave it a go. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, good super chat. Yeah, well, any any particular reason why you prefer Halloween to Christmas, or was that just random? Oh, no. Um, I really hate gift-giving holidays. So, like, I in, in general, I'm really negative about holidays. Halloween's one of the few ones that makes sense to me. Hmm. Makes sense. Like, 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 for example, like, Valentine's Day is so weird to me. Like, shouldn't you be just be doing those things, like, all the time? Like, why would there need to be a special day for, like, being nice to your significant other, right? It's so weird. But like Halloween is cool. The, you have to like have a party and dress up. It's not the only time you're nice to your significant other. It just draws. <laughs> it's a special time to just be like, to extra draw attention to them and to be extra romantic to just remind you of that sort of thing. And it's nice to have a day where that's something that you could put really at the forefront more than other days. And and I think that's totally fine. Yeah. That's like saying that you should, be, you should only be generous on Christmas or something. I think that's part of his point. Yeah, that's that's part of my point. Is like I, I, I really, I really dislike mandatory gift giving holidays. Basically, all you, of them. You know, it's not mandatory. I'm, I mean, I'd say it's socially uh, mandatory if if the I would family's say it engaging is socially with it. Mandatory, definitely. Like you can't be the one asshole who doesn't <laughs> get anybody anything. <laughs> That's not gonna go. Or I well guess you for can, you. but it's just yeah, it's not gonna be great for you. I've, I've, as long I've been, as you've I've been like trying, well, I've been trying well, to opt out of Christmas for like ten years, and it's still not going well. You <laughs> well, still get drugged back into it. If you if you really like your family, then wouldn't you want to give them little uh, gifts? Now and the goalposts have them, moved. Yeah, yes, and if you hate moved, them, yeah. and if you okay. hate your family, then it doesn't matter if you don't give them anything because they is, hate you anyway. This is the whole. This is the whole thing. Is that if I see something that someone's gonna like. I already am going to buy it for them, but why should I take it, buy it, stow it away, and it's like, oh, well, I have a gift, but I'm going to keep it secret. I'm going to keep it it's, safe until a special, special day when I have to give it. You have fun like, with the wrapping, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Hey, you have fun with the wrapping. It's fun. I'm a terrible I have rapper. Fun with it's wrapping actually, and I like it's, it's actually, <laughs> I have fun doing it because of how shit mine is. Mine is, mine is distinguishingly crappy compared to everyone else. The rest of my family are like like assembly line robots when it comes to wrapping it looks perfect and mine is just i just i i, I don't know how they do it it's my wrapping's very me. good so my wrapping I is very good and i fucking hate christmas so <laughs> i have no excuse you should have a lot of it well i'm a halloweener at heart you know uh, i'm just a good at christmas as well but yeah halloween is that's clearly a, superior well, because halloween is a holiday that, that should exist wrappers. wait is it wait are we gonna go with the? Is it is it uh, good that you're? It's it's socially acceptable to give candy to strangers who come to your door wearing costumes. Well, you be, you, you can not uh, answer, not, and it's not gonna change much of anything. I'm not particularly I mean, I, committed to that part of Halloween. I mean, I'm no. in my mid thirties. I haven't gone trick or treating for you know two decades. Well, if people come to your place, knock on the door in the costumes. Oh, well, I, well, I keep I keep the light off, sir. <laughs> in a limited there apartment complex. People don't come to my place. Yeah, mandatory candy giving. That's right, Brad. Uh, 
Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm assuming that Mahler takes the uh, pro Halloween position and Red takes Halloween. the Christmas position. I, like, October's my favorite month. It's a wonderful time of year with all sorts of variables and fun, crazy ideas and stuff. I find Christmas is a little bit more boring. Yeah. I mean, Christmas is the one I end up having to, like, celebrate because it just makes sense. Like, whatever it is that you're doing, it's easy to get time off around Christmas. Or if you're in school, there'll be a break or whatever. So yeah, I always end up going back home on Christmas. The aspect of Christmas is that you actually get time off. I think they should take uh, Halloween. That's a good argument. And they yeah. should move Halloween to the last Friday or Saturday of October, not yes. have it always on like the 31st or whatever day. Yes. Um, so that because a lot of the times fact, if Halloween happens on a, like a school night, well, well, that sucks. I got to go to work tomorrow or school tomorrow or something. That's shit. Yeah, make it a I Saturday so we can have EFAP streams on Halloween every time. Don't you often yeah. have uh, like Halloween parties that are not on the exact day? Well, that's what we'll be doing, but that's not preferable, you know? Yeah, but a yeah. lot of the, the trick-or-treaters and all that and a lot of the get-togethers are on Halloween itself. And it would be nice, especially for the kid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a think of the children here, and I'm going to say, I want those kids to be able to like, enjoy their Halloween night with all the candy and the costumes and trick-or-treating and stuff without having to worry about being home and in bed by a reasonable hour because school's tomorrow. Wait, are, are the... Are the mods censoring pro Christmas posts? Do you have like the most based mods on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Thunder is pro uh, Christmas. I think James and I Das are pro Halloween. I really don't see them. Uh... We don't suppress so Christmas or Halloween, oh. okay? It's fine. And I know All Saints Day is the. Yeah, I get that, but screw that. Like, October isn't the eighth month. You know, we that we can move we move that so <laughs> we we move we, we have the power to move a lot of things guys it'll be fine we have got some power at our fingertips so i'm fine with uh, departing from the hallows eve thing uh, so that we could move it to a friday or a saturday mm -hmm. oh there's a, there's actually another thing annoying thing about christmas is my birthday is nearby so as a kid i didn't really get two holidays christmas just sort of sucked up my birthday yeah, it'll That's do that. Reason. Yeah. I don't know if I like Halloween or Thanksgiving more, though, for me, because I like a lot about both of them. I think I would have that to lean might, Thanksgiving. That one might really come down to what the like your family does on those two holidays, potentially. Because yeah. if, like, for us, Thanksgiving is a big, it's a pretty big thing. It's not as big as Christmas, uh, but it's a, it's pretty big. So it's not a thing at all over in Britain. Also potentially yeah, true. You yeah. don't like Funny to enough, is, day or something, right? We we also um, a lot of British people don't do anything for Halloween. I'm always just like, wow, disgusting creature. We don't do anything for Halloween over here. It's only recently that it, I remember as a kid I wanted to because I you know watched Simpsons and stuff like that, but nobody did Halloween stuff. Now it's kind of a thing, kind of, but not really. Is it is it normal for a Mario Party map to be this small? Um, they usually, so this is the story mode, they're smaller. Hmm. Um, boop, boop, boop. Happy Halloween, Mola. Fringy, I've hunted alligators in Florida. Can you hunt crocodiles in Australia? Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, let me, let me look at that you mean, like, legally, up. or? Yeah, well, hmm. I mean, obviously, if you want to do it <laughs> legally, you can probably do a lot of things, but can you hunt crocodiles in Australia? I don't um, think you can legally hunt alligators a lot of the time. Apparently there are... Okay, so crocodiles are protected. Um, They are protected, but you can do safaris. Mm, I don't like that, I don't think. Yeah, because um, generally the point of hunting is to either get populations to a, a more environmentally yeah. conscious level, or to thin out invasive species or sure, you know, like, like there's the, a these crocodiles are not invasive species so yeah and it, but if it's like on like if it's a safari and that's where like they're just supposed to be almost by quasi design to be hunted there that's odd like here but that's that's, if, that's if, how it, it goes right like in a lot of places people, rich tourists go to africa and then they go on these safaris so they can kill like elephants and stuff what if okay let me what if the funds that are used from safaris end up supporting and creating more of the animal 
then was killed. Um, I guess at that point it would just be like, well, if if that's the case, then that's I guess a, a greater good situation. Um, but is that the case? I probably not. I'm, I'm sure you'd be I like, guess. can we not do this in any other way? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, that yeah. would be the immediate thing. Is like, surely we could actually increase their numbers while not also killing them. Like, well, yeah, they're, they're know, prepping their that. guns. They're all excited that you're like, you guys, you guys, you're not doing this just because you have to, right? Like, no, no, it's because we have to. We have to do. I this. guess it's just, yeah. Like, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of like, especially when you're hunting like fucking, like when you see those pictures of people like, oh, I killed an elephant. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Am I meant to be impressed by that? That's that just makes me upset. Because yeah. it's it's not some animals are like like especially around here deer are everywhere. It's just a deer. Yeah. They're they're all over the place. They're like if you don't if you don't go out and kill a shitload every year, they starve to death in the winter. Like they're everywhere. Oh, it's God. like something. Yeah, like there's a lot. It's it's. I mean, this is a state that's like eighty. That's like ninety nine point nine percent forest. So you gotta. It's a big thing here. It, deer hunting's a big well, I mean, that, thing. that was the problem that happened, right? Is that a lot of the uh, predatory species that used to live in North America, like a lot of them just dead or they're really far north now. So, um, it's like there needs to be human attempts to control the population because the animals that used to do it don't exist in large numbers anymore. Uh, a lot of it might be due as well down to, um, in a weird way, I'm wondering how much, because, like, there are deer in, like, the suburbs here, and a right. lot of the urban areas and city limits, they can get pretty wide and far out, and you're not allowed to, like, shoot or hunt on city limits in the vast majority naturally, of Naturally. Naturally. You know, so, you don't want to be way the city. Makes does the city being here, does it uh, does it legit give them a safe zone where they're, like, they don't have predators and we can't kill them? Oh, well, I mean, there are certain animals that, like, benefit greatly from cities. I mean, foxes, for instance. Raccoons? Uh, yeah, oh, raccoons, so definitely. Jeez, they're everywhere. They're like, they're all, they're like possums everywhere. Yeah, but raccoons are really cool. They like they can pick locks. I like possums too, is the case. I really like them both. Yeah, they're trash I like cans. possums. Um, possums. You always hear possums all around here. Wolves specifically used to be the main control. Yeah, that's what I thought. And it's like, and then there have been instances where they, you know, there were areas where the wolves were completely, the area was depopulated wolves, and then the deer were so plentiful that they destroyed the environment. And so they needed to reintroduce wolves to change the behavior of those deer. It's like a trophic cascade. So yeah, the, the answer to that question is apparently you can hunt crocodiles uh, in certain circumstances. I wonder if... I know how weird this sounds, but like... Uh, the satisfaction levels of hunting different things, I imagine with like deer, the element of you have to be quiet enough and careful enough that you can knock it out before it can start running from you. A crocodile, is the thrill of the hunt in the finding of the crocodile, or in- because once you find it, it's like- it's pretty much, I'm assuming if you have a gun powerful enough, it's just done for, right? Yeah, I think they just use 22s to kill them, um, but you- I, I think you have, like, traps and stuff, you go around and you check gator traps, hmm. and then you go and you get the gator and you, you know, shoot it in the head and it dies, and that's that. You, you so you traps. trap it and then you shoot it? Kind of, yeah, you leave traps for it, yeah. I feel like that's not even hunting at that point. Um, you don't have to guess, track yeah. it. It's just it's yeah, just it's there, cool. I guess. Gotta, yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's in a sense it's uh yeah in a sense. Though there's an aspect there's an element too of because of an alligator and how it how difficult they can be to find in terms of it, like being in the water, finding them, being able to get to them. And if you spot a gator, a lot of, it's like it's very difficult to kill it because if it if it's floating on the surface, you have to get close enough to it to get enough of a downward angle to actually shoot it anyway. So it's like if I wonder like how if you didn't trap them, it must be really difficult to hunt them, especially because of how dangerous they could be. 
And they got mm-hmm. like bag limit stuff on gators. I know with those those like gator hunting shows they have on what used to be the History Channel. Um, they have like they're only I think they're only allowed to catch a certain amount and stuff like that. Like it's like almost all hunting. It's you can only take a certain amount of deer hunting is that way. And like when you go shooting birds, you can only have shotguns that have you know a, a certain amount of shells inside. So you can't just wipe out the fucking flock and things of that nature. And I you mean, have a, like limit. And stuff. A lot of people are upset by you discounting trapping as a form of hunting, Fringy. Okay, yeah, I mean, I don't know shit about hunting, so, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I understand what Fringy said. It's, it's kind of like, is fishing hunting? Uh, in a way, yes, but not in, like, hunting. I guess, you know? I guess if the, if the broad definition of hunting is, like, acquiring an animal, or, or, or acquiring anything that doesn't necessarily want to be caught, then, yeah, then trapping would be hunting, I guess. Trapping is a, it's an actual also, thing, like, beat trapping. It's um, not, it's not even hunting, it's called trapping. By the way, Rags, it's, uh, just, just so you have awareness of it. Uh, we can prove it by having you both speak at the same time, but Discord's fucking you over today. Oh, oh. Yep, told you it wasn't gone. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can believe it's not gone, it's way better. Um, it just, it just poison. knocks you out. Uh... The definition of hunting is the activity of hunting. Okay, that's awesome. That's not a helpful definition. Hunting is the activity of hunting wild animals. Well, someone <laughs> said that by yeah. your logic, we discount fishing as a form of hunting, and it's just like, I don't think I've ever thought of fishing as hunting, but I guess it is. I've never thought of it as that, but yeah. yeah. It's, it's generally, when people, and if it gets too bad, let me know, because I'm fiddling with settings until I get something that maybe helps. Um, I'm not sure that there the is, time... honestly, a solution to it. It's just Discord being a cunt. Somebody loses. Yeah, there's always someone who loses. When can Fringy hear my voice when it does that? I can hear you. Yeah, but so uh, Rags, just start talking, just about anything. Okay. All right. Well, I'm fiddling with. Now I'm going to interrupt him, and he's probably going to start fading away. Yeah, there you go. See, he's just gone. Yeah, Yeah, you gone. Guy, it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Okay, I've said it it chooses different victims every once in a while. Yeah. Um, I did update like a bunch of stuff yesterday, so who knows if that played a part, but you, it generally um, isn't. Were you lost in the cold today? I you... was before Rags. But I think Duma was the last one in the cold. Oh, there, there you go. I always wonder if it does it like that. Maybe Duma would get overspoken as well, I don't know. I hear him just fine, but I, I, it's probably not from my end anyway that that happens. It's when I listen back to it that mm-hmm. I hear it. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, it's, well, it's just a matter of, hopefully, we don't we just have to avoid speaking at the same time as much as we can, basically. Do you have your yeah. noise suppression on Discord turned on? Do I have my what, sorry? Your noise suppression. Um, where is it? It's in your voice and video settings. I can't, I don't think it'll let me check that right now, because the OBS knocks out all of my options when I'm streaming. In terms of it doesn't let me see them. Okay. But, um, whatever the default is, that's probably what I've got. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Yay, something to listen to while I pretend to work for my 12-hour shift. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, pr- I, I don't know if I told you guys before, I, I'm sure I've mentioned it, but it, it just always baffled me. Like, um, when I did, uh, like, call support, tech support in, um, like, a call center for a, a while, it was, um, kind of a nightmare job. Just constant problems and, uh, trying to account for other people's I say other people's mistakes, but usually they are accounting for other people's mistakes. It's like a long thing of mistakes, and someone calls you like, "Oh, my computer's still not working," and here's their um, their form of, of like previous things, and it shows like seven entries from different call support people who are like, "Turn it off and on, installed blah 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 blah," blah and you just have to read through it all and then try and figure out what the problem is. Point being, it's a nightmare. Before I went entered the the job market, I remember playing League of Legends back in the day. And I wanted, like, different people to play with if I was staying up late. And there was a guy who was a uh, brother of a friend who was, like, always playing it. I was like, oh, neat. I'll play with him. And, you know, got along well, had some fun. And uh, it was always around the same time. Around, like, 12 midnight, I would call him and we'd jump into him and play a few games, maybe until 2 or 3 a.m. And every time I was just like, um, you know, don't, don't, like, isn't this stressful in terms of, like, because we're doing it in the weekdays sometimes. And I should be like... You have to, like, get up for, you know, whatever, and, like, a job, or whatever, and he was like, what do you mean? 
I was like, you know, just do you, how do you, it's surprising you have the time at this time of night to be able to do this sort of thing. He's like, no, I'm, I'm at work. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, I'm at work. My job is tech support and nobody rings, so I just play games all day. I was like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> like, well, okay. that's, uh, that's a you blessed get... life, I guess. Oh, he really does play support then. He told me that um, at some point, because it's, it's a team game, that he, you know, I have to take the risk of playing with him that he could get cold at any point and he'd have to leave the game. And over the right. all the time I played with him, it never happened. Wow. That's, uh, jeez. Yeah, and so so there are some jobs out there where you could just do anything. <laughs> I guess it's just like, wow. I think you have to kind of look out for that sort of thing. No, well, I guess luck out, or maybe it's really boring, who knows. Well, I'm sure you'd agree, like, if you were getting paid by the hour for a job where you just play video games on Steam. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, so. <laughs> if anything, yeah. it's an excuse to go through your library, isn't it? Yeah, of course, you'd have all the time in the world. Eats a player. Let's throw that over here. <laughs> Bringing any plans to stream Metroid Dread when it releases? I'd love to see that. Um, I I think I'd like to do that. Yeah, and that's that's uh that's coming out next week. So, it might be that beforehand. I'll just double check, make sure that stream stuff works for uh for Twitch. <laughs> Jay just yeah, said that, he, that might be on the cards. Jay said he almost worked as hard as his son. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> he still <laughs> put effort into the video game. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but yeah, Metroid Dread, that's gonna be a- I, I would even tune into you playing that, Fringy. Even I, oh someone who never watches Oh, even dreams. you. Oh, right. Even me. I All right, don't no need to be care. made. Well, no, no, I mean, in terms of, I'm not even, like, big into Metroid. I've played Echoes and Zero Mission. That's really it. Sometimes in Smash, but, uh, yeah, I don't know really, but I would, yeah. I would um, watch it's like not a problem, but I'm putting you at like 190% to put you back to normal now. I don't know what you did, but you're a lot quieter. Oh, me. okay. Oh, Rags. Yeah, I feel... oh, Rags is quiet, yeah. Well, give me a second. Alright, now I'm going to turn him back down just in case. Well, <laughs> just in case never it's be like loud. last time it blows everything <laughs> out. Well, I, I would just flick the switches back on so it should just go to normal. Um, so, let me see. I have no idea what the I point of this game is. I f yeah, I flicked a few things. I think I was playing around with... I, I toggled echo cancellation, noise reduction, and automatic game control. I'm, I'm telling you, dude, I'm almost certain there's nothing you can do about it. Well, it, it used to be almost every single EFAP it seemed to happen. And when I started using the RTX voice, it wasn't nearly as common that it would happen in our recordings and everything. Again, I'm not sure. So if, if anyone had asked me, I'd have been like, it's as, uh, it's as common as it's always been for everybody. It just cycles through people. I think it happened hmm. to you a couple of times in a row and it really pissed you off, which is fair, but... Uh, <laughs> like, <It's> just... <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, especially because I think you heard them in an EFAP movies, which is especially annoying, right? It's like, oh. Yeah, and then, yeah, I think that's where I first noticed it, and then I, I, I listened to other stuff, and I was like, it keeps happening. I was like, Half the stuff that I say just gets, disappears. Which is, you'd think that's kind of, like, what shouldn't happen in a voice call, where they just say, you just don't get to be heard anymore. Well, because uh, the last one I remember was uh, when we were in the pool with, I think, Shad and Drink, uh, and it was, uh, Shad was getting completely destroyed by it. Targeting in Australians. It's fucked up. Yeah, if, but if, I mean, if you're in the chat and you've heard of this or you're aware of some potential fix, like, pass it along to me. I'd be very curious. Duh. Like I said, it can't uh, fuck me up, at least to the EFAP audience, because my audio comes through OBS instead. I'm immune to this horrible disease, but it could happen for you guys on your ends in terms of not being able to hear me. What, um... Do you know what the... Because I know if you have a server with, like, Nitro and stuff, you can have, like, high-quality voice rooms. 
is there a way to enable that for calls or is that a default thing that you have I to assumed it was default because it's just there's no c controls for calls you know yeah like I don't know where the option seems to be if that's a thing mm. um, so uh, who knows M come on oh stressful um, Fringy, oh wait, uh, Mola, please Gedelb, it's at this point we remember that she isn't super powered, but it doesn't matter since she's the best at everything. So the thing is about that, that is a quote from Cinema Sins, uh, Wind, sorry, but I can't remember if, was he saying that as a cr point of criticism? Or was he saying that, uh, like, because he was like, it doesn't matter because she's the best at everything, like, that's a crit, but if he was like, it's fine because she is the best at everything. Which came not long after him saying that didn't didn't he make a point of one like part of the video where he was like there's no reason to assume she's not any less powerful than Thor because she saved the world or something like that I can't remember but does sound familiar it ranks <laughs> what what was this again it's just um Maybe. I could make that a Goodell quote I just couldn't remember how much of a of a thing it was if it were um you shouldn't have too much of an issue finding examples, right? So, you're not mm -hmm. starved for content in that sense. In terms of needing to put it in, you know. Um, what, what are you... Sorry, I'm sorry, I... Am, maybe maybe yeah. I just... Yeah, just say, say it again. I, I think I might have just... Okay, so, um, Cinema Wins at one point said, it's at this point we remember that she isn't super powered, but it doesn't matter because she's the best at everything. And I'm asking whether or not that was more of him recognizing a flaw. Or was it him actually arguing that? I think that's more him arguing that. Or in that case, I will like add he, it. All right. I, I think he it. takes. He, I think he takes glee in that idea. He's like, "Wow, you go, girl!" Like, but unironically, because he's a loser. I can't say that. It's mean. Jay's friends with Cinema Wins. Oh no! Not really. Right. What's wrong with being friends? With well, I mean, I'm sure he's. I'm sure. I, well, I, I, you know, I, I was more. Jo I was like serious. Obviously, you could be friends. I was just like, I, his videos are shit. That's the thing. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna push back on that. You could, you could be friends. It's fine. He's not like a horrible, terrible person or anything. He just makes shit videos. It's fine. There I was you go. just. I, I just think it's weird coming from Jay, who is you know, very critical of media and stuff, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm friends with Cinema Wins, and his content is just really bad, especially in that aspect. So it's just, it's odd, I guess, you know, there's a little bit of a... Are you saying you're not on good teams with anybody who makes shitty videos? Uh, nope. Hmm. <laughs> that's what I make, that's what I make, that's what I make sure to do, is, uh, is like, is, hey, Rags, you want to be friends? And I say, no, maybe, maybe I'll think about it. And then I'll go into some story about someone I used to know or something like that. And I'll be Googling their YouTube uh, channels and I'll be listening and to, to see if their videos are good or not. And if the videos are good, if they're at least average to good, I'll say, yep, send me a friend request. We can go to buddies. You can come to my birthday parties. I'll go to your kid baptisms or whatever the fuck it is you want me to do. We're good. We're set. And uh, if it's bad, I'm going to say, um, I think we're I think something's wrong with the call. I can't quite hear you. Go ahead and uh, message me tomorrow. We'll try it again. I think something must be wrong with the servers. And then I'll just... Then they'll forget. So that sorts Damn. itself out. Someone said bad videos don't make you a bad person. I, yes, I, thank I, you. It just has to be 100%. <laughs> I'm going to make it, a video... It shows you the state of your soul. Damn. I'll be, I'll be like, why can't I uh, direct message rags anymore? <laughs> yeah, well... Why can't I DM rags anymore? Oh. Oh. I gotta step up my YouTube game before he'll talk to me. The harsh realities of the YouTube world. So, so I, Rags, I know you're joking, but that's how Quentin decides whether to socialize with people. I think Quint Quentin should be just happy that anybody socializes I, with him or would be willing to. It is definitely not about the quality of videos from Quentin. It's, it's whether or not they align with him uh, politically. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's been explicit a couple of times from him that like if you if you don't have the same values, then he's not going to bother with you. I guess that's an interesting thing because it's like, to some extent, everybody has that perspective. It's just where do you draw the line? Yeah, let's just say he draws it harshly. 
Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I think, I think, yeah. <laughs> I certainly have impression. Hi, Rags. Hi, Mola. Hi, Frog Daddy Lish. Daddy G Licious. Oh my god. Oh boy. Hi. I guess he is still you. here. He is still here. He is. He had to take his dog out. Is the dog like, okay? Like, um, like to dinner or a date or thinking about stepping things up to the next level. All right. Yeah, you scared him with your weird questions like you do many people. Yeah. My weird questions. Oh, I was, what happened? I was waiting for like one second. Uh, All right then. Um, ha happy spooky month as a Chris Massive. I'm super spooked right now. Hey. I think ha Halloween is welcome all. It's spooky, yeah, spooky ween. It's it's chilly to the bone. If you guys ever watch Venom 2 and rate it higher than Winter Soldier, I will be shocked. It's possible. Like it's it yeah. downright probable. <laughs> I might give it the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I don't like. Winter it's hard to beat Winter really Soldier out bad. for badness. I'm sorry. Yeah, Winter Soldier is consistently and thoroughly bad. Um, I love the RE premiere. Ah, oh, one per oh, week of those, and then last week you get two. Ooh, that was fun. Yeah. Is EFAP unironically evil? Well, a little bit. Sprinkle a little evil and good in there. Who's the most evil of the three hosts? It's gotta be you, right? I can't. It can't. It can't be me because I'm in a pumpkin. So between I the like two how of you, you said it, it's gotta be it, like it's gotta be you, and then Rice like can't be me. <laughs> well, yeah, I've, I think I've made my reasons pretty clear. Uh, but between so well, between the two of you, which is which is the most evil between the two of you? I mean, long man steals people's feelings. That's pretty. That's mm -hmm. pretty scary. What do you steal, if anything? I don't steal anything except for the ingredients for my goo. You steal those? <laughs> you don't, pur you don't purchase them, them legally. Some of them, are, some of them are, are, are like hard to come by, right? Do you have? Do you kill elephants and alligators oh, on safari? Not, no, no animals were harmed oh in my making God. my goo. That's for sure. Okay, did you turn small animals into goo with your high-powered I just rifle? said no animals were harmed in the making of my goo. You have to turn animals into goo to make your other goo. I never, and it's like I a video said game. No animals you harm combine in the different goos. Goo. You well, have you to combine yellow goo and red goo to make your green goo. You wouldn't necessarily have harmed the animal if it were dead by the time you convert into goo. But... I, it would, it would. So what? You saying like the only way that I couldn't harm it is if I wait for it to die and then turn it into goo? I mean, there are humane ways to extract goo from animals, I suppose, or at least Except more. Except I don't ways. extract goo from animals. This is not part of the process. That's just generally good life advice, not to extract goo. Don't from extract animals. goo from animals, or at least do not on. extract life goo advice from animals. with Efab. You can extract goo from trees. It's delicious syrup that you can put on your panty cakes. There you go. Um, always love your content, although I only agree 90% of the time. Keep fighting the good fight. I want good movies, TV shows, and comic books again. Also, maybe one day. I think it's, a, it's important to note as well, it's blue and yellow that make green. I said red and yellow for some reason. Right, nobody it's noticed. blue and yellow that make green. Just for the, just to keep the record straight, to to establish that I I, I know my colors. So I Jay, know why I said Jay said I know a professional animal orange. goo extractor who disagrees with this. Frank, what do you have to say to that? I mean, if he does whatever his enterprise is, I'm just saying that my goo was not the product of animal. What's the name of their business? <laughs> like professional animal goo extractors goo incorporated. Obviously. P A G, Paggy. Professional animal goo. No, Paige. Professional animal goo extractors. Paige. Paige. <laughs> Take a master. page out of their book. Die, Mini Bowser. Oh, good. Watch this Super Mario. Oh, wait. Yeah. I didn't know you guys knew each other. Well, anyway. Watch the Super Mario Bros. VHS Extended Rough Cut. It's an archive.org and it is fantastic.
Well, we'll watch them back to back, the new and the old. It'll be wonderful. So let it be written. Uh, time to get the ten shaft rings and lotion, because we're talking about Wen Uwu. Nice. I've been waiting for this, Poggers. I, I'm not... If they were specifically talking about, um, good old Nando Vista movies, then, you know, fair enough. Mean? Maybe they were talking about that, maybe they were talking about Doom of Politics, you never know. <laughs> Is Batwoman an absolute triumph? Yes. In a certain sense. Yeah, that's a good meme. It's a meme. Um, I, I would say Batwoman is kind of special in a lot of ways. Uh, so you could call it a triumph by some definitions, yeah. I, um, it would be cool if for season three they recast Batwoman again. Just to keep in, in line with everything. Well, here's the thing. That, that face thing is a pathway to many actors <laughs> and actresses. Remember when they got rid of Mouse and it was just like, why? And then, yeah, it so, was at the beginning. They got rid of him quick. It was like first episode, yeah. first second episode. Uh, Wait, no, that was yeah. the end of. Wasn't it the end of season one, or am I? It was the end of season one, and then they did the Bruce Wayne thing, and then fortunately they ended that immediately because <laughs> my greatest fear. Yeah, you think that they were gonna do something more with that, but it really was a one and done episode. That's wild. I think it was just uh, peak creativity, you know. Um, hi lads, hope you had fun. I know we will in the chat. Oh, speaking for all of chat, huh? I mean, I feel like they have their own yeah. perspective, you know? Maybe some chat, of them have Chat's fun. allowed. Chat's allowed to not have fun. I was gonna probably say... Probably a couple of hate watchers. Oh, I'd hope so. What channel is complete without a little bit of hate? With a little hate, we can watch e fab. We can kill the art and... Wow, what times with a fap? Clap? Um, trap? Snap. Joy trap? God, the computer's way better than me at this. Uh, fap. Fap? Um, clap? Thunder clap? Do you, nah. have, do you have any favorite MMOs? Growing up as a child, I used to love playing LOTRO and SWATOR. Not sure if they're actually good, but I loved them. Uh, the only MMO that I have played and stuck with is Guild Wars 2. Um, I've tried WoW and I just could not get into it. Um, wasn't interested in Final Fantasy XIV or any of the other ones. I think New World just came out, but I just don't have any interest in that either. Yeah, M MMOs are a tough sell really when you're older. <clears throat> yeah, I played um, a bunch of WoW and Old School RuneScape. Although that's not really an MMO in my opinion, but people call it that. I never really got into um, an MMO. I played a couple, but I was just like, yeah. Yeah. Me I think either. I always wanted to, but then it just never happened. Yeah, it's it's way more fun when you have like less to do. If you have like uh, a job or like hobbies that you're really into, it's just very difficult to fit in. Mm. But for um, some people, it's always just difficult to fit in. Start! Yeah. Just, that's the way they are. But no, yeah, I mean, you end up. I mean, there's there has to be a one of the reasons that I play Guild Wars 2 is it it does not have a subscription service. Um, it's pretty much you just, you buy it and you get access to all the things. And if you want to buy a little extra stuff, you have that option. Um, but I mean, there's a number of reasons why I like it, but that is one of them. If I, I'm not going to play a game where I have to pay a month, regardless of whether I'm playing or not, um, just not 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 keen on that. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather just pay a, ch a, a chunk <clears throat> up front and get all the things. To, to answer Alicorn's question in chat, I don't really think old school is an MMO because the vast majority of the game's content you play alone. And then like Iron Man mode's becoming more and more popular, which is basically play the game by yourself, plus like raids that you can do after you have 100 days of playtime or something. It, it's it's not super similar to like WoW where you know, you're grouping all the time and grouping is like the point, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> uh, you lads looked into Squid Game yet? Thoroughly enjoyed it and would love an objective take from you folks. Mola Gay, hi rags. Hello to you! I have not checked it out at all. I don't even know what it is really. Yeah, what is Squid Game? I'll Google it. Squid Game? Hmm. Ooh, I don't know. 
Squid Game. Is that what they said? Just That's so what I they said. Yeah. It said Squid, Squid Game, is, Game the is the most disturbing a... show I've ever seen. That's the first thing I see. Squid Game. Oh, it's Brutal not a South game. Korean horror Squid Game. Oh. Um, the Netflix hundreds show. Hundreds of cash-strapped contestants accept an invitation to compete in children's <laughs> games for a tempting prize, but the stakes are deadly. <gasps> oh my god. Hmm. Well, um, you know, maybe I'll see it at some point. I don't know. Is it Korean, they said? Korea, yes. Oh, what if, yeah. what, more, more than is it mother? What? Well, I heard was memorying. <laughs> what was that? The, 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 a Korean <laughs> show. We're already, we're already preoccupied with a, another show. True. Being a really cool show. Uh, why did you bring Doom of Politics on? How did you find them and decide them to get them involved since they only have one video? Um, so they were on... It was, it was really simple. I'd seen the video they made by happenstance. So would Fringy. And then I think Rags probably saw it as well because it got around. I'm aware... Yeah, I'm aware um, of it. I just haven't watched it yet. And then I believe he, jumped on, he jumped on Adam and Sitch. And then I saw him in uh, the chat when I was mentioning I'd seen the video. And then uh, emails, Twitter, and then I had a chat with him while I was playing Beaver Game. It's not Timberborn, it's Beaver Game. <laughs> no, uh, that's that. <laughs> I love that picture you posted. <laughs> Wahoo. It's a me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Uh, politics, a key part of the anti fun equation. What's well, the thing? Maybe you should rebrand yourself to Duma everything so that people don't think you're just politics. Let's, yeah, that's sort of an interesting question. Is I'm, I'm already like in the is, I initially sort of charted out a bunch of videos I wanted to make, and it was like 80% politics, and it's already been whittled down to where it's like there's three politics videos i want to make and like 15 videos i want to make about media <laughs> um, i mean that, maybe yeah because now my it's probably early enough that you could still rebrand just as long as you kept the duma part in yeah well you the, could just call yourself duma and <laughs> that's it yeah yeah the, the, the weird thing is that like i've been on a bunch this is not by any means the first stream i've been on i've been on a bunch of them so like people kind of have this idea of who i am so it would be weird to change the name I almost think it would be best to just leave it like this and just not change make it. politics just videos. Yeah, and change just make it. Doom change politics, it you have now. no politics videos. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah like, that would I'm be kind of funny. You, change it as early as you can. If you're going to change it, change it now. Well, Get did you hear anything you just early. said? Or? What? No. I assume what, not. What? <laughs> well, that's the thing is, like, I'm already like, the name is a thing. People know who Doomer Politics is. Like, it's something people search for. So there's sort of a pre sale oh, franchise so element there. Maybe phase it out over time or use two names for a while. Well, it's an. It, it sounds like he doesn't want to because I, I was just going to say it's an easy change to go from oh, Duma politics to, to Duma. So that's always on the but, table, no matter how big you but are. That's the thing. I, so I would, I would, I would, I would prefer to change it. If it, if there was no consequences, I would change it like literally on the stream right now. It's just that I don't know if there. I, I don't know case, what the best thing to do is. I, well. Um, I honestly think it'd be easy for you to do go from Duma Politics to Duma. Yeah. I think so. Probably, yeah. And I don't think many people are going to be confused about it. And I think if they search Duma Politics, you still probably show up uh, as Duma. Probably might. Yeah. Especially yeah. just tag. Yeah, use your use your tags. Always tag Duma Politics. That's a, that's a good point. That's an excellent point. I'll probably do that, actually. Yeah! Well, yeah, it's, it's such a... It's, a, it's such a fuck up in branding. I, I I had not planned this at all, and like in in the in like the scope of my life, politics is not something I've been interested in very much. It's just like I made the channel to like make a video about January sixth and just never did. For reference, and it was just um, kind of sitting around. We yeah. know someone who went from Cinema Sin Sins to Sin Sins to JXE Sin Sins to JXE. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> And now that is from being very illustrious. Yes. Career. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll probably just change it soon then. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just. Uh. Yeah. My. That. That's my advice. So do with it what you will. Yeah. But if you don't, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, you're wrong about seafood and Christmas. So. That's not true, actually. You'll come around. They all do. 
Man, chat, chat was actually uh, kind of backing me up there a little bit. Oh, we have a lot of. They've good, been known to be uh, in chat. contrarian uh, uh, losers. So, yeah. <laughs> see, chat. I would never say that about you. <laughs> oh well, if, if you're not one of them, chat. I'm not talking about you. Don't worry. About I, I don't. I don't think chat are contrarian losers. They seem really like smart and like educated and cute to me. This is your first stream. Don't worry. We, we were. We, we were. Oh. You're right. They are cute and well educated. Halloweenies. We, we yeah. all can Chris Massives as well. No, mm -hmm. they're. Uh... Oh, it, it was it, it was was it Chris Massives or I want to say I want to say there was another one that I really liked. Um... Oh, it'll come to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, chat. I am hitting on you. Oh. Uh, EFAP gang, ever seen the Hot Wheels World Race and Accelerators movies? No. Hot Wheels World Race? Yeah, I've not even heard that was a thing. I've never heard about this, yeah. Sorry, no, n nothing nothing on our ends. They race around the world? How do they get over the oceans in their Hot Wheels? Bridges. Big bridges. Wow. That's pretty cool. Why can't I shoot things from my little turtle ship? Um, Rags, I want you to, I want you to drop you fluffy doggy balls on my forehead till you come like a fountain. Wow, that's okay. I don't <laughs> normally. So here's the thing: I don't normally come like a fountain just from dropping my balls on someone's face. <laughs> but I mean, there's a first time for everything. Maybe if I just. Uh, maybe it's like splitting the atom. You gotta do. You gotta hit it just right for the big payoff. You get you get overstimulated know. first, or you like edge for like hours. Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm hey. Sometimes when it sneaks up on you, it it's great. So who knows? Um, and I want Moller and Wolf to watch and critique the scene. Also, high rags. Hello. Wait, what scene? Oh, in the Hot Wheels movie. <laughs> No, I think they're referring to the previous thing I said. Oh. <laughs> uh, Desolation of Smaug opens with a great dragon killing scene, IMO. Eh. Is Desolation of Smaug the second one? Wait, Desolation. Yeah, no. Wait, yeah, you're right, because it's not. His Desolation comes at the beginning of the third film. Yeah, the de I'm pretty sure Desolation of Smaug is the second one, because I actually saw that one. I remember that being a really, really unpleasant theater experience. Why is that? I don't know. The movie just was boring. That's fair enough. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get faced that not, much by the Hobbit movies. I didn't mind the first two. I didn't. The third. The third one was just. Um, I didn't care for it. Uh, I think I liked the first all. one the most because I saw I think so potential. Too. Yeah, I, and I, I really like, liked I the, like the, the Gollum more. Bilbo scene. I remember thinking that was good shit. I just don't really care about him enough to be like. I just don't really care. It's, it, it seems like something that shouldn't have happened. I mean, this is probably the most like obvious level zero take, but like you just don't have the material for a trilogy. Well, it wasn't going to be really a fist, right? Yeah, I, I can see two movies out of The Hobbit, um, but three, ah, it's starting to stretch it. Yeah, and there was there was lots of stuff to nitpick, but overall, it was just very unimaginative in a way, and just not really interesting. It's like, okay. Finish. And Waluigi's so gangly, like, hits his shoulders on the sides all the time. What is what is Waluigi's um, ethnicity and nationality? <laughs> also species, that would be, yeah, that might be a more correct. <laughs> Italian, what, like, what the fuck are you? Italian <laughs> goblet, I think. Italian. Or yeah. Italian. Italian. Italian it could just What's be Willem Dafoe, Italian. his species. Or Dafoe-ian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'm something of a Waluigi myself. <laughs> I'm something of a wah myself. Venom 1 better than Venom 2. Alright. Maybe. I don't know. Mola, would you consider <laughs> Rag Snow as, a, as, as an objective subject or a subjective object? Objective what? subject, I guess. What? It's a, it is a subject, his snow. And it exists. Well, I have to go off in his wood. I haven't seen his snow for a long time. I assume it still exists. My snow. Here's the thing about my snow. I don't have it. 
Not right now. That's okay though. No, 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 no. But that's all right. One day, it, it will return, return to you. Yeah. It will. The snow became ice, and like like a, a more you know, like you know snow is more powdery. Mm -hmm. Well, you leave it in the freezer, it just basically turns into ice. Um, so I let it outside where the water lives. It became one with you the let sky. Your snow floated free? up. I did. I let it free. It went up into the sky. And one day, it will return to me. Thank you. So here's a question for you guys. How would uh, Shang-Chi compare to like the Phase 3 films? Like, where would it rank? Um, Pretty low. That's pretty bad. But like, feels like a more reasonable bad than something like Black Widow, where it's catastrophe is the word I'd say for that. Um, <laughs> It's like, so one of the things we talked about was like, the, one of the first things we told Rags about it was, hey, he cares about saving people in it. It's like, what? That's, yeah, I know. That's good. Yeah. That's nice to see. A lot of heroes in Phase 4 don't give a fuck about civilians, and it really screws with their characters. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like the civilians have souls. Uh, oh. Hey, man. Maybe Oops. setting them free is <laughs> the, best, the most moral <laughs> hey, thing to hey, do. Hey, hey, I... I mean, things aren't precious because they last forever. Um, I think it's the thing isn't beautiful, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's good quote. Well, yeah, same thing, yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Well, whether they have I... souls or not is, I mean, arguably it's even worse because then they just stop existing, they're gone forever. All the more reason to consider them more precious and worthy of protection in a way. That's, yeah, that was my, yeah. Yeah. Um... Maybe they go to maybe they go to like like if a prisoner dies, their soul goes to just jail in space or wherever they go. They soul still jail. have to stay in prison, afterlife jail. I can see the problem you guys have with super chats. We've gotten definitely more than we've read just <laughs> since the super chat section started. It's a, it's a curse, it's um, fine. but we we you know we. Soldier fourth. We oh, we can. Your, Jay just highlighted, except Loki, you're forgetting Loki. He cares about people. And it's like, yeah, what he's not fucking supposed to. Like, that's the opposite. Like, <laughs> he's like, oh no, the people. They're leaving them here to die. It's like, Loki, you don't give a fuck. You never have. Oh, it's so frustrating, but that's, that's just where we're at. Hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, Rags, remember the dude that you debated about Ion Fury? His weird political ramblings that had nothing to do with the topic were hilarious. Oh, I think I do, yeah. That was bizarre. He really wanted to talk about his weird lefty shit. When that wasn't what would... Yeah. Learned a valuable lesson. Yeah, that's... that's What a fucking weirdo. That's been part of the my experience is you just want to have a conversation and people have sort of like these pre-prepared things. My... Yeah, yeah, can I run through my well, script on fucking socialism? Yeah, they have a dialogue tree skip? that they want you to jump into. We want to, we got to talk about trans shit and socialism shit and all this stuff. And I was like, this is not at all. Like, I prepared to talk about like an agreed upon topic. It's like we barely even got to it, but yeah, I learned a lesson. Don't fucking entertain their stupid bullshit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, bizarre person. In What If, they confirm Zola is alive in the Hydra base from Civil War and Black Widow knew about it, so yeah, it's trash. Zola's alive in the Hydra base from Civil War. I'm not entirely sure of what you mean. But if they confirm Black Widow knew about the Hydra base, that's a problem, yeah? Yeah, she didn't tell anyone. That would be and then say, oh, this is a thing we could do? Um, also high rags. Hello to you. And happy Halloween. <laughs> Gosh, our schedules are so full. I was just realizing, like, tomorrow, the day after, the day after, and the day after, I have a stream or recordings to do, along with just editing in general. Best time of year. The thing's happening. I was saying to the Friday Night Tides people, they better have Halloween outfits for their uh, the Halloween episode, otherwise I'm going to sue. I'm preparing one right now, actually. Oh. And what's that? I'll see. I don't I like surprises, I must paint. know. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It involves a Stanley Kubrick film. Ah. <laughs> it's like you're expecting a guess. It's just like... <laughs> I see. Well, there there is... When you see it, it'll, it'll, it'll be quite obvious, I think. Uh, Actually, that's not true, because there's Clockwork Orange, so there's two... So you just confirmed it's not that. Yeah, it, it, I did, yeah. 
Gotcha. Way. Um, Smaug dies in five armies. Yeah, yeah. Bucky kills Zombie Cap and feels no emotional hit. I, I, I hate getting updates about this shit, because I'm just like, I don't... I don't it's know. Bad. It's probably terrible, we yeah. get it. Yeah. I'm okay with I him telling it. us about it. I just, like, I, there's so little I can do. Like, it, it's almost like reading out, what if is bad? And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Widow sees Clint die and seemingly shrugs it off. I mean... If you do an episode where everyone's zombies, I guess you won't have time to have meaningful, like, moments of everyone caring about the fact that they're all dead. I don't know. Uh, Fringy, please spray your Fringu across my mud flaps. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna... no. That's a no, I'm afraid. <laughs> You're gonna have to... no, that, that product isn't available yet. <laughs> I can put so, my balls on your face. Yeah, Rags is, uh, was on board with that, he just couldn't so promise Rags the outcome. So Rags was more on board with putting yeah. his balls on your face, yeah, so talk <laughs> to him. If that's what you want, specifically. If you want stuff sprayed on your mud flaps, though, I don't know. <laughs> don't call them that. <laughs> um, making a review on what if. Episode 4 is good, the rest is horrendous. Wish me luck, EFAP. Which one's episode 4 again? Ah, uh, Doctor Strange losing his heart. I don't, like, from what I've heard of the summary of that, everyone keeps saying it's a good episode. It's like, am I missing something? Because it sounded mechanically fucked. How do you lose fucked. a heart? Well, it's just talking about the girl he likes. Oh. Um, oi, Mola. Language lesson 1.1. 1 1. Based how you pronounce... Kaxtaiskud? A few corrections. The A in Kax should sound more like barf. So, Kax... Kaxtaiskud. could. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well played. Beautiful. Well played. All right, this looks so stupid. I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. So juvenile, but I love. <laughs> I just rewatched uh. the joke in Nando EFAB, and dear lord, I'm not ready for this. Also, I miss Wolf. Send love. Yeah, well, the, that one was worse than this one. I feel like this was, that was the best Nando vs. Movies video we've watched, because at least he, like, drew from the film. It's just it weren't very... Yeah. Because, like, he made they some bullshit claims about went. Joker. Yeah. yeah, they were weird extrapolations, or writing the film for itself, or... You know, like, I could tell he watched the movie... So that's yeah. nice. Yeah, that's good. It wasn't like crazy or just incoherent. That's cool. Um, language lesson one point two. Taste should sound more like taste. You know, you're close enough and it starts to sound like something Ragu would agree with. Yeah, it's, it it's becomes. Oh, he won again. I always lose the bomb one. He likes oh, Shang Chi, but he doesn't like Joker. Remember his Chris Duckman level fan fiction. Oh, I don't. What did he say? I that well, was so that was another lifetime ago. That's his main um, channel thing. Is he just rewrites movies and he like even puts in dialogue and stuff? And it's just super awkward if it's like really much worse than what was there. <laughs> and, well, like, it's the thing that you run the risk of if you're like, I'm gonna fix your thing. It's like, dude, if it's worse, like <laughs> you were inviting a world of and his criticism fix, your way. His fix for um, Joker was making it so the girlfriend was real. I think. No, no, um, no, 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 no. He comes up with really yeah, weird ideas for that. fixes. Yeah, it was it was great. As Do you remember, it was, as it was. He called it racist that she was an illusion, <laughs> like because he's like the only person of color was an illusion or something like that. Well, well not an illusion, but you know what I mean. It's you damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know. Well, you got to make her a real person, okay? Really. She was real. No. No, real is in doesn't is in head his head. Rank, it's not fair. I have another rumble related mini game, and I don't have rumble in the controller, so it's, I just have to lose. So wait, wait, wait. You have to. Wow. Would I, you what? I randomly pressed A and I won. Uh, so the idea is that your controller mm. will rumble, and it's the first person to press A after the rumble wins. <laughs> you got it randomly. I did. Yeah. <laughs> like, if not... only the com 
If only the computer understood how much it just got bamboozled. <laughs> I was gonna say, the computer's <laughs> on fucking hard mode. Oh, I didn't get that one. I think, in general, like, the audience is really good at picking out problems in a movie, but, like, fixes is hard because you need to understand a lot of mechanics to, like, really propose a fix to something. I, most right, of the time you have I've to seen... identify something that's broken to begin with. No. Yeah, I way prefer doing them on a really, really micro, like, nano level, where, um, it's just like you have a, a, a piece of dialogue and you're like, oof, that was a bit over it. You could have just said blah, 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 and that would have been way more subtle and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's like, um, Something that's much easier for people to agree on. When you go, you know, Jurassic Park would be better if there was no T-Rex and way more Velociraptors. And you're like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that just sounds like a different movie. I don't know what else to say. Thanks for the inspiration, Mola. I'm currently working on a Shang-Chi video. I am Chinese and I feel insulted by the movie. Well done, Marvel. Oh, schnizzle. Um... Yeah, good luck, I suppose. There's plenty to work with. Did it insult you more or less than Mulan? Oh, yeah, Mulan's... I, that's gotta be worse, right? I, I think. <laughs> I was watching the Mulan Ifat movies the other day again. It's just so... That movie was so fucking bad. <laughs> Special. Um, I expected the story to be lackluster, to say the least, but the fight scenes were underwhelming, even with Jackie Chan's stunt team. That's just annoying to hear. That it would have been his stump team, it's just like, mm. They could have, like, cut out a lot of wasted time and added longer fight sequences too. I don't know why you wouldn't, because audiences love that shit. Um, as a Chinaman, you have my full protection from racism accusations. Oh, sweet. They <laughs> gave you the C-word pass. Well, there you go. Immunity. As, uh, oh, you gay, here money. Thanks. It's the best kind of transaction. <laughs> <laughs> Play the Convergence mod for Dark Souls 3. Uh, I'm not even sure what that is. Metal might know what that is, but... Uh, maybe have, have at these, some point. Have any of these live-action Disney movies been remotely passable? No. Oh, except um, I hear Cinderella's not that bad. Not the net, uh, Amazon one. <laughs> Just oh, are we going to watch that? <laughs> Look, there's nothing on the books yet. It. There's nothing on the I books yet. I like the difference in like you, you're like you're you're gonna veto the Cinderella with uh, James Corden. Rags will veto like Saw. I'm curious what I would veto. <laughs> I I just I just don't want to watch it. Um, <laughs> it's not like a deep objection to it. I'm just, I have very little interest, and I don't think it would be that funny. Really? You don't think that it would just be so hideous it would be worth laughing at? Maybe. I think it would... I, I think it probably will be hideous enough to laugh at. I think it would be very cringy, though. Mmm. But cringe can be funny. It can, that's the thing. Cringe is a risky... To, cringe, she is a risky mistress. You're taking a... Yeah, you, yeah that's right. You, you are taking careful. a risk with cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rags. Hello to you! It's my birthday today, just turned 26. Wow. How about that? EFAP makes a great present. Here. Still haven't seen Shang-Chi, but they wasted Abomination. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say Shang-Chi wasted Abomination. He's in it for like five seconds, and he does punch someone or whatever, so it's just like, I mean, what? it's about it. What else are you going to get? But um, it would be fair to say that about uh, Incredible Hulk, I guess. Can I humbly suggest Iron Monkey from 1993 for EFAP movie sometime? Think of the Emperor in Mulan remake hitting people with blankets times 20. Ooh. That was pretty funny, remember that? The blankets? In the Mulan in... remake? Mm-hmm. How she would throw them out? The little... Well, I don't think she did. It was, uh, it was the king, right? Or whatever, the emperor. Well, she did it. The witch did it too on the city. Oh she right, I thought you meant her. Mulan. Um, I just the the particularly funny one I think was the emperor near the end. He he did all kinds of things. Not quite yeah, as funny as was... when he tossed her the arrow and she did a flip kick and killed the villain. That was. That was. Oh. A, a team of people would have made that. It's incredible. Yeah, that got 
thought of in the first place, mm -hmm. spoken out loud, approved, and then executed. So, mm. uh, woke cringe is so forced. I can't imagine trying to create around it. P Purell moments. I don't know. I, f I find it could be a really interesting challenge to be forced to... Like, what kind oh, of restrictions meant... a studio would give you? When he said Purell moments, I thought he meant, like, hand sanitizer. And I was very confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, like, you know, you know if a studio was like, you have to have, I don't know, all of, like, the trappings of all that shit, but then you try and make a good story underneath it? This hope oh, I mean, out you there. can make it work. Someone out there will do it. There'll be one good movie in the MCU eventually, guys, and we'll find it. Um, your fairy brand is being infringed upon, Rags. You should sue for damages. Also, hi, Rags. Hello to you. I think Rags welcomes more of his people. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Hi, Rags. Hello to you. I'm considering moving to Arkansas. Any recommendations on cities and which ones I should avoid? No, honestly, I don't really have all that much insight into that. Generally fun, welcoming place, I imagine. Good old Arkansas. Um, forget Invincible. Check out FX's Legion. I've heard a couple of recommendations that one's for Legion. Starting to come up now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's, it's older First than Invincible time. too, so. Or at least the first season is, right? I don't know. Did it get stopped? I think it's over now, yeah. Mm. Oh, Donkey Kong, punch the child. Guys, check it out if you haven't got the stream up. This, this shit is awesome. Oh no, Donkey Kong, what are you doing? <laughs> Knock him the fuck out. Take his money. I like how even he said, what, Donkey Kong? And he <laughs> punches him and takes his money. What are you his, doing? His ape brain is not equipped to deal with your concept of morality. Yeah, he just registers Donkey that it's Kong Bowser. But Donkey Kong is a protagonist in his games. Why is he? Why is yeah. he no, now he's an anti-protagonist. He's an anti-hero all along. Anti-protagonist. He's an ape hero. <laughs> Seth Rogen laugh, yeah. <laughs> That's, I'm not ready for that. Nobody is. Hey crew, I hope you could get Misanthropony on. His recent video getting is getting hate for caring about a TV show too much. He's a good boy and I hope we get him on someday. His format is similar to Unbridled Rage videos. What's um what what is he getting hate for? I don't know. Let's have a look. I'm curious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it a shitty TV show? Is that why? Oh. Oh, it's it's about my little pony. So that could be, in fairness, that could be for all kinds of reasons, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't... Is he saying it's bad? Or something? Well, I, think, I think they're or saying good? the new one is bad, the, the old stuff is good. That's my assumption oh. from the thumbnail and the title. Which is probably new... going to piss off the new fans of My Little Pony. Okay. You know them a lot. They're big into the pony stuff. I guess. I had a friend, a guy friend, who was a super brony. It was really strange. Um, yeah, I knew people who. They yeah. Were a strange he sort. had. He had strange collected some of the some of the dolls and would constantly say that I need to see the show, and I'd be like, I'm all right. I think I saw a couple of them, and I was like, it's fine. It is absolutely. Yeah, fine. I had a friend who's into that stuff. I mean, I still have. It's still my friend. Uh, they, I got. They showed me a couple, and they were fine. Yeah, they were fine. I I, I enjoyed Just a them. Normal but I wasn't cartoon like, yeah. show with characters doing their thing. Yeah, I had no issues with the show. And yeah, I don't know which of the many different fucking pony shows it was. I don't remember. But, um, it was around the same time Game of Thrones season two was out, so that should tell people which one it was. And as you can tell, the fact that that's my memory was me being like, I prefer Game of Thrones to this. <laughs> that's a preference I have. Uh, oh, speaking of which, Game of Thrones Season 8 is a pitch-perfect example of subverting expectations at its worst. They undo everything established, all the character work, and do none of... Uh, do one of the most boring nothing endings ever. Yeah, I think that they're on record saying that um, it would have been like too boring to have Jon kill the Night King. 
It's too boring to That's have. That's a great reason to make decisions. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's top notch. It'd be too boring if you did the thing that we set up would happen that and everyone we, would yeah. fucking love to see. I fucking hate that It would be so shit, satisfying. Yeah. yeah. Is it too boring that Luke defeats the Emperor? Well, you know, defeats the Emperor. We'll see. I, guess he I suppose you could now, argue, but, yeah, you know. that he doesn't quite do it. Like it's it's a complicated yeah. little event. Okay, you know. let's let's do a different one. Is it is it is it a problem that like Frodo talking, drops the ring? Spider Man saves. The, yeah, yeah. You know what That's though, fine. Frodo wouldn't have if not for the chicanery at the end of the thing. So it's subverted. Yeah. That's right. And same for Spider Man with. A lot of his villains, they defeat themselves in a sense. They often, yeah, defeat themselves. But maybe, maybe they're onto something. We can't just have a villain be beaten by a hero. That's boring. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it can be really right. interesting. It can be really interesting to like establish something that can lead to multiple possible outcomes. And people think it's going towards one, and you go towards the other. But just, yeah, of course. J just in general, being like, oh, well, they expect this, so we'll do the opposite. It's just, that's well, such a terrible line of thinking. Do you say that? And then it's like, yeah, we could also just go as far as saying you have one outcome everyone's seeing, but there are many ways to commit to that outcome, right? Oh, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. How we get them. Does John die when killing the Night King? Does John have to kill a friend in order to kill the Night King? Is there some kind of, you know, like, is it killing the Night King will actually make things worse? And he didn't realize that. You know, there's plenty of things we can fucking do. The idea that we're like we know he's gonna stab him is so stupid. It's like, hmm. What's the other thing is it, it's it I mean there's way more to it than that. There could be like an intricate layered battle with like fighting past some of the lieutenants and then failing and having to fall back and like you don't know what's gonna happen and someone comes up with a plan and like you execute the plan and it doesn't work, so you come up with another plan and that plan starts to you know, exactly like there's a whole there's a whole range of things that can happen. I mean, I'll be and honest with eventually you, he kills the Night King. John stabbing the Night King in that ending instead of Arya, and that's the only change we make. It's still a shit episode. Oh, oh yeah. of course. That episode's nonsense. I mean, like, I, my, my biggest problem with that whole thing is just that the Night King ever decided to come into Winterfell while anybody was alive. Like, what's the point? Just send in zombies, send in I'll more tell you zombies. Because he's arrogant, okay? That's why. It makes sense completely with his characterization of being oh, yeah. an arrogant ice lord. When, when, when was he established as being <laughs> arrogant? <laughs> it's just something we come across all the time. It's like, sudden arrogance is the only way you could explain certain decisions or a lot of videos it's like shut up it's what it is yeah it, 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 it's, I, I expected that to be a problem with thanos is like thanos has so much power that almost by definition the only way to beat him is for him to fuck up <laughs> well, it's like if it's he doesn't cool. fuck up how do you beat him it's just cool that he wins um i just don't think that they stuck the landing for that in terms of like so how do we recover endgame was like yeah mm -hmm. and vomited all over the room and it's like oh yeah yeah they should have just ended if if the if the whole series ended on Thanos looking over. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because I I talk about a hypothetical that I think would be super neat. Yeah, um, because we, we talked about a couple when we first did the uh, Endgame stream, I think, and one of them was that um, what if, you know, the Thanos snap didn't actually kill everyone? It just created two universes: one with half the people, one with the other half. That's I. I didn't even think of that one. That, that one, I must have forgotten that, because that is, uh... Yeah, that that can be really cool. You got a lot of options, and it feels like they picked possibly the worst. Is, is what I would say, in terms of, like, utilizing this, um, this idea and fully exploring. Super discipline. Um, You'll find out all about it when that video gets done, and yes. whenever it's been done. <laughs> Mongo Supremacy cometh, but hail the Doom Patrol. I've not seen it. Heard it's good, though. That's what I keep hearing. Best lead slash movie Mortal Kombat Snake Eye Shang-Chi. What? <laughs> Does anyone know I've what that meant? Snake Eyes. Is it the best lead in each of these movies? I mean, best lead slash movie... Oh, so they're asking which uh, one is the best lead, Mortal Kombat or Snake Eyes? Well, I haven't seen Snake Eyes, so... Neither have I. Then they also yeah. asked Shang-Chi. Okay, I think I further understand what they're asking now. Um, I mean, maybe maybe the guy in Mortal Kombat is he's so fucking lame. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, he's, he's probably the worst out of the lot. He is yeah. he's just a vacuum for interest. It didn't help and that I he was next to Kano for a lot of the movie as well. 
Well, that that's that's not true. But if Kano was the lead, then uh, which, but if he was, then Mortal Kombat comes out on top. Yeah. I think honestly, that's one of those things where halfway through the movie, you're filming, you're like, "Fuck it, <laughs> this guy is. Uh, we like this Kano guy. We're changing the ending." Um, as for which one's the best movie, Snake Eyes, Mortal Kombat, Shang-Chi, it's probably going to be Mortal Kombat for entertainment. Um, I really enjoyed Mortal Kombat. Well, no, uh, that's a bit of a... No, I enjoyed parts of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it was. It, it got right. dry at certain points. Well, yeah, because it's like, you know, when that protagonist is fighting Goro, it's like, ah, oh, sucks that he beats him. Yeah. But then when it's like, mm -hmm. freaking Scorpion versus Sub-Zero, that was really cool. But then we got nervous when protagonist man was getting involved. Yeah. It's like, no, this Scorpion Go away, person. protagonist. You shouldn't yeah. have that be a thing in your movie where we're like, go away, protagonist. You're just yeah, but it's nobody really likes boring. you, protagonist. It feels, like, it feels like a problem that we almost moved past, and it feels like it's slipping back in. It feels like um, Transformers is kind of the same situation where it's like, I just want to see fucking Optimus Prime shit fighting people. I don't want to hang out with Sam or fucking all these people on the ground. Um, and then it creeps back in where it's almost like, we can't do, we can't have it be that we have, um, you know, uh, Johnny Cage as the protagonist, our POV character. We need, Which like, would have been so much element. better. It would, would be, be way better. Imagine, fun. imagine if you had your scenes where it's the interactions between, um, Johnny Cage and Kano. That would be awesome. God, it's not even close. God. Like, and that's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> like, because Kano is gone. Well, maybe they'll bring him back. It is Mortal Kombat. So. Mortal Kombat universe. True. <laughs> you only hope. Yeah. Because um, that definitely getting a sequel. That was like one of the most successful films on HBO Max ever. Is it definitely going to be cool? Have you got like an article or anything? Yeah, that? yeah, that's that's definitely happening. I'm pretty sure that's just already been announced. I hope Kano's in it. I do hope they bring back Kano. Yeah. Fringy, is your avatar a result of evil of the evil circles? Uh, I don't know what the I'm I'm working on the the Halloween lore for this year. It's it's not done yet. Is I, it going to regard this avatar? To... Uh, no, it's actually gonna be totally- it doesn't even matter. <laughs> like, it's- it's funny, I was- I was thinking about this the other day, I was like, the fringy lore is getting really confused. Um, there are the so MCU. few things that are like- Well, yeah, but then again, I don't give as much of a shit about continuity for this. <laughs> like, it's- You know, I can do a lot of fun things and have fun with the characters and stuff like that and premises. Then, uh, like in the Green Teal comic, page is coming out every Thursday <laughs> on Twitter. Well, there you go. This person followed up sure. with saying, um, unrelated, go sub to Fringy's Patreon. There, I plugged it so oh. you don't have to. Oh, wow, wow. shit. I, I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, do I want to do that? <laughs> you did it for it's me. It's too late, yeah. Um, have any of you Give seen... Give me your money. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you seen Visions? And if so, what is the worst episode aside from three? The one where everyone can breathe in space. I haven't seen it, and I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't plan to see it. Everyone can breathe in the space. Not robots. It's Treasure really. Planet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except Treasure Planet, that was more. So, <laughs> as opposed to in Star Wars. Um, Mongo Supremacy cometh, but hail the Doom. Oh wait, I, I read that already. I don't. You see... read that, hmm. yeah. Um. You guys totally whiffed on the discussion of Fu Manchu's name. It's not at all confusing. The rights to Fu Manchu... No. <laughs> like, we were asking why Fu Manchu is a racist name. His joke was they removed it because it's racist, but then actually they didn't. That's his joke. So our point stood both before and after completing his sentence. You gotta understand, just because he hadn't finished his statement doesn't actually mean he was misrepresented or that we misunderstood anything. This goes both ways, Chatteroonies. Uh, the rights to Fu Manchu lapsed and they needed a name that could copyright. He was making fun of people who thought the name change was due to a fear of racism, an accusation that's been made regarding the name change. Hence our confusion. So, you agree? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Rings OP, please nerf. I don't even know that I need them oh, nerfed, I just need to understand them. 
I mean, well, I, the, the rings, I guess I want that, them nerfed. That, that picture that we looked at definitely needed, like, some heavy fucking nerfs, like... Like the 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 void ring and the oh those ones sun yeah ring. Fucking hell. yeah those rings those rings are like <laughs> completely broken. I assume yeah. maybe that yeah they're probably talking about those ones actually. They said I was just joking, but holy crap! Please nerf those rings. Yeah, the rings are very hyperbolic. They're powerful, but not nearly as powerful as they sound. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, is it, it's are, they, powerful. are they it's inaccurate powerful. descriptions or what? Because like you could just you could just create the heart of a sun and create well, it, malleable darkness. And I can open a portal to space in front of you. I, I say that as if Doctor Strange can't do that, but I'm sure he can do that. Um, yeah, I mean, who am I losing to at that point? Those are the kinds of questions you really just want the MCU to have the balls to answer. Like Thanos is fighting people, and Doctor Strange just opens a portal that's quite small near him to space. And you're just like, yeah, do it. Fuck him up. I'll suck him right in and you go... <laughs> with his bones everywhere. It'd be gross, but I mean, it'll get the job done. He's just stuck there. Like, it can't kill him, but he's permanently just stuck to this portal and he can't leave. <laughs> they just... I don't know, like... Release me, sorcerer! <laughs> Release me, sorcerer! My cheek in face! <laughs> it's just attached to his butt. It's <laughs> really hurts. Yeah. Is his the, the roundness of his bottom creates the perfect steel <laughs> around the portal? I would rather be left cheekless than stuck here for the rest of my life. Sorcerer, <laughs> you attack me, my weakest. <laughs> Fuck, that game's hard. Uh, Which game? The little, the the avoid the UFO game. Oh, okay. I thought you were referring to something that maybe you know, it's like the Thanos thing. It's <laughs> like, wait, what game? It's a game fish. I'm gonna <laughs> trap your butt. Space butt. Uh, ten rings are much less than the Infinity Stones. Oh, wait, wait, oh, yeah, before go you ahead. go, that means that somewhere out in space, there's just a purple <laughs> cheek. <laughs> just in space. It's just somewhere. floating. <laughs> Just, yeah. But you can make like out the uh, top of a windshield. A you can <laughs> you can make out the runic symbols of Doctor Strange's thing around it. You're just like, what is that? What does it mean? Like, He's into some freaky shit. Is all I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Ted rings are much less than the Infinity Stone, since the stones blatantly rewrite reality in the comics. But anyone could accomplish what the rings do just with magic or super technology. With with those descriptions, though? Those descriptions described, like, nonsense. And also hyper-powerful things. Those sound like D&D &D spells. Maybe. <laughs> it can't summon a black hole, just create a vacuum. Well, yeah. I, I, did, I don't think we said it could create a black hole. Fucking hell. I don't, we, I don't remember saying that. Um, Iron Man has supernova level feats in comics so he can survive the star level heat with ease. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I always imagine they push it to... Like, you see Iron Man's suit by the time his end of his comic run is powered by suns. You'd be like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's very powerful. I'm sure he's very cool. The Liar Ring sounds a lot like Golden Experience Requiem from JoJo. I have no idea. Like there's a liar ring? Yeah, the, 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 I think that was the one that I pointed out. It was kind of a funny name. It was called oh, the right. liar ring. <laughs> it was a Binding of Isaac joke. Yeah, I remember now. Uh, influence ring changes your gender. Trans rights. I mean, if it's if it can change anything about the body, I guess so. I don't know. But Can't. can it create genders? Maybe. The Reality Stone could probably do that, as well as... Well, to be fair, I mean, a lot of the rings are very confusing in terms of what they could even do, so I don't know. And well, to be fair, people create genders all the time without rings of power, so... How do you know they don't have rings of power when they're doing that? Oh, that might be true. Cock rings, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or IEDs. Or UEDs, sorry. Not IEDs. <laughs> <laughs> it was not to do with anything. <laughs> Um, comics Mandarin stomps MCU Thanos. Well, yeah, clearly. Like, I don't, yeah, know, I don't know what he's gonna like do. Just, yeah, I'm sure he. Yeah. 
Um, I'm sure the comics are very impressive. But Comics Thanos is pretty much a wizard super tech god in the comics, like Darkseid, but not as pure. A, not as pure physics it's prowess. Pure. I'll remind you that even without the stones, that Comics Thanos can be somewhat even footing with beings that are living... that are living concepts? Living concepts? What does that now even that's mean? that's a comic. It's, it's a bunch of woo in a comic book. You know how people gawk at that. That's well, like an anime thing. I mean, you, the power levels is fucked Living in like... Living concept. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's very impressive to the 14-year-old who thought of it. Well, I, I don't know. It reminds me of the uh, the anti-life equation. I'm just sitting here like, what the fuck does that yeah. mean? Yeah, <laughs> anti-life equation. Very, very spooky. Um, An actual Mandarin, like an orange, would be better than Trevor Slattery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Or, or what about a tangerine? I'm surprised they didn't have him eating a mandarin when he walked in the room. Well, I mean, does he... What a clever that's a good question. What, is, what is he eating when he's down there? He's been locked down there for like 10 years or something? What has he been eating? I think it's the, the little fantasy creature's poop. <laughs> is it? It just poops is that out part like... Of the, is that part of the poop lore? I'd say so, yeah. So wait, is he is he part of like the the Shang Chi crew now? Like, is is he going to be in the next Shang Chi movie, just kind of hanging out? Maybe he maybe he lives with a civet and he eats the um, the cherries from the poo, like we were talking about. Mm. Tell you, man. No, Jay said, "I am a living concept. I am the paragon of cum." That is impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, was say, I can't imagine the the power that comes with that. Muller, talk about the good comic you read. I, I'm probably going to read... <laughs> that sounds funny out of context, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm probably going to read plenty of good comics uh, as time goes on. Especially if I win that um, Shang-Chi bet, which is still looking good. Are you going to buy a lot of comics with it? No, I said that um, if they win, I pay them $100 each. If, if I win, they have to buy me $100 worth of comics each. Oh! What's, what's Are the Shang-Chi bet? That I gotta, What's I gotta, uh, before it hits streaming, it's gotta earn 380 million, I think, the film. Yeah, and you've got a whole month before it hits streaming. I mean, it is, still, the, the numbers are getting lower and lower in terms of dailies, and oh, now we've got it, it's competing now with Venom and Bond, so. Yeah, you're still, my, you, I, I would still, you probably, you're fine. Like, <laughs> I would imagine it's gonna clear that mark. Well, in that case plenty of comics to come. I'm apparently in the as is sending me the uh, the Nightfall arc. Do you know that one, Fringy? Are you up to date on these things? Nightfall for Batman. No. I oh. I, I, I I I haven't been actively reading for a couple of years, so might be out of loop unless that's an older one. Because he's been passively reading. Yeah, I made the mis <laughs> that mistake. I did the thing. Whoops. Uh, do do Venom Two seems to be a six or five, which would make it the best superhero movie no this way. year. That's kind of sad. No really? Way. I'd be surprised wow. if it gets that high. No way. But it might. Is it be the same director and everything? Ones. No, it's no. Andy Circus actually, which means it mm. might be better than the first one. But the first one's like a two. Well, so. Is it Andy Serkis like Gollum, like the CGI actor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's directing. Like mode. Gollum in what way? He's like he's pale. Just, or... I immediately <laughs> thought of him as like hunched over directing the movie, like eh, he's get, like get in frame. Like, he's, like, he is similar or comparable to Gollum. <laughs> like man, wow. He, he is a stunning likeness. Yeah, poor guy. He's, he's just trying, you know. I I imagine that Venom Two is probably a lot of fun because first movie is shit, but it's kind of fun. And this one, probably leaning more into the fun parts of the first one. Yeah. But, like, there's no way that film is going to be a five or a six. I highly doubt that. Wow, if you go and see it and end up loving it, you're going to be, your face Blinded. will be red. Well, I mean, if I like, if I love it, I mean, I may well enjoy it. Like, I'm, I, I think I'm going to enjoy that movie, but it's about separating your feelings from the more Feelings from the reelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. There's feels and then there's reels. To, to jump ahead, because it regards what we were just talking about, 
Rags. Living concepts are stupid and edgy. So what about an embodiment of death, like a Grim Reaper? I don't know what that is. An embodiment to... of death? Why would that be a it's living actual... concept? No, that, that's a guy who goes around. Well, that depends on which iteration of him we're talking about. Because generally, when we talk about... We, we describe him in that way. Death isn't he's... a concept, though. Like, death is a thing yes, that is that's a, real. Death is a physical process that occurs. Wouldn't, wouldn't a con A living concept would be, like, fucking a walking... I am the horizon. A walking Dunning-Kruger or something. Or, like, a walking, talking... Um, I don't know, like trickle down economics. Like that's, <laughs> that would be like a, that would be a living concept. That's what I mean. I'm very confused by how death death isn't a concept; it's a thing. Someone's quoted that as like a the, the, the language is complicated here. Death is a concept. It's like well, no, death is like an event that happens. Death yeah, is death something is, that actually happens. Is, yeah, yeah, death is a real measurable process well if the categories we can... didn't exist it would still be something that happens unless they're referring to the well when he says the grim reaper is a concept but then again that means you've gone into fiction yeah, but then that means all fictional characters are concepts then yeah and, and then i guess you prefer to all of them as living concepts which is just like where yeah it was like it's probably like oh he is like the embodiment of fear and it's Sorry, like okay, okay so they go on to say uh, Vastly non-human <laughs> perspectives yeah, see thought. the ultimate Sandman. Also, what's so hard to understand about the anti-life equation? You get to control all life. It's like... I, that is... I, no, that's not anti-life. How is that an anti-life equation that you get to control all life? The anti-life equation is a bunch of words that if you read them, strip people of their free will. Like that, I... Like, I don't know what... I How is that anti-life? That? That's what? anti-freedom equation. Well, I don't. Yeah. I, I, How is that an equation? equation? I'm just. Yeah, I'm stuck no, all the way back. Equation. Yes. It's, oh, it's also that's not, not an oh, equation. Just, it's a you, magic just spell. You, no, just you wait. Just you wait. Hold on. I need to read it to you. You've never <laughs> clearly. You've never heard the anti-life equation. No, I've not. Yourself. No, I've. Yeah, Let you. Me yeah. Yeah. Meme repository's definitely read this before on. Uh, yeah. So this is the formula. Oh yeah. The formula is. Loneliness plus alienation no, plus fear no. plus despair plus self worth divided by mockery, divided by condemnation, divided by misunderstanding, uh, multiplied by guilt, multiplied by shame, multiplied by failure, multiplied by judgment. N equals Y, where Y equals hope and N equals folly. Love equals lies. Life equals Man, death. Man, what's so love hard to understand lies. about this? Oh. <laughs> love where, equals where lies. Does, where Damn. does this come from? This is from the DC, DC universe. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is the DC universe? Are you serious? I mean, I was just, I was like, I got the, <laughs> I, I was evoked of Donnie Darko. There was like some weird shit in there. It was like cringe, but it wasn't like one tenth the cringe of that. That's I, like, the, this is in the DC universe. This is this is it's the like, problem. It's like, it's like rap lyrics, like 20% skill, 30% <laughs> luck, concentrated or... power of will, or yeah. something like whatever that goes. <laughs> I didn't know the anti-life equation How was a, a 13-year-old oh, girl's Facebook meme. <laughs> I'm pretty, so, I'm pretty sure, so I'm pretty sure that some of those are synonyms. Oh, I probably, well, yeah. Here, I think post, my favorite part like is, like, there are no brackets, so I have to go chronologically. <laughs> oh, well, I gotta do fucking, um, I gotta do, uh, bid mass here to figure it out. Oh, fuck that. Um, like, <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out that equation? What the fuck? What's what's or, the difference between loneliness and alienation? I, oh, I don't know. You can, loneliness plus alienation. You can right? be lonely well, maybe, while maybe. having been accepted into society, I guess. Yes, and you can be alienated okay, sure. whilst not being lonely, I guess. Or it's doing the alienation. But, but like what about fear and despair? Others? What is the difference between those two? Is it One just is a longer. more intense well, the, version of despair? Fear? Despair is intense sadness, so it's distinct from right. fear. Right. Okay. Also, someone said in uh, all caps, that is not the original equation. It's the equation oh. on the DC wiki. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> that's well, the that's original one for you. This yeah. is, nope. yeah. Mockery, condemnation, and math. misunderstanding. Why did they write that? Like, like the I'm just word looking. equals poly. Because it just, it's just been posted and I see it now. And it's just like, why the fuck would anyone <laughs> write this? This is so <laughs> fucking cringe. <laughs> let's say you have this. How do you say you have this equation? How do you do this? Well, how do you use? How do you get the components? Like do you yeah, it, like do you plug in the numbers and measure them well, up? And do you say these in English? 
Do you say it in English? Do you say it in like Spanish? Do you say it in Is it all over two A or something? Do I divide like... before I add? Is it is it is it all loneliness, alienation, fear, despair, self worth combined and then divided by mockery? Because there are no brackets, so I gotta like. Oh. I gotta imagine that that's not the case. Someone said Goodell bit. You know what? Let's let's just toss that into Goodell. I'll figure out something. <laughs> oh my god. Videos can be described as successful if they follow this formula. <laughs> Is it a transcendental mathematical formula? Oh, and they, they follow what? up. What? So Originally it, said to allow any who knew it to dominate the will of any yeah. sentient yes. race? What the that is fuck? what it does. The follow-up is, um, what it's is it? just yeah. universe and range mind control. Pretty simple. Just ignore the comics version where it can shoot energy blasts because having no visible cons. I, I am very lost at this oh point. Oh my god, I'm just imagining reading comics and like hearing, oh, there, he's using the anti-life equation. It's like, oh, that sounds so cool. I wonder what the anti-life equation is. And then eventually you hear someone say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, well, so this is why... There are people... What it was like, like what's so hard to understand? This from memory. It's just like, I, what is there to understand about it? Like, what? I don't know what I'm meant to understand. It's a, th it's a thing that if you say it, people lose their free yeah, like, will. If we're gonna go magic, like, like someone says, like, how is it that Gandalf emanates light from his staff? It's like magic. Like, okay, but when when you say like, how do you control the entire world's free will? It's like, well, if, oh, the anti-life equation, obviously. And you're like, what? What's wrong what? with that necessarily? I don't understand what it means to say a bunch of words and then people lose their free will. And I don't know what it means that it's an equation. What does that matter? Like, why why am I adding stuff and then taking it away? What? How does that remove people's free will? I mean, I... I guess yeah, what's trying the mechanism? To, trying, you know, trying to like, okay, trying to trying to steel man this. Maybe it's something like this is giving you insight into the nature of reality, and by understanding the nature of reality, you gain power over it. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I don't care to look into it more though. Like I don't. It's just it's hyper edgy. I, I just think it's retarded. It's, I, do you need a yeah, degree yeah, in like retarded evil mathematics to use the <laughs> equation? No, I, I speak as someone with a degree in mathematics that I think knowing math no, makes no, this evil, make less sense. No, no, evil, evil mathematics. mathematics. Okay, I evil don't have to get mathematics. mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like geometry, but with demons or something. Yeah, I. Trigonometry or Jeez, I don't trigonometry. Know. <laughs> <laughs> something i guess a thing occurred this is this is like is this in the in the dc uh cinematic universe uh it's yes in the DC well corner, right? it is in the yeah it was when dark side he found it on earth and then he forgot where earth was well to be fair i guess it i can't say that it makes less sense in that but it's a giant bit of like inscription on the floor it's i like don't i don't know so how yeah I don't okay. know what that I, means. Who wrote it? Let, let, let me clarify. I've I've seen none of these movies. So this this equation is actually involved in one of the movies. No, yeah. well, but not not what you see in 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 the writing. There, all you see in the movie I'll is a giant picture. like carving in the floor. Oh, like it's yeah. like glyphs. Yeah, like you can't make out like anything that, particularly. Yeah. I don't think. I'll get you a picture from the movie here. I mean, if it's if it's glyphs, that's one way to hide the shame of this. I'm just like I'm imagining being a, a screenwriter for DC, and I see this, and then oh, I choose to include it. That's well, the anti-life yeah. equation. I, I ain't including this. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. Someone's like, so technically, did did, did Snyder improve it? And it's like, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't no, know. No like, I mean, the symbols look cool, but that doesn't imply like alienation, no, just... fear. Divided by mockery times judgment? Like, what the well, fuck does that mean? Well, I guess we mean? can assume that it's different in the I, DC. If it's literally just, you found it, and then you do something with it, and it gives you control over all free will in the universe or something, it's like, okay. Right. But did, did, did you just say the DC European Union? <laughs> I, That's the, what it's called. It, it is the DCEU, yeah, the DC Extended Universe. <laughs> oh, the DC universe, European okay. Union. The DC <laughs> European Union. <laughs> That is. Um, yeah, if, if they have any sense, they won't clarify what these symbols mean. Hey, Moopleton. I know you're a huge fan of XCOM. Have you heard about the new Marvel Midnight Suns game coming? It's made by the same peeps. 
Uh, I've heard of it, but I, I don't know. What kind of game is it going to be? Uh, it's like turn-based thing, but you it's something to do with cards instead of, like, moves specifically. Hmm. Um, it doesn't look awesome. So, yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. Um, fair enough. Hi, Rags, you should play DRG. It seems up your alley. DRG? Uh, I don't know. Um, DRG, Diagnosis Related Group, uh, DRG Game, maybe. Oh, Deep Rock Galactic. Um, I've heard good things about it, but I haven't played it myself. What if we kissed in a Disney-sanctioned way? Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Unless, however, I'm not kidding about my insistence on you Dumbos playing DDLC. Ah, oh, I see how you switched that. But, um... Yeah, I imagine that would be pretty dispassionate, you know, to do it in a Disney-sanctioned way. Uh, thoughts on Hello Future Me's video on soft world building. He goes over how worlds... How worlds that don't always make complete sense can enhance emotional storytelling. Lovecraft and Wally come up. There's a difference between something not making sense and not being understandable. Um, yeah, because you could not understand it, but it actually does make sense as long as you don't see anything... Con yeah, if it's not contradicting anything. Oh man, this might be a might be a hot take. <laughs> What's this picture? What is that fucking it, picture? It's pretty funny, whatever it's the it is. Life equation. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the LP. Jesus Christ. It looks like it's, it looks like a, it's in like the slipknot font. Um, it is, this might be a hot take, but I don't think the world building in Wally is very good. What what are you Oh, that's a what well, what do you think would be the main problem with it wait you don't think uh, wally I mean, is very good no the world building at least in the, like the third act it's pretty uh pretty weird weird yeah like uh, humanity is just stuck in like i mean it's, it's stuck it's, uh, it's the unironic like go to the storage container eat the bugs thing everyone's just like sitting on a chair and they just like watch tv all day and never i don't know it's just really do you weird think that's, i well, think so... that, that is highly accurate to what I think we're heading towards. It's weird because it's not like the way the world is currently, but yeah, I mean, what I took from it was and, yeah. what the film shows is the from life to death, or from birth to death, the machines from all the automated stuff control everything. And um, they're like taught from birth exactly how to behave, what to do. You might get like outliers and stuff I, I, if, if that's what you're referring to, but for the most part, people are probably going to be of uh that lifestyle because of the fact that it's all automated to best mm -hmm. i don't know create comfort i think is the angle they're going I mean, for sure but i mean this is a weird weird to have someone named doomer that seems to be a bit more optimistic than everyone else in the call but like um, um it, it, well I, that, that film like, is optimistic right it's no, like the they get to stop and news they go back to earth and they, they I mean, go back is, to earth is it optimistic they, they like destroy yeah. earth by Throwing trash yeah, everywhere and then go. It. They're coming back and they're gonna try. Coming and back right and they're gonna the fix it. Yeah, if you remember the the, the credit better, sequence, yeah. they basically the Earth is relatively safe. They start planning freeze again yeah. and they're gonna fix it up. And of course, the captain has rediscovered his autonomy and is actually to do what he thinks is right. I'd say. Yeah, like is, I would is, agree, it's a bit of an extreme representation because everybody is almost identical in terms of. Yeah. You'd think there'd be at least one guy who's like, I don't actually like looking at screens. I want to run around or something, maybe. But um, uh, j just the concept of like, with everything being automated and everything being built for comfort, it'll eventually drive us into a position that we're not going to find. Um, from an outside perspective, is like horrible, but at the same time, um, easy and just again, comfort just comes to mind, basically. Yeah. Here's here's a hot take for chat, and there's and there's a, a qualifier on this. So, Kung Fu Panda is better than Wally, and that is Charlie Kaufman's take, not mine. Charlie Wally Kaufman. is like one of the best films ever made, I think. Really? Um, wow. I really like Kung Fu Panda, though. I think Kung Fu Panda is pretty yeah, great, I think, but I, yeah, I do I think, think Wally is like great, one of the best yeah. movies ever made. Wally is really solid. There's a lot of great stuff. There's in so Wally. much about it that's valuable, I think. Really? Yeah. yeah. It shouldn't be controversial. Well, I, I mean, one of the fundamental things is just the amount of character that they managed to imbue this robot with is like incredible. I, I should probably um, clarify that the like, if you broke Wally up into three chunks, where like 
the first chunk is Wally and like the girl robot running around Earth. I have like zero problem. That that's all really really good. It's mostly the third act that's just like running around on a spaceship that I found to be kind of incomprehensible. In what incomprehensible? Or just like not, I don't know, not enjoyable. Those like, two are very different this... things. Yeah, those are. <laughs> yeah, I mean both. Different. It's like, why is this going on? I don't know. I think well, that. Well, I mean, the through line's pretty clear, right? They need to get the plant to the um. They need to get the plant back to the uh to the to the bridge the so that they can yeah. reinitiate the thing to take everybody. So like the stakes are really yep, clear. Like if Wally fails, the robot's just going to keep taking control of the ship, and then they can never fix Earth. And then yeah. it just leads to like Wally. Oh yeah, that's something I guess I forgot. Sacrifice. The humans are like not just put on the path to end up where they are. They're basically forced to their uh, subtle coercion in terms of like if ever they tried yeah. to break out, it seems the robots would prevent them. What's so the problem I have isn't a narrative problem. It's like a tonal problem. It's like a What's completely tonal. It's just a completely different movie than the earlier movie. What? But okay, so I guess the first thing would be: is that strictly a problem? But also. I it's not strictly would a problem. I would. I mean, I'm not going to argue that like Wally's a bad movie. I just found it to be odd. I mean, like, so uh, let, let's go to a better example of a movie. Any that, less odd than like, where this is a horror movie. Uh, well, like, they're um, all pretty. I would have to think about odd. them. I was going to say like Predator. No, 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 they're, 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 Predator there's... is a good example, right? It's a in the first act. It's a completely different movie from the next two acts. Wait, which which uh Predator? Which oh, I, I haven't seen that. I, mean, Jojo I, I usually. Rabbit. So I usually call it Hancock Syndrome because Hancock just like becomes a different movie halfway through. It's a pretty good example of a movie where there's this massive tonal shift that just didn't work. You guys disagree with that? I haven't or did seen you not see Hancock? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I've sorry. seen Hancock, yeah. In chat, the plant means nothing at the end. There's lots of plants just off of the side of the movie. He values it a bit. But the humans wouldn't have come back. Yes, the that's the thing. The plant is found. to get them back It doesn't to devalue Earth. anything at all. There would be no humans on Earth without the plant that Wally found. Yeah, like, I... I yeah, Earth would have recovered, but there'd very, be no people there. There was... It's very clear what the plant is supposed to do. That's what Eve was there to find. Was Eve the was there looking for the plants, yeah. She was scanning, found the <laughs> plant, like, went into lockdown, the ship came back to bring her back to the ship so that the ship would take everyone back to earth yeah the, the, the utility of the plant was pretty obvious well yeah you seem so you take issue with it tonally i i i'm still I don't like see just how it waiting work, for more or something i can hook on to because i just don't know <laughs> why would they need that plant i, I would they, need to go back they, I mean, the plant is how they know that earth is habitable again that's the whole yeah, yeah they, they need proof that they, something can grow and live on earth because otherwise they, they there's no reason to go back the plant yeah. is yeah I'll, I'll go back and rewatch it so I can articulate my thoughts better. I haven't seen this movie in sure. probably 12 years, so... It's, it's yeah, hard to give enough. you, like, a detailed it's analysis. Been that long. Yeah, because yeah, there are movies like Jojo Rabbit, which have extremely different tones, which is kind of like the point <clears throat> of the movie, in a way. Yeah, the movie and balances, like, dire grief film. and absolute comedy. Like, it's, uh... That's probably the go-to example for the peak movie of that kind it I've ever seen. Me. And yeah, you're right, because like, the, the ending quote tries to b basically make that point. Is it possible to have a successful, like, experience that way? Yeah, I, I need to watch Shoujo Rabbit. I've heard some interesting things Very about it. Very good. Yeah. I was particularly it's, impressed with that one. It's funny, because it's in the Vosh video. I just didn't watch it. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, because of the, yeah. uh, the Hitler... Um, yeah, all the yeah, examples yeah. of people dressing up like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Taika Waititi makes a great Hitler, I will say that. He's a great Hitler, yeah. <laughs> that is, that's such a weird thing, is like you cast yeah. yourself as Hitler. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, the man makes sacrifices for his art. Um, Jojo Rabbit was great, the reveal shocked me. Yeah, it's a very it's powerful a scene. Reveal. Yeah. To reveal again. Um, Springy, have you heard the rumors of Daredevil coming back? Yeah, yeah, I have, uh, and it gets me nervous. Yeah. See, everybody yeah. apparently, like, uh, apparently the the super recent rumor is there will be like a Daredevil project, like a dedicated did people, one. Did people not see that coming? 
Uh, well, I guess it's just, it seems like it's ramping up. Well, I mean, there's not, it doesn't seem like there are going to be projects for a lot of the other uh, yeah. Netflix Marvel stuff. Like, maybe Jessica Jones. I was going to say, Jessica Jones. That she'll be in She-Hulk. You'd think she gets an invite. Think, yeah, but you also think Luke Cage would get an invite, right? And then we don't seem to be hearing anything like that. Iron Fist seems to be What's totally that? out. And even Punisher 2. Punisher 2. Who's going for the, uh, going for the see that coming... Oh, yeah, yeah, thing. but then we decided to take it seriously. Which is fine. This is serious, yeah, that's legitimately right? okay. Well, here's the thing. It was both, like, it, was, it was both serious and comedic all in one. It was a shmishmash of, you know, both. Well, it, I balanced two different tones. The tone of seriousness and the tone of humor. All into one. I'll tell you what, well, I think okay, it's, just... it's unbecoming of you to insult a blind person. Blind, sorry, I mispronounced it for a moment there. So... So there's there's a distinction to be made between a movie that has like, let's say that uh, sometimes it's dark and sometimes it's uh, you know comedic and they're kind of balanced. The, the like what I'm getting at is that one part of the movie is one thing and then it changes to something else, and there's no like they don't cohabitate. Like it's like okay, world, I guess have you have you seen The World's End? Uh yeah. Do you think that film, because that film is like one thing in the first act, and then it's a totally different film from then on? I'm so the real problem here is cohabitate. The word, I'm assuming all he would say if he thinks it works is that it does, and so we need to know what does it mean for something to cohabitate right. with another half. Well, well, I mean, I'm, I'm saying yeah, like the, they're, they're, they're disconnected. They're, they're disconnected. Like, it, they, there are lots of movies that would start happy and then like get sadder and lead into a sad experience, and they're like connected. But it would be quite odd to have a movie that's just like straight up comedic and then with no like transition it just you know takes on let's say a somber tone and then holds it without any comedy you know and there's like let, let's say there's 45 minutes of, of a comedic tone and then it just shifts and then it's 45 minutes of a somber tone you know with let's say an abrupt transition don't you think that in general that would be a sort of a disquieting experience i guess that i need more context i think would be would always yeah, be the the yeah, thing, and, like imagine if you had a film where I don't know, let's say that it starts off, it's like fifty percent happy and fifty percent sad, and it happens for no reason. It's like, oh, it's an, uh, you know, like an allegory for depression and how it can just sneak up on yeah, you. Yeah, it could be totally no you know? reason. And then, and, and then it's like, oh, well, shit, that could be really valuable. And I try to. There's other ways to argue because it can get complicated if we don't have more mechanical specifics. If, if just for the lack of a better word, like when I was trying to argue, um, TFA right at the beginning, right the. You go from Tekker is assassinated to Poe screaming no and shooting on, like, to account and try and kill the murderer, then dragged and he starts cracking jokes, and then a whole bunch of people are just annihilated in the background and screaming. It's like, so this is at odds, and it's like, but why is it at odds? You can't just say it's at odds, right? And it's like, so I think the arguments I made included, like, he goes from being so emotionally invested that he's practically killing himself to get the bad guy, and then he's just, like, telling jokes seconds later feels really fucking quick and odd compared to considering how he's like i guess characterized and then um just try and put the audience at ease and like a it's more of a meta argument at that point that everything is so chill and like kind of fun and then suddenly screaming hundreds of people as they're murdered that was even a little yeah. bit strange for star wars in general not to say like because you know we had the aunt baru and uncle owen deaths but it's a little bit different, I guess, when you when you see people screaming and just blasters just hitting them over and over again. It's like, hmm. Um, yeah, like you don't witness the uh, aunt and uncle's suffering or you know torment. It's after the fact. It's done, finished. And so, like, you can infer it. with Wally, -E, like when I watch that movie, it all flows for me. I would go, it's he's entirely on his own, and we get the setting, and we understand the repercussions of, I guess, what. They did to Earth, humans went before they left. Then he gets like one person as company. But this person didn't just like arrive from nowhere. And like his mission then becomes don't let her go. And then eventually he's dragged into her world. And then he realizes that it's his world and he can do whatever he's gonna do to get them back. Like it, it to me it just uh it just all it is is expanding throughout instead of saying we're gonna consistently be a film about those two getting to know each other. I'm flipping through it now, so I can comment on it a bit more. Might be worth it to also, watch it and then get back to us. 
Yeah, well, I, I mean, I can remember it by, by flipping through it, but also just to comment on what Rag said, uh, I didn't like The World's End for almost exactly the reason that you stated. I didn't, oh, okay. I haven't seen The World's End. Wait, what reason? That it felt like two different movies kind of glued together. The, the, yeah. Rag said that? I no, he, 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 he didn't say it as being a bad thing. He said that it was a thing where there was like a distinction. Do you, you mean for me? No, I, I, I said never that. That was, was me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was well, yeah, oh, okay, so, but the th I'm assuming Fringy brought that up because it is that. But well, so I brought it up because I think it's a great example. And so is Shaun of the Dead. Um, yeah. They're all movies like that have two of, movies glued together. Well, I think the big thing Wait. is like with The World's End is they are two very different types of things, but they are bound together very tightly by uh, by both what's happening in the plot and uh, the theme as well. Yeah, Wait, I'd say so. How, do, how does that apply to Shaun of the Dead? So Shaun of the Dead oh, is a, the a Dead comedic like, like yeah. romance movie where a guy is trying to fix his relationship and then it turns into a zombie movie. I, so Chad, Chad has a really good example. Full Metal Jacket, yeah. So Full Metal Jacket is a, a very similar thing. Um, obviously, it's Kubrick, so I'm still fond of it, but not nearly as fond of that as I am of his other movies. But Shaun of the Dead, mm -hmm. I don't know that it has a huge tonal difference. I mean, there's t it, it's a blending of genres for sure. Well, so you, you've been switching back and forth between genre or, or like like a. What the movie's about to tone? Like, which one are we talking about? I'm not talking about. I, I'm not talking about what it's about. I mean, like the the tone, which tone could be. I don't know I the, mean, the way that Molly's I, the way, tone ever what, changes. It's pretty light hearted throughout. Would, yeah, I I would agree. I, outside of when he gets crushed, but obviously that's like a climax of is he gonna make it? Uh, but again, if you ever watch it, it might be worth. Yeah, yeah, it, it's I, well, like, it's really hard for me to comment on Wally because I, I mean, legitimately, it's been twelve years since I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would go as far as the dead. it's more jarring for Shaun of the Dead because um, do you remember when they're all pretending to be zombies and walking through them, and it's very funny and it's just like chill, and then not yeah. long after, David's getting torn apart. Literally, his intestines are being spread all over the place by the same zombies. Yeah, but like, okay, so there might be a breakdown in communication. So Shaun of the Dead engages in a juxtaposition of like let's say horror elements and comedic elements. Mm -hmm. But that juxtaposition exists throughout the entire movie, basically. I mean, there's a, I think there's like about 10 to 15 minutes in the opening before the zombie apocalypse happens. And then for the rest of the movie, in, in that first 10 to 15 minutes doesn't really have the horror elements, it's more comedic and lighthearted. But then the rest of the movie incorporates the juxtaposition of like horror elements with comedic elements. And it's very consistent. What I'm saying would be weird is if Shaun of the Dead was like 45 minutes of romantic comedy and then there's a shift and then there's 45 minutes of horror movie and there's no juxtaposition. It's just that you have two sort of distinct chunks that make sense on their own. But the, you know, there's like this transition point that is, do you understand what I'm saying? Well, so it would be my counter for Shaun of the Dead if I was responding to me. Um, but I'd also make that same counter for Wally. It, that it's, it's cohesive. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you guys. I'll, I'll go rewatch it, and then I can either concede or uh, we can argue about it. <laughs> yeah, because like like, this put me in everything from a bug's life uh, to Toy Story. Um, like in you are later suddenly parts, quiet again. No, it, I, I think I shifted myself. But yeah, it's the, oh, even stuff are. like Toy Story, you know, with the Sid, with well, Bugs Story's Life and Hopper coming back. Um, there can be some. I don't think it. it well, yeah, doesn't um, seem to be any really different than a lot of the well, other Pixar stuff. Without, because like an extreme, which you've been referencing, that we probably would just easily agree with, versus something like Wally, just makes us think like, why wouldn't other films qualify as having the same problem? Because I think Toy Story is a good example in terms of the movie at first is like two people competing to be an almost alpha toy, and, and Woody's being displaced, his identity's being questioned, but then. In like the third act, it's like a horror movie for toys trying to survive Sid and defeat him. Uh, yeah, I know that when I was a kid watching it, that was always one of the things about Toy Story that stood out to me was, oh, we're at this part now. There's oh, yeah, I, I, can, I can I can there's some there's some validity to what you guys are saying. I'm, I'm understanding, um, um, but I don't count it as a negative for the movies at all. Well, so because I was yeah, going to go well, further and say that um the movie that is 45 minutes of romantic comedy and then 45 minutes of zombie horror. I don't know that that would be a bad film. 
Well, it's actually Audition, if you've seen Audition. And that, that's what's funny is that's like one of, the, one of my only examples of a horror movie I liked. So it, it's hmm. certainly not a, like an a priori bad thing. It's like, oh, well, it did that thing. So it's bad. It's just that I remember in Wally, I found it jarring, but obviously I probably need to go back and <laughs> rewatch it. Well, if it's been 12 years, yeah, maybe you'll have a different experience this maybe. time around. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's quite, quite, a, quite a gap. So I remember liking it in theaters, and I watched it again like shortly afterwards and didn't like it, and then I haven't seen it since. Well, what was cool is when I, like, met Fringy and we were just sharing our favorite things, I think we were both, like, favorite Pixar movie, and we were both, like, Wally. So, we were like, hey. Wally is, um. So, what, what? I think, I think. What's that, sir? No, go, go ahead. Oh, it sounded like you had a question, though, related to it. No. Oh, right, uh, um. I think for me it was. Maybe it might also be a bit of bias because I really like science fiction space and stuff like that. So Wally is like the Pixar movie that leans most into that. But um, I just find that movie really impressive um, in a lot of different ways, especially as an animated film. Like it's super impressive in terms of how much they achieve with pretty minimalist, minimal dialogue, uh, super limited like emotional cues. Uh, a lot of ones that they sort of invented for themselves in the movie. Um, thematically, really strong. Um, and Wally is super endearing as a character. Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree movie. with that. I mean, in terms of creativity, it is, I, I mean, I don't know how you would really argue that it isn't the most creative Pixar movie, at least up to that point. I, think, I can't really I think speak it's... to some of the more recent ones because I haven't I seen I love them. Um, just Wally and Eve's relationship. It's fucking yeah. it's really wonderful. Good. I would say that is one of the most creative ones. I remember when Inside Out came out, it's like, oh, it's so creative. The most creative one, like, since, oh. It's, like, it's not, it's not that creative. Like, it's... There's a little, oh, little piss inside your head for every emotion you feel, and they take the wheel when you're feeling that the most. But emotions personified. What is this wizard? Well, that's, well, and of course, uh, YMS, his review on Inside Out is like, that's, that's kind of a go-to one is it doesn't matter whether or not your high concept is creative if the story itself is very conventional and that yeah, movie is super conventional in terms of its plot beats inside out annoyed me so much <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm not a, I'm not a huge movie. fan like that i for me that was a situation of this is like the best pixar movie in years and then i watched it and i was just like yeah it's okay uh yeah, it's I mean, like so w when i was on uh when I was on Sitch and Adam, some, like a chatter asked me a book recommendation. My first thought was a reference book about uh, the psychology of emotion. It's like something I really care about. And it, oh, Inside Out butchered it so badly. Butchered the psychology so badly. Well, oh, Inside so Out cringe. had a lot of weird things about it. Like the, the idea that you have these emotional like islands that form key parts of your personality that are very fixed and not malleable and that as you get like depressed or something those they, they're gone they get destroyed like, yeah it's just yeah like, oh, and then like God. there is a train of thought and the train of thought is destrored it's like does that mean that you no longer develop Have trains thoughts. of thought like it, the entire, yeah, and the then entire of, allegory is just yeah well it's it's really awkward because at the end of the film it's like oh so two of the emotions are like lost so she can't feel sad or happy Therefore, she emotionally shuts down to the point that she she is like basically not even a human being anymore. Like she she her autonomy is kind of gone. It's like that's weird in terms of implications on like psychology in this world. I think yeah. it's a problem of psychology is incredibly complicated, but you can't present these types of ideas in a kids' movie like without having to simplify. And then you just start having these questions. It's like, hmm, how does this world well, even, really work? Even just oversimplifying wouldn't be an issue. It's just presenting things in a way that's just nonsensical. Like, right? Well, that, yeah, that's the main thing. It's it's inconsistent. Yeah, I, I, looking at looking at Pixar's filmography, I have a scalding hot take, but I also haven't seen that movie in a while. So, what is that? that? Oh my <laughs> god! Oh jeez! You, no, I, I a, fucking do I'm, it. I'm, fucking do it. it. You, okay. The flip. I thought up. I thought up was a straight up fucking bad movie. Like up was so actually bad. Ooh. I, I think you. I think you'll find that you're not in like the worst company because I am hot, not hot. as big a fan of. It's it's kind of hot. It's it's, um, it's hot. It's, it's, it's a pretty like, hot take. It's just it's, it's a like, simmering. Yeah, I think, I think it's a hot take. Um, Most like, people the, say well, they like I mean, it. I I think that the like the first ten minutes of that movie is so yeah, beautiful okay. that people just forget that the rest of the movie doesn't make sense and is fucking stupid. That that's my recollection of up. Well, so 
I the problem is I don't remember as much about the the rest of the film not making sense. I just remember not being super impressed with uh it, with the rest of the film. My, no, my, my recollection yeah, it never stood out for me. My recollection is that everything to do with the antagonist is ridiculous. Like his motivation doesn't make sense. Like the logistics don't make sense. There's, maybe, there's so much about yeah, the maybe, antagonist but... that just don't doesn't make any sense at all. Um, that, that I don't remember the specifics, but yeah, it's it's weird because again, the first ten minutes of that movie is, I mean, it, you know, some of the best. It's it's like we were talking about uh, in Interstellar, where there's these chunks where if you just take this like one scene, it's really good, but put it in the broader scope of the movie, and it's just like eh. nonsense. Yeah, yeah. And there like, are things I like about Up, like Doug. I like Doug. I like uh, the 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 bird. Um, what's the name of the bird Kevin. again? Kevin. Kevin. That's right. Yeah, the, the, that's her name. Fun. <laughs> her name oh, is that's Kevin. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it it looks like Pixar fell off a long time ago. Actually, I thought this was recent. Well, so but... The uh the the meme, and again, YMS is the thing for me knowing about this is uh there was a day when a lot of the key people at Pixar went and got some. Oh coffee, yeah, the lunch. Yeah, the, the tail end of Toy Story. And they came up with a bunch of ideas that would basically be all of the films they made up until Wally. Wally was the last one. I, 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 yeah, I, about. I thought this in the theater seeing Wally because this, this was like the the trailer for Wally. They were like, this was yeah, the last yeah, one right, we discussed. Right, yeah. And I remember thinking about it. I'm like, well, what comes after that? Like, <laughs> well, that's the awkward part, right? Is it's like, hmm, a lot of you. Well, you're, yeah, with with no it. context for any of this, I would have told you my passionate adoration for Pixar ended with Wally. Same here. Um, I remember, yeah, I I remember it was, uh, Toy Story 3, though. I remember when I first watched it, I really liked it. I Yeah, I, I, come back I watched it and it was fine. Hard. Then I watched Adam's review of it, and I was like, oh, it's actually kind of... Um, yeah, yeah. Th that review is kind of like, it's, dude, it's just Toy Story 2 again, but worse. Yeah, Toy it's, Story it's, 2 is downright underrated, I think. Um, a I lot love of people Toy Story that 2. Was, I, well, oh. I think it might be the best one. Might be. It might it's, be it's better than one. Yeah, it, it, it could be the case. Sure Brave. is hell better than four. Oh, I saw, fuck four. I saw four, Brave. Four's non-canon. <laughs> I saw Brave and I can't remember anything about it. There's I like don't bear? think I've seen Brave. Probably. I liked Brave, yeah, but that's it. I liked Brave. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. And then like Inside Out, it, it like viscerally offends me. And I don't think I've seen <laughs> it. I... I mean, I actually, there's there's a lot of movies like that where they touch on something I know a lot about and they just fuck it up and it really pisses me off. Like I remember back in the Rotten Tomatoes forums, this will show you how old I am. I was like bitching on the Rotten, I don't even think they exist anymore. I was bitching on the Rotten Tomatoes forums about Darren Aronofsky's pie like 15 years ago, about how fucking bad that movie is because it just fucks up every single, anything related to math in that movie is just garbage. I'm sorry, chat, if you like pie. And you don't know anything about math. It everything is wrong. Like literally everything. You take any any individual time they mention anything math related is wrong. It's just like staggering the incompetence. It's also like it's almost like they tried to make everything wrong. Um, but yeah, like I, yeah, it was Incredibles too good. I didn't see it. No, uh, yeah, no. I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of that movie, dude. I'm I'm pretty sure because we'll get around to it with that movie someday. We're probably going to absolutely annihilate that film. Well, I mean, it's just compared to the first movie where it's all working so was... well. This yeah, movie's the first fucking great. Well, the first, one's, but... the first one is like it's it's up there with with Wally -E in terms of like the best Pixar. I'd say so. They're usually, that's the only one that could challenge the throne for me. What Toy Story two? Incredibles. Ah uh, no. Oh, the Incredibles. Uh, Incredible. I I would yeah if you had, if you had asked me. might challenge it. I, I think I, I think I would have listed off my three favorite Pixar's as Finding Nemo, Incredibles, and uh, what would be the third. I do love probably Finding Nemo, honestly. For me, I'm gonna go with um, Wally, Incredibles, and Ratatouille. But I, that's a, there's a damn. lot of big ones up there. The, the problem is I'm sitting here. I'm not and I'm gonna like... stress too much about specific top threes when there's so many that are great. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing is basically everything they were making like up until Wally, Cars, is, and even Cars, like I'm pretty sure Cars, if we rewatched it, would be like that's a good movie. I'm sure Cars is fine. It's yeah. fine. It's yeah. not that bad. I mean, it's like the the problems. The problems I remember with cars were conceptual problems of like the world building of a world with nothing but cars. Wow, like, <laughs> who's changing the oil <laughs> stuff like that? And, and like I was noticing that even the first time I saw it. But I think if you can overlook that, it's not really that bad. And they do try and answer some of that stuff. They have like car adaptations for a lot of things. 
but yeah, it is just, hard to make that whole world, yeah. It's just sort of nonsensical, yeah. I mean, it's the thing that we built for us. Why would it exist without, yeah. Um, I'm fine accepting a premise like that. Um, oh my god, but Bowser's it does raise a lot of. But it's very. Sometimes you see a lot of the things in it, and you're like, um, okay. <laughs> and you're just mm -hmm. like, okay, I guess, all right, all right. Um, oh, was Luca good? I haven't I seen. I haven't seen it. that. I'm pretty sure Adam gave it like a four out of ten. Just Luca. Or yeah, it's the. It's oh, that one. Yeah, one. yeah, I haven't yeah. even. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I mean, boys on a beach so, or something like that. I think That's it's like they've got the summer holiday in like Mediterranean town, but also that like sea creatures, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to see Soul because that's the con that's the the one where it's like <laughs> that one got raped. I remember that first trailer when you see that first trailer for Soul. Jay. It's like it looked like what was that? Jesus, and I think I remember hearing canonically there was a 9/11 in the Cars universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did make Here, that. Let me look it up. They made that Planes movie, didn't they? Oh my wait, this can't be real. That'd be so fucking funny. Jesus. I'm on a, I'm on an FBI watch list now and googling 911 Cars universe. <laughs> World War 2 happened in the Cars universe. There's a whole Reddit thread about it. How did How did they figure these things out? How like, do you know? Yeah. Get, yeah. References I missed, I guess. Oh, apparently it's supposed to be a shit post. That's what the comments are saying. Oh, of course mm. it is. Like, why would Pixar ever <laughs> put in any information? Well, they wouldn't have to confirm thing. that, but they could confirm something that means that had to have happened, you know? Right, maybe, yeah. yeah. Like, Just like the Car uh, Patriot Act? Who knows? A, a particular <laughs> policy? What, what about a make of car that only existed as a result of certain events, you know? Right. The Freedom Car. Yes. Oh, there's um, a Buzz Lightyear movie? Ooh. Um, yep. Yeah, Sorry about that. with Chris what's Evans uh, is playing Buzz Lightyear. Yep. What's this whole thing? I had to I had to take care of something real quick. So it's so directed by Pete Docter. That's good. Yeah, but... <laughs> having Buzz Lightyear and not Tim but Allen's Brad voice Bird. feels so bad. Brad Bird directed Incredibles 2, so... Mm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you're supposed to be a Duma. Join us in the realm of even if it's someone we <laughs> trust, it could still be awful. Oh, I, I'm... Yeah, I mean... I. I'm so pessimistic about movies, I don't watch them anymore. I just go back and rewatch all the shit I like. Because what's the fucking point? Every time I go watch a movie, it's like fucking Shang-Chi. And you're sitting here telling me it's not even that bad. Compared to the other, I'm like, what the fuck else movies are they making? Where this is acceptable. Holy fuck. That's like, the point yeah, we're at, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty fucking pessimistic about movies. And it, and it's especially like, it's especially soul crushing to me to know that the, like the market for the kind of movies that I really like just seems to be dead. Because the people who invest in movies only want to make Marvel movies, like, ugh. Well, Marvel movies are safe in terms of making money, and why would you take... It's one of the things that people talk about, that, like, high-concept original science fiction films are kind of... There's a lot less of them now, because Marvel is much safer in that regard. Well, the thing is, it's not... I mean, there, there should be other genres of movie, like... You would think, for example, that if you have, like, a romance film that has certain, like, very, very, um you know, attractive leads that, you know, audiences love, that it would just make a bare minimum of money, period. And so you could guarantee a return. And like the production cost of a movie like that isn't terribly high. So you would think that would exist and it just mostly doesn't. Like there was the Neil Blomkamp, or not Neil Blomkamp, what's that dude's name? Um, made Sam Neil? A mar marriage Ernest Story? Neil Armstrong? Ernest no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Marriage Armstrong? Story. There's a couple of movies like Marriage Story, but it's pretty rare, and that's... Like, comparatively. It's more of a, <laughs> in terms of romantic comedy, my story stories. Uh... Well, not, not romantic. Did I say comedy? Sorry, <laughs> just like ro romance in general. Uh, oh, Noah Baumbach. Why did I? How did I mix that up? But yeah, like I don't know. They're just the mid-tier stuff is where you, we, we get to use, where we used to get a lot of our really good movies. You know, like the five to fifty million dollar range, and it just seems to be going away, which is yeah. really disappointing to go but we get one more batman movie a year oh boy that one's real excited for that one <laughs> i'm curious about it i'm very curious i'll be curious about be it yeah. i hope it's good yeah because especially the last how many of the last bat 
so okay, let's go back. So Zack Snyder's Justice League, mm -hmm. Batman vs Superman, mm -hmm. um, Dark Knight Rises, Man of Bat. and the Dark Knight. So that's the last four Batman movies, right? Then Batman Begins, yeah. And then oh, you go back to. But also the Lego Batman movie, oh, which yep, I well, liked. Well, I'm saying how many of the, and especially I was, th I guess in my mind I was thinking live action movies with Batman in it. How far back do we have to go to get a good one? I was just well, looking at maybe, the... maybe it's Lego Batman. Are, are any of the DC movies good? I guess Wonder Woman one maybe. Uh, no, it's terrible. No. <laughs> no. Go 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 watch <laughs> our EFAP movies coverage. We we blew the lid on that one. We yeah. <laughs> I don't. It, it was it was funny because we've we've changed minds on that. I think a significant amount, honestly. Like, because it, it was just commonly agreed upon that Wonder Woman one was really good, and that Gal Gadot was a good actress. Where the fuck did that come from? I, well, I, I, I didn't say I didn't see any of that. It's just like my my expectations for comic book movies are abysmally low. So if I like if I watch it and I at the end of it I wasn't like wow I feel miserable that it gets a good review for me. It's like hey six out of ten. I was mm -hmm. sat through it. I didn't you know, fall like asleep that's, that's or about, want to kill myself. That's, yeah, legit. That's about where I'm at with Wonder Woman one. It was like, okay, that was fine. Not it, it, I, were people saying it? Wait, people said Gal Gadot was a good actress and it was like amazing. Was, 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 this, that, was that a thing? It was pretty hilarious. Um, it couldn't have been timed better. On our, I think it was a New Year's stream for Wonder Woman last year. Um, I collected a whole bunch of clips. And uh, we made the point that she's really bad at acting. And then we showed ones from Wonder Woman 84 and then Wonder Woman, the first one. Including but not limited to her fucking... The way she, she ex exclaims no is embarrassing, like, all the time. She can't do it properly. And then, like, um, we went through all of that. And then, like, five minutes later, um, a friend of ours joined in just to have a chat. And one of the first things he said was, like... Ah, oh, Gal Gadot's a... She's, she's great as Wonder Woman. She's a really good actress. And we were like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> she's a shit tier actress, but she is hot. So she's like one of the worst that are working today. She, she really is one of the worst actresses, <laughs> maybe of all time. It, it's funny. Red, Red Letter Media had like made a comment, like I don't want to see a movie with her. And then I think they reviewed Wonder Woman one, and they were like gushing over it. And they were like, oh, I guess I we had to go to Tiffany's just to refresh my mind that women can act. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. We call it Killed Bill. Yeah, well, um, there's plenty of yeah, actual I, mean, I could have chosen from many movies, yeah. but Breakfast at Tiffany's the one that happened. I don't um, think I've ever seen Breakfast at Tiffany's. Do you remember the part in Justice League Funny where face. she says, Why? Because of your guilt? <sighs> <laughs> Why? Because yeah. of your guilt? Um, apparently, though, I, I looked up the 911 cars thing. Uh, so, there is, so there's planes... And I think planes happened is in the Cars universe, and okay. in planes, oh, no. apparently it is it is canonical that World War Two happened. <laughs> so there was a there was a car Hitler, <laughs> a car Holocaust. <laughs> what? There was a Pacific a car War with cars and a there was a car Are D you Day. Serious? Yeah, cars could, nuked Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I can see there how was that a got cars could, rape of Nanking. I could understand how that would have gotten confirmed because the. The particular fucking vehicles and stuff, right? And then there's, there's probably some characters that like I fought in the war, you know. Um, Oof. that's so <laughs> awkward. Yep. So, uh, someone said there are no. Oh, someone at someone's chat said there are no twin towers in the Cars universe. And all I'm saying <laughs> is, where did they go? Where did they? Where go? did they go? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I just saying, where did they go? Oh, Jay mentioned man. wrinkle in that is, time. That is a top yeah. meme. It, Wrinkle in Time low-key confirms that Hitler did nothing wrong. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. It was the it. Remember that movie? That's a one out of ten. That's a, that's a that's a solid one out of ten movie. If mm -hmm. we ever have to say what's a one out of ten, don't never forget Wrinkle in Time. And we happened. never have to see it again because we've got it all on record. Go just that's go search right. for it. It's all there. Um. So what I'm hearing is with a set of lawn darts, I could be the most dangerous character in the MCU. Lawn darts? What does that have to do with anything we were talking about? I've completely forgotten. I, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. Lawn darts? Mm-hmm. I I know of them and how they were very dangerous toys from back in the day, but I I don't. Yeah. 
I've Wait. never used lawn darts. Are there? Someone in chat said, "Are, are, are there? Are there car death scenes? And like the car sequels? Do you I, like see cars die? I think don't they crash at some point? Since you do see quite quite a bit of carnage, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> carnage. Oh God, carnage. I, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is this is just yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. That's it's where the word called just carnage. It's so weird. Oh yeah, Doc died. I think I remember that. Yeah. From the first cars? Because I only saw the first cars. No, they I said they said it's in cars too. Doc dies in cars too, is what chat's saying. Man. Okay, apparently Rod Torque. Rod Torque Redline. What's that? It's, I guess he's a he's a character who dies in cars too. Oh, okay. It's a yeah, I <laughs> I, how do you kill a car? What parts do you have to remove from it? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, like the, it's like the ship what, of Theseus. Like what? How many? What if you replace engine. all the parts on a car? Well, is it still the well, car? Well, that's. Okay. Well, it's it's not so much. I'm not 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 from like an identity perspective, but in terms of a human, like you know what parts are vital and the, you, there's limits, right? But with a car, what parts of the car give it? Does it? Is it a battery? You know, is it a battery? Is it? The, Cause I assume without an engine, a car is is actually fine. It just can't go yeah. anywhere. But I would I would assume that's, that like that's, a that's quite like assumption. spark plugs are those the vital thing that if a car does not have spark plugs, it cannot live. Someone said the engine. I already addressed the engine. Um, <laughs> right, well, maybe you sent it in late. But I think that without it, you would th you would think engine. But the engine just makes it move. Like even if a car doesn't have an engine, theoretically. You could still, it could still have power with yeah. a battery in it, you know? The, the question well, of, like, it, where is the, the, what makes them who they are stored in a car, exactly? Like, what? Yeah, and our new have cars car that have... I, oh, definitely. Cars yeah. obviously have souls, um, yeah. Definitely have, they have souls. It's in the glove box. But when it comes <laughs> to where a car... Oh, in the old cars that don't have, like, electronic parts and things like that, how do they, in the new cars that do have electronic parts, do their... Like, I, I'm saying it, cars, it raises a lot of questions. You know? A lot of questions. That it do. That it <laughs> These do. are questions that shouldn't have been asked. What did you do, Pixar? <laughs> what did oh, you no, do? They, they didn't ask the I asked the questions. They just they <laughs> I feel like we were given a lot of answers. They rose the scenario in which the questions were birthed. How do cars do cars have the term horsepower if there are no animals in car well I guess there are <laughs> sort of animals. But are there horses in are cars? They Could they even have horsepower as a term in cars if there are no horses? Because I think there's like little car pigeons and stuff. But... Pigeon power. By the way, I believe robots. I can I could agree with robots before cars as a premise. Yeah, that seems fair. There's this hilarious shirt. Um, I I might buy it because it's just for, it just appeals to me somehow. And it's it was um it's like Christian moms against big weld. And it just had Big Weld with a circle and the line through it. And it was just makes no sense. <laughs> and that car made, oh. that shirt made me laugh. Christian Moms against Big Weld. This is, a, this is a very specific fight, but a fair fight nonetheless. You uh, get. I think it's like a committee. It's like a committee thing. Like you have you have moms against like you have mm -hmm. gas right. Grandmas against Superman, yeah. of course. And things you know. So I was thinking, oh my god, is this a Christian Moms <laughs> against Big Weld? So according to Reddit, there are no animals, but there are cars that look like animals. So they're like what? tractor cows and VW so they're beetles. they're sapient and sentient? If they're not like distinguishable in the animal sense, they're not animals. They're just differently bodied actual cars like with well, like, well, like, souls and... There's like VW beetles that are like beetles. So they're like tiny cars, I think. Let me... Oh. What in the world? I just don't know what to make of all that. Um. Yeah, VW so Beetles what, Cars Universe here. So, what are the racist words in the Cars Universe? Um, <laughs> yeah, here, here you go. Th this is these are the animals in the Cars Universe. They're cars they're with just, wings. They're just cars with rings and antennas. That's creepy. I don't know it why. It is very creepy. I don't. 
my mind has a hard time. Just have it be an actual beetle, I feel, at that point. Just mm -hmm. say that there are bugs in the Cars universe, you know? It doesn't hurt you. It's fine. Yeah, like, the Cars are the sapient creatures on the planet. and But there are, like, animals. There are out there in nature. There's bugs and squirrels and Well, it really antelope. is begging... It's, it's begging a plot like Prometheus, where you wonder who came to this planet and sowed the seeds of sentient cars. <laughs> maybe it was like, the did, car did gods. Cars evolve? Maybe, the car god, maybe car gods were as eternal as the universe. Maybe they always were. Maybe the great engine in the sky, uh, the eternal horsepower, who, uh, uh, maybe the great uh, the great drive shaft that cranks the life of the universe. The, in the, the ethereal of mists of the universe, yeah. Man, the spirit I, of cars are just intrinsic to this planet. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's it's fabric of the universe, or something like that. One of those things that people say. No. Having having brought up a controversial subject, uh, how how much did you cars? guys get upset by Prometheus? 11? No, Prometheus. Oh, okay. Because 911 is not that controversial. We're all pro 911 here. Yeah, Prometheus is much more about, controversial. Yeah, Prometheus. I remember seeing that in the theater, and... It's one of those movies where, like, there's individual little things I like in it, but they're all just isolated things. Yeah. It's like the same way with Interstellar. I well, I, I this was this is one of the few movies. There's a couple where, like, I don't like talking about them with most people because I know they're gonna like it and we're gonna get a fucking argument. And like Prometheus <laughs> was like one of the first ones where I saw it in theaters and I was just like, like legitimately offended what? at how bad it yeah. was. And then I had to like go around to my friends and they'll be like, oh, it's great. Have you seen Prometheus? And it was just like, oh, dude. Prometheus like, was um, uh, a movie where I was noticing problems, but I kept like reassuring myself that for every individual problem I found, that was just one in a fine movie. You know? Yeah. And then I thought just about like it and I was like, wait, what do I even like? And I was like, fuck all, basically. Yeah. The one, the one thing about Prometheus I like is like the... The idea of like having some creator aliens you have to go find. That's kind of a cool plot, but no, I mean, nothing else. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the first minute. Like, so. <laughs> that's the first minute of the movie, yeah. Carnage is a far Just... better Marvel villain of 2021. Man, is Carnage going to be good? What do you reckon, Refrain? Is he going to be, is he going to be our Steppenwolf? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Who knows? Is that still the current? Is he still currently somehow the top DCEU villain? Um, no. Or was it Ocean Star Master? Is, right? I like Starro more. Well, I was gonna say, wouldn't Think oh, yeah, Thinker and right. Starro Star both better than him, right? Yeah, Starro. Yeah. Because my brain didn't even Doesn't think about having the knows. Suicide Squad being yeah. in the DCEU because it's like there's really great things in there, so it can't be in the DCEU. That's just that's not right. Not possible. It's not possible. That's not true. That's impossible. Bucky's robo arm is cooler. Uh, than the rings? Yeah, I agree. And it's just a robo arm. It's not even like doesn't really do anything other than is an arm that is strong. Arm and be robotic. Yeah. There's an arm that is strong. A single ring, and they put finger in brackets. Oof. Can bring the heat of the core of a star. All ten rings can make you punch really hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the difference between the finger rings and the arm rings, I guess. Uh, what are your favorite video games and movie soundtracks? Also, high rags. Should we do one? Hello. Each? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, let me see. My favorite. Let's say video game soundtracks and um, film soundtracks. Pick one, I guess, for now, each. Space let Jam. Me now, a lot of this will be related to whether or not it's like, look, for instance, I love Civ 4 as it's in sound terms of soundtrack, but that's like they, it's a lot of classical pieces and things of that nature. You know, it's not, wasn't made for the game. So very homoerotic. Maybe we keep yeah. It to, yeah, it is very homoerotic, like most classical music is. That's my fascination with it. But let's say it's one of those, like, it needs to be composed for the game. It's not just like, a, you know, you just use songs from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I might go. I I know The Witcher Three is certainly up there. There's some really smooth tunes in that. Um, ooh, Halo though has got really great stuff throughout. Um, Stellaris has got some sweet. You so totally the broken the point of this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I got carried away. I got carried away. And now you're not answering. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, for, sorry. Oh, oh wait. Which which just, one? Just, I, yeah, we'll just pick, pick one. one. Just pick one. Oh, ah, uh, Witcher three. And movie. Hmm. Fellowship of the Ring. I mean, you probably could have gone with Lord of the Rings, but um. Oh, well, I guess we're just busy. yeah, Lord of the Rings in general, yeah. The, but if I had to pick a specific one, um, any particular reason? First. Um. Uh, foundations of stone and the breaking of the fellowship uh, are probably the two of my personal favorite bangers from that one. But it's it's, it's just I I probably think that it edges it out um, for favorite. But they're all just so good. It's one of those how could you possibly choose? Ah, so mm, that's fair. Um, uh, should go right to left then. Oh, so. Bloodborne. It's like one of my favorite soundtracks. Been excellent songs throughout that game. And they're all made for the game. But then just Soulsborne in general. They have really, really good tracks. True out. As for movies, hmm. I could throw a curveball and say Interstellar. Well, I mean, it's got a great soundtrack, so I'm not sure that yeah. that's what Well, that could be a curveball for anybody who doesn't think that I would uh, say oh, that, I guess. Give that movie, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But there's, um, there's a lot of choices to make, but yeah, those are just two I could go with for those. Yeah, I will also add the caveat. Plenty of choices we could go for. Um, Halo, like, yeah, that <laughs> it's a series has great music. Um, film? Uh, you know what? I'll go with Star Wars as oldie but a goodie. Old Saga or any particular movie wins out? Um, if I had to pick one, it'd be Revenge of the Sith. So many good tracks. Well, there we go. Duma, you're next. Uh, for movie, <clears throat> for movie, I would say Space Jam or Amadeus. The two <laughs> movies that have a lot in common. It's just, it just sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> Space Jam and Amadeus. It's like a meme. Yeah. <laughs> Amadeus and Space Jam. <laughs> they like very yeah, well. I mean, they're both very reputable films. That, Come you know, on, it's Doyle. If Mary, Mary, serious discussion. All right, what about uh, games? For for video game, I would say a game that no one is going to know called Lufia Two, the Super Nintendo game that I just am very nostalgic for. I love the music in that game. I've heard of it, not played it though. Yeah, I think Mel might have played it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, there you go. I kind of left out choices that felt like cheating. Like if I said, "Oh, Super Smash Brothers," it's like, well, that's not fair. That's just like all the music from all the games. Yeah. Um, oh, Maniacal Forner recognized it. Lufia 2 OST, correct. Yeah, it's excellent. I'm sorry, but my 5 foot 7, 130 pound rear is getting folded like a lawn chair by Mike Tyson. Okay. Finish. I'm going to give an honorable mention to Animal oh. Crossing Wild World. I guess that, I really. Animal Crossing has a We can't do honorable mentions, game. we'll be here forever. Yeah. We can. We, you, could, you guys can just not give honorable mentions we can carry on but i just i think that this there's a lot of simplicity to a lot of the animal crossing just agreed with uh, what i said <laughs> well no that's fine um and so uh, i by the way uh i heard that some of the animal crossing tracks were inspired some of them heavily from a band called yellow magic orchestra a japanese band and i listened to some of their stuff and there's some pretty distinct influences that you can hear but Animal Crossing's got some great mood music, especially when you get into the later parts of the night and it's a lot more calm and it has everything from peppy stuff. And I think that the Wild World, um, the theme song, like the menu, is just, it's a really gorgeous song. Uh, and this one was from the DS. So, so I, I have to actually change my vote to Minecraft. Minecraft soundtrack is the Oh, amazing. you're actually right. Bad choice. Yeah, I, I just I just realized we missed we missed out on that. Yeah, the Minecraft soundtrack is like legitimately is like, the main reason I play the game. So we haven't missed out on anything. <laughs> you could only name it's one. So what? <laughs> if by that logic we missed out on fucking, I, I, we missed out. I, I'm on lost. Um, yeah, because we could we could talk about that for ages. So I was gonna say like, you, as we're all aware, <laughs> there are incredible amounts of incredible soundtracks through in all kinds of films and games. I just lose my mind here. It's fine. I'll survive. You can miss out if you want. Um, 
So yeah, I guess the, the point being made there was that if Mike Tyson was going to fight the second best fighter in the world, or a Randy who has no experience, like, yeah, Mike Tyson's going to annihilate the Randy. And it's like, yeah. well, no, nah, but the Randy might, you know, do something unexpected. <laughs> it's like, good luck, I guess. Um, was it Shad or Skalthar? Shad or Skalthar that said luck is a very real thing? Skalthar? Who the fuck is Skalthar? <laughs> 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 Let me check Skalthar. I just don't uh, remember having Skalthar on Eve. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> is this, is this, um, this, is this, uh, Skullfar here? Is that the, is that Skullfar? I don't recognize him if he's come on EFAP before, but yeah. hey. Well, he's Skullfar of Dringu 4, um, is apparently, but I, yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Was it Shadow Skullthor that said luck is a very real thing? Like, even a peasant with a pitchfork can get lucky against a knight in a full plate. That's something that we would never deny that. That's possible. Yeah, it is well, I mean, of course possible. possible. There, is, yeah. there is no law of the universe that would prevent that from happening. However... Dot, dot, I, dot. I know a good example. In Edge of Tomorrow, where... Tom Cruise has beaten up like a whole group of three or four guys because he knows exactly where they're going to throw their punches and stuff. Um, I'm, obviously, that's specific to time travel, but at the same time, like the it means that theoretically you could pull it off. You know, it's going to be really hard though. Have you seen videos of like where um, three people? There, there was a video I saw recently where three people are breaking into a guy's house, and like one of them is already searching for stuff. The other one's only halfway through the door, and there's one outside. He like punches the one who's searching for stuff, and he's like disoriented. Then the other one comes in to be like, "No, what did you blah?" Then like punches him twice, gets punched, punches him again. Then the initial guy punches him again as he's getting up to date. Then the third guy comes in, what the fuck's going on? Then punches him, and then the three of them try to escape. It's just like it was one v three technically, but you know, it's that's how it could happen. And good on him because he didn't get stolen from. Do you guys eat mac and cheese with a fork or a spoon? Uh, I prefer fork. Or a spoon. Same, yeah. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm fork as well. Um, I'm thinking about the uh, the end game, you know? If the end game? Yeah, if there's a, a lot of stuff that the fork can't help me out with at the end. But then again, maybe you just have both of them. Because I... Because I, cause someone, someone asked me which I prefer, and I told them fork. Um... And then they showed me a picture of all the, like, Velveeta, Kraft, Market, Farms, or whatever, and Annie's. There's different brands, and they are all they all have spoons on them. And I was asked, well, why do all the boxes show a spoon? And I say, well, I think it's just because a spoon... Because all of the spoons are being used to display the product. And I said, I think it's just because a spoon can hold more in any more presentable manner, which is best for, you know, advertising mm. and the marketing of it being on the box. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if a Spork was uh, pop is possibly popular for that. I don't know. Yeah, um, but I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I I don't like the feeling of eat like my lips and tongue dragging over the spoon when I'm eating mac and cheese for some reason. I just don't like that. I don't mm -hmm. care for. I'd rather just have a spoon. Maybe it's because I don't want to have too much cheese by itself gathered. I, I, I like my mac and cheese with light cheese, not heavy cheese. Um, I like more mac than cheese, you know, ratio-wise. Maybe that's the thing about it. I mean, you don't have to drag your teeth across the spoon, right? Or the fork? Well, not not teeth. It's like when you close your lips around the, you know, the the spoon. Um, okay, I guess. So. I think I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know, something about it. I just, I just don't really care for it. I just thought maybe I'm not a cheesy guy. Like I don't like liquidy cheesy stuff. Then again, a cheese dip is okay, but even then, I don't know. Like it's, it's strange. Some about it. I don't know. I will. I will say though that if the mac and cheese is shaped like superheroes, it does objectively taste better. Superheroes, that is true. Huh? Yeah. What about alphabet? Alphabet. Um, dinosaurs. Nah, too too educational. Um, but the superhero thing, by the way, applies not just to shapes of superheroes, but to their logos as well. 
All right, then. Um, Wait, Mal, are you getting dumpstered right now in Mario Party? I never win this game. It's, like, impossible. The computer just never seems to fail. It grabs and drops, grabs, drops, while I'm, like, struggling to get the right fits. This is just... I can't compete, you know? But any any tapping A game, oof, I'm gonna dominate. You can rest assured of that. Uh, so yeah, um, okay, every death that happens after the first game is Joel's fault, Mark Twain. Oh, I that's figured, a, that's uh, I don't think Doomer will understand that, uh, I, yeah, well, he'll understand, he'll understand it, half of it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not tracking something about that statement. Well, Mark Twain said it. Uh, he was a big fan of The Last of Us 1 and 2, and he said that um, the second game shows that every death that happens as a result of, you know, the first game, meaning all events ever, uh, are Joel's fault. Um, Fair enough. Incisive commentary. I didn't agree with Mark on that one, but that's fine. Uh, why would you cover Plinkett's PT reviews on 166? Oh, they really want us to do it. Really want us to do it. 166, how many is that from now? We're on 155, right? So, I guess... 11. That's well, I guess, I two months in a week. They cover what? They want us Plinkett to cover reviews? Plinkett's PT reviews at some point, yeah. Huh. See how they hold up, you know? Don't worry, we're um we're, we're pretty big fans of our land, me and Rags, so it's not like we're actually hunting him down. It's just it's some requests for this. I, I I remember really enjoying them, but I think, especially the Revenge of the Sith one, if I remember correctly, had some issues. But That's the one that I think would be the most interesting to cover because I think he got a little bit desperate to shit all over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why Revenge I of the Sith. And by the way, you don't need yeah. to be desperate to shit all over that film. No, because none <laughs> of the prequels are good. Dun dun dun. Yeah, However, I mean, they're not, they're not as good as the easily sequels, Revenge of the Sith is the best. Do you say they're not as good as the sequels? Yeah. Do you believe that? Or are you trolling? Do you really believe <laughs> that? <laughs> okay. You will be punished. Okay. Well, I, be I the... like, I, like I told you, I haven't even seen The Last Jedi. I've only seen your review of it. And do I don't know, even know um, what the third one's called. <laughs> uh, do you know that Sitch has said he might have changed his mind by now about the prequels and sequels? Really? Well, he, he was giving pretty. time or it changed again? He was pretty soft on his arguments, if I recall correctly. I always his media arguments are strange, right? I'm calling you out, Sitch. You may I I had like a whole bunch in a row with him and Adam, and uh, tell you, you know what? Stick to politics, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's true. We had a disagreement about Muppets. See, you know what I mean? Are you pro or anti Muppets? I was firmly anti Muppets. What? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them. Like all of them, even yeah, Gonzo and them. Kermit and all Kermit of them. Is, Kermit is okay. I don't like Gonzo. I can deal with Kermit. Have you seen? Well, have you seen Muppets in Space? No, because that's that's very heavily centered around Gonzo. He's arguably the protagonist of Muppets in Space, and I was like, I, I don't know. Um... <laughs> you want me? You want me to watch Muppets in Space? <laughs> I so we can see if I like a Muppet. Willing to see Space Jam, but not Muppets in Space. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hey, Space Jam 1 is, um... Whatever you say, it'll apply to Muppets in Space. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, chat, the only reason I mention this is because this pissed off their chat so badly when I shit on Muppets. The entire chat was like, kick Doomer, ban Doomer. <laughs> <laughs> for like 15 minutes is pretty funny. What have we got here? We got Castigate, yeah. this beastly degenerate. So yeah, I mean, it's generally positive in town. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so anyway. The great, the great Muppet Wars. Wait a minute, are you what? guys telling me that Mein Kampf wasn't a manga? Then what was the anime based on? Um, that's, I, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's just... Fan fiction? Yeah. <laughs> So, what's your take on Space Jam 1? I remember That's liking it, but I, I don't know how much it's going to hold up mechanically. I'd fuck the shit out I of don't... Lola. Yes, you would. Well, I mean, that, that goes without saying. Yeah, I, 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 that's that's one of those movies where I'm tempted to say, like, I don't think objectively it's good, but I kind of like it. Finish. I'm pretty sure I, that I like it. Yeah, I, I doubt... Um, if I were rewatch that, I'm going to have fun memories of when I watched it as a kid, and, and it's all very, like, wholesome and silly. Yeah. 
It's it's a very difficult movie to take seriously. I think I was kind of I was kind the, of wondering. I was gonna say like, the, the the new one's much more like commercialized in a, in a strange sense, even though the first one sort of is too. But it just feels much like the creativity has been sapped out of it, from what I've seen. Yeah, I, I the only the only coverage of Fish M two I saw was like some YouTube review of it. It was really really hostile. So I'm assuming why messes? Probably, probably not very good. Yeah, it was probably why why mess fucking hated it. You could tell he was struggling to contain himself. <laughs> Yay, DK's punching a child again. Super, super cringe. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering with um, the way that you look at movies, how do you evaluate comedies? Because in a comedy, often, like whether or not things make sense isn't, I guess, as important as in like a drama or something like that. Um, I think you could like, still like, easily of... break down characters for consistency in comedies, as well as um. Oh sure. I think that there's a there's a skill to jokes as well. You can argue for yeah. layers or whatever else, and then some jokes can actually like fall flat or be not fucking like literally like they, they fucking screwed up their understanding of the joke or whatever versus ones that are like really complex um yeah. so there's, there's things to of, talk about but it can be complicated yeah what, what do you think about tropic thunder i adore that movie yeah it's in my top 25 i legitimately love it i actually rewatched it recently and i was actually more impressed i think it went up in my estimation compared to what it was last I, last i saw it yeah here's Here's a hot take, chat. Ben Stiller is a very good screenwriter. I mean, it, like, actually it still blows my mind good. that he wrote that. I just like it's, it's not, like it's not bullshit. The movie, I mean. Yeah, uh, and he also wrote Zoolander, if I recall correctly. And Zoolander also had pretty good writing. I mean, it's really good character writing in Tropic Thunder too. It's not just like bullshit people just there to facilitate like other jokes. They're all going on. Um, I feel like they represent some of the like the larger stereotypes of like actors working in Hollywood and the journeys they're going through as a result of their careers falling apart. Yeah, it's really it's cool just, to break. It's it a down shockingly, that way. it's a shockingly good movie. It doesn't seem like it would be, but yeah, because there's loads of really cu crude humor in it. But uh, you know, because that can put people off completely. I think, which is fair. I just you know. Yeah, I would understand that. I, I had uh, I had such a weird experience. I have a uh, a family member who's like very Christian. And he asked me for like movie recommendations that would be family friendly and like out of my folder of 250 movies i think i came up with like 11 that like weren't <laughs> that weren't like violent or profane i was like film is such like a violent medium it's, it's hard to find a movie that isn't like a ton of swearing or like well, a bunch of people of getting just, tell them, just tell them to be specific say more or less gory and violent than the bible <laughs> good good point um, it's weird that Disney keeps trying to appeal to China, but this and Mulan, they keep half, half-assing the Wuxia and Xinjia elements. I, I am, yeah, I'm definitely pronouncing all that wrong. Uh, they should go full out. What if they lose their market when they do that? Just woke up for day three of my makes 21st bender in Wagga Wagga. Can't listen now, but looking forward to listening on the drive home. Alrighty. I hope you're having fun. Uh. Mini Bowser, you're being a dick. Um, Mola, this city level super... Feet is too strong for my suspension of disbelief. Marvel Comics nervously hides in entities who transcend people like Galactus and Thanos the point of regarding them as fiction. I am a little bit lost. Don't know what to do with that. Part of being good is learning to not be predictable. Huge flaw with that. In any given activity or to achieve a certain goal, there will be a small set of optimal moves. Watch Pro StarCraft 2, the variation in initial moves are immensely small, and most of the time deviating from them is so unwise that people don't even have plans on what to do if their opponent doesn't make those moves and they're not countered. By default, by the standard moves, it's still stupid to assume that an unskilled fighter can beat a skilled one, as that one expected move must be lethal, otherwise, oh wow, you did something I didn't expect and now my arm is cut too bad, you're now off balance and I can just kill you. And a lot of this probably has to do with like the fact that in StarCraft, like you can't just react to things in the same way you react to things in real life. Things take some level of planning and progression and 
you 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 try to prepare for things it's it's not as like reactive in the same way as in like a shooter or something where you can just totally change your positioning and your character's location on the map and aim at different things it's just different was that um, meant to apply to movies at all right well, so can... so this came Sorry, from quote. this came from rag saying that um isn't part of learning to be like it was the whole like um, unpredictability can win and then you said something like uh, isn't learning the skill part of that is to be unpredictable to like defeat your opponent and then this person saying uh, with something like pro starcraft 2 there are like a bazillion moves at the beginning of the game that everyone does and if you deviate from it it's gonna have major cost for you later on or something like that yeah, um, early game for StarCraft 2 is like, it's like a solved game in a yeah. sense when it comes to how to start, what to do, the most efficient way to get to certain points, and then it deviates from there. Uh, even it's just a person who just casually plays a like, game against bots, it's just, I, yeah, the early game is... I assume what Rags solved. is appealing to is a sense of, to simplify this fully, I'm gonna strike my sword at his, at his neck on the left but I'm gonna want him to not be able to block it. So I gotta make him expect me to go a different place, and then I'll go for that place. Thus, I am unpredictable. And I will use my skill to achieve such things. Uh, I mean, this is in, this is in Mordow, the, the idea of fainting. Yeah. Um, you wanna, if you fall for a faint, you're left open, so. I mean, it's just like that in real sword combat, how you wanna, you don't wanna telegraph your maneuvers. You wanna try and catch your opponent off guard, so he does something that he, you're not expecting, because, you know, you, people are not perfectly, um, like they don't have perfect reflexes, and objects can't move without, the objects have momentum, and it takes time, and you want to create gaps. Um, TLDR, it's hard to be unpredictable when you're good at something, because there are only a minuscule number of variations the best way to do something, compared to the total number of ways a thing can be done. Um, again, though, still in those situations, you're trying to... Uh, defeat your opponent. I mean, there are going to be games where the opponent uh, figures out how you're beating them too late. Like, that's how you beat them. Yeah. And it depends on what you're doing, because, like, some, like, the, I, I can't imagine this could even apply to something like chess. Like, mm -hmm. a Grandmaster will just, like, f for a game that is as structured and studied as chess, the idea that some Grandmaster Mega Poobah Water Buffalo could ever potentially lose to just some person Randy. who yeah. barely even knows the rules. Like, it would have to be something that isn't even in the game for that to happen. It's it's way worse than that. If you if you have, like, an international chess tournament of the best chess players in the world, like, the best person in the tournament is basically never going to lose to anyone but, like, the five to ten people after them. You know, there's, like, 200 people in the tournament and 100 of them are completely incapable of ever beating the first player. And these are chess grandmasters. You know, you play a Randy, yeah, it's like it's so far outside of the realm of possibility. And isn't um, part of this, like with chess especially, is that like more than half the pieces will remain and then Randy's, you know, we're observing it and then one of them is just like, he makes one move and he goes, ah, fuck, and it's all over because they already know exactly how the whole rest of the game is going to go. And we're just they're like, oh, it's over? Okay. There is there's a controversial yeah. scene and... Um... There's a controversial scene in Star Trek The Next Generation where Troy beats Data at a game of chess. And you're like, how could you possibly beat Data at chess? He's an android. His computation power is insane. Like, how could a person constantly... Well, wait. D wasn't that, like, a big uh, over thing that we overcame, though, with, like, artificial intelligence that for a long time it couldn't beat the best people at chess and now it can? So, depends on when this came out, right? Maybe a computer could be beaten at chess. Well, no. Well, but the, Star Trek isn't set Star in Trek. present day. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 true. Yeah. I don't even uh, know well, how well, I blanked we'll Just rags, finish up the, uh, <laughs> the thing. That, well, it's like the, with Data's computation power and the fact that chess is structured in a right. way where there is a, there is a legitimate limit. Like, if a computer can know in, in ways that right, the human every brain... Possible way, yeah, yeah, every possible way that... And then if something happens, it's like 70,000 steps in advance. Yeah, a computer that's like stupid. Data I don't know. even know why I said <laughs> it. Now, it, thematically, there's a purpose to it, but yeah. it's one of those, like, uh, you shouldn't be able to understand it. It's mm -hmm. thing you can do. Um, kind of like when Norm MacDonald said, Sarah so Soiverman, uh, my thought on this movie is basically sounds like some Chinese commie gobbledygook. 
I what Chong Chi? I, I was gonna say like I, I don't, the movie doesn't come close to anything like that. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Oh, wow, uh, someone someone just linked me this, right? And this came out October first. Uh, <laughs> Toxic gamer now... culture enters the classroom. <laughs> So it's a presentation, it's an hour long. Likes and dislikes have been disabled. And I'm like, huh. Hmm. So, okay, let me f okay, let me go to the channel and see which other ones are blocked. They are, uh, some of them are blocked in terms of likes, dislikes. Some of them are not. Let me, uh, let me, let, here's just, this is just what pops up when you go to the channel. Some of these you're allowed to rate and some of these you are not. You cannot, you cannot like or dislike block games in review, or some of these other ones. Uh, but some of these you can like tackling cheating in gaming. That's at twenty seven percent. Maybe it's because it follows one that they weren't allowed to rate, which happens sometimes. But uh, oh, like how do you? Like, I don't know anything about how cheats work on a technical level, but I'm like, surely I could give a presentation that gets better than a 27%. 27% really bad. That's I'm not sure I've ever seen it. That's really bad. That, that's like when you see a trailer for something everyone's going to hate and, like, they, like, hate, like, dislike bomb it. Outside of that, I don't think I've ever seen. Let me check the comments. I like on rating this that one. bad. Comments disabled on the uh, Black Games in Review. Comments disabled. Building pipeline to find, grow, and retain diverse talent. Like, dislike, disabled. Comments are turned off. Okay. Uh, huh. Well, what a bunch of fucking cowards. Can't take criticism. On an unrelated note, what if still sucks and it looks like they're opening the door for it to become canon with the MCU timeline that we have? I mean, Keep hearing that. technically speaking, it is already canon in terms of like everything well, happens. Right? So, yeah, yeah, like whatever. <laughs> it don't fucking mean nothing no more. Here's a tip for putting the start of the Resident Evil arc at my birthday, you massives. Oh, no problem. Directly intended. EFAP, Animu, bad uwu. You guys realize that most writing is bad, right? Anime are mostly straight adaptions, adaptations of popular manga and light novels. And as you've seen with Marvel, popularity is no guarantee of quality. And if you've read most Western comics, you know that writing isn't the isn't exactly the best. If you take a random piece of literature, it's likely to be bad. I don't think anyone is saying that anime is well written. It's like saying all Westerns are bad or all live action is bad or all serialized TV is bad. It's a blanket denouncement. And there will be many counterexamples. Anyway, stop saying anime is categorically bad, or just clarify your statements so you aren't saying something akin to we... all Hollywood movies are bad. So, I don't think that any of us have ever said that all anime is categorically bad. I haven't. <laughs> I did. Um, but the thing is, like, you the, 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 com the commentary that. is lacking anyway, because um, anime, yeah. what I will maintain forever is anime gets away with shit that none of the other examples do. And Sorry. that has nothing to do with whether, yeah, like, there's plenty of examples of that. And so, like, I've... it's it's skewed for anime now. It means that what's celebrated in, like, Western stuff, in terms of, like, what's good, is, like, you'll rarely find the greats of Western being, like, suffering from majorly bad, uh, like, anime-like dialogue. But loads of great anime is shit. And what I mean by that is, like, the stuff people hold up. Guys, I, just, I, I figured... And just if quickly, I have to do with the... it's gonna be because of the fact that like um, a lot of stuff gets excused literally because anime it's fine, like uh, and the recent example we had was a stupid fucking parasol lightsaber thing. It keeps happening. Where if you do take a thing that was dumb, it, like in Rebels, right? I haven't seen Rebels, and I don't even know if it's canon. It, is it? It is definitely canon. Okay. Yeah. Well, regardless, um, fuck, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do in this. Um. Whether or not it's canon, like, the, the, the lightsaber flying thing with the helicopter blade. Like, we all laughed at it, everyone did. And it's like, yeah, 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 how dumb is that? We all agree. And then anime do it, it's like, well, stylistically, I think it works, you know? I, I like it because it's just like, for fuck's sake, you guys are so predictable. <laughs> like, you just... It's like, it was just cool, because the guy's wearing, like, a black cloak. I, I always thought it was partially because of the need for serialization, like... 
you know, you have a movie and people spend two, three years working on two hours. Then you have a TV show and it's like, okay, well, we spend one year working on, you know, let's say eight hours of material. But with a lot of anime, it's running like year round. So, you know, you have a lot of times the production pipeline is just so short. You don't have the time to make a product that would be as polished as it would be in other mediums. I, I always figured that's why. That's of your own making, because I don't know, that's just how the industry works. Or you chose to do that. Yeah, so like, I'm I, not sure. I'm not absolving it. I'm not like a huge. Oh yeah, yeah, anything. sure. It's just that's just that was always and, yeah. yeah. Also, someone said, "Who's you guys? All the people it applies to. That's who you guys is." Um. And yeah, I don't say that all anime is bad. I just say that it suffers from major tropes, and it doesn't. It suffers as well because not enough criticism comes in for a lot of the things that it does, including but not limited to really shitty dialogue. Yeah. In Western media, it's all basically agreed, like, yeah, that was shitty dialogue. When it comes to anime, it's like, oh, so a character can't explain how they feel? <gasps> oh, it is. Just... Yeah, anime gets shockingly different standards. This, this was an argument I had with Sitch. Sitch was, like, chewing me out for not liking anime enough. Oh, you're in good company. <laughs> well, anime needs to be better, then. <laughs> uh, we get shot on constantly for our anime takes, but, like, it doesn't bother me. I defend good anime, and I shit on bad anime. It's simple as that. One yeah, punch, mean, man. Fucking one punch, man. It's top tier. It's so. good shit. FMA Brotherhood's good shit. Um. Yeah, I I legitimately like some animes. The problem is like a lot of the animes I like are twenty plus years old at this point, and they're very few and far between. And a lot of the stuff that I've seen is just like I don't even want to touch it. Yeah, um, I I could just tied for my favorite movie, and it's thirty three years old. <laughs> Some yeah, some of that old anime was like just I I I'm just stylistically and artistically it is stunning, like, incredible stuff. Um, but man, that's I the stuff this day these days I just don't. Uh, I mean even the stuff I like I understand that like there's there's not a this it's not perfect but I I really appreciate some of the stuff in a lot of the older animes and I I love me the. <laughs> Ghost in the shells and things like that, but I just feel like oh, it's just nowadays things are so just stupid, and shitty, and silly and pointless and annoying. I think that's a big thing for me, just how annoying anime is. It's just fucking annoying. And yeah, and we've we've said many times that most writing is bad, so I don't even know why this person's asking us to say that too. Yeah. Uh, that's one of yeah, the I mean... you know uh, in you know uh. uh uh, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. La siata ogni speranza voi ci entrate. Abandon all hope, all ye who enter here, right? And the, from the uh, Dante's Inferno, right? Uh huh. Uh, there needs to be a above the gates of EFAP when you enter. There needs to be like the, the three rules, you know? Like, one, most media is bad. Two, we don't care if you like. You just like the three. Just get these out of the way. Get the three black pills out of. Just swallow them at the beginning and come on in. Just that's that's what it's all about. We're gonna wear it on our sleeve. Come inside. Let's have a chat. About you know, it. one of the rules is don't mention Interstellar. Oh, you can mention it. <laughs> you mention it. So you gotta. It, it's yeah. We it should be one of those just. The, the three golden rules of EFAP, or the golden premises, or the something. Get out of the way. You'll just hate everything. And like, oh, 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 oh. hate a lot of stuff. Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of correct. A lot of stuff's really <laughs> bad. Most most things it's, are bad. It's it's shocking how few movies I watch where I feel like I would feel good about, good about having put that out. There's so many movies where it's like, if this had my name on it, I would like... I don't even know what I would do. I would feel a, sh a level of shame I couldn't put to words. Rags being honest for once on animes and saying they're good ones. I've, that's always been my position. <laughs> well, I you... love Cowboy Bebop, and I like the Ghost in the Shell stuff a whole bunch. I've really liked Samurai Champloo. I really like, um, what is it, the Full Metal Alchemist. There, There is stuff that I really like, but like I said, most of it's like 20 years old at this point. I was going to say, the, uh, the many times you've told people which ones you like and what things you have IRL collected or have related to anime, if ever they got confused and said, why do you say all anime is shit, I'm always sitting there like, uh-huh. <laughs> so 
so hashtag not all anime. Hashtag not all. I've got to be. It's, yeah, but like it's all. Yeah, that's why I say it's just all garbage. It, it's the vast majority that I've seen has been like wretched. Uh, I have yep. no interest at all in even exploring anime further as a genre. Honestly, I'll just like my three, four good things from twenty years ago, and um, that will be that. And I'll go do other things and not give a shit about anime. So hopefully that 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 erases any confusion. Hopefully we will it continue won't. We'll to, to, do this to again, speak on anime but... the same way we have this whole time. Yeah. Maybe the more times we talk about it, we'll just get more and more efficient at talking about it. And it'll take us merely seconds in the future mm. to explain our position thoroughly. Give us some examples of a terrible anime. Uh, if we're talking about Five and Below, Avatar The Last Airbender, fucking bite me. Ooh. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> eat my ass. Fucking I'm eat tired. my ass. Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's one of our... I was, I was about to make a joke, like, incoming Reddit threads, like, oh, who am I kidding? This thread it threads will not regardless of anyone saying anything anymore. I don't, I don't care anymore. It's, it's war... I don't fucking care anymore. Get over it. You don't like Appa? Well, the correct take I mean, would be Appa, Iroh, and, um... I'm trying to think of who else I would say. Right, so that's not anime. Yeah, it is. Fuck off. I mean, the definition of anime... There's a video I watched about the definition of anime that's really funny, because it just, like, cycles through all the things... And then which ones don't and do qualify and how none of it really makes any sense. So it said, bruh, Avatar's a cartoon. They're all... What? The... <laughs> They're all cartoons. What do you mean? Fucking Ghost in the Shell. Uh, it's it's all... Uh, it's, it's second gig. It's a, it's a fucking cartoon, man. You, we generally you know... don't call that out, call it that out of belittlement. Because uh, connotation-wise, but it, it is No, of course is, not. I, I love, there's a lot of cartoons is. I love. You know, you know what would be a really... It has, it's got, I don't say they're correct or not, but there's an aspect of... If you call anime a cartoon, people give that associate that negative connotations. But it is well, what it is. That's what it is. But it's all animation. The animation yeah. is the overarching anime. genre that mm. includes all of this. Anime, western cartoons... It's it's Wrong. all animation. It's, it's categorical They're all a big happy anime. family. If western... No, if Western cartoons had a like a name in the same way that anime has a name, we would just call it that. I just I'm not aware well, I mean, of the we, name. I mean, cartoons. I, we just they're just cartoons. Yeah, we generally. Right? Yeah. But I, I but then this is one of those things where it's like, guys, cartoons should not be considered like some kind of derogatory term. Like, no. Th if anybody immediately associates cartoon with something derogatory, that's a that's a you problem you need to fix because cartoons, goddamn, a cartoon super valuable in terms of media. Fucking love cartoons. I do, absolutely. I adore, I adore many cartoons. cartoons. I really love cartoons. I love me some cartoons. Well, what's, in what's fact, I you? I have a super... I might even say I there's a part of me that really is like, oh, thank God, a cartoon. Like, I, it's just like refreshing sometimes to be like, oh, sweet, we get something that's purely like stylized in its own magical way. And it's like, yeah, let's see how this one's going to work out. I'm... I'm big on it. Well, I mean, I just... I, I, uh, I really like the exaggerated sort of comical well i mean the, the actually no i don't want to box it in that much because cartoons has such a wide gambit of things that it covers mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. i just find it to be a really valuable way of interpreting reality because it is very much a, it's it's about taking things that are real and presenting them in ways that are just um either slightly different fundamentally different uh totally different yeah that took me cartoon for a while <laughs> says, well you know what kind of anime i'm referring to no <laughs> I, I so this is the thing it reminds me of uh, some anime. of the other conversations we ended up having where someone was like no avatar cannot be an anime i'd just be like i don't care really like it, i i don't really care either well, i'm not it's gonna watch any more of it it's not um, huge yeah like it doesn't important. yeah yeah and you know our stances on genres it's one of just i just i don't have very much of an interest at all when we get into genre talk it very much starts to be i just i don't care for it other than a very casual mention for the most part uh so eh. anyway um ever play as a cleric in ds1 i think i gave that a shot yeah i did a couple of mm -hmm. runs uh, like a year or two ago, where I was just interested in seeing what other options there were. They all yield different results. 
Um, can only assume the type of kung fu they learn act activates different aspects of the rings, but they never explain it. And Shang Chi masters it. I was gonna say, when is that in the movie at all? Like the if you learn kung fu, the rings will activate. What? I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't seen the movie. But after hearing you guys talk about it, and after the last TFAP we did on it, no one ever mentioned something like that, which you think would would come up pop up. Yeah, because that could be a really nifty. How the how the styles up? Well, it's weird that in Shang Chi, I was thinking what the movie would be is a really wonderfully choreographed and stylized homage to either like Chop Saki's movies or those um, what 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 do they call the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon style movies? Um, uh, like as a genre? Like, it's like yeah, yeah. They have I think there's a name for that genre of almost like just unrealistic fighting where people flip and fly around and float um sure. so maybe someone wuxia 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 i don't know how to pronounce it but uh yeah some like you know like that like the filmmakers who did shang chi like I, i'm so passionate about these kinds of movies and i really want to incorporate so much of that style and aesthetic into shang chi but i guess they didn't so all right well the I'll, I'll the kung fu the kung fu thing is unfalsifiable because everybody that um, Wen Wu fights also uses kung fu. Like, how how would it be kung fu that like takes the rings? I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know why the rings would, you know, have some kind of bias toward that. I don't see why or how. Yeah. I mean, well, we wouldn't know because we don't know anything about the origin of the rings or how they work. Mm-hmm. Um, you're fighting to watch everyone you love die again. Think when we think. I mean, if we're talking about when he's he's breaching the wall and the demons are coming out, it's like, what can you what can you do? What can you say? He's he's under the influence of a Cthulhu monster at that point. So, poor guy. Yeah, he just wants his wife back. I mean, like, think of. Karate Kid, and because I I've never actually seen it sitting down from beginning to end, but from all the stuff that I've seen of it, the relationship between help me out with the names, our protagonist and um, his mentor, right? Like there's like I, is any is, are there, is there anything like that in like a lot of modern Marvel stuff? I don't know, like that. I feel like Kung Fu is a great way like learning martial arts and all that it embodies in terms of discipline and control and practice and training and you know mastering oneself and all that all that you know good stuff with I training stuff like it's just, it just doesn't in, happen anymore does it i mean yeah i mean he just he gets the rings and he beats the guy who's had it for a thousand years so eh, well he had one same. one scene where he trained with the the sister of his mom for like five seconds and he learned about wind I mean, it's just the same thing in Star Wars, right? People just know how to do stuff, and you never like see them yep. training really. It's like it's almost like new writers see that shit as getting in the way. They're like, boring. When we get to the giant jagged dragon sucking the soul out of the other dragon. I mean, it's not it's character development. It's not boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's like crucial to the movie making sense. There is no human. There is only goo. Is this true, Fringy? Oh, he's muted. We'll never know. An Australian no. and a human? When will the contradictions end, Frongo? Uh, look, you can believe whatever you want. I mean, that wasn't really an answer. You kind of evaded the question, but okay. Okay, sure. You can you can believe that it's an evasion all you want. I'm busy working on my comic. I can't let these negativity bring me down. These negativity? Yes, these negativity. It sounds just like nonsense mushrooms, and I just don't believe in it. Okay, like I said, that's entirely your right. Um, what is that sound? I can hear a tap or something in the background. Is it like raining? Maybe it's raining. You hear that? It's definitely from rags. Oh, it's rags, it's okay. Going, yeah, it's going green. What is what is the noise? What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> what 
<laughs> Do you just get up and take a bath or something? You could be peeing, I don't know. But how could we hear it, though? Well, we could hear it earlier when he was getting up and like making sandwiches. We could hear him walking around. Maybe he's making stuff. some very sandwiches that are just S d loud sandwiches. In my window. <laughs> Don't say that. I checked in a panic whether there were emus outside my window, and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Clipping nails? No, that's me. I do that. Not, I don't, it's I don't think it's pee. It's been going on for a while. We could have a really yeah, long bladder. Well, but the problem is it sounds trickly, like long trickly pee. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like it's not coming out all at once. Yeah, I couldn't do that even Sorry, if I, I tried. Had to, um, I'm back. I had to, I had to what? step out with that. Yeah. What? Oh, no. By the way, that's not that's not me pissing. Uh, there was a uh, I have a leak. <laughs> Oh. And it is, it is, it is rained. Uh, yeah, it, it, there's a leak over in the the uh, kitchen back there, and okay. it has been raining a crap. We haven't had rain in a long time, and the sky has been opening up today with rain. So I have a ah. bin I, I I put underneath it. So yeah, we were trying to figure really... out what was happening there. Oh um, no, no, no! I uh, um, no. Quite the perplexing not. mystery. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it's fair enough. I don't know what it sounds like from you know y'all's perspective, but it sounded, yeah, like, it sounded yeah. like we're dripping. But now that you've said that that's what it is, it makes total sense. Like yeah, it was it was thundering a little bit earlier, but really it's just been rain, rain, rain all day. It's been rain. It rained a little bit yesterday, but it has been pouring today outside. So I have something on my to do list. I gotta let them know about the leak in the roof. So mm -hmm. oh, you have Very a to do smooth. list. Wow. I have, yeah, I have to uh, tell them there's a leak in the roof and they need to fix it, so. Yeah. One of them, they're adults. Yeah. Or maybe I can ignore it and it'll just go away. Mm -hmm. I'll put that down on my list as well. Um, also, hi, Rags. Hello to you. Kick J, Don Bless, etc., etc. Australia isn't real. Fringy, thoughts on? Ooh. On nothing? Yeah, so they just asked thoughts on. I, I, no thoughts at the moment. I'm just chilling out. There you go. If Halo, well, I'm was... thinking I want I want food, but that's 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 okay. I won't. I'll I'll it's squish that one down. If Halo's good, what was Truth's plan? He knew what the rings did. Why did the Covenant Civil War? I'm sorry. I'm. Gonna... I don't know if that's a, this is a separate question at this point. Why did the Covenant Civil War just before they won the war? The Forerunners preserved the Flood. High Charity was OP. Flood just had Pelican. Man, that's a bit... So... It's a, it's a little difficult Sorry, can you, can you to really... It, like, yeah, old... Yeah. I, I can indeed, if you want to tackle it piece by piece. Here, well, so, here she uh, is. The, the Forerunner... Co the, the Covenant Civil... If Halo's good, what was Truth's plan? He knew what the rings did. Yeah, his plan was to activate the rings. Yeah, because start the great journey. Basically, yeah. Now, that's course, been the goal of the Covenant religion for. That's the goal of the as Covenant. Far as we... and the, well, so yeah. it's a little complicated, right? Because there is an awareness that humans are actually like ones who can activate rings, and that that's not something that. But I mean, it's pretty safe to say that, like, basically by oh like Halo Three, Truth is kind of losing the plot. What the fuck is Waluigi doing? A lot of it is about what is he doing? He's like, <laughs> you know, the earrings dead. Why did the Covenant Civil War? Well, so, the, so the main thing the is like that. So, what, what specifically Truth wanted was that he wanted to have like, basically, be like a god. That was like his main goal, or or to like attain some level of of a uh, like a daddy like figure, basically by activating the rings. And um, also, now, you don't you don't just get to him. It's you going, you going. Oh well, I'm just saying, like what, like whatever that means to him, or why he would think that that would do it. Like he knows it'll kill him, sure, but like people do things, like that. That's not that's not good enough counter, because yeah, maybe he does know that, but that that's not necessarily enough to stop you if you've got other goals in mind. Um. And uh, the 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 next part about why did the co I assume why did the covenant well the civil, civil war happened because the brutes betrayed the, the elites that like what is it, it's it's disconnected from the yeah you had you kind of had two things war. simultaneously happen yeah. you had they arbiter learning about but, arbiter mm -hmm. learns that the prophets have been lying 
uh, which is a big deal. It's going to be a very big deal. Uh, and you have the brutes entering into the equation. Those things mix, and you don't like get to choose when you have a civil war. You know, and the civil war happened because there was a fracturing in the covenant because the uh, the the prophets didn't think that the elites were in a position to continue like protecting uh, them. So they switched over to the brutes. And then, like, the Brutes kind of opportunistically used it as an opportunity to assert themselves as basically, like, the second in the hierarchy. That lined up with their internal conflict. And if there was going to be strife, now is the time when they're about to go on the great journey. Like, this is the time for this sort of strife to happen. Especially if you, as a big species, believe that this is, like, basically a divine thing that's about to happen and you want to be, like... The, the ones who lead them into, you know, the, the divine beyond. It, it's it's, and if it's you're, perfectly fine. And if you're the elite, right, and you are going to be essentially civil warring against the covenant as a whole, and you're going to say, all right, we're not going to, you know, fight these human guys anymore. They're like, think of the tactical opportunism that goes into that. Exactly. Like, why would you uh, wait and fight against the humans and kill them and go through all of that? And then after that deal with like that's just it you know there's, there's a lot of tactical sense that goes into that as well um the forerunners preserved the flood i'm pretty sure that there is like references i just don't have them on hand at the moment as to why that was the case um because i remember specifically that there was like different developments on uh on the the fifth ring uh, or Delta Halo that they visit in Halo 2 where, like, in that place, the infestation was, like, completely out of control and they had gained some level of control over the, uh, the AI there. But I would need better references. High Charity was OP. I don't know what that means. Overpowered? No, it wasn't. It got destroyed. Yeah, I, I just kind of... Hard for me to even understand, I mean, like, the Flutter OP, but that's but... kind of the point. Well, the, yeah, the Flood are definitely OP, but that, yeah, that's the idea. There are things in nature that are overpowered. I mean, that's like, like saying the Reapers and Mass Effect are OP. It's like, yeah. It's like, that's they kind are of, powerful, yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Fringy is actually a proboscis, pro, proboscis, proboscis monkey. Hence the elongated mask for his enormous schnozzle. That's not <laughs> true. Is this a lie which propagated part? by Wait, which, the media? Which part? The so what is, what is the function? The nozzle. What is the function of the big pokey nose thing? That's where you put little herbs on the bot at the end there to protect you from the illness. That's why the plague doctors did that. Yeah, Fringy doesn't know oh, okay. that medicine has come a long way since then. Sure, but I mean... <laughs> just because something has overstayed its usefulness, like in terms of being replaced, doesn't mean that we get rid of it as a function of something. At least not necessarily. So why did yeah. you keep it? Now you're all quiet. I'm I like quiet. it. I like the aesthetic. No, 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 I'm gonna let you- No, I'm gonna you let you- work quiet for a second cool. there. Why- why would you I- why quiet. would I stop you? I was waiting for you to explain the second half, you never did. What was the second half? So you said that it's not necessarily, so it's like, so what's this case then? I like it. That's fair enough. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Fring am Jack in your aesthetic. Oh. Oh boy. Look, th there's a mask there. Wow, it's not showing. Oh no, that. No. Oh, look. You you got Plague Doctor mask. Oh my goodness gracious! Now you two have to fight for Plague Doctor supremacy. Mm-hmm. No, Plague Doctor's this camaraderie, right? Yeah. Is is this? There's honor between right Plague Doctors. Yeah. Exactly. It's an honorable field. You're a pack yep. a pack of plague doctors. A gaggle. What do you call a group of plague doctors? A gaggle. Uh, I imagine you just call them a group of plague doctors. <laughs> a a con uh, a let's see a uh, conflagration of plague doctors. Ooh, no, no, no. That's plague, a large plague fire. creations like the... is uh, he's 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 gatekeeping. That doesn't count. You've got a masquerade mask. Well, it is a masquerade mask. mask. You're right, it's oh. not an actual Plague Doctor mask. The Pretender! Wow, and you tried to appeal to your sense of, like, unity as well there, Fringy, but nope, being booted out. Fringy focused on physical features, yeah. like a really big schnoz, and that was able to completely fool him. Wait, so am I- is this cultural appropriation? Maybe. Well, I don't know that Plague Doctors- it's not like a- you know, it's- 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 
you well, can, I guess we a way of life is can't... a culture. I was about to say, like, it's a way of life. Well, a way of life uh, is probably a culture. Okay. Unfortunately, plague doctors are probably all white, which means that they are exempt from the uh, rule of uh, cultural appropriation. Well, I'll put back on my eyes wide shut mask then. <laughs> uh, which is the best performance for Anthony Hopkins, The Father or Silence of the Lambs? It's not really that's fair tough. to compare. <laughs> it's so that's a, that's different. A, that's a weird Father comparison, but I would go Silence of the Lambs. I mean, it was really weird, though. I don't know. Um, I don't know, just, yeah. It's a, it's a, I don't think I can pick between them because they achieve such hugely different fucking things. Uh, oof. Yeah. Just both top tier. They're both Oscar worthy. What can I say? I don't know. I mean, they both accomplished their goal to a massive degree. So. Yeah. Very hard to pick one. Lucky they didn't say gun to your head. Which one would you pick? So I don't have to answer. <laughs> right, because then that way, you know, you just have to choose or die. Mm -hmm. I, I guess the essence of my answer was that, like, Hannibal Lecter is a bit more complicated of a role. I guess that's probably what would tip it for me. I'm not sure that I would necessarily agree with that. But yeah, really? when, I guess I can... if you're playing a character where selective memories are being removed over time, I don't know that would be less complex than Hannibal Lecter. I, it's, I guess you it, you could say that it's more abnormal, like, because there aren't many people like Hannibal Lecter, whereas, you know, dementia is a, is like a thing that, you know, happens a decent amount of the time. Yeah. But if you're going to get that broad, you could just say there's loads of psychopaths in the world. Well, sure, that's... Right, but I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at, I guess, is that I don't know that it's super important. Uh, good day, Fringold. Hey. In episode 3 of Midnight... Oh, that it. That's it, yeah. <laughs> In episode 3 of hey. Midnight Mass, when girl beckons boy to follow her at night, the nearby water randomly flashes green. Could it be a light it? That, that reflects off the water, or...? Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, I don't it's know. Be I'd have to see it again. Happen, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, unless it's a technical issue unless, with camera work or something. Someone would have noticed that, probably. Yeah. And fixed it. Yeah, um, I'd have to see it again, honestly. I'd have to see it again. Rags, Wario's in a gay go kart. Stop him. Wario's in a gay go kart. Stop him? That mm -hmm. would be a hate crime. Oh, I didn't mean stop him because. Which means he's gay. you bet. Oh, no. So he's like beating the fuck out of me. I'm sad. Fringy is actually. Oh wait, no, I've read that one already. Ask Duma to give his best fake, real fake laugh. Uh, fake laugh. Yeah. Real fake. Oh laugh. man, real fake laugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was very posh of you. Yeah. I was. I was kind of trying to do an Amadeus. Oh. <laughs> Um, I think three blue, one brown, and minute physics are on Nebula for good stuff, and Legal Eagle 2, I guess, but he's not as quality. I, I hope he has quality videos. The one we saw wasn't very good. What, Legal Eagle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're fine. Oh, are they now? What are you, a lawyer? <laughs> no, I'm not. Wrecked. I'm very much not a lawyer. Knew it. I knew you'd lied to us. The, f <laughs> the first reason this is good is because I like it. Like, yeah, it's a great starting point for all videos, I guess. Like um, someone, someone actually started a video that way? Well, they all come down to that, usually. The arguments are very rarely any good, but they'll also say that that's what their reasoning is. Yeah, see, that's... That's part of why I wanted to talk to you guys, is that it's so difficult to find people to talk to about movies where the conversation goes beyond that. Because there's, like, so many different levels you could have a conversation about movies. Like, the level zero is just, what did I think of it, right? And level mm -hmm. one is, like, you have good, you have a good understanding of your taste, and you can explain why you had your experience. And then level two is, like, the critic's take. It's like, okay, well, I understand what the audience generally would probably react to and why. And then there's, like, the artist level of, like, okay, well, I'm understanding what it's doing and how this could be applied to make better movies. And, you know, there's just so many different ways you could go with the conversation, but it really, the vast majority of the time, it really just comes down to, well, I liked it. Why didn't you like it? Okay, whatever. And, like, that's just the entire conversation. It's so frustrating. 
mm -hmm. like break down elements and stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the odds that Don't Stop Me Now will be in the Mario trailer slash movie? Also, hi Ragu, Fragu, and Molu. Hello. Hey, hey. I don't know what to expect from what we're gonna get. It's, it's Wait gonna for be what? The Mario movie that'll eventually come out. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, what knows. we're in for. I mean, I, I would just write it off, but the Lego movie exists. That was kind of good. Movie but that was seen as bad for Christopher Miller and. Uh, I'm gonna forget the other guy. The two Do people we know who's made directing Lego movie. the Mario. I don't think we know that yet. But hey, I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah. Stay positive, everyone. Um, God, it might. This 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 isn't gonna be a very satisfying mini game if all I have to do is just keep playing other mini games and then buy all the best items. Just like, oh. You don't get any points for playing. That seems to be the thing that you should probably give me. That would that would make it more engaging. Um You realize that Nebula makes them more money, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Really? really? Wow! Fuck I, I me. guess. I, I mean, I, 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 I guess did, did so. You know, did you know? Did you know that? You know, of all I the time I spent I... complaining about it mechanically and and obstructively, and then how it, it's like an ad, it all makes sense now. Because like this whole time I thought, like, why is everyone making it harder for themselves for no reason at all? Do you, do you think that these YouTubers might have done this advertisement in exchange for money? Hmm. Wait, that, that's why they do them? That doesn't make any it sense. It could have been, like, maybe that's, like, if we, that's our motive, I guess, I mean, if it, if that's the case, mm. but... Wait, you saying they, they huh. shilled for Noom for money, not because of Noom's incredible service? I, I don't know, it's, I mean, I don't want to point fingers, but, oh I mean, if God. they got, potentially, if they got, like, money in exchange for doing it, that would be, I mean, that's a reason to say, I mean, who knows what kinds of things about it, I mean, uh, I don't want to go too far with it because we're just dealing with rumors and speculation. But I don't know. That can, I have to reevaluate my position now that I yeah. have been told it's possible they did it in exchange for money. Well, you know, you learn something new every day. Thank you very much for that. Um, also, do you realize YouTube has member exclusive videos as well? What in the I've, you know, never known so that. What does either. that change? Never knew that. Like, funny, funsies aside, what does this person think that changed This person about thinks that we don't know instead? why they were do doing Nebula when that's like the most obvious, like, kindergarten level take of why it exists. Like, why else would it fucking exist? Of course that's the reason it exists. Does anyone, does anyone actually use the YouTube, like, subscriber-only feature or whatever, like, paywalling on YouTube? Some people do, it. I think. I don't see why they wouldn't. Again, because it makes the money. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I can see why they might do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I guess my thing is like, how would I even know? Like, let's say, like, it, ha, yeah. Do they advertise it? Are they like, hey, if you subscribe, if you uh, join the channel, I guess, then you get access to more videos? Would they yeah, say I that? guess that's yeah. how they do that's it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. I just, I guess, yeah, never seen it. Some do like special streams, and then they'll make it member only. You have to join in order to see it. Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Doomer is legendary. Hey, there you go. Oh, thank you. No, oh. more videos, Molly. Dance, monkey, dance. Oh my god. Dance, monkey, dance. Rags is the true and honest hero of chat. It is true. Followed up by, is this Rags' slow descent into alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> my descent into alcoholism is not slow. Super fast. It, 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 it arrives suddenly and without warning. Why can't I have a game where I can fight against three Waluigi's? Why do I have to choose other characters? Maybe you could you could pay some of your some of your mates to um, dress up for you, and maybe you could have a fight in the street. Yeah, I mean, well, that's an option. Yeah, um, you Rags, you're a pretty reliable source. So I'm going to give you a bunch of words, and you have to choose which one. Okay, so. Okay. Future, sweet, Bowser, toy, rainbow, pirate, undersea. Let's go with pirate. Alright. Done and done. 
Um, when is Mola playing Lego Lord of the Rings on stream? And it's on Steam at some point, probably. Yeah. That's a game I could probably get away with without getting distracted too much. It'd be great. Um, Marry, fuck, Lego. kill, J Fringy Metal. Hmm. Well, can I kill them all? <laughs> I mean, I, I think I'm going to abstain when it's about people. <laughs> like I know. Me too. Sorry. These sounds okay. Yeah. I can't let them. I can't let them just find out about this. The relationship I have with Met. I mean, I can't pick mm -hmm. favorites. Yeah. It's very important. Uh, yeah. Rags, tell a joke. How come you don't see many black people on cruise ships? Uh oh. Um, how come? They're not falling for that one again. <laughs> God. And this this says I now must say, oh, I guess I should have specified a good joke. Uh huh. See, one thing I like about that one is it's actually not a racist joke. Um. Well, it's one of those, it's actually a joke that I, um, I forget the name of the woman, but she got in a huge amount of trouble for saying that, um, that something like, I'm on my way to Africa, um, I'm worried about catching AIDS or something, and then she followed up with saying, um, not actually, I'm white. Oh yeah, and she got, that like, was, like, fired the first for that. Ever, that was the first ever, like, cancellation, and, I think. But the idea yeah. with what she was saying from her POV was that, uh, black people aren't given the care they, they need and deserve white people are, or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, uh oh. Uh-oh. And so, obviously, her joke horseshoed all the way back around to, that was incredibly fucking racist, and she got cancelled for it, and I was like, oh, shit, okay. Yes, that's the thing. One joke, you say, you're a, a decade's worth of work, a lifetime of effort, and you tell one joke. Fucking insane. Yeah, you're yeeted. Uh, best film I've seen in 2021 is Pig. It's a Nicolas Cage movie, I think. I've not seen it, but I wouldn't mind. I'm going to look at it at some point. I've heard moderately good reviews. Um, I, I just thought how Marvel could undo their bad con content. In a comic, Deadpool obtains a seventh Infinity Stone and alters continuity and canon. Thoughts? Give Deadpool all the Infinity Stones, he detonates the entire universe. Just It just... It's gone. It's all Life it. Yeah. yeah. He he would be he he understands that it's worthwhile to do because he could see the world in a meta way. He knows what's been happening. And you can have him do a big speech just going over how nothing everything and all of it makes no sense. And he's been keeping an eye on it and it's getting ridiculous. His movie is supposed to be the one where silly shit happens, not everyone's. Um Uh, hi Rags, please explain the difference between soggy, saturated, slimy, and wet. Also, happy 40th birthday, Metal. Oh. So, soggy, saturated, slimy, and... Wet. Wet. Okay. So, this is me operating off the top of my head, so don't scrutinize too much. Um, I would say that soggy is when a... Uh, let's say soggy and saturated. So a saturated, it refers to liquids. So when a liquid, I think, is saturated, I think that means it has, it is currently holding, a it like the maximum amount of like other material. Like if like if you have water and you put salt or sugar in it, it reaches a saturation point, which is the max of how much it could hold, and it can't get any more salty. You know, and then it's super saturated when there's even more and it like settles at the bottom and stuff. I think that's how it works. Um, and maybe this applies to fluids in general, uh, but I think that's what it is. It's been a long time since science class. All right. Um, slimy, I would say, is something that is a, a liquid, but it is particularly viscous. In that it is extremely, it has a, a lot of stickiness and it's very, um, it, it runs very slowly. Uh, an example would be um, 
like um, a, a good example, something slimy would be like um, maybe uh, what's a common example? I don't know, just like the ghost goo that you see in Ghostbusters, you know, that's slimy, right? It's a liquid. It will take the shape of its container and it kind of sticks to itself so you could put it between your fingers and open them up and it's connected Lick it, by yeah. a strand. Yeah, but it's not runny like water. It doesn't just run off of you. Um, so wet is when water is on a surface or on an object. That object is wet and has, to at least a small degree, uh, is either covered in water, I would probably say, or has water about it. Um, and when it comes to soggy, this is the one I had to come back to. So I think soggy is when a, uh, a an object, a solid object, has soaked up a sufficient amount of liquid to where like the texture of it changes because it has absorbed a lot of that you know liquid inside of it and it can be expelled by squeezing. So like a, a sponge can get soggy, your shoes can get soggy, uh, things of that nature. And so when you squeeze them both, water will drip out the bottom. But like a marble couldn't soggy. get soggy. Yeah, a marble could not get soggy, exactly. In the same way that a, a glass ball is harder than a rubber ball, a rubber ball is more durable. You cannot have a soggy marble you can have a wet marble, though. But uh, I, I think that's a decent casual. Off the I top think you of did a great job. The two. Thank you. Top form. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um. Who are we? Germany isn't landlocked, and seafood is gross. Yeah, Germany isn't landlocked, right? There's a little part at the top. Is there? I couldn't remember off the top of my sure head. I'm pretty sure the part that connects to Denmark. Not. And the no, isn't like the Baltic whole top part? Sea or the what's it? I'm pretty sure. In fact, yeah, I'm pretty sure Germany is like not very landlocked at all. Like it's got a decent sized. Let me check. Let's I'm, me not, see. I'm not too. Yeah, they got a decent amount of shoreline uh, up on the north part. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had I had no clue. I'm not sure I, why I didn't couldn't... say anything. Actually, I knew. I think I knew that, <laughs> but I just yeah, didn't I notice. just um do not uh, do not have much memory off the top of my head when it comes to european geography yeah um, i know this i know states far better than i know the like europe that was a really good take I... on seafood though i did i had an excellent take on seafood yeah while rags is wrong about seafood he's right about christmas chris massives rise up Man, we're just having um, I'm right on both takes. counts. So, you get partial credit. And Don't move that, Halloween. Yeah. Halloween is my birthday. If you move, it'll ruin it. Wait, your birthday... But Halloween does move every year, technically. I well, think it's... No, wait, sorry. Year, right? I think it's, it's the same day. Yeah. But then... Yeah. Well, the date. It's the same date which can fall on different right, yeah. days. Yeah. We want it on the same like day. A, <laughs> Yeah, some there are some holidays uh, and such. I think that are the you know X like day of the month or whatever that is. That's pretty cool though to have a, a birthday on Halloween. It's spooky. Yeah, that is a nifty birthday. Yeah, your mom got a really well. You think she? She think when she was giving birth, she was like trick or treat. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Out of it. And then the doctors were like, trick. Because the kids but like they a parasite. The, they, they did have to finish the procedure, though, because it's very important. Thanksgiving is the patrician holiday. What's the patrician again? It's like a high. It generally, it's, it, it comes from the the social class in ancient Rome. You had plebeians and patricians, that sort ah. of thing. The patricians were like the upper class. Um, I see. It's, I think it's probably where we get like patron and stuff from if you are a patron you're like a patrician it comes from, I, probably the brood of it is probably the latin word for father which is pater where we get things like paternity tests and in why patriarchy sometimes that's right absolutely um you have also that's where that's why so many people say they refer to their mom and dad they say m and p for mater and pater by the way mater is in matricide you know sort of mattresses Mattresses where you fuck them. So there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Words. 
Uh, my family has stuffing with sourdough bread chunks and ling linguini? Linguia? Ling 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 L-I-N-G-U-I-C-A? I don't think I've ever seen the word before. Linguica? Linguica? Linguica, okay. Linguica, John Linguizama? Sausage bits, it's divine. Oh. Sounds oh. it. Why do I keep running in bad spaces? <laughs> oh wait, switch with another person, that's fine. Um, good at rap, prove it in Jackbox 5, Madverse City. I don't think we ever played that. Also, there's a new Jackbox coming out soon. It'll be interesting to see if they can have anything that competes with uh, Gardic Phone. Uh, I doubt I, it though. Hopefully, but I doubt it, yeah. Hey Rags, who's the better daddy, Wesker or Elusive Man? Wait, Elusive, elusive is spelled with an E, man. isn't it? Elusive Not, I think Ill this one might be... Um... I-L-L-Elusive is how he's spelt. Oh, okay. Who's Elusive Man? Alright, for Mass Effect. Yeah, Mass Effect. Martin. Yeah. I have not he does it. the voice of the, uh, of, uh, the Elusive yeah. Man. He just got that uh, so voice. Thing. Neat. Yeah. This is, this is the... This is from the. Uh, I, I double checked to see which it was, and that's the thing that pops up. <laughs> <laughs> the elusive man is the elusive. That... <laughs> that's felt the other way. <laughs> maybe maybe it's like illusory or something. Maybe it, it really so. is a different. Yeah. Uh, I, I doubtful that here. they made that mistake. I guess. Yeah. The, no, I this was back when Bioware was. Nobody corrected them. I feel like modern Bioware would make that mistake, but elusive is actually a word. It actually, like I said, illusory. It is a, and it is a, um, it means that deceptive or illusory. Mm. But it is, it is a thing. Waluigi, if you don't win for me, there's no way I'm doing it. I don't have rumble. Calling yourself the elusive man is like calling yourself the Prince of Lies. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know. If there I was a guy who called himself the Prince of Lies, right? Oh, really? What yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if it's real or not. That's the problem. This is from something, but I don't know if that was based on something real. Can you Google Prince of Lies, see if it relates to anything? So, the, um, it's, an, it's a nickname for... Satan? I forget what the one for Satan is. Uh... I think it is for Satan. Uh, I think Jesus tell a, tell says oh, that yeah. Satan's the Prince of Lies, but Satan doesn't call himself that. I was I was sort of looking. Yeah, I'm looking for. Uh, and he is the father of lies. Not, the devil is the father of lies. The the people who like choose it as a title. Yeah. Yeah, they don't generally call themselves that. So despite all the times where Satan told the truth when God was the one being deceptive and dare I say elusive uh, he oh is called God. the Prince of Lies so it is it is a little little confusing in the lore but I'll let them sort that out they've had enough time they should have an agreed upon answer at this point I'm sure all right um, Beelzebub is the Prince of Lies Beelzebub is I'm pretty sure that's I think that might be the literal Hebrew for Beelzebub is the Prince of Lies let me check um Beelzebub is a name derived from a Philistine god, formerly worshipped in Ekron and later adopted. Da, da, da. So, associated with the Canaanite god Baal. Beelzebub is another name for Satan. Um, yeah, I wonder, I'll, I'll have to look it up later. Um, Prince of the Devils. Um, yeah, it's, I guess it depends on the kind of the lore you read. Be very bad. Beelzebub's no good. Yeah. No good. He's a big bad. You don't want to... Don't mess around with that Beelzebub. Mm-hmm. He'll get you. He'll lie to you. Well, nobody enjoys shooting penguins, but if you've got to shoot penguins, you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> I assume you agree with that, Fring. Wait, can you say that one more time? I, I, honestly, I know you so well that I think you... I just know that your answer would be yes. 100%. But what is... I don't know what the... Okay. I just cost myself 10 coins for no reason at all. That was a really good move. Wait, did I guess... Is it the bird bot of Iskatraz? Is that actually the episode that comes from? Uh, probably. A Futurama, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Wow, how did I know the episode title? That's crazy. Because you're a nerd. I am a nerd. We aren't. We we, we don't talk... <laughs> yeah, you're not nerdy at all. media for hours on end. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Favorite Treehouse of Horror episode? Um, I love the time-traveling toaster 
set of three stories. I forget which oh, the other two that's, are, though. That's, that's, that's uh, number five, Halloween. The treehouse. fucking excellent. The ones... Hold on, kids! I'm coming to rescue <laughs> the lot of you! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm bad at this! <laughs> yeah, that, that it's hard to choose between some of the classic era Halloween episodes. They're fucking amazing. Do you have a favorite, Crane? Uh, I, that is my favorite, is uh, number five. Um, it might be because I own season six on, on DVD, so I, I rewatched that. Fuck, now I'm like getting nostalgic for the memories of just replaying episodes of that season of The Simpsons when I was a youngin. Yeah, I feel um, like I need to go back uh, and rewatch them. I watched some of the earlier Simpsons somewhat recently, like last year, and it was incredibly good. Yeah. Oh wait, did Maybe. Rags? Did you even answer the the question of who's the better, Daddy Wesker or the elusive man? Elusive man. Oh okay. What's wrong with Wesker? What do you? Have I, I uh well the thing is I have a lot of I think that the elusive man I could trust far more to act both in his best interest and rela rationally. Like there's an element of I can understand all the the things that the elusive man does and why he does them. With Wesker, mm -hmm. he's clearly willing to not give a shit about. The people close to him and he's kind he's of a psycho insane, and he right? wants to yeah. yeah and he wants to yeah he's he's a bit he goes a little bit nuts there he just at wants the end to saturate the globe completely you want yeah totally mm -hmm. yeah he wants to saturate the globe totally uh and that's and completely that's, like, yeah. that's all he wants to do while screaming <laughs> chris at the top of his lungs <laughs> just the fact that he's always screaming chris <laughs> Crash when he bursts out of the volcano. <laughs> That's, right. Oh. That's right, yeah. That's Plus, so I can listen to Elusive Man all day just <laughs> talking about stuff. I can listen to West Girl yeah. all day. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Crash. And we got another one straight away Better Daddy, Master Chief, or Bowser? Bowser. Uh, well, I mean, Master Chief doesn't have any kids, so it's definitely Bowser. And oh, it's, that it's, has nothing to do with being a daddy. <laughs> well, it, that's that's true, but like Bowser, he does seem to actually be like a good dad. Did, Wait, wasn't wasn't there some parental <laughs> neglect in so, Super Mario Sunshine? I mean, free like as you've been, we've been having all these conversations. I was on a map where Bowser was incinerating his children regularly for money. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I was just thinking about that little video that Nintendo released where he was doing the parental controls and he's like, oh, I'm gonna make sure that Bowser Jr. has a balanced lifestyle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> plays video games for Maybe he's like just schizophrenic, you know? Sometimes he burns them, sometimes he puts on parental controls. Well, wait, is there Bowser Jr. in, in this? Who, who are the, Who's in this game? Is it Bowser Jr. or...? I fucking... I don't... I don't mini Bowser, I guess? Well, mini Bowser, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's Bowser Jr., but wh where's, uh... What else is in I don't know, one? I'm sorry, I just don't know. Um... Possums are the American kangaroo. No, they're not. We have possums here. Why, why would the possums in America be the, the kangaroo equivalent when we have possum equivalent here? I don't, I don't know. Wait, do, don't possums have pouches, though? That isn't a terrible comparison, I guess. Yeah, but possums have pouches here, too. Like, I don't, <laughs> it would be like saying that a kangaroo and a possum are the same. It's like, well, no, they're different animals. Like, they're very different. Yep. Uh, look up Madam Eyebrows, one of the cutest puppers. Hmm. Never know to trust people who say to Google things. Yeah, look it up. Do your own research. <laughs> this is, this is, they weren't lying. It is a doggo. Um, hey, Rago. What gives you Hello? the zoomies the most? Oh, good puss. I don't know. Oh, um... When, oh, it would probably be like giving, like when I'm like, so being so excited and just the only way that you could you voice your excitement is when you just run it around back and forth and you just can't contain yourself. Oh man, I don't know. Maybe, oh, it's, it's just, it, it just, un, just elation of that degree. Um, oh man, I don't know. I guess it's. 
I'm like loosening up. Uh, well, no. Oh man, so many things. But the most, it's tough to say. Um, sometimes when you just, it's a lovely day outside, and you feel like burning energy, and you've been inside a while, and you just want to let it all out, and you want to go to places, and you want to see things, and you want to do stuff, and you got a trail and a mountain, and you just want to climb and run until you just can't go any further, and you wear yourself out. I think just the, the open expanse of possibilities that is a gorgeous day outside and the great outdoors is one of those things that just, it's just right, you know? It just feels right. Man, your answers were like on the opposite sides of a spectrum. But, um, you know. Well, a lot of, I think that's a lot of things give you the zoomies. I mean, you'd understand in my position. It's just sometimes you just gotta, oh, I gotta let it all out. I gotta just, oh, calm myself down in a way. I'm so excited. Pumpkins, yeah, that's right, Chad. Pumpkins are great. Um, no, that Goodell request was a legit quote. I even added a timestamp so you can find it. He was saying it genuinely about the, um, the Cinema Wins thing, presumably. Um, also, you didn't add it to the notepad. Um, so when I'm playing the video game, that's a capture of not the screen, but the game. So you can't see what I'm writing right now on Goodell notes. Be terrified. I could be writing anything about you, chat. It's just trying to chat gay. <laughs> and they don't even know. Will there be a James Bond arc? I mean, I don't see why not. It's going to depend on these lads here if they're interested. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat interested, but not like, uh... So interested that it would be a priority. There are other arcs that I think I would rather embark on. Hmm. What is your most uh, invested and in want want to do arc right now? Mm, I'm, oh, the problem is like I don't want you to because I'm I'm blanking at the moment. My brain's on flimp. Um, I don't want you to list the ones that have been proposed to. It would be too spoilery for chat. Um. No, I'll keep that one to myself actually. If it comes to me, which it's not <laughs> at the moment. Very well. Um, the Rags Revolution has begun. Rise up and overthrow the oppressive long man and the plague doctor. Also, hi, Rags. Hello to you. Why would Rags want to overthrow us? In the mix. Oh, wow, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I, there, it's, not, it's not oppressive at all. Yeah, we're very we're very nice and friendly, and and and, yeah. and Rags is welcome to sit in his pumpkin, do whatever he wants. Uh, Sitch has the story of meeting Quentin at VidCon, and Quentin abruptly ended the conversation after him looking up his channel on his phone. Yeah, that's kind of a lot of what I'm basing what I've said on. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Not to mention the Are stuff that me? Quentin has said. Yeah, apparently the way that Sitch tells it was that they were just chatting about things, and then he Sitch had said what his channel was, he was literally looking on the phone as they were speaking, and then he just turned around and walked off. Are, are you... Dude. Because apparently he would, have, he would have spotted that he was, uh, would have... he made, Like, you could probably, I guess, put Sitch into the category of anti-SJW if you looked at a selection and Quentin was, like, done with, with those people, you know? I think, he, I think he owns that, right? He, well, Quentin, he's proud of it, I'd say. No, I mean, I mean, uh, Sitch. I don't know. I didn't want to speak too... too soon oh, with yeah, that. I'm not sure, because I fucking... I'm pretty sure Sitch and Adam is similar with us with, like, keep the labels away from me. Or maybe not, actually. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And Quentin's, like, on the, uh... Yeah, okay. I understand. Um... What's Fringy's goo but a mystery box? Oof. Um, well, I mean, there are things in life that are mystery boxes, but there's a difference between a mystery box in real life versus in a movie. Well, they have it. Bring your thoughts on ectoplasm. I, uh, I, indifferent. Really? Nothing, nothing. I, I'm, I don't know that I'm a fan of ectoplasm. You know, I wouldn't want it around unless it was contained. I don't know enough about it to have a perspective. Well, I guess we can say that your goo has nothing to do with ectoplasm, then. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, you can. Uh, chat. What's Fringy's goo? Orange Yoda, Jar Jar Abrams, Fringy. A good question for another time. Yep. 
He's, uh, he's, he's not giving you much on that one. Mutually, watch Maxwell's Bloodborne Review, Defeat Gods, Dull Waifu Simulator, Pure LSD, Good Rat, also High Rags. Hello. I might do. In the future, maybe. Um, Rags, have you listened to Drunk Rags? Also High Rags. I did once, the Metal Stream one. That was a trip. Mm -hmm. It was like the first time hearing that. Potatoes I and legit, no, I really didn't remember a vast majority of a lot of that. Uh, best slash worst interaction with a con customer slash client. Oh, I would have told a slash client. couple of stories. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we've, yeah, I'm sure we've given stories. Um, hmm. um, customer or client? Let's take, it's going back years. Um, I remember I, uh, I told it on Twitter recently, like the, one of the best interactions I ever had. I know I've told it on ETAP as well, but it gave me hope for humanity. But one of the funnier ones I know I haven't told in a while was working in an old B&Q, an old DIY store. And um, I was in an aisle literally just filled with toilet seats. That was the aisle. This place is pretty big. It's just a whole aisle of toilet seats. It's just like, yeah, you know, whatever toilet seat you want, you can get it. And I'm um, just, just there stacking some toilet seats, as you do. And a guy walked up to me, and he was like, "Excuse me, excuse me, sir." He, like, he, like, like in the way that he would appear around the corner looking for people. And he was like, "Ah, oh, yes, there we go, finally." And he was like, um, uh, "Do you have any idea where the toilet seat aisle is?" And I was just like, you, "The kind of thing where you just, you just look at the person, like that's funny." And then they were looking at me like, "No, seriously." And then I was just like, like, I looked around, and he was just like, "Oh, oh, oh, thank you." And I was like, <laughs> "I didn't do anything." <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> it's just, uh, you feel bad, because you thought he was making a joke, but he wasn't. Man, you get fucking taxed ten coins whenever I pass this place. What is this? Socialism? Can't handle this terrible Mario game for ruining my life. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of like, the worst customer interaction I've had, and it's just this, uh... Nothing's coming to mind. My my horrible retail stories are fading as time goes on, which is nice because I hated them. Yeah, the I, I have ones. plenty. I just I don't I don't know. It just seems unpleasant to share. <laughs> I'd have to think myself because for the most part, it didn't happen that much. But the little things here and there, but nothing comes to mind immediately. Maybe if I'm reminded here and there, something might mm -hmm. like it might jog my memory. Yeah, that's worth pointing out is that the really bad stories only happen every once in a while, and most people are pretty nice. Um, <laughs> most people are pretty neutral, is what I found. Uh, sure. I got a, like like, and what I, I guess what I mean by neutral is like in in the store if uh, you know they're buying something, they, they they barely look and acknowledge, and they just sort of hand it over, they pay, and then it's done. And you're like, yeah, no, that's fine. It was yeah. rare that I'd have someone who's just smiling at me and being like, Oh, what a nice day it is. Not that they have to. You know, human beings shouldn't have to expect it. to talk about the fucking weather all the time. I understand. I never worked at a store. I always worked at restaurants. Well. Wow. Uh, I've a, never actually worked at a restaurant. Really? Yeah, there's there's uh, some fertile ground for bad customer interactions there. Mm-hmm. Um, Rags, here's a pun for you. Why does Picard say engage when he's not even married? Hmm. Most people get engaged when they aren't married, though. Yeah, that's true. I don't... Yeah, you're gonna have to reformat that joke. Think about it a moment. Get back to me. Also, are you all right, all, or left? Do I mean politically? I don't know. Well, that's, it's funny if it is that case because of the the answer that was just provided to another question like one minute ago. With the whole labels thing? <laughs> yeah, I just find the labels to be kind of not valuable. It's not helpful. If it was like a really, it's just an excuse to write people off. I Yeah, I'm making a video on that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it feels like it's just across the fucking like spectrum like it doesn't fucking matter like it's, it's just an excuse to write people off what's well, also there's lots of stuff that's weird like um drug decriminalization is seen as like a left-wing policy but 
like right-leaning libertarians have all the values that lead to it so it's kind of weird that it's considered yeah i don't know there's lots of those things crossovers where um like it, i think you know being pro-gun is often seen as a right-wing thing but like more lefty people are like no i, I like guns and so it's yeah. like hmm Power to the people, but not like firearms. We can't. No, it's just. It's just uh, calm down. Um, Ligon season is about a psychotic psychic. I think it's supposed to be Legion, I guess. Uh, doesn't know about mutants in the beginning. Doesn't uh, thinks he's crazy and powers don't exist. I like season one, not season two. That's an interesting idea. Um, My Little Pony Gen 5 is about how all the ponies are racist and segregated. <laughs> what? Nice. <laughs> Young ponies have to teach everyone not to be racist and Trump Nazi pony is villain. <laughs> I what? hope this is true. <laughs> Trump pony is racist. Uh, just top quality, I'm sure. Um... Ever had an unbridled response to live theater? I feel like there's no real venue for breaking down writing problems in running plays slash musicals. Um, I think the loudest I was ever, funnily enough, was uh, the Predator movie. Um, the Predator. I, I remember at one point, uh, Smiler, who I typically see movies with, was like, shushed me because I was getting very loud. That movie changes a lot about Predator as, as, as a thing, and it, it, it's frustrating, that's all. I'm assuming you guys are mostly quiet in cinema, though, like respectable, respectable patrons. I mm. tend to not speak at all. I tend not to. Yeah, at I'm, all. I mean, yeah, I, I, obviously, I, I, I haven't seen many movies in theaters recently, obviously because of COVID, that doesn't help. But I'm pretty sure I'm just like always silent, not saying much. Well, I tend to get annoyed like when people are talking, so mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to contribute to that problem. What would you rather, murmuring? Uh, like, let's say every f other five minutes, just in the background that you can hear, or a really strong smell from whatever food they have that's... Alright, I'll, I'll take the murmuring. Yeah, I'll take the murmuring. I feel like I can zone out the murmuring easier than I can try to, you know, get the smell out of the way. Yeah, the smell could ruin the whole experience. Oh, I absolutely it could. There are certain things that I just absolutely cannot stand the smell of, and if I had to smell that for two and a half hours, I'd want to, like, jump off a cliff. Yeah. Um... Hello, EFAP. Been waiting to watch last week's episode until I finished Midnight Mass. Not typically a horror fan, but loved the show. Also, high rags. Hello! You might not love our coverage, but... <laughs> no point. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Been sad today. Uh, stream brought a smile. Thanks, hi rags. Hello to you. Yeah, hope you're doing all right. Um, you did say that it can do black holes, and yes, with those descriptions, um, it's actually kind of easier for the high mid tiers of the MCU. The power level of the comics is fucking asinine. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, but you know that goes for a lot of things when they power. It's, it's asinine in the MCU right now. Um, I don't know what Scarlet Witch can't do. They haven't reined in her powers yet at all? No, they made it more powerful by the end the of the show. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. She's like unlocked the ability to just fuck with reality at, at a whim. Uh, which apparently is more in line with the comic, but... I mean, whatever. Yeah, really big problems with writing when you do stuff like that, but... Um, what's so hard to understand about the anti-life equation? You get to control... You get to control... Where does that go? Didn't we cover that whole thing? I'm trying to find out where the other half of this is. Oh. You get to control... Because there's a several in a row. It just sort of... You get to control all its just universe range mind control. Simple. Just ignore the comics version where it can shoot energy blasts because having no visible effect is absolutely anthama to comic artists. I don't know what that means. Um, Anti-life equals universe scale mind control and reality warping. Okay, so like, when we're talking about mechanically what it means, that's not hard for me. I understand English. Like, yes, I know that finding <laughs> that thing means they have mind control of the universe. We are obviously talking about how the fuck does that make any sense at all? Like, mechanically. Yep. 
Yeah. An anathema. Is that what, they, what is anathema? Anathema. anathema. Oh. What's that? <laughs> I think it's the opposite of a panacea. Or, or an, an anathema is something or someone that one vehemently dislikes uh, from a formal curse by a pope or a council oh of the church, excom excommunicating a person or denouncing a doctrine. I've learned so many words today that I'm probably going to forget as well. Ooh, boy. Oh, darn. A learning stream. Um, I never said the anti-life equation wasn't stupid, just that it, what it does is damn simple. Like, that was never our problem uh, with it. No, it's not. <laughs> but also, it's not even simple. Well, it removes free will. It's like, from what? All sentient beings? Yeah. All animals that they lose free will to? What if, if, do we even have free will, real, like, in this universe, technically? Or And, and if we include that, dis that description? of the how the formula works like i don't even want to go into how fucking yeah complicated exactly that is. it ain't simple it ain't simple yeah there's issues that philosophers have been arguing about for thousands of years and yeah, are nowhere no, even vaguely simple, close though. to resolution they, they solved it in in the anti-life equation from dark That's side true. I, I don't know what daniel dennett's character. been doing you should just you should just read the dc comics universe <laughs> they've got it all figured out it's so simple <laughs> it's pretty fucking yeah. funny at least i'll give him that uh, to clarify what I mean by living concepts, imagine the idea of all dreams had a consciousness of their own or a living idea that can interact with others and influence its spread. Does that make sense? So, I probably wouldn't... So, if a, dr a living dream, what does that mean? I don't I don't really get what it. What does it mean to be alive? Yeah. It's one of those flowery kinds of, like, what do you, when you say living dream, like, it's, it's something you'd see in a dream, but it's actually happening, or, like, yeah, what, like, that could mean a couple things, you know, and... Like I, it's, it's, I think like if every person who hears that is going to have their own, you know, kind of idea of what that is. So in in some ways that could be useful. In other ways it could be totally useless. So it depends on how you use it. You know, like many things. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's yeah. Misanthropony problem on the new content is exact thing what the Star Wars sequels have. This is also a sequel in the far future. All main characters are dead and their goals didn't happen. Get him on. You need to talk to him about MLP. Love you guys and high rags. Hello to you. I, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't have a lot of investment my in pony. My Little Pony. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Rag seems to have a lot of fans in chat. That makes sense. In, doing well, Rags. <laughs> rags, you got some fans in the EFAP audience. Did you know that? Uh, I think they're here to spite me, not because of me. Oh. Which gives me all the more reason to never leave. <laughs> Here's the life equation if you're curious. It's the thing Fringy posted about the, um... Yep. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. Uh, Is it just the anti-life equation, but the reverse? Oh, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, that's the life equation. It's just like... Uh, companionship, understanding, assurance, joy, altruism, respect, commendation, sympathy. Sorry, divided by the sympathy. I don't. Fuck it. It's none of it's going to make any sense to you. It won't well, make sense it, to anybody. So, if, if someone's will gets taken by the anti-life equation, can you just recite the life equation and give it back? I don't. I, why would you ask such crazy questions? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it at all. <laughs> Howdy Massives, currently listening to you guys while making a fantasy map for short stories. I want to write. Howdy Rags. Also Fringy Love Channel. Hello. Oh, thanks. Yeah, good stuff. Keep at it. Um, Fringy, how does saying words do that? So I guess magical spells that are activated with words don't make sense? Man, the level of charitability is off well, the charts. I was about to say, so... It's magic, then, is what you're saying. So what the fuck does it have to do with anything so, else? What, what, yeah. Magic is uh, like a magic system. I guess system. there's magic across the DCEU that strips free will from from what? Like, it, do flies have free will? I, I'm, I'm, nah, I'm not even, like, I, I'm kind of, like, man, the level of uncharitability there. <laughs> oh, yeah, magic spells are stupid because I said, wait, so if I speak a formula, an equation... That strips free will from everything in the universe. It makes you wonder, like, is it a matter of, like, whatever I want in this moment, that's what everyone comports to do in the universe for me? Or, to, you know, to my... But yeah. How does it... It's not like I get a console what and I can write out like? my commands, you know? Exactly. 
This is a lot more complex than saying Avada Kedavra and you fire a green goo at someone and they die. Yeah. Um... I don't get why universe scale powers confuse you guys. It's just normal powers, but stupidly larger in scale. Or is that the source of them doesn't make sense to you? Or do you not get why it... what it does? I'm not saying this is good writing, I'm just confused as to why you're so baffled by these things. I, I assume we made it clear at this point, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, at every regard of what this thing is, how you find it, what what it actually is, and then what it does, it's so unclear and confusing and edgy. The anti-life, I mean, literally everything about it's confusing. Yeah. A lot of sci-fi short stories have things called cognito hazards, which basically set off an uncontrollable response in your brain by looking at them. If the anti-life equation was just like that, it'd be fine. What? What? Sorry, like the, I'm, I'm lost. The VHS and the short ring stories have something that makes your your mind like not have free will anymore. Well, it says they set off an uncontrollable response to your brain by looking at them. That's that could be a lot, lot of things. things. Yeah, set off uncontrolled reactions. That's um, like if there's a if if you watch a movie and then you get sad because something sad happens, that's an uncontrolled reaction. <laughs> But then the gods say, making it an actual known equation ruins the whole concept since the simple fact Fringy can read it to us proves it doesn't actually work. Well, so I wouldn't go that far because, of course, there are plenty yeah. of things people read in fiction that do things that don't do the yeah, thing. Yeah, that in... don't work in reality. Yeah. It's much more to do with how is it that that... Is it in English, too? Because fucking hell. I, I guess, maybe. I don't Just know. Just more questions to ask, of course. Um... Maybe it was translated because because he speaks it. Fuck, I don't even want to. <laughs> um, there aren't that many people on the spaceship in Wally. That means likely millions, if not billions, of people died while trapped on Earth. And don't give me the BS that every single human got off the planet. Why would we? Mm. I assume they didn't. Also, I don't. I don't know. Because was there only one ship as well, or were there other ships? Yeah, uh, well, that's a good question. I'd have to look into what exactly they tell us is the truth of the history mm. of uh, them escaping Earth, because yeah. I, I can't remember. Can't remember either. Um, the aliens that made the Mandarin's rings are dead. Mandarin made them sound more grandiose. No sun, just extreme heat. No portal to space, supreme cold. Okay, what are you... I'm very confused by... We were reading the descriptions, guys. Like... What, if you're telling us, like, that's not actually what they do in the comics, it's like, okay, that's, I don't know, what, what, what was the source on those descriptions of the rings, if not, I'm guessing, were they lies, or were they just a part of a different, like, comic thing? Were they thing? part of a different comic, yeah. In which like, case, how are we meant to tell that from a glance? Well, I'm just gonna go as far as saying, like, we have no desire to lie about the Mandarin's powers, we're just reading that comic, like, that's all. Yeah. Um... It would take tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of those ships to even hold a billion people. I do, again, I do not know the numbers on the ship or on the planet. I'd, I'd have to check with the phone. Whether there were other ships. Wait, what, what property are we in now? Uh, Wally talking about. Okay, that's what, that's what I thought, yeah. I think they were, they were trying to. Cause it's weird because they're trying to say, like, people must have died or been left behind. And I'm just like, yeah, probably. Yeah, do we assume that they saved everyone? Uh, yeah. I mean, isn't it. If I remember correctly, it's kind of ambiguous. Like, there could be other ships, right? Is it presumed that all I, of humanity is on the one ship? Yeah. All that's left, I suppose. No, no, no. It's clarified because the, the ending sequence had, like, the cartoons of ships and stuff, and there was more ships. Was there? I think so. Hmm. Maybe other ships were contacted? I can't remember. Yeah. Well, I, I have to go back and rewatch it so I can argue about it. So I'll let you know. <laughs> what the, the well, I mean, I'd be up for watching it again. We can we can organize that if you want. Oh yeah, sure. I like movies; they're fun. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm kind of expecting to walk that back a little bit, but uh, yeah. <laughs> that we'll you see. like movies? No, just <laughs> me too. I'm gonna I, walk that I, back I, that I like movies. I, no, I, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna walk that back. No, I, I, I expressed like a moderate distaste of Wally or a slight hot take. I expect that I'm at least a little bit wrong. That's what I mean. Um, change title to With Duma to Force Better Name. I could do that. I could. 
Um, any yeah, thoughts on the new happen. MGS3 remake being made? No. Nope. not. No. No thoughts. I am un uh, useless on that topic. Yeah. Uh, new Nintendo casting announcements. Eddie Murphy as Ice Climbers. Roseanne as Samus. <laughs> 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 Roseanne as <laughs> Eddie Murphy as the Ice Climbers. <laughs> I fucking love that. Are you kidding me? That'd be amazing. Eddie that's Murphy that's actually that's really good. That's a, that's a top meme. Um, <laughs> they have another one. Nicolas Cage as Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Is it is is Eddie Murphy as Ice Climbers baked in that he's playing multiple characters? Because if that if it is, that's like well, yeah, he has to play awesome. both of them. Yeah, that's that's the fucking ice great. Yeah, they just yeah. have the same voice. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, the final one is Fred Savage as Shigeru Miyamoto. Make it happen, Nintendo. Uh, rags. Emotions personified is pretty obvious, and concepts and ideas being personified aren't. They're pretty similar from an ideas perspective. So before you answer Rags, th this is the same person that's been mm -hmm. talking about the whole living ideas thing. And if I can, you're probably gonna have a, maybe a different answer, I don't know. But it seems much more straightforward to me. If you say to me, a, a living concept, I'm gonna look at you like you're a weirdo. But if you tell me a personified emotion, I'd be like, oh, you mean like an angry person is anger and... Maybe he's dressed yeah. in a way that's like rough and, you know, like a, a tie that's like done up really tight or maybe even partially off and the collar's up or fucked up, you know, looking rough. Like I can, a personified thing, I understand, but living, th personified versus living, I think that one is clear and one is like, what does that mean? I've never, I've never no. heard living. Yeah. It's well, pretty... Well, living has con connotations. Well... I think in, in order to tack on to that, not all, for instance, not everything is easily personified. So emotions are things that are the, the vast, almost exclusively the things that are emotional that we understand come from other people, right? So it's very easy to personify those things. Anger and sadness and regret and joy, those are things we've experienced personally, and we see them constantly from other agents that we interact with, right? But some concepts are much more difficult to imagine in a more anthropomized, anthropomorphized form. For instance, concepts, concepts like the horizon or tomorrow or things of that nature. How do you, how do you give these things like a corporeal form? You know how how do you mm -hmm. how, how are some concepts able to be translated into a, a living breathing kind of thing? Um, whereas emotions are easy to do that with. Um, it's, like, it's like a preset. Yeah, uh, some things are just not. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's to, also yeah, so that, that is a tack on to that. It's also that like people people are emotion making machines. So like, I mean it. it so like what you were talking about is expressive emotion. Like you experience an emotion because a character expresses it. But there's also like other ways to invoke emotion as well. I mean, it's just, there's so many ways to do that. But yeah, an abstract concept. Yeah, like like the future. Is <laughs> the future is <laughs> a very, that's the thing. If I said the future is a person, you'd, you'd picture like a guy in like a sci-fi outfit or something. And that's kind of the best you can come up with. But you still don't think that really, that doesn't really do it, does it? Uh, meanwhile, if I said anger personified, it's almost like you'll just you just take away all the other emotions from a person and then you crank anger and that's you're done. Yeah. Um, and but you can even think of the clothing and the and the attitudes and whatever to match it. It's, I just think there's way more potential there than the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. if you think about concepts, like some are easy. Justice, the concept of justice. Oh, easy symbolically. The blind chick with the scales and a sword. Man, we got that nailed for justice. I, mean, I, was, I was gonna say Harvey um, Dent. Anyway, um, yeah, I, but yeah, so, some stuff like that that comes from that comes from people. Those are a lot easier. Bravery, right? The concept of bravery, pretty gonna be probably pretty easy for you to create a character or to embody that in a physical form that you could look at and say, ah, yes, that is bravery personified, or something like that. But some some things are just. Uh, like what's thoroughness personified? Yeah, what it what like, I, don't I know. mean <laughs> uh, uh 
philosophy, you know, um, meaning. That's a concept that things mean things. How do you how do you personify the concept of meaning? Um, you could you could present like things that are packed with meaning, but I don't know how you would express like the concept tough, of meaning yeah. through a character. I yeah. can't even. I'm not sure conceptually how you would even approach that. And what if your concept is some like it, it uh, like something that is. Like, I'm sure you can even breach into the realm of almost, like, contradictory, where the fact that it has a form means that it's, like, can you, should you even give a form to something that is formless? Like, formless as a concept, how do you, you know, it's like, uh, they, I don't know, it's a thing. I'm getting tired. So, um, how would you PEMDAS the anti-life equation? Well, with how it's described, you've got multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting in there, so PEMDAS, uh would give you the order i'd yeah. try to end with happiness uh get all the bad stuff out of the way and then try and really get in all that that happiness and things something that might be more good at the end but i don't i don't really have a preference i suppose um an efap on my birthday thanks massives i've been a fan since before efap had its name and you guys have gotten me through countless work days keep up the good work very well sir we shall and uh Hope you have a good birthday. A uh, car Hitler sending car Jews to Karschwitz. <laughs> yep. Karschwitz. <laughs> hey, they made that happen, okay? This second. Oh yeah, the leak. You can hear it now. It all makes sense. Uh, what? Uh, would gas stations be too close in name to chambers? What if car Hitler's paint chips? Is he no longer part of the Uber wagons? Oh, these are top quality jokes, I will say. Uh, do they have car strip slash hookers or Riri cars? There's a whole universe for them to create there, you know? Rags, what about car civil war and car slavery? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just have it all at that point. <laughs> car civil war? <laughs> 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 the car taxes, they had no representation. Damn British cars. Uh, Mola, you Dumbo, the reason why the lightsaber was huge in Visions was because the Kyber Crystal was the size of a tangerine. Hello all, and most importantly, high ranks. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that's very satisfying. <laughs> the the mountain-sized lightsaber. Uh, it's too J.J. Abrams for me. Like, uh... It's, it's all. It's, it's, it's. Oof, that scene was hard to watch, let's put it that way. But, um. Oh, and, and high rags. Hello! Uh, Clint was human, and episode 4 heavily contradicts movie. What if contradicts fucking all of the MCU pretty much constantly? It's just the thing that it does. Um, eat cake with a spoon, it's soft, and you don't have the cake slipping off. Cake with cake with a fork. Mm. No, I, I want to stab. I want to be able to stab the cake if I need to, because I use the. You can stab fork. with a You spoon. can cut no, the. You can stab with a spoon, especially it's a cake. Wait to to stir. What? Wait, you stab. What are you stirring? Stirring what? cake. What? <laughs> oh no, stab. No stab. What? What's happening? I'm very lost. Yeah. I, yeah. Stab. So you could cut the cake. Uh, I cut the cake with my uh, my my fork right along the side because it's cake. Anything cuts cake. And then I can stab it. And then so put it in my mouth. anything cuts cake, like a spoon. Yeah, but I don't want to scoop up the cake. I want to just be able to poop, stab well, so it right on the pork. Stabbing is well, well, no, 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 no. You <laughs> can't go back to stabbing. That part <laughs> is go out. Back. You, can you I went stab back with to spoon? using stab no, as like a I don't even know if you remember, for, Rags. You said in opposition fork, to the spoon yeah. that you want to be able to stab, and then you, you said anything stab, can stab. Now established. Yeah. Now oh, we've I'm going to use wrong word. I'm going to use wrong word. In terms of cutting, you could cut pretty much anything with a cake because it's very, very soft, right? You could cut so. anything with a cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so fucking tired. You can cut. I'm tired a, too. I don't. You but can like, cut not, yeah, not a cake with everything. Any, pretty much anything. Can cut through that yeah, cake. Yeah, so cutting right? is irrelevant, so, then, right? So, well, what, what is just, the reason why you're not just. I just picturing a guy running around cutting things with cake. 
right? at all. It's not that it's not it's just that. It isn't that. Well, yeah, I have the rest that I detailed with the okay. stabbing well, and being able to boop, got it on my cork now. Time is... I don't know why you're back to stabbing again. Like, well, the way I think that's useful. That. It's useful for eating with a fork if to stab but things. But you've established that you can stab with anything. You said that, which means that we need to get if rid I said, of stabbing. If I, gotta be if I said else. you could stab with anything, what I mean is that when you stab with a... Not everything stabs with the same efficiency. And sure. Utility. I so, can agree instance, with that. So it, you... it's about the difference of the utility of the stabbing then, not the act of stabbing itself. Yeah, yeah. For, forget the idea about you can stab with anything. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, all right. So it's just you brought it you... up. That's all. <laughs> you brought okay, it up. So you... You cut the cake with the knife, and then you could stab it with the knife, which leaves it on the knife nice and easy. Then you can transition that to your mouth very efficiently. You can and you think that's better with... than a spoon? Well, why... Yeah, I think so. Wait, so, it la so you cut so. with the fork, think... and it, it stays on the fork, but when you cut with the spoon, it doesn't stay on the spoon. When you, when you cut with a spoon, you can... But I think it's easier with a fork and more consistent that you could but just. You, didn't you just say a knife that you would stab it with a knife and then have did it I mean, on the did knife? Did I say knife? You did. You. Uh, you oh my you goodness. Did. Uh, or am I going okay. insane? I'm pretty sure I, you I said might have knife, said, and I lost I, the plot. Okay. There. okay let's. <laughs> well, you we're, can, you we got to reset. Make so, this super clear. Okay. okay. So what? We'll, we'll reset. A fork. Well, what totally is it? reset. Because I'm talking about things that I don't even. What is it know. that the fork can do that the spoon cannot? I think that the spoon allows you to manipulate the cake and get it into your mouth more efficiently I than a spoon does. <laughs> I think that the composition of a cake, which is spongy, you know, bread light. Am I going insane? Did he just say a spoon is better than a spoon? <laughs> oh yeah, that's my point, right? Is that you can have many different kinds of cake and all kinds of cake that I know of really are they they a fork is really great at dicing them up cutting them getting them well, on the fork you know bringing it to here's, your mouth here's, and also here's, here's with the, a cake you could, you could spoon okay. with a fork as well a fork can well sit. So, so that's that's my counter right is that if by by using a fork to cut the cake and then to stab back into the cake that's two actions whereas with the spoon you can just Stab it, and then it's on the spoon. It's ready to eat. And so, why not just cut the middleman and just take the spoon and then do that instead of doing it with the with the fork? I think it gives you better accuracy for how far you could stab because of its straightness in terms of how you No, I'm you talking can... about not the stabbing, the slicing specifically. That when you slice the cake and then you have the piece that you want to eat, if you're using a spoon... It's just the one action. Uh, in order to like fork. scoop, like like scooping cake, well, like a nice small piece of cake off of a larger piece of cake. You, now you can do that with a fork. You can, but the spoon is obviously going to be better for that than it's, the yeah, than more the designed fork. for that. So you're saying um, that you, if you have a piece of cake, a sufficiently large piece of cake that's been taken from the entire cake, right? It mm -hmm. is on yeah, your, ba yeah, your basically blue a slice of cake plate, that you right? want to bite up. What it's you do, so you're manageable. saying you take the spoon and you scoop a smaller piece of cake from that, um, okay. oh, I think I know why I don't, yeah, okay, so I think, to my experience, sometimes when you try and scoop the piece off of the other piece, based off of the motion of your hand and the kind of piece you're trying to get from the other piece, it falls over. It doesn't just scoop right onto the spoon, but because cakes are often tall, right? And pieces can be narrow, sometimes they will fall over. And in order to get it on the spoon, if that happens, you will have to you you put the spoon down but and to, you'll have you, to use... That would be the same for a fork though. It would be the same. You, no, you it would be you know, exactly the same. Because, right? It, you're, you're stabbing either way. There is no change. But no, with a spoon, no, it no, 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 no. If you're, and if you are, if, if no, if, over, no, stop. If you're cutting, if you're cutting it like with a spoon, it could fall the other way, and the same would happen if you cut it with a with a fork. The same thing However, would happen. That's true. The but, only difference would be right? if you stabbed it. But there is a big, there's a there's a big difference here. Whereas, let's imagine you have now separated the small piece of cake from the larger piece of cake. And tragedy, it falls down and is now yeah. lying prone, if you will, on the Blue's Clues plate. Okay? So now, if you have a fork, that doesn't matter because you could just stab it and lift it up. 
if you have a spoon, to scoop up that smaller piece will often require you to either drag that piece to the edge of the plate where it is slightly raised so you can get Maybe some leverage to get under the spoon. Using... Or Wouldn't you just press it against the current slice? Over. Yeah. You, you could also do that. That is a possibility. You could do that. And, and yeah, you you concerns as well. Oh. With, depending on the cake, you know, if you stab it with the fork, it might start to tear it into might more crumble. pieces. Yeah. yeah. Whereas possible. if I've got it sitting on my spoon, well, here's something though. If it's sitting on the spoon, it's gonna be fine. But if I stab it, I take a risk that it's mm. gonna break it apart. And so it makes also, you wonder. Just scoop it with the spoon, chop it with the spoon, put it on the spoon, and put it in your mouth. It seems like that's a really safe approach. And what so if what if cake. halfway through? you decide that you don't want to have that piece you put off, what if you don't want to have it all at once? You can keep a piece of cake on your put fork more thought and into your half cuts. of it. I don't know. Just and put, put another thing, into... another bonus is that let's say you're having ice cream with your cake, as many people do. That's, I know that's what our family does. We like to is that ice what many cream. people do? I think so. Ice cream, like even make they even I make ice like cream. I feel like it happens less often than it. Ice cream, I feel like that spoon's best friend. Well, yeah, here, I, well, get, yeah, of course. Well, here's the thing, right? You can use that fork to take all of the, like the, the somewhat or semi-melted ice cream that's on that plate, and you could use that fork to like get the cake and like mix it around and just kind of put it on that cake and then lift it up. And it is delicious. As it is with a spoon. Yeah. We should we should poll chat about who won that debate because it was intense. Yeah, it was intense. Though the, my favorite part was when Rags. I don't even know if you realized, but at one point you described how much better a spoon is than a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. It, well, it was fucking great. Who can great. argue with that? Who can argue with that? Um. Do do do. I bet the person who sent that super chat never expected that. <laughs> So anyway. I didn't expect yeah. that. I don't even know. Um, someone called Shad or Skullagram or Metatron, Swordsmaster. I disagree. I rate them adept, experienced, experienced. Okay. Um, as an uh, Actua Swordsmaster from the period would likely trash them without any contest. I mean, I don't even know that they would disagree with that. They're only like practicing I don't I don't want to speak for them but like I doubt as YouTubers that they expect they would be able to defeat like swords master an actual the, yeah swords I, I, I don't know I wouldn't want to speak for them um it's amazing the difference between the top 5 to 10 in sport slash game compared to the top 25 and the top 100 it's like those in the top 100 are amateurs and the top 5 to 10 see the Olympics and the pro s that's Starcraft 2 I guess uh yeah probably true of course, one of the stuff. interesting things is that when once you get to like the, the very very top of any craft you are disproportionately rewarded favorably well yep. yeah the the top number one we'll see number 100 is like pathetic and amateur maybe when that 100 is like leagues are impressive to us on yeah this, of course yeah sure. yeah uh what's the difference between editing rewriting and redrafting my process for all three seems to be the same but i feel like i'm doing something wrong um, I'm pretty sure rewriting and redrafting are the most similar. Editing is a little bit different. Editing... So the, the way I would try and separate sure. them out is know. editing is, is an umbrella tune. Well, that's the I problem. So. This yeah. is If we're talking strictly about writing, editing your writing versus redrafting your writing. Editing sounds like you can move around, while redrafting sounds like you go from start to finish. Yeah, rewriting feels like when I'm like, I need to cut this scene or this sequence and like... Yeah, rewriting... Yeah, yeah that, I agree. That's how I would probably rewriting distinguish the three of more, them. I would say rewriting is more substantive in terms of what's happening in the story, whereas editing is often like the tweaking, making sure that everything is like written correctly, grammatically, punctuation, stuff like that. But yeah. then there are different types of editing, because like for novels, there's difference between like the editing that is strictly for, um, you know, just English. Uh, yeah, copy oh. editing brain is, yeah, melting here. <laughs> Fucking Waluigi just sometimes doesn't do anything. I mean, I choose to be paired by the most Chad character in all of the Mario world, and what he's, like, Sigma, acting up. Sigma male energy. I'm yeah. not gonna play yeah. your games. I'm not gonna play your mini-games for your oh, coins. Yeah, I mean, but Waluigi then we lose, like Waluigi. <laughs> then, we, then we lose? Get... I don't care if we win. Uh, Chad is asking if pizza is a pie or a cake. It's a pie. 
Is, is it pizza a pie? considered a pie? Call a pizza pie. Isn't pizza just its own thing? I thought pizza pie no, was pizza, a thing. Pizza like, pie. as yeah. in pizza well, pie is I, a different I, thing I've from pizza. I've heard of pizza pie, but I thought a pizza was just its own thing. Like, I thought if, it was its own if, thing, if but... a category, then pizza is a category. You know? I do not know. There are a lot of yeah. similarities with pie, I have to admit. Well, I mean, it's it's a savory... Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I, I forget. I'm in Australia. We have more savory pies than uh, sweet pies. Um, yeah, I, I mean, anything I can like be a pie, technically. <laughs> I will make it. Well, anything could be on pizza, right? I could put a pie on a pizza. You could put a, a pie pizza pie. On a pizza, on a pizza, on a pizza. Have any of you checked out The Guilty on Netflix? Neat premise with Nightcrawler vibes. Also, high rags, scratches for the doggo. Oh, thank you. Um, no, I have not. Sounds like it could be interesting. Speaking of things held up with bad dialogue, Atla, you gotta stop doing that. You're gonna, oh, you're gonna enrage everybody. You can't just tell them that. <laughs> the way they remember from the childhoods will be ruined. I think internal monologue in anime can be done right. It depends on the situation. It can all be done right. It's just that um, it so it much of it that. is surprising to me sometimes. It's like, whoa, this is considered like top tier when the characters explain everything they feel to you. It makes me feel angry. Exactly. That's another good Futurama reference. I think, right? That's what you're going for? Oh, no. uh, I think that was Cryptomnesia. I thought I was coming up with it, but you're right, that is Futurama. Well, the Futurama <laughs> one's a little bit different. That's the hands are idle playthings, yeah. The Futurama yeah. one is... Oh, wait, wait. I was thinking of the one no, where it's, you... No, it's almost exactly the same. The Devil's Hands are idle playthings. I was... Well, so I'm, like... I'm gunning for the other one, um, where the What If machine... Um, the uh, and, and I think Banda says, I've always wanted to feel emotions because... Um, Everyone can and I can't, that makes me sad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and the devil's hands is like, I, I think the exact line is, you can't just have your characters announce how they feel. That makes me feel angry. So yeah, that, that was definitely... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I had, yeah. I had, that's, I had yeah, no idea, but that's ex like the, word for word. That yeah. makes me yeah. feel angry. <laughs> yeah, the, the devil's hands are idle playthings is the name of the first Futurama finale. Chat. Yes, season that's four right. finale, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm glad we had this conversation. I'm glad I can say that Bly Manor is not a horror because it's not. <laughs> Whatever you say. Okay, like, I give a it fuck, is, right? It <laughs> is. It is. It is, but like, oh no, it doesn't get that particular genre title. It's the end of the. W it's just funny because you can make a compilation from that show of some of the things that happened. I'd be like, yes, this is totally not horror. Um, question for Rags, but also High Rags. Hello. Which which Full Metal Alchemist did you watch, Original or Brotherhood? I think the Original. Hmm. I think I can't. Th it's been so long. I can I, I might. Uh, I. I can't quite remember. I watched Brotherhood. Um, the fact that Kung Fu Panda is still one of the best Kung Fu movie series is hilarious. The Chinese officials had a meeting about why their movies are not as accurate to Chinese history and mythology. Um, first one's really good. I mean, yeah, I, that's like a, I know. That, a lot I remember movie. watching the first one many times when it came out. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Three fat movies. We should do it at some point. That, that'd be that'd be great. It'd be a lot of How fun. How many are there? There's three. I think there's three. I remember I the second seen, one being really bad. I haven't bad. seen three. I have, I've only seen one and two. What'd you think of two? I, oh man, I can't remember two, but I remember I wasn't as big of a fan of it as the first one. Yeah, that's, yep. I think you missed three of my super chats this stream. That is very unlikely. But I will have a quick look. Unlikely, see. Yeah. Um. So one one of them was best lead Mortal Kombat, Snake Eyes, and Chang Chi. We definitely answered that. We did definitely did that. Uh, another one was Venom is better than Venom Two. We definitely answered that. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Not yeah. Do, 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 do. And that's it for this stream, so... Well... Hopefully we caught him. Um... Dude, gun to your head, fuck, marry, kill, metal, Jay, and a marshmallow man. Nope, I will I will make it a rule. If you involve IRL people, then I will... Well, IRL people that I'm very close with, then <laughs> I'm allowed to veto. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to keep... We, it, it's going to be really depressing to have uh, to have to keep breaking the news to Jay all the time. Yeah, it'll make metal happy, but that's not really, you know. Yeah. 
Don't lie to Doomer about Australia. It doesn't exist, just like the Queen of England. Stop being rude before Santa doesn't put you on the good list. Oof. I thought you were on the good list by default, and then he takes you off and puts you on the naughty list. Maybe we're currently on the naughty yeah, list and he's considering work. putting us back on the good one? I don't know. Maybe this is pessimistic. Mm. But I mean, doesn't Australia exist? I thought it was Finland, the one that didn't exist. <clears throat> Mola, they get away with it because it's anime. How is that different than people making excuses for the MCU or diverse movies? But, so I'm what? specifically talking about the communities what? we're a part of. <laughs> they, believe me, Marvel doesn't get away with fucking anything in our communities. Not here. Not here. We, we hate Marvel. Marvel shit. <laughs> right now, yes. <laughs> um, and if you don't think it gets enough criticism, then make that criticism. Literally, yeah. what we're doing. So, but that's what, <laughs> what you're criticizing. You're criticizing the criticism that's being levied. I don't understand. What have we? <laughs> that's what we do. Like, um, and then it follows up with, "I might be misunderstanding with uh, you. Maybe I'm just trying to make this clear. Since such a broad denouncement of a specific category of media, but I think I get what you're saying. The the main thing to take away is that anime is ass, like a lot of things." Um, but for some reason it gets away with loads of shit, and so you end up having lots of really bad things celebrated. Um, that is not something that doesn't happen with mainstream stuff, even in our own communities. To this day, Winter Soldier is held as the greatest in the MCU for some reason. That's a mystery, but, well, I say it's a mystery, we have theories on exactly how that's happened. Um, it's very well paced, as we said. Nice action in it, all that stuff, but, um... Yeah, anime is like that on steroids. It gets away with all kinds of crazy shit. That, um, again, like, you know the power level stuff? That's like all over anime. The second J.J. Abrams does it, we all like highlight it as like, Oh, fuck, here go, the, here the stakes are gone. Or like in Marvel when they do it. Definitely the dialogue stuff. But, Even um... The power level. Did you see Cowboys vs. Aliens? I have seen that. Not for a while, though. I, I, I didn't, but I figured that, like, how could they possibly balance the power levels of like <laughs> it just seems so insane i don't know what you think of it um i don't remember anymore no, that's, not, that's not a good review <laughs> that's my insight <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my god the computers are wrecking me right now it's embarrassing oh i got two of them nice well, they just stand there. Okay, never mind. Um, uh, but I think I can get what you're saying better if you say people aren't criti critical enough of anime. That's, that's, that's literally what we say. That's the point, though. Um, one I think you'd like is Ten deities know only peace as the heroes are as immortal as the villains. I don't know why that would be a point of pr praise. Um, or, or anything other than neutral, but for very different reasons. One actively wants to destroy humanity, and the other doesn't care if humanity destroys itself so long as... so long as lives. I'm not gonna lie, rewatching a series that covers all of the Avatar episodes, it's much worse than I remember, but certainly better than most of its contemporaries. Its contemporaries would be stuff from the mid-2000s. Yeah, and if we're talking about, if we include That's more than, like, drama TV shows, or are we just doing cartoons? Well, even if it's cartoons... Even if it's cartoons, the competition's like, tough. There was tough. a lot of good stuff on Cartoon Network Wasn't Spongebob at out time. at that point? Spongebob was definitely on at that time. Yeah, so I don't know. <clears throat> I agree with the first half, not the second half. Cool. Necessarily. Um... I personally find the... Oh, wait, so that's the... Yeah, so that's the end of that section. Um... I don't know how we could be more clear about the anime thing. It's just... <laughs> it's like, why don't you be critical of it then? It's like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, Hello, Massives. Missed the fapping because I hiked for eight hours. Got chased off the mountaintop by some angry goats. But worth the trip. Happy tisms. <laughs> hey, <laughs> just wondering what that looks like. Hope you're right, yeah. Goats hanging out on a mountain. We don't want any friend... Yeah, it's like, you know, goats, if you, if you, you know, interact with the human, maybe, maybe human will look after you, you know, there's, there's a thing that can happen there. I wonder if there's any understanding of that in the animal kingdom beyond, like, elephants. I'm pretty sure they do, but some kind of, like, those fucking humans, they control everything if we can just <laughs> get... Have you seen what happened with dogs and cats? They live in the dream. <laughs> it's not fair. 
Uh, I personally find the training and discovering your powers part of stories to be annoying. I'd rather see emotional development and character development from people already at their top or near the top of their powers. I'm fine with both as long as they're done well. Mm -hmm. yeah, like finding I your like power those. versus someone who's already very powerful and just... I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, getting, like all of it can work. Getting your powers, learning your abilities, and uh, the work that goes into that can open up many possibilities for character growth and emotional, uh, you know, emotional stuff. Well, is there any way to have an origin story where there isn't like an element of training? I mean, well, otherwise you seem to just be in Mary Sue territory or whatever, where they're just automatically good. Well, so it's intrinsically nonsensical if you can have a growth story that requires no growth because then there is everyone would just be things you know what i mean like there would be no aspirations because you would just be the thing yeah like today i will be a doctor and it's like all right there you go like, sweet um so the word journey is going to come up a lot with that as well uh you have loads of options with all sort of points in a training's a history and I, I would just say if someone was like I'm getting bored of the sequence where they're bad with a sword and then they get better and better I'd just be like oh well you're not supposed to just be doing that in those scenes right there's supposed to be dialogue and sort of other backs and forth you can have the montage involve more than just whether or not they're getting better with a sword uh, that's a specific example but you know what I mean it's all opportunities for storytelling um so no Ray randomly discovering Super God mode, just people like Mace Windu and Yoda dealing with stuff, whether it be interpersonal drama or trying to organize their life, maybe foil plots. Yeah, again, I, I'm not against stories like that. I just you know, all of them can work. We get a lot of origin stories, though. I, I guess I agree. Um, I want them to have their powers pre-established in universe. Pre-established in universe? Have yeah, their but... powers pre-established in universe? I would. I, want I guess they just mean like the means. like a title crawl establishes it. I don't know if that's what that means. Or they don't pull their powers out of nowhere when they need them. Yes, that, maybe that's what they mean. Where it's like, oh, I I can levitate. Oh well, this is um, but... the end of that thing about the Mace Windu stuff. So so they're saying like they want okay. all of that to be clear well before we even start the story. I guess. Hmm. And. Uh, no, they make more money from a watch on Nebula video than their YouTube. Oh, well, I, I don't know the maybe, specifics of that, but... I mean, yeah. maybe watch for watch, but view count-wise... There's no way uh, um, Nebula's gonna be able to compete with YouTube's view counts. Nebula's gonna be siphoning YouTube viewers, like... You're gonna be sending people to Nebula from YouTube. I, I don't know if Nebula's popular enough. Um, I just don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, you guys are acting like it's super immoral to use something like Nebula. I, I'm not a fan of locking content off from people arbitrarily to get more money out of them. There's lots of ways to get more money out of people. Um, the peak of this is like the horrible microtransaction gambling games. That's, yeah, I, I don't like it. I just because it's legal. I'm not going to do it myself. Yeah. Um, you, I, I don't think it makes you an evil person to do so. I mean, there are degrees, yeah. right? That's just yeah, at the very least, it's distasteful. Yeah, and, and like Nebula is a system designed specifically to do that. Like, let's not pretend that they're like, Nebula is this amazing thing where I get to add one minute extra of video for you to see at a cost. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Nebula's doing this. Like, that's it's the. Wait, do you, how does it work? I don't even know. Do you need like a subscription to use it? I think yeah, so. Yeah, Nebula first. Plus would be the subscription, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Nebula, the MCU character? <laughs> <laughs> um, screw, marry, kill, Harley Quinn, Ratcatcher 2, Katana. Oh, kill K Harley well, instantly. Well, Harley's dead. Uh, uh, I'd probably... Go to marry Ratcatcher 2, right? And marry screw Ratcatcher. Katana. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this blade trapped the cum of its victims. <laughs> 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 In terms of all this living concept thing, look up the term egregore. Honestly, 4chan has taken this concept to its logical and tismy conclusion. I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know if I want to know. Egregore. It is from French, uh, from ancient Greek, blah, blah, blah. It is an occult concept representing a distinct non-physical entity that arises from a collective group of people. Historically, the concept referred to angelic beings or watchers and the specific rituals and practices associated with them 
namely with Enochian traditions. More contemporarily, the concept has referred to a psychic manifestation <gasps> or thought form occurring when any group shares a common motivation being made up of and influencing the thoughts of the group. The symbiotic relationship between an egregore and its group has been compared to the more recent non-occult concepts of the corporation as a judicial person or legal entity and the meme. All right, then. Um, I'm trying to say that those descriptions were made by the Mandarin himself to sound more OP. The rings are powerful, but not earth-shattering. Oh, well, if that's what the context of that uh, comics page is, then yeah, they're not as powerful, but... Um, I guess we'd have to see what an actual description of the ring's power can do. Mm -hmm. A single water molecule isn't wet, but a group of them are. Since then, the water molecules are covered with other water, making the inside water wet. Oh, right. I but mean, can water molecules be soggy? That's basically my argument for why water is wet. Uh, Mole, you misread my super. I said you didn't need to. No need to reread it, but check his Star Wars vids. I, oh man, I don't remember which 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 one was that. One second, and I have been known to do that. I've read words wrong sometimes. It's very embarrassing. Oh, you don't need to talk about L MLP is what they said. Not need to. My bad. It's good that you clarified that. <laughs> it's, it's important. Um, let them eat cake with a fork. Mwahahaha. <laughs> I mean, that means that they're allowed to eat it with a fork or a spoon, and that's the perfect world. You know, use whatever yeah, utensil use you whatever want. Yeah, use whatever you want. Yeah. Um, have y'all seen Patrician TV here on YouTube? He did a really good 12-hour review of uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Stumbled onto him and really liked his content. I have not. I have not. No, I don't, I don't know that one. I but. appreciate. I can. I can admire the dedication to make a review that long on mm -hmm. a game that is uh, not really in vogue at the moment. But I, yeah, I could see myself if I put. It would take a lot of work, but yeah, you know, there's a lot to talk about in those games. So who knows? Who knows? Rags, you filthy weeb! Watch Cowboy Bebop Animu. I have. There you go. I even referenced it in, I don't know, in something. But, uh, yeah, I have seen it. I have seen it. Good stuff I like. Um, guys, guess who once portrayed Fu Manchu? Christopher... F Christopher. I get, I'm getting tired, too. Christopher fucking Lee. Look it up. It was a famous episode of Ooh. Mystery Science Theater 3K. Um, I think I already nice. knew that. I, I have, Everyone knows about the Nicolas Cage one as well, I think. Or a lot of people do. Um... Rogman, your PFP is well done. Longman, your PFP is wonderfully spooky. Doggo, your PSP is adorable. Since I have characters left, piss. Ah, that's fair enough. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, it's The whole tabs uh, works I excellent. Like, I like it. You guys' PFPs are really good. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thanks. Your, yours is, um, you know, you know? It's all right. It's kind of shitty, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Living dream. It's a dream that's alive and thinking like a person. It's not made of matter, it's made of thoughts. What is this? I'm happy to just move on from that. <laughs> I don't know what that- I can't- like, how do we- how do we conceive of that? A dream that's alive and thinking. A well, dream is- if, if the dream is thinking, who does it belong to? It's alive, I, bringing we, to its itself. But that's does, the it, thing, does it have the biological only... functions, or it's, what? It's the universe dreaming of itself. Oh. Whoa. That's actually a line in Midnight Mass. That's so it is. Wait, it is? Yes, but it's not. I don't think it's from Midnight Mass. I think. Because a lot of people are saying it's uh, Carl Sagan's reference to a whole bunch in uh, Midnight Mass. I'm not sure if he said that. But... Yeah, it's shit for losers. Wow, right. Like... Um. I can understand people thinking anime gets a pass, but I go, but I can go to any anime consumer, and they wouldn't say most of it is trash like any other media. Okay. Fair enough. Um. Alrighty. That 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 that's that's that. We've caught up with today's wow. Sanchez. Wow. Incredible. Wonderful. Right. I want I want to eat, I want to eat food.
Oh well, okay. Uh, I mean, before your know, first thing first, did you go to like the, I'll probably have to refresh in a moment and read out whichever one's coming a little bit next. Um, but first of all, uh, Duma Politics, thank you so much for hanging out with us for nine and a half yeah. hours. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's been fun, and I'm very exhausted. I'm surprised you guys can do this all the time. Yeah. It's no, fun. you get used to it. You just succumb to your fate and. Do what you can. You stay up. You get some practice in. You make sure you sleep, and you know, you just pay attention. Multitask a bit yeah, it's here only, and um, there. And just focus. it's only twice a week. You know, it's not that much. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really fun. fun. Yeah. Well, uh, why don't you tell chat about what you get up to in 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 and around your YouTube, and I'll uh, I'll make sure to link it in chat. Okay. Why should um, they subscribe to you? Why Why should they subscribe? Uh, if you don't like this guy Vosh, that's a good reason to subscribe. I made this <laughs> two-hour like uh, the main <laughs> video to look at. Yeah, <laughs> the one video to look at. Yeah. So, I mean, if you if you want to pitch, um, I had been working on this book on screenwriting for a long time. That's basically what a lot of my stuff's going to be about. Things that I've written about and applying it to movies. So, Django Unchained is going to be first. Um, probably a lot of media analysis and stuff like that. So, I love analyzing movies. Then I'll probably have some political videos, but that probably will stop because talking about politics gets old and is upsetting. And movies are much more interesting. So yeah, yep. probably a lot of media videos coming out. Sweet. And uh, I guess is Django first? Did you say? Yeah. Well, I because <laughs> we we discussed it, and then I went back and rewatched it, and it not only annoyed the fuck out of me, but I kind of figured out the whole movie or the whole video. No, sweet. Uh, just just watching through. So yeah, that'll probably be done this week. Hey, I really like Django, but I'm more than willing to to hear the argument, whatever it may end up being. Uh, oh, there's I. So I found a smoking gun. So I I, I, I await your reaction. It'll be, it'll be pretty interesting. Very well. Now, with EFAP. Uh, we usually do a catch up on Wednesday, but that's gonna be my annual. It's my B day stream of a spooky game, and this oh year I'm gonna be doing Machine for Pigs. A, a revisit mm. after many. It feels literally like it's been what, like fucking nine years since I played that game. I don't even know. What time are you starting? Um, I actually don't know. It'll probably be after I do whatever I'm doing with my family. Be it. Do you think that will be? So, th around EFAP time? Yeah, probably or... either an hour after or two, something like that, yeah. Okay. Machine for pigs. I'm really gonna... It's gonna be strange to play that game again after all this time. I never finished it, so I'll watch you play through a bunch of it. It's a, I think it's a short game, to be honest with you. I think it's only like four or five hours, but I guess I'll find out. Um, I say that's short, that's... I don't even know anymore. What is short and long anymore? Who knows? Uh... Yeah, and then you get another Resident Evil EFAP movies coming on Friday, and um, there are other things going on, but they don't... You don't have to worry about it, chat. These guys have to worry about it, okay? Like old dates and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh right, right. Yeah. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to say before, before we head out? Oh, wait, I've got to read out the rest of the ones that came in while I was speaking. God damn it. Oh, my God. I won't be here forever. So Karis will be here forever and ever and ever. True. Um... Wait, are you confused on what the anti-life equation does or how it does it? Basically, oh. basically all of it, but uh, just everything, <laughs> everything just, about it, <laughs> just everything about it is just. Uh, oh. Um, any thoughts on Netflix Midnight Mass? You can find us discussing it at around I want to say the forty-minute mark or something on the prior EFAP. Um, I don't know that we're going to be going into much more detail than that, other than when we tackle it on an EFAP miniseries, which could be as much as two or three years from now. But hey, eventually. Um, I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing about it, but any plans to cover Invincible? Nope. I was nope, thinking no. of making a video on it if you guys weren't. Go right ahead, man. Absolutely go for it. We uh, don't really have any intention of covering it. Um, if you think about a cognito hazard, it's just it just mind hacks you. It's magic. So like a cognito hazard just sounds like a thing that is bad for the brain. Mind hex? Like hex like a spell? Uh, sure. A mind hex, is that what he said? I think it, well, heck is in like instead of hell. Gives you a mind hecking. You know, something like that, I guess. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. 
the whole like, oh, it's so crazy. If you look at it, you'll go insane. Ah, yeah, there's some of the SCP stuff do that. Mm -hmm. well, like Ro Roko's Basilisk and stuff like that. Uh, sort of. I gotta make. I gotta distinguish if that's medic or cognito. Um, cognito hazard. Um, mimetic first kind of. Okay. Um, let me see. So. Let me see. So, a cognito hazard poses a danger when sensed. This can be through any of the classical means, sight, sound, hearing, taste, or touch. Ah. Is it necessarily only mind-affecting? A mimetic agent is infectious, is essentially infectious information. Knowledge that triggers anomalous behavior or effects. By nature, Ooh. all mimetic agents are cognito hazards. You have to sense something to learn new information. A, an info hazard, as coined by sorts, is something that is triggered if you simply know about it. It is similar to, but distinct from a mimetic agent, because a mimetic agent is pure information, whereas an info hazard is generally an object. And that's from, now this is from the SCP stuff, and a lot of the SCPs deal with being these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that is a reference to that's from the tag guide on the FAQ section on the website. And they have some examples here. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you're never caught up. We will be fully one day. It's going to happen. Uh, what would win? A pack of rabid beavers with machetes or a pack of rabid otters with bowie knives? Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, which are bigger? Are the beavers bigger than the otters? Yeah, all right. Beaver, beavers uh, are definitely I bigger than otters. I think so. I think they're bigger than otters. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, I think they're probably like similar in size, size, but I think, and they're, then, I think they're bigger. I guess I'm ignoring the, the weaponry. I was just going to think about them as, as creatures, like the beaver's teeth. Like, How lethal is a beaver versus other animals? I don't... I I think they if, if they have to fight, I assume they bite. Beavers they scratch. Beavers are twice the size of otters. I just checked. Oh, okay. Honestly, in that case, I'm just going to go with the beavers. You're going to go with beavers, too. Wait, this is beaver versus otter? But with machetes for the beavers and bowie knives for the otters. Wait, but machete knives are even better. So the beavers are just going to, like, slaughter. <laughs> well, That's actually, if, like, the team can pick up these things. I don't things. know. In the, here's the thing. In the water, though, a stabbing weapon will be much more effective than a slicing weapon. Okay, in the, in the water, the, the otters would be a lot more maneuverable. So maybe in the water, the otters could have a chance. It didn't specify water, but, you know, maybe. Well, I, here's the thing. I think that both of these creatures, being heavily aquatic-based, will, will try and play that to their strength, potentially. So maybe beavers with their dams and such will play more defensively. They will uh, make maybe. use of their fortifications, which most yeah. animals probably don't know how to deal with, um, to, tactically speaking. So I'm, I am going to give it to the beavers. Uh, because even though I think in water, otters will probably win out because they have better weaponry in the form of knives that can be used underwater, um, it is going to be very hard to force a fight in the water. Yeah, I could see the underwater otters winning argument for sure. Right then. Uh... I do want to get on a call with you guys to tell you how the anti-life equation and other stupid stuff like it functions and what it does. And cognito hazards. The ideas are far out, but they have simple mechanics, like a magic system. I'm not saying that they aren't incons inconsistent. I'm just hyper baffled. People of your obvious intelligence don't get it. It's get not. Ma it's not magic, though. If it were magic, that would be ways like you could discover this magical power at the center of the universe, that lets you control all free will. If it was strictly that, yep. instead, it's there's an equation that allows you to control all free will. And even then, an equation, what is like that even? a mathematical equation, like you just that. Because what you're equation telling me, equation must be used figuratively. What you're telling me is that, like, why can't you just ignore the fact that they're saying that and just go with magic? And it's like it's not claiming magic; it's claiming an equation does this, and then the equation is like mathematics and magic <laughs> are ooh, like polar opposites. One of I mean, them is like as provable as you could possibly remember, get. Um, in, Mathematics okay, it, is more real than real. In TLJ, when they're like, the ship is smaller, therefore it is faster than us, because that's just how things work, it was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And if someone said, yeah, just fuck it, it's magic, fuck it. 
I'd be like, no, you, you can't, like, <laughs> claim magic for, after that. For, for anyone who thinks this is simple, can you please explain how I quantify loneliness? <laughs> like, how, what? I, I just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying it's not, it is absolutely not the same as magic, and as was said, it's just like, how does it work for that individual when, if I control all the free will in life, how does that, what is that experience for me like? I don't know. Uh, do you guys recommend watching Midnight Mass? Yes. Mine is also yes with many, many, like a million dots after it. Yes. And it's not an enthusiastic yes. Yet, it is a yes. I'm assuming Fringy would say yes as well. Maybe. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, evil on Netflix is bad. Demon recruits for bad activities as a therapist, and part of his plan is directing single white males to 4chan. It's bad. <laughs> I love Satan is directing people to 4chan. Ah. <sighs> uh. The best kind of stuff. And then this says, no you won't. Read another Keck W, you're never going to bed. You can't use Keck W on YouTube. God. Disgusting. Yeah, well, no, it di you didn't though. You just typed out a bunch of letters. On Twitch it comes out <laughs> as an image, which is way better. Um, oh, then I meant personified. Apologies for miscommunicating. This comes down to me failing to define terms. I mean, uh, a dream personified as rags is going over and stuff, that's still weird compared to, like, an emotion personified. Yeah, because dreams don't have any... Like, emotions have outward manifestations in terms of behavior. That is very recognizable. But a dream's manifestation doesn't... It's, I don't really know what that would be. Dreams tend to be purely subconscious things that occur when a brain is in a state of like sleep so i don't i don't know how that manifests um generally when things are described as dreamlike uh like a, like, like surrealist art it is um unreal right it's imaginative and illusory um things of that nature right it's a uh, resembles a dream. It's like it's like it's surreal. It's not necessarily rational or logical in a in a sense. But even then, that's a very broad swath of things. Yes. Um. And yeah, that's that's it. We we caught up again. So now I shall say, is there anything any of you wonderful lads would like to say before we stop the stream? No, I'm good. Bananas? Rags, is there anything? Is there a word you'd like to say or anything like that? Uh, abdicate. There you go, abdicate. Alrighty. That was a fun almost 10 hours. We'll see you next that time, was. folks. Yeah. Thanks. Shame, we, we had just enough time. We could have squeezed in that second video, but <laughs> that's alright. Maybe I'll get around to it next time. Yeah, maybe. That's okay. <laughs> so we will, we see, oh, Fringy's thoughts on Tom Nook. No, we're not going there. Um, nah, but we'll see y'all later. Thanks very much for showing up. up. So, yeah. Thank you. Bye. The long man is as long as I can make him. Longer. Bye bye. SpongeBob yeah, best anime. Boy. There you Ed and Nettie's right. best anime. There you go. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. Yeah, I'll see y'all later. I got to deal with this. Uh... Hey, Mole, are we watching your Last of Us 2 playthrough? What a clusterfuck, high racks. Yeah, I'm glad oh, you hello. enjoy it. It's a fucking terrible game. Uh, Hi and it. goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> Good thanks night. very much. Bye. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. See y'all later. Bye.